Ladies and gentlemen, the major in Copenhagen is about to begin. 16 teams have joined us in Copenhagen, all vying for that one spot on Championship Sunday. You can see the players all starting to get ready, and the show is going to begin in just a few moments. I'll be sending you off the desk soon, but first I wanted to introduce you to the player pit. Hello, I'm Leaf, and this is where we're going to be having all the fun. I'm down here in the home where we're going to get into the minds of all the players and all the cool storylines as they unfold. I thank you guys so much for joining all of us here as we celebrate Rocket League. So many cool storylines to get through. I mean, one close to my heart, Jane Apps coming into this as Canada's last hope. Also coming in with the most land record at 12. That's incredible. Oh, and just behind him, Torsos as well, tying that record. And also saying OC is coming in looking the strongest they ever have. And we can't forget about the French. They're still French. And one of my favorite storylines, of course, is Sub-Saharan Africa. And to talk about that, coming in representing that one spot, Snowy, you're joining me. How exciting is it to represent that one spot here at the Major? Uh, it's incredibly exciting. This is our first major. We've been waiting so many years for this. Um, obviously, we were included in RLCS the last two seasons, but no majors. So the fact that we're here, it's just like, it's the most exciting moment ever, yeah. All right, it has to be something else. Now, the crazy thing is we, we were just talking about your opponents, K Corp. You got the big bads across the board. Now, they tend to drop some matches early on in tournaments. You think this could be the one? Um, potentially, uh, we know we got thrown into the deep end. We got given probably the strongest team at the major, uh, but we know we're confident in ourselves and anything can happen. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this match and hopefully we can just, you know, give them a good game, yeah. Okay, I really don't want to take much of your time. I know you really got to get the practice up here. So being here representing Sub-Saharan Africa, I want to give you the honors of starting our show to kick everything off. Can you look in the camera and say, the RLCS Copenhagen Major starts now. The RLCS Copenhagen Major starts right now. I think in the Open Qualifier, we, we didn't let our guard drop. We continued grinding throughout the whole split. Uh, we won all three regionals, I think, quite comfortably. Our journey was a little, a little bumpy, yeah. <laughs> it was definitely like a long journey, but got it done. Uh, Bah, évidemment, on voulait, comment dire, euh, se qualifier d'une manière que qu'on a fait. Mais euh, en soi, c'est, on est au major, euh, c'est, c'est vraiment bien. Donc, euh, ouais, on est confiant. We, you know, have a lot of momentum coming from the last Open qualifier. We get like the, the seed two of the tournament. We are now ready to play and try to beat everyone. Like we haven't lost a series yet in our own region, and hopefully carries over to the major. I feel like have a, a pretty good chance of like getting games off the, the major region teams. Those he's looked at as like a, a pretty poor region. We'll just use the underdog mentality. I would say EU is the like the best region. We don't really add too much pressure on ourselves. We just play the game and we know what we have to do. We know if we play well, we'll beat anybody. Every team here is really good. Uh, we're we're really confident. أكيد بيعني لنا كل شيء لأنه هو كان حلم أصلاً ونسوي كل نقدر على عشان حقيقة. Y yo creo que la meta siempre es ganar, pero en mi caso estoy feliz a partir del top 8. Siento que todo lo que venga después de eso ya es un extra. We all strive to win this tournament. We want to make the crowd in, play in front of the crowd. We're a team of winners, we want to win. We are aiming to be the best. International storylines and dreams colliding in the airspace over Copenhagen here as we kick off our first major, a little under 30 minutes till round one of the Swiss begins. Welcome back, folks. Get up and get loud wherever you are. It's game day. We are ready to play some Rocket League today, and we got a wonderful pre-show to kick things off here. I got a Gibbs, I got a Fates, I got Stumpy. Stumpy, how you doing, man? I'm doing really well. It's nice to see you guys. Not seeing you at all during the Open Qualifiers. We've had the NA stream, we've had the EU stream, and it's great to have all the boys back together. We are, we are all here finally together as one 
international family, teams from all over the world here. Sub-Saharan Africa in town for a major for the first time, Bates. And the SSA, they're ready to play here. If you watch First Touch, you heard Greybeard, you heard the passion. SSA, they've got a story. And you saw Snowy starting off the show. He kicked it off. He, he basically was a talent right there. I got hype. <laughs> this is him right now. Let's get into it. It's going to be a crazy one. Gibbs, since day one, you've been right here. It keeps going. But it's been a long offseason. It has been. Yeah. Everyone, 228 days is when the world champions were crowned. Vitality. And then rosters consolidated across every single region. We have the most talent here left at this major that we've ever had before. So a lot of question marks because of that long gap. Yes, Europe is the best. But that gap has been so long. Mm -hmm. Maybe it some of these been. other regions can catch up. And playing in person, it's different than playing online. Everybody having to find that new gear. Many players doing it for the first time here. Let's take a look at how the season works. If you're just now jumping in, if this is your first time tuning into a Rocket League broadcast, you picked a great time to start. We're right here at the end of our first split playing in our first major here for Copenhagen. Going to be going on for today, March 28th through the 31st. We'll be crowned a champion of that major on Sunday. And then that kicks off. Split number two, beginning pretty quickly after that with open qualifiers, three in a row there on mm. April 19th uh, with our London Major. Woo. Well, that will be coming at the end. They're going back to your home, Stumpy. Yeah, going back to, um, going to be seeing us in the Copper Box as well. It's going to yeah. be third time in the Copper Box. We've had magic every single time so far, and it's back in London. So many um, fans are going to be showing up. We've seen what the crowd can do at these massive events, and the Copper Box, it's a bit smaller, mm -hmm. it's intimate, it is loud. You're loud. basically sitting inside a big drum. Rub. First time we were there, uh, greatest goal in the history of mm -hmm. the sport. Second time we were there, first time uh, non-NA versus EU or EU versus EU final. First time seeing uh, Middle East in there. But uh, folks, if you're watching the show, you're in the right spot. We got great action coming down the pipe for you all through the rest of the week. We got two broadcasts going on at the same time. So make sure you have twitch.tv slash Rock League as well as twitch.tv slash RL Esports pulled up for the B-Stream matches. They are going to be kicking off here, I think, in just a few minutes with their pre-show so they can keep you updated on how their matches are going. They're going to be featuring Carmine Core versus Limitless to kick things off. Also, we got first touch there on the end of the week. It'll be great. We'll talk about that one a little bit more as we get closer to it. Here are the teams who are competing here in Copenhagen. Super teams galore everywhere. Mm -hmm. K Corp, yes. obviously, everyone knows that they're the number one dogs here, but G2 and Gen G, consolidated talent in North America. Furia, consolidated talent. Power, perfect Power. in OCE. Falcons and Mina, consolidated talent. And the APAC is that big underdog story with Elevate and, of course, Limitless, tried and true. They are back here as well. The most talented RLCS land we've ever had. And people say, Major, you're not saying much. You're saying that. Of course, every single land people can better know is what mm. Gibbs touched on. Cons the consolidation of talent, especially in a in Sam and in Mina. You have legit mm. six to seven teams that can win this Major. And that's never been said before. These are the teams. They will be playing through a Swiss to start things off. We will play that Swiss today and tomorrow, and then that will lead into a bracket. If you don't know how a Swiss works here, it's pretty simple. You win games, you play against other teams that have won games. If you lose, you'll play against other teams that have lost. You gotta win three matches before you lose three. If you lose three before you win three, you are out, your tournament is over. If you win three before you lose three, you'll be in those top boxes, the green boxes at the top. Eight teams will qualify out of this Swiss and into our playoff bracket that will be played Sunday, Saturday and Sunday in front of the crowd here in Copenhagen. That's going to be huge. That's when the nerves are really going to play a factor. Mm. We'll probably see it here in round one of Swiss as well because everyone's just getting uh, reacquainted. But when you're in front of the crowd, it's a different beast, Bates. And we know that players, there are some that love the spotlight, but others kind of shy away from it. So we're going to see some interesting quarterfinals. Yes, it'll matter what seed you're coming in. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's an even playing field, one life for everyone. Yeah, and they're getting to that Grand Finals, winning that Grand Finals, being crowned Copenhagen Major Champion. Such a huge title for whatever team is able to do it, but with it being the first major, the points are so important here. 32 points going to that first place spot. Could be enough for some of these teams to basically clinch worlds, Gibbs. Uh, yeah, we could see like a K Corp. If they win this and they're expected to, they're going to have so many points that they can like kind of take it easy and split through. They won't, obviously. They're not going to. Yeah, but they're going to go <laughs> for the perfect season, but... A lot of points here. There's only two splits, so you want to get as many as you can right now. $75,000 as well. You know, doesn't yeah, sure, hurt. why not? Nah, nice to take that I one I like home. money. Who doesn't, folks? <laughs> and so we've gotten through our first split online play. We're now going to be having our first 
on land play here in Copenhagen. I'm excited about that. But before we do, let's show everybody the best, the top 10 of Split One Online. So many excellent plays from across the world and international top 10, Bates. International top 10, but of course, we're going to start off in North America. Squishy just retired in, in his last ever goal in RLCS. He hits his absolute world beater. Comes off the back wall. Gimmick says, in here, Squish, give me oh. that the classic oh. one, two, skip yeah. to my low, right underneath the crossbar. Let's move over to APAC. We got Sphinx, the 15-year-old phenom, doing his best Zen impression, going oh, off the ceiling boy. into the double tap. The signature shot, as CJ would say. <laughs> but Sphinx is here to play. He has put Elevate on the map, and they can be an upset team to take down some of these guys if he's playing well, and he looked good there. Moving on to number eight. We're going to move into the Middle East region, and we're going to get some twin synergy ah, here. Rojas <laughs> and Killers with the team pinch. It's just not fair. How do you they have this? the same brain. So, of course, <laughs> they're going to pinch. It's the look twin at energy. This. And look at that. It's so, so beautiful. Moving on, we're going to move into the OCE and Amphis, the beautiful corner double tap read. He's not trying for power. He's only trying for the angles. Tilts his car back, a nice, soft shot, but it's exactly what he needed to put it in that bottom left corner. And now we move to Europe, Stumpy. Yeah, we do. We've done the rest. Now it's time for the best. And Simas getting one of the most ridiculous goals we've ever seen in an F1 car. Taking it from that midfield. He completely reads Ixo. A reset off the Ugh. ceiling after getting it from the side. Nasty. And then it, straight Is it an on F1 target. or is it a lawnmower? Uh, it's, it's one of the two, but <laughs> it made magic at the end. And then there's this toxic oh! pinch. Woo! We see that when you submit to social media all the time. You're like, oh, it happens in a ranked game. This is them against Gentlemates, a major team pinches from his own post the entire way down the pitch. And it's yet again, even more EU. This time, Drali, <laughs> another brand new player. The corner wall redirect. Yeah, Juicy gets a touch, but not nearly enough on it. Catching everybody out. And the brains to go oh, for that play oh. is it's mind boggling. I don't understand how you figure out where you're going with it. And there's more, more of you! Stop. Come on. <laughs> One, two, three, oh, all the way down from the so makes It got clipped on earlier. Now it's their time to do the clip. And it was from the backboard. Started off from Seiko, over to Juicy, oh. redirects it, sweetly and perfectly finds Itachi, who then does that final keeper. Is it more? Outrageous. We all know Europe's pretty good, but they don't got the top two plays right here. We got Pam Woo! with the Psycho, the very quick save, and beating everyone on defense. That ball barely bounces. I don't even think I'm going to count it. That's in the air. Look at this Psycho. Brilliant oh, by him. Crazy. It's only two touches. I want to see you try that at all. But in the words of the great man from space, it's the sauciest salamander. Can you got Daniel on the ball right here? Air dribble, cuts up. Chronic, get lost in the oh, sauce. It's uh, over the top. Look so at the recovery. Good. Daniel, boy, that's back. Catch. Scoop catches it right oh. underneath with a pre flip air dribble. Ten moves left. No chance. Chronic is saving that. He was dazed and confused. He got low to sleep. <laughs> and Daniel just put on, on the rest right there. Seen it like 20 times. It's still disgusting. <laughs> I don't understand. I want to. I, I want to be able to. And never is no, going to happen. So, folks. So, no, you're too happen. old, wife. The split was incredible. Amazing stuff down the pipe. But let's let's talk about the event we're about to play today. We said that we were going to be playing through the Swiss. We'll be playing through rounds one and two on today's day. So like eight matches you'll have on this stream. Eight matches over on the B stream. Let's talk about the Swiss here and and, and matchups that we see in front of us here for round one. Matchups we're hoping to get. I mean. This, this could go a lot of ways. Swiss can is, is very dynamic. We have no idea what matches we're going to see. Yeah, my dream matchup, I have to say, I need to see Sam versus Mina. Mm -hmm. We're going to have Furia versus Falcons. I think everyone mm -hmm. wants to see the consolidation of talent happen in both regions. I want to see him battle Where, which, which round do you think it happens in? Honestly, round two could very yeah. easily, like if they both win their first round, which I think they're expected to, I think they're both favorites. I think that could be that 4-5 matchup in the 1-0 round. And honestly, like... That's what people want to see. They want mm -hmm. to see which region is better, Sam or Mina. Any, any other matches you got here? I feel like we're going to see so many big powerhouse matches with EU and NA and some Sam teams, maybe some Mina, in our top eight. So during the Swiss, I'm looking at OCE and I'm looking at SSA. I just want to see how that matchup ends up playing out. Power are a big question mark for me. They that is, huge. again, another one of those consolidations of teams. And it's they have now led and become the most dominant team we've seen in OCE mm -hmm. for an incredibly long time. SSA, their first time at a major. What a representation it is now 
for that region who have fought for so long and so hard it'd be great to see them face somewhere in the in the 2-1 the 1-2 where you're thinking okay a loss a loss or two see how it ended up playing out but yeah that's what i'm looking for okay so swiss an incredible format that is, we could talk about it for hours about <laughs> what could possibly happen we have talked about it for hours over the last few weeks here but we've got like i think under six minutes until we're getting to kick off Ooh, of the first gosh. match here on the a stream so we're gonna yep. keep things moving over <laughs> here uh speaking of fun things though we got lots of opinions we got lots of uh lots of hot takes across the talent team and it's fun to see if we can pick out if we can match the takes to the person so there is a mystery talent sitting with a microphone somewhere out here and we have gotten them to give us three of their takes we're going to see if we can discern who it is by their takes let's take a look at take number one and see uh what it is here kickoff goals will crush oh. at least Ooh, one team that sounds like week. johnny that's that does screams like johnny boy johnny's screams. not here yet though but i think it might be a shogun <laughs> i can see you're it measuring this because you know he's not got the shuttle yet <laughs> <laughs> he might be here he uh, that, that's, 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 that's the meta read we know he's not in the building so it's not so, so like, i do know north america does not care about their kickoff so it's probably a european just kickoffs okay okay cool. okay so we're yeah. thinking we're thinking maybe europe let's see what's what's hot take number two here so kickoff goals and every multi-team region, every multi-team region will be represented okay. in the top eight. So, oh, so, so every so region apart from Dead APAC Sen and SSA. Yes. So they're OCE fans, at least. So, yeah, so it's going to be OCE, okay. MENA, SAN, okay. EU, and NA. But then that's anti-EU, because I feel like an EU talent would mm. say all four EU are making top eight. This does sound like, this does sound like mm. CJ now. I'm, I'm feeling Ooh, CJ. Yeah. CJ did. Nah, it's not ball. CJ. I think oh, he's been learning by osmosis with the kickoff I, from Johnny. I, I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. All right, let's let's see if let's see if number it. three here brings it all together. What's the hot take number three? Team Falcons will be in the Ooh. grand final. Who's who's got who's this hot on brings Falcons me back right to now? Johnny. I, I think I'm going Johnny. CJ. I think I'm going CJ. On CJ? I, I think so. Okay. I don't because think it's of the CJ. OC love. Who do you think it is, Bates? Because uh, you're saying it's not him. It's not him. It's got to be like James Bond or something. Being, James? Being, 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 being like quizzical or something James like that. James could. I could see James Bond. What about like, could it be like Herc or something, potentially? Sneaking like, she, she's been. She's been on the more, you know, looking for the multi-region. Yeah, I mean, okay, who, who are you going with? We gotta lock it in. I'm gonna go with Herc. I'm Herc. Going with CJ. CJ. James Bond. I think I also got CJ on this one. Who is it? Show it to us. Who's my the person? My goodness, oh, guys. Oh, you guys goodness. went with the meta play. Oh, Johnny's on the late shuttle. He's not here yet. I wasn't supposed to be here this morning. It should have been a dead giveaway. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Oh. I thought he was still asleep on the couch in the crowd. <laughs> <room, man. laughs> I didn't think you were out him think like about that. it. I wasn't even thinking about you, buddy. All for four on the desk. Oh. Unreal. That was Stacks, incredible. What were you thinking about the kickoffs then? Like, what's well, the, the kickoff kickoffs point? we constantly see, even though teams get burned by kickoffs all the time, they don't make any changes. They don't make any adjustments. Mm. You see teams like K-Corp, they don't get burned on kickoffs. Why? Because they actually pay attention to detail. Other teams need to do that. And if they don't, yes, their but, their hopes and dreams will be crushed. But are you anti-EU? Because multi-region, you got to get a lot of regions into that top eight. So you think Europe's well, not going to do as well? Well, I'm, I'm as high as I've ever been on OCE. I think power okay, can pull it that. off. Mm -hmm. And then Furia. I think Furia, it, actually, Complexity even could. If they can spring a big upset oh, in round yeah. one, that could propel them. But I think one of those teams absolutely gets into top eight. Okay. 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 And you believe Falcons are going to the grand final? Oh, of course. No, you say, of course, like, you're <laughs> always running right. cool. Thank that's you. The, that's the surest bet I've got. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I'm just so upset that we were all wrong. I know. He's going to hold it over our heads. I need to look at his face anymore. He's good. Yeah. yeah. It's going to hurt. Cheers, Stacks. Bye, Stacks. Bye. Can we, get, can, we cut? can we get rid of Stacks? Yeah, good. All right. All right. <laughs> Stacks, Stacks gets to take this one home. Congratulations. <laughs> and, you know, that might be the first time that might be the first time we've done that and had nobody get it right. I feel like always one of us. That's gets. also the first time I played it's... that game. So thanks for having me, guys. Oh, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> oh, at, at least, at least so their name gets brought up. But Stax didn't even get his. <laughs> we didn't even bring him up at all. Oh, let's let's talk about um, the teams here again. If you're watching for the first time here and you don't know a lot of the teams, you're like, there's 16 teams. Who's good? Who's not? We did a power ranking from all the talent. All the talent ranked the teams one to 16 on how strong they thought they were, and then we aggregated those results. And this is the average power ranking rankings by the analyst. We will adjust this every day, so we're going to see his teams go up and down as gameplay happens. Uh, Carmen Core, not wow. a single talent ranked them lower than first. They were, were the more first undefeated, as well as, uh, unfortunately, limitless. Uh, everybody put them exactly in last it's year. It's first nature. But it, that's where they want to exactly. be, because they can only go mm -hmm. up. Can and only every, go up everybody here. is doubting them. That's exactly what they want here. Uh, but let's see. So we have G2 at four. All right. I think this is a really good list, but I think that people are going to hate us for having OG and Luminosity in 11th and 12th. Bear in mind, they're like the third and fourth best teams in North America going by the points. 
That is quite low down for them. They're only them, but four it. behind. It's very close. Ninth mm, on rule, rule they, one. I, I yeah, do nine like, through twelve is very close. Yeah, I, I do like to that say G two G 2s placement got absolutely kind of their average got messed up by one particular talent in particular. That's lesson. fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fair. No, because you put them two. Yeah, I, 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 did, I did. I did put them two. Kakarma. I mean, they went undefeated in Europe. You got to give them that credit where credits do. Are you gonna call them out? Huh? Are you gonna call? Oh yeah, it was Herc. Herc. Don't ever put G two at eight again because that is absolutely terrible. Go. You mean to tell me that there's seven teams better than G2 Strahd? That's an incorrect. I, I incorrect. do appreciate her pick because she's got Gen G higher than G2. I think me and her were the only ones to do that. And I feel like I'm taking crazy pills because every tier list I see has G2 and then nowhere is Gen G. They're on a different tier. They just beat them twice. I think, Gen, I think Gen G are too low tier. on that list. They're on the same tier at they're the very least. They're too low on that list. Yeah. <laughs> Gen G, this is crazy. They beat G2 mm -hmm. twice in the last tournament like, and they're yeah. still having to fight these NA or one team region like allegations right now. <laughs> this is yeah, crazy. So, so we'll, with every day, we will update that list. We'll come back and see how the teams move around. Should be kind of fun there, folks. We are very close to kick off for the first match here on our our stream again two streams happening simultaneously make sure you got twitch.tv slash rl esports pulled up if you want to catch some of the other matches because there are so many to play we're gonna be playing through 16 matches today across two different streams Ooh. the first four they'll be playing for round number one we'll see power taking on genji mobile one if genji wants to make sure that they are going up in the ranks they gotta beat power in this spot power is gonna do everything they can to make sure that doesn't happen g2 will be taking on the pioneers bds will be playing elevate and they will kick things off with number one versus number 16 carmen core versus limitless here though on the a stream we will have the other four matches of round one to start things off before we get into round two we will close out round one with complexity versus vitality we'll see og take on falcons i'm particularly excited about that matchup we'll see lg take on furia but let's talk about the first match of the day folks we've got two huge teams excited about them i mean it's so uh, it if that if, match is great but but real quick yeah. i want to talk about vitality and complexity let's go back to that mm. spring major when Vitality was in that upper bracket, Complexity was one goal away in that game five. AJG. Wide wow. open miss. He's not on the team anymore. Yep. Maybe that was the reason. I'm not uh, sure. But <laughs> Vitality is the big question mark yeah. here. Because obviously, back-to-back -back land champions, they're, they are world champions, and they did it in dominating fashion. But they go back to Europe and they've looked cold. It is. So. I feel like I feel like many Rocket League fans who tuned into the World Championship and have loosely caught some gameplay online at the beginning of this season mm -hmm. are probably astonished we've gotten this far into a pre-show without talking about Vitality. Well, the thing is that right now they're trying to get rid of that curse that's always on a World Championship winning team where when you've won the World Championships, they hit a slump. It's happened yep. time and time yeah. again. You see it frequently. Even major wins can then bring a team into a slump because they think, oh, we've kind of got to the end goal at this point. Yeah. And Vitality, they have haven't suffered that fate. They made this major. They didn't do what BDS did previously, but Vitality, they still have that to prove. Okay, well, we'll talk more about Vitality when their match against Complexity occurs later on today. Let's talk about the first match of the day to kick off our Copenhagen major. Gentlemates in the purple, rule one in the orange, a beautiful blend of shades here to start us off, Bates. Absolutely beautiful blend. I don't know, just want to point out the purple versus the orange. It just looks absolutely amazing. Love but of it. course, talking about the teams, Gentlemates, I call them the team, the Loaded from Heaven Squad because they made it all the way to the Grand Finals when they beat Vitality, but they haven't been playing as good since that qualifier won. But still, to get into those Grand Finals is a huge buff for them. And with the amount of fans that if they then make it to that top eight that are going to be here to support them in Europe with Gentlemen, it's one of the biggest orgs throughout Europe, especially with that French following, they're going to have a lot of support behind them. And let's not forget that Europe, they used to have five seeds that go to these majors at the World Championship the top four teams, all European. So yes, they are the EU four seed, but many could say they're a top four team in the world still. Yeah. It is so difficult to get out of that region. They did so mostly because of that qualifier one performance. They have to find that form yet again to really show on the international, like against everyone, that they can compete. But when they do go up against Europe, which they probably will mm -hmm. at some point, to take them down. So, so it's also great to see Juicy, like yeah. becoming from a team where previously they weren't making majors all the time and then joining two land regulars in Seiko and Atachi. The, the, the fact that he has been given an opportunity like this and has then been thriving since then. I've absolutely, I mean, loved watching it. And Atachi, what a turn up he's had. Yeah, and this gentleman's squad, of listen, they haven't had their huge performance from qualifier one to qualifier two, qualifier three, but they were they were only losing to the best of the best. Yeah. Losing to BDSs, losing to Vitalities, losing to Carmines. So if they're going up
up against a squad like Rule when they should be confident. And that man Seiko has always been a landscape, but has never performed bad once. I don't expect it here. It, it, it's in the grand final. It's before. crazy to think that this is sort of a, a leftover style roster of players yeah. just kind of put together. And you have Seiko, one of the legends of the open era on that team. Such a strong roster. Keep your eye on him, folks. On the other side of things, though, let's talk about Rule 1. A lot of the hype this season mm. from the Middle East has been about their other team, Falcons, here. Rule 1 trying to change that narrative. Rule 1 is trying to change that narrative. A big switch. Just in case you're just tuning in from the World Championship. I don't know where you've been, but the Falcons are Rule 1. They had basically a trade. Kylan and Ahmed went and joined now pull on Rule 1 while the Twins went over to Falcons. And Rule 1 ever since, they've been playing solid. They have good offense, but they haven't been able to match Falcons just yet. They've always been playing that second fiddle, but by doing that, they've got to the Grand Finals every single time. They're incredibly consistent in that. It's that the Falcons have put them to the post. This is a proven ground for them. They are the only other team where, if you are mentioning London previously, bear in mind that Ahmad and Khaled, they were two of the players on Falcons who made it to the Grand Finals for the first ever time for a non-EU or NA region. And that's what it's about, international experience on the land stage. Those two have it in spades. So they're gonna use that to try and carry their new teammate, uh, Nalpo, like he was banned for a year. Then he comes out. He joins actually Falcons for Gamers 8. They get third place. And then that trade happens mm -hmm. uh, at that point. So he's been a player that everyone's going to watch out for. When he's got the ball, he can make magic happen. Like if there's a chance that they make a run through the Swiss, it's probably on him. But it is his first RLCS land. Let's see how he does. He's arguably the best player in mean. I know a lot of people tip their hat, tip their cap to TRK or maybe or Wasm, even even Killers. But now, Paul, I mean, he's averaging 460. He is the catalyst for yep. their squad. He's only a rookie, only 16, I believe, or so. He's really great, and if they're gonna be able to match this gentleman squad with Coach Eversax right there on your screen, he's gonna have to absolutely perform in his first ever all CS Lance series. They're gonna have to perform, but I mean, rule one, and come, you're talking, talking about a region that puts perpetual pressure on themselves. The Middle East mm -hmm. have such high expectations of themselves. They're one of the, they're the first region that when they first showed up, they're like, we're here to win. We're not just here to make top four, we're not just here to make top eight, we're here to win the whole thing. And you know it eats at all of them, that they haven't done it yet. So rule one, I expect to be coming out of the gates hot right away. And also we talk about what you say about the regions. With Mina, they were the only other region that was in a top four at the Spring Major. Like yep. out of the top eight teams that we've had in the most, two most recent RLCS lands, only one of them has not been Europe and it was rule one. Yes, it was a different squad, but it's still sure. from that region. But also two of those members made top eight of worlds as a Falcon as yeah. well. <laughs> so they know how to perform when it matters and they're always going to be in that conversation of when will they win it? Yep. And maybe mm -hmm. it's time now, but on the same time, you're talking about Europe right now, and Europe is on fire. With a long off season, you expect that gap to get wider because they're practicing versus one another and getting better. But with Mina, they can at least practice them a bit on higher pain. They do. They, they do. do practice against them. Well, so and, and that rule, might help. Rule one gets to practice against Falcons, and they get to practice against Falcons under pressure. They make the yep. grand finals against Falcons all the time. It's an excellent roster there. But you do look at Europe and the way that they can practice against. It seems like just about anybody in the top eight, and it's a good level up for your team. It's it's a, it is such a such a different situation there. We'll see how that translates to on land play, in person play. These booths sitting mm. right next to each other. The players right there next to each other. Chat. Let us know who you think is going to win. Hashtag M8 for the general. Mates, hashtag R1 for Rule 1. We'll make our predictions up here as well. We already made the predictions in the back. Yep. Stumpy, you start us off. Who you got? I've got to start it off with how I'm probably going to be going for the rest of the event. Gentle mates here for me. Uh, I, I back them seeing as they've come out of what I consider a harder region, and it's against Mina's number two. Gentle mates should have it. Okay. I agree with you, Stumpy. I yeah. think with Europe, I'm going to pick them until they start losing to international for competition. All four? All four European teams I will over pick anybody? I them against any uh, international game, very likely. There might be, like, maybe a G2 versus, like, a General Mates. Maybe uh -huh. I go G2. But for the most part, Europe was top four worlds. Until proven otherwise, I'm going to keep picking yeah. them. So I'm going okay. Gentle Mates. That's two for Gentle Mates. Two for Gentle Mates on the board right there. Gibbs and y'all both have interesting thoughts. Okay, you're going to pick EU the whole time. I already know EU will. That's no doubt. <laughs> no, but speaking of this matchup right here, Mina, Mina, Mina versus um, EU, I'm going to go with this, the Florida from Heaven squad. Give me Gentle Mates. <laughs> I think they got a little bit of sauce in them. I think they could be the real one squad that plays too much defense. So I also am going gentle mates in this situation, and we have crafted a special coin. <laughs> we got to coin. See, do we actually know what's going on? We're gonna flip the coin and see uh, see if we can predict better than a coin across the entire event here. So blue oh, is uh, gentle mates, okay. orange is the uh, the rule one here. We're just gonna flip it like this. Whoa. 
and that is go. that is a uh, rule one. All yes. right, rule one so for the, the coin. coin could go in yep. the lead here. So we'll see. And we'll see. The coin chat, would literally be winning. We'll also be uh, keeping track of chat throughout mm -hmm. the weekend too. Yeah. So. I'd also well, like to mention that we had a coin on the EU show, and it nearly beat Shogun. It's true. So <laughs> we'll awesome. see. We'll see. Can, can, wow, can, can the entire team wow. be better than, better than a coin Ooh. here? Chat wow. has got rule one on this one. Fan okay. favorite. So we all, as the professionals up here, predicted General Mace, but the chat's got rule one. I was going to ask him what rule one needs to do to win, but we don't have time there ready for us to play the game, folks. I know you guys have been waiting for the start of this game. I've been waiting, too. It's finally time for us to play in person, folks. The Rocket League Championship Series Copenhagen Major kicks it off with General Mace versus rule one. Two hundred and twenty-eight. That is the amount of days it's been since the World Championship, since we last saw international competition. And we're kicking it all off with Europe taking on Mina. We have general mates on one side, Cole. We got rule one on the other. Swiss. It's huge days and every single match will be broadcast across this stream and of course the secondary stream as well. An absolute gargantuan amount of Rocket League. It's great to be here. It has been a while as we said. I think we've harped on it but finally we'll get answers to so many questions throughout the offseason. So we are currently getting all of the players in which will just, I was going to say increase the nerves but Look at the gentle mates right now. They seem pretty chill about all this, you know? They're still enjoying themselves, still smiling, much more serious on the side of rule one. And I think that the tech issues will forget about that because these guys are ready to go. We are getting underway, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first major of the season. Welcome to Copenhagen, who will be the team to get the job done. I'm so excited. A beautiful city, beautiful country as well. Shout out to Denmark for making us all feel welcome. But down here on the pitch, these players will not want their opponents to feel welcome at all. They will be desperate to make a huge stand from the off to make that statement. And as for rule one, that's what they need to do. Being second all season, but that is not what they want. And this start from Nalpo could change that at the start. Here he goes. What an entrance. Well, there we go. Early start from that man, Nalpo. The best player, the MVP for rule one in the first split online. And I'll tell you what, if he can bring that form to land. He's got the some, well, I guess one of the most experienced duos, the most experienced duo coming out of Mina alongside him. Yeah, it seems that these guys have been playing together forever. Ahmad and Khalid and Alpo could well be the exact player they need. That spark, the young spark, just to bring them forwards, mechanically speaking, and we've already seen it. Not a bad way to have your RLCS land debut. Six seconds in, you get a stunning flip reset and get it over the top of another gentle base player. It could be two. Nalpo, what a start from him. I mean, he's just got that pop-off potential and that is scary signs. It's only early, but when Naupo is in form, look out the rest of the world. Khaled works that ball forward. Rule one, the best possible start. As you said, it wasn't quite the, the first split that they'd want, albeit they did get the major spot. They locked that in. But it, the story in that region was all about Falcons. They could not get really near them, couldn't get close to them, albeit that first event. And now they've got to worry because Seiko, the world champ of his own right, General Mates get there first of the major. Yeah, got to remember there's some firepower down there on the EU side of things as well. It was Atachi doing what Atachi does best, staring down O'Khalid, not letting him escape. And Seiko did what had to be done and just put it on target. One, one, that's a great response there from General Mates, a team that, well, gee, didn't they come out swinging in that first event in Europe, getting into top two. All the talk was about how impressive they looked. Really getting the job done over K-Corp. Since then, they, well, they, they kept their consistent top four runs, but I feel like we never really saw that a true peak form. They certainly had some hiccups along the way. The Swiss stage was scary at the best of times. Going to round five, here they are at the major. And as so many of the teams here have, have spoken about, Cole, I mean, you, you just forget about those online results. LAN is a different ball game and certainly tightens up the competition. Yeah, I mean, these three have not played together. I guess most of these teams have a trio that won't have played together at LAN. Vitality, one of the obvious ones who have stuck together in the long old off-season. Will it be an advantage? Will these players sync up instantly when now they're next to each other? You know, I guess a lot of them have had boot camps, which will help, should help. Situations like this one, but the stakes go higher. It gets even scarier than it's always been. Well, one have made a decent fist of this first game so far. They're coming forwards again. O'Kalic shoots. Saved there by Juicy on the goal line. 
And Alpo's coming in now. I think this is important for Gentle Mace, just to make sure that when Rule 1 do come forwards, they're just staying steady because they will have their chances. Yeah, you see neither side really looking to overcommit that third man. Sitting a little bit deeper, but you tend to get that in game one and at a major of all places. You have to expect it, but the demos are coming through. It's a phenomenal save there, just but more follow-up shots. Oh, this is the Rule 1 special from last season, but they don't. Hang on, Attachi gets the second, and Gentle Mates, they grab the lead. O'Callaghan let this one bounce. Was that the correct decision? Could he have got it before? Oh, he was stuck sideways. A horrible position to be in. Attachi sniffing around. Wasn't going to miss that one. And look at the smile on his face. Gentle Mates very quickly feeling themselves at home here in Copenhagen. Yeah, all the talk has been about this European region, albeit the number four seed, but still, they are a seriously good side. I know the screen results, we always talk about them, but. They are looking pretty good right now. What can Rule 1 do? Two minutes left. It's actually just keeping that ball out. Trying to lock in at this first game, perhaps. More pressure, though. Rule 1 certainly feels like they've had some more chances than Gentle Mates. But that clear will see the end of the attack. Gentle Mates very comfortable in a close, hard-fought battle of a game like this one. They'll know. They do have the offensive firepower to break through when it matters. Juicy thought about going for that touch off from Seiko's flip reset. Decided against it in the end, showing more patience, Gentle Mates. Rule 1 punished them, not just yet, because Seiko's coming forward again. He's been a bit of a difference maker so far in Game 1. Him and Itachi, the two players who stood up for me, really. But here's the third. It's Juicy onto the backboard. He gets it straight down. Nalpo makes the save. Seiko's coming in. It's on target. And it's three. Phenomenal placement there from Seiko, but it was set up there. Juicy, free backboard. Just gets one and worries out two of the Rule 1 defense. Just Almed just throwing himself at it, but the top left was open. Cali couldn't get back in time. Gentlemates, 3-1. After conceding that first goal, they have looked very, very strong. Yeah, Rule 1, I mean, for the first couple of minutes, they were really in this one. But since then, Gentlemates have just stepped up half a gear. And up to now has been enough to be able to keep Rule 1 at arm's length. But of course, they're capable of changing that one. Now, though, another flip reset. Armad is brought in. To be a little bit quicker right now, Rule 1. A minute and 10 seconds left. Still plenty of time to make something happen, but that will change quickly, especially if Seiko shooting. It goes just wide, and Rule 1 can come forward if they can just get that second ball. Yeah, they need to work it out of this end, though, because Gentlemen, it's their offense. Certainly looking locked in right now, Seiko. That's great. You can see Armad circling for a demo. Rule 1 trying to force something to happen, but it's just going to be wide open for Seiko. That's four on the board for the mates. It's that world champion quality right there from Seiko. That extra little touch wasn't read by the Rule 1 defender. And that truly was a touch of class. And look at that, the, the smug little smile to his side. I really feel like gentle mates are having a lot of fun right now on this pitch. Yeah, they're looking so composed. And, you know, we talk a lot about the boot camps. These guys have been competing to get every single regional in person. You can see these vibes just as strong as ever. But now, Po, all of a sudden, open net, which is and interesting, Juicy got out 50 and Seiko, well, he's just completely <laughs> left the ball and done a little bit of a drive-by. Now Bo says that's the easiest goal I'll score. They do get one back and there's still time. Yeah, Seiko just wasn't expecting the ping-pong mode there as the ball was flying all over the place. One goal from kickoff could make things very interesting. Khaled might have a chance on this ball, instead it bounces away from him. The bounce not favouring Rule 1 on this occasion. Seiko gets the fifth reset. Falls to Juicy. This could kill it, and it does. It's 5 2. Gentle Mates refusing to panic. Yeah, just when you thought perhaps the comeback was on. There we go again. And it's Seiko just being that facilitator. Just forces a fantastic 50 in the middle. And there it is. Juicy doing the rest. A player that's well joined Gentle Mates. Obviously, he's joining a world champ, and you've got Itachi as well. Major champion. And he's certainly fitting in like a glove. Had a phenomenal online split. We saw the, the highlight clips that Juicy was scoring. If he can bring that to land. This team can take down anyone. Yeah, Juicy, a player who had a tough start with Moist Esports last season, especially on LAN. At times, he looked a little bit like a rabbit in the headlights. But since then, in the offseason, really got his head down, got to work. And he looks so comfortable now at this stage. Very much a top, top, top tier EU player. And his gentlemates are going to win the first game of Copenhagen by three goals, unless there's one more for Rule 1. It's saved on the goal line. Nothing for Rule 1 to take with them into Game 2. Juicy's going to try and kill this one. But Seiko keeps it up, actually. Gentlemates hungry for more, but Rule 1 trying to get something going themselves. It ends. Gentlemates, business as usual is what they will claim. Yeah, it was a, it was a strong start for the Gentlemates, albeit Rule 1 getting that first goal on the board. But as we said, they look comfortable. We saw the player cams there. They're having fun. They're smiling. 
And they're looking really strong here in this first round of the Swiss. As we said, first game on the mainstream, but there is a B stream as well, an alternate stream, if you would, and that's K-Corp currently 1-0 up, and they're 2-0 in the second game against Limitless. Tune into that. This uh, game, 500 points plus for every single player on wow. Gentle Mace Alpine. So all of them involved in every way. And it's, what's particularly impressive to me is that Rule 1 started so well, not just an Alpo goal, which was a stunner, but the next two minutes, they were in not control of the game, but certainly equal. And then something just clicked for Gentle Mace. Yeah, they just found their form. And defensively, Rule 1, where I guess you could say it's been their strong suit, certainly against Falcons oh, back in Mina. They just fell apart a couple of times there for Cole. Cole, it's great to be here. Hey. It's great to be here. Hello, everybody. Look How are we go. doing? Look at this. The Cope. Bring the Cope to Copenhagen. That's it's G2. Beautiful. Bring it the is NA Cope. so beautiful. And Talk we have got four days filled with Rocket League. The crowd coming here in a couple of days. So for all the players right now that are already a little bit freaked out by being at Alain, that will amplify if they can make it to the quarterfinal stage. It does not get easier when you're at Alain. Yeah, it certainly doesn't, but it's exciting. That's for sure. And certainly less pressure when you're commentating rather than playing. Uh, certainly yeah. don't. And feel, uh, feel a little bit for these players out there. Certainly so much on the line. And as we said, 228 days since that final of the World Championship. Since the final day of the World Championship. There's a lot on the line. It's that's a Ooh, fantastic skim. Is he just found the angle? You're kidding. Oh. No respect from Rule 1 at all. They said he won't have this. And third man creeping up. It's almost a, well, it's not, it's obviously not a psycho, but he got it set up for him. Nice little redirect, gentle mate. I love that. Good enough to earn the finger wag as well. You know it's a good goal when you give it a little real life celebration. Certainly the best we've seen so far at the Copenhagen Major. We'll see where that one lands in the, the top threes or top tens or whatever we have on future pre-shows, but definitely one we'd like to see again. Rule one, however, will not want to see that again. They will not want to see themselves be fooled by this gentle mate's mechanics. Juicy goes underneath this time. It's almost two. Atachi's coming in. Can't quite double up. Real important time here for rule one. They have to avoid the collapse. Yeah, but it was a smart touch from Atachi. He just kept that ball in, knew that the shot wasn't on, and is what we see from Europe. We're on Forbidden Temple. I've literally just oh. realized we're on Forbidden Temple right now. We're currently playing Rocket League in the RLCS, and we're on Forbidden Temple. Uh, yeah, yeah. It hasn't been, it, it hasn't been about for a while, it's, but it's here. Well, it's, that's true. I, yeah, exactly, I know. My brain was like, wait a minute, what's, what's one different, but two the same as what it used to be? I've got nightmares from this map. I miss one of the worst open nets I've ever seen, and that's all I can think about when I play <laughs> oh, in this no, moment. It's a phenomenal map, and Juicy has to get the touch. <laughs> Does so, can rule one. This time, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a turntable situation. Is that's another opening? And Seiko once again has gone walkabout in defense, driving up the near post and just not expecting the shot. Huge demo from Ahmad, but yeah, Seiko maybe he was uh, fooled by the smoke screen. Who knows? But thankfully, Khaled didn't make the same mistake as our esteemed caster CJ over here and put the open net on target. Yeah, phenomenal, and that's uh, just making the most of opportunity. That's what lands about. You just cannot give anyone a chance and. That's what a lot of the teams talking about. I know the Power Boys in particular just speaking about their boot camp. Their screams, oh. that's almost in. Would have been barred down. Rule one, keeping the pressure on. But it's all about if you make one mistake, the level of competition. I mean, it's just going to be a goal every day of the week. As you see there, a freebie for Itachi. And that aggression from Rule One not paying off. I understand what Rule One are doing. They're trying to make sure they're not playing too slow. They're not being caught behind. They're not going to let themselves down by being too passive. But I think it's fair to say that third man is just creeping forward a little bit and underestimating the gentleman's attack right now. Yeah, it's not quite in the right spot for that. But you do expect it. Round one of the Swiss. It's a long game and attack. Oh, what a double! I didn't think he would get the shot. Couldn't get around it. He had other ideas. Double off the backboard. Three. On the board for the gentle mates. It's an explosion oh. of gentle mates as well. We haven't seen them popping off like this, like the opening qualifier number one back in the EU days when they made top two, banked the majority of that points and made it here relatively safely in the end. The gap from fourth to fifth was a fair few points. Rule one have to counter Ooh. that. I almost can. Armad's coming in. Armad scores. What a game so far. Forbidden Temple, that's where the matchups are. Yeah, it's he's certainly providing right now. Now, but look at that. He almost scored, but he's beaten two. And how many times do we see that in Mina during this first split? Setting it up there. Ahmad does the rest. And rule one, getting it back. But every single time it feels like they get close. We saw it in that last game. Gentlemen, just find a response. Can rule one level it up and just start to put some doubt in this 
his teammates line up. They're certainly happy to play with a man in front of the ball, searching for those bumps and demos, trying to interrupt and intercept the gentleman's defense. Now, Bo tries to go over the top of Tachi. Almost does. Seiko then diving in once more. The demo opens it all up. Somehow that ball stays out. And again, it's pushed to the post. Seen for all the world, that would be 3 3. But Gentlemates just about keep that slender lead. Yeah, that post was the fourth defender there for the Gentlemates. They were trying to wedge it in rule one. They couldn't. It's still dangerous. Almost there. It's another phenomenal touch. Gentlemates working it out. Khaled. Awkward into the corner. Now Po looking to turn. There's two in the corner though. It's always awkward here. Rule one have to work it out. That's a great bump. Now with a pop made. as well. Does that release Khaled? He takes it up, just throws it. Can Seiko get there? Just reaches, but still on the offense. Great drop down. Ahmed, weak shot. Does the bump come through? It's actually clears. Rule one though, tough to read for gentlemates right now. The touches are unusual. Just starting to put a little bit of pressure on the gentlemates defense. But resets like this away from the back line from Juicy. So important for them. So is the turnaround. Now Poe is everywhere right now. Khaled waves, so Khaled gets a great touch. Can he get one more? Seiko gets a little nudge on him, and it is enough to change the perspective of the game. Juicy shoots, but now Poe will get it to the side. It's a great demo. Van Khaled as well, but it's actually with a 50. We had to kill a little bit of time here. Just above 90 seconds left. Backboard touch, double commit again, rule one. They're going to fake it out. Juicy's going to wait down. Be the smart decision in the end. Grabs the 100 boost, rule one. Khaled trying to fake it. There's another touch. Tachi working it forward. And now Poe. Do something here. There's another 50. More touches coming through the fake. Is anyone across? Khaled not quite there for the shot, and it does go wide. We've seen a couple of these fake attempts that gentlemates are not falling for, just charging towards the ball. I don't know what rule one shenanigans are like. Itachi can't quite get the next touch. So rule one can come forward again. One more minute. An absolute age of time, depending on how they play it. Juicy shouldn't be able to get all the way to the goal this time. Narpo's touch is slightly weak, but actually it works out well for Khaled. Over Seiko, oh. who's arriving? It's just Atachi. Oh, Juicy does get the clear rule one. Probably squandered a good chance there. Juicy off the corner. More awkward defense. It's been really a story of this series for both sides. What can rule one do? It's a nice beat from now. Poe with coming through. A few nervy moments here for general mates as they're trying to hold on to this lead. Now Poe working it forward. Rule one. Can they launch some sort of attack here in the last 30 seconds? Khaled with the beat. Ahmed takes it upstairs. Can he get one more attachy as well? More pressure for Rule 1. The general mates, they're hanging on. They've completely stepped up of Rule 1. Doing so much good work now in attack, but they just have to get that goal. It's Khaled's turn. He takes one touch. He goes upwards. Attachi's watching him, waiting. Ahmad in the center. Can he get it towards him? He can, but it's so close to the wall. That's the touch they needed. Now Poe's in. Everyone's missed it. It's fakes all round, and there's 10 seconds left. He just didn't believe in the bump. This might be one last chance. Ahmad, he's got to find now Poe. What can he do? Puts it up. Seiko, backboard read. Drops it down. Khaled can't. Quite attack it straight away. Just trying to pop it up. Juicy's there as well. He's looking for the ground. Zahmad might just get 50 it out of things. General mates, 2-0. Looking very solid, but you could tell that they were just trying to hang on for dear life in that last minute. For sure, there was definitely something there for all one. A blueprint that they can take forward in the rest of this series. They'll need to win three games on the bounce now if they are to avoid going 0-1 in the Swiss. But I think early stage than the Swiss. To what extent would you say performances matter not just as much, but are incredibly important? Yeah, I think that the, the Swiss stage, look, you don't really know how the matchups are going to go. That's why this thing is so hard to predict. You just, there's so many commuta... Uh, I was going to say permutations. Or <laughs> commutations. Or, or <laughs> combinations. And I just oh, said, nice. I said a double whammy. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, you certainly don't know, but first round is so important, especially when it's been, as we said, so long since we've had international competition. It's almost sending a message to the rest of the comp if you are able to take down someone from another region early. Gentlemen as well, they're defending. I mean, that's a lovely moment of play. The double save there, fantastic. But in general, they were much shakier than they were in that first game. There were some whiffs, there were some mistakes, yeah. and they were definitely being bypassed by rule one so much more as that game went on. Well, it is now up to rule one. The ball is in their court, and not only to try and reverse sweep, but games, individual game wins are so important. We talk about the seeding. We talk about the randomness of Swiss. If you lose 3-0 versus a 3-2, can mean a world of difference into that matchup in the next round and throughout the entirety of the Swiss. Here we go, though. Game three. Is it going to be a gentleman sweep, or can rule one show up to the party? Gentlemen's already... Uh... Had to, had to let Gentlemates win that, sorry, Gentlemates won that kickoff from two players delaying going forward. It looked for a second like they'd have something of a chance, but not quite to be on that occasion. They still, though, have some pressure. It's actually, that's the flip. Ahmad sends it long. Now, Poe didn't want to get an own goal, that's for sure. So he just sends it anywhere except his own net. 
And it's worked out pretty well. Rule one, Survivor, bit of an onslaught early doors here in game three. Yeah, there's still their defense. Just It's a little bit questionable. There's a lot of double commits coming through and a lot of waste of boost. Even there, the nerves coming through, you're certainly seeing it. We didn't see it as much from Rule one online. They were very happy to play that defensive counter-attack style, particularly against, obviously, Falcons, one of the most aggressive and paciest teams in the world. But early doors and it's only been two games it's been a little bit shaky another double commit two players ruin on the backboard this time now is going to be able to work it out that's what it's about what they can do down the other end not just in defense yeah we haven't seen them take the lead since six seconds into game one rule one but now they're more confident they're starting to grow into this one if they can do it again they'll be able to keep gentle mates out for the next you know 30 seconds or so and give themselves that platform First, they have to take it. Seiko up against Armad. Seiko takes the touch. Khaled is charging him down. Khaled manages to send it to the side. So for now, Rule 1 dealing with this sustained gentle mace pressure and doing it very well. Their defending's improved a lot. Yeah, they're certainly parrying it off. They're just, their trouble right now is getting a hold of this ball, getting possession and working the ball down at the other end. This could be the first chance. What can Alpha do? I love that pop-up, trying to bring that midfield space. But Juicy is ready for the touch now, but with a beat out. Pushing forward, Itachi working it there. Gentlemen, it's been looking really comfortable. We're talking about rule one, and that's a phenomenal pass to Juicy. Backboard, double, drop down, no one there. Itachi just going to back off. They have been pretty happy to try and keep this ball in. Now Bone out down the other oh. end. Quick reset, Juicy. Just blocks him on the backboard. The attacks, they look impressive from Rule 1, but we're not seeing that sustained offense. What I am liking, though, from Rule 1 is the defending, playing out from the back. Armad finding Khaled. Khaled doing the same towards Nalpo, not panicking with his clearances and sending it straight back to Gentlemates. And if they can just make the angle and maneuver the ball to where they need it, it could definitely lead to a counter-attack for them. Well, that double commit wasn't quite as clean. Khaled up against Seiko. Seiko won it for a second, but Khaled got the second touch. All importantly, Itachi in the corner now against Khaled. Armad is waiting, wondering what to do with this one. In the end, his old teammate Khaled can somewhat take it away, but right now it's turned into the latter. They can't clear their lines. Gentlemates moving forward, squeezing more as the seconds tick on. Yeah, they're dominating the midfield, and it honestly feels like a bit of a mean a grand final right now. Mates are just all over Rule 1, who are just really just, they're setting up in there. They're doing it pretty well to Had keep it up. But, at this, at least. Yeah, 100%, but they're really just waiting for Gentlemates to overcommit. But you just see how they're dominating this midfield. Is this the best chance? It's a phenomenal pass. Oh. You'll be a goal with Seiko. Just floating across with the pre-jump. More pressure here. Rule 1, the first time. It's taken three minutes for them to get some sustained offense, but... Mates, hang on, Seiko, so impressive. That's exactly what they wanted, though. Khaled had to put that one away. So much of the goal to aim for. You missed that chance down the other end. Seiko gets it across your own net. Khaled up against Juicy. More good play from Juicy. Sends it back into the center. Looking like this game is going to finish very much as it started with Gentlemates having all the pressure until Ahmad gets it to Nalpo. Is the finish better this time? It's so much better. The counter attack is complete. They've had two shots, but that's all they need. Look at the extra touch. Beats Itachi. And then it's just juicy in net. Phenomenal. Phenomenal shot and rule one. Well, they have done it. The counter attacks. General mates just backed off a little bit. Rule one walks straight into it. Phenomenal start. And it's only 90 seconds left after all that defense. They've got reward down the other end. Now they just need to hang on. And now if they can hang on, then gentle mates certainly will overcommit. Desperate for a goal now. They'll want to finish this one in three. It's missed by Juicy on purpose for Itachi. Seiko's waiting. Itachi tries to get it around the corner. Unable to do so on that occasion. Every touch right now for Rule 1, absolutely massive. Armad coming in against Juicy. Khaled's missed this one, but he's got away with it. Oh, there's still a minute left, and they've got no boost. There's the kick Whoa. out again. Now Po coming up huge. He's got the goal for them, doing it down the other end. Can they hang on? 50 seconds. It's another poor touch. Rule 1 are just trying to keep this ball out. Juicy. Watching that one down, and there's the Huge. clear again now, Poe. What a touch. Sent to the other side for it, but it was so worth it. But here comes Seiko. He fakes it again. Itachi shoots. Two of them, the Nippo safe. Seiko onto the back, but Juicy, he's too far forwards. He has to do a three-point turn just to get towards the ball. That's exactly what Rule 1 wanted. Seiko stabs it forward. Now, Poe, more than even to that one. 25 left. They've just got zero boost, but they're hanging in there. Seiko trying to get involved. Khaled. Just get some sort of a skim touch, no boost. Another pass across, General Mates off the corner. Um, Ahmad has to go, he's been 50s. It is going to be the shot, no. Another clear coming through. Rule one, 10 seconds left. They've played the perfect game. Their game, counter attack, Lovely Rocket win. League. And they might just be able to get their first game of the Copenhagen Major. Just needs to hit the ground now. The ball, a touchy no boost, works it down. Juicy, is it going to be a zero second magic? No, there's that man. The MVP of Rule one.
Naopo. And breathe. That was not the cleanest offensive performance you will ever see by any means from rule one. They tempted gentlemates in with some uh, slightly awkward touches. But my goodness, a 1-0 win will do the world of good for their confidence and their belief in themselves. A massive, massive game there for rule one. Look at that, 10 shots to two as well. I mean, if this isn't just the rule one brand, it's their style of Rocket League. And it just, it feels like it's more effective on land as well. Defense on land is just, just to add so much you if you can. Got to though. Yeah, but they do finally get the chance. And there it is. It's a great setup from Ahmad. Now Poe has been that player to be beating players, but... I, I think whoever is running this highlights package is on the Rule 1 uh, payroll because there was a lot more chance the Gentlemates had there. That made it look like Rule 1 had a, a clean, comfortable game against Gentlemates, but that's not what I saw, CJ. No, it was complete and utter chaos, but see there, they had eight saves. Gentlemates only had one, hey, but again, it's all about quality over quantity. That was the story of that game. I still think that Rule 1, I, I, I don't think it's a recipe they need, they, they can rely on, uh, because, I mean, there were so many chances there for Gentlemates to get one back. Let's see what happens here, though. Does this put a bit of pressure on the Europeans? Or will they be able to lock this one out in four? I feel like it depends on how long it takes Gentlemates to get their next goal, because obviously they weren't able to do so in the last game. If they get an early goal, early doors here, happy days, it doesn't matter. But if this one starts to get to two minutes left, one minute left, and they still haven't got their next one, maybe they'll start getting a little bit angsty. We're about to find out here. Off to Utopia Dusk. I know you're all about the maps. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about this map? I'm a big fan. Love I'm Utopia. Fan. Yeah, love it all. Big I'm hoping to see a game, a game five as well. You know, I want to see Champions Field as well. That's all obviously the map that everyone wants to see. Yeah, it would be, uh, it would be a perfect start and probably a fitting start to the first major of the season. There's Khaled, who's just setting up his own double touch into his own net. Now, but very awkward. There's there the great is. shot, and you just see it facing backwards near post. Sejo saw that coming the whole way and just. Placement, that's all he needed on that shot. That's a glorious play there from Juicy to get the assist, though, to land his car in such a way to be able to just dribble straight up. Do so much work with the ball from an awkward position. And that may well be the difference. These snippets of play from Juicy, they weren't quite there in the last game. And this one, though, 50 seconds in, he's managed to get it done for his team, with Seiko getting the finish. Well, one coming forward again, they'll have to now. Khaled is bypassing the center. He comes towards Ahmad, who's some recovery action of his own to get that one towards the center. Now, now post coming in, this is what rule one need. He has statistically been their best player so far in the, uh, in the online split. And he's shown it in patches so far today as well. How desperate will they be for him to get on the ball? Yeah, there's another 50 in midfield, but it's juicy again. And this has been where the game's been won for the most part for the gentlemen's barring that last game is that midfield control. That second man, so important. You see it so often in Europe where they're able to follow each other up out of net and into the attack. Here we go again. Ahmed with a nice touch. Juicy patrolling that midfield. Just popping it up for Itachi. He's going to work that ball forward. This time, gentlemen, just having to clear the ball down the other end. Seiko up against O'Khaled with clean 50-50 for both players, but now Poe will be able to come away with the ball all by himself. We know he's got that flip reset button. He goes to the backboard. He shoots it. What a save that is from Seiko. Can Ahmad turn it in? Not quite. Khaled, surely? Yes, he bundles it home. So much work had to be done, but there's the equaliser. Oh, now Poe did so much work and juicy. Just oh. re-jumping top ends for the shot. It was far down. A couple of defensive mistakes and a little bit of panic from the general mates that we haven't seen previously. Yeah, the physics engine was put into overdrive there of all those subtle slight ball touches. And there's oh another one as well, a huge pitch from Juicy. Is anyone coming in to turn this one into an assist? No, it's saved by Khaled. Yeah, the defensive rock for so long in the meter reach. Another flip reset. Seiko wants another one. General mate's not happy with it, but they've overcommitted a touch. This can happen. And things are starting to get frustrating. No and there it is again, another open net. Rule one are starting to turn the tide. Yeah, and the smiles have well and truly now been wiped off the gentlemen's faces. They're in game mode. They're leaning forwards in their chair at this point, literally in Itachi's case. Suddenly this is getting very, very real and they have to step back up themselves. They've still got, I would say, the added little bit of quality, but momentum well and truly with the meaner side. And how often does just the mental side play such more of a, it's, it's so much more of a factor, I feel like, on land. Every little momentum swing just gets amplified in this sort of scenario in a live offline setting, but well, rule one. Looking phenomenal, but again, Lovely. there it is. A quick counter attack. It is juicy. That middle man, he's looking for that link up play. 
and he has just caught out the defense there, outpacing, faking underneath the pre-jump from Naupo. But he just got caught out last minute. Gentle mates focusing on these huge clearances, walloping the ball around Utopia. And it's working out so well for them. Maybe that swings the pendulum back in their favor. The kickoff does go towards rule one. In the end, though, it's Seiko who sends it long. Itachi waiting for this one as Juicy does go for a pre-jump. Not quite, just waiting, chilling, biding their time for now. That does allow rule one in for a couple of seconds at least. Are any of these players going to be able to really grab the ball by the horns? Turn it in their favor. So far, a bit of boomable seems to have emerged. Yeah, but I'm liking the touches coming through, especially that one there to set up. Juicy, Ooh. almost the double, and the shot is wide arm at pre jump. On the end of the roof of the net as well. Gentlemen, certainly looking a little less comfortable as they did in the first couple of games. Itachi, though, goes upstairs now, but with the pre jump, I mean, he has looked phenomenal the entire series. For rule one, setting up goals, creating saves. He has been caught out a couple of times here. Oh. The defensive end, and that's a huge bump coming through. Clean not a goal. That would have been an absolute beauty. Love a bump goal. But for now, it remains 2 2, and it's nervy still. Our oh, man up against Atachi. Atachi doesn't get a touch on the ball. Juicy does, though, and he goes to the ceiling. He's got his flip. What can he do with it? Send it towards the goal, but Khalid read it to a T, sending it forward to Naupo. Up against Atachi. Beautiful first touch. Great second one as well. Seiko read it well. Gentlemates need to get this ball out of their half. Seiko has control of it, and he gets the flick, and that is sublime defending from the Frenchman. Yeah, he's done so well to work it down the other end. Didn't use much boost either, let his teammates get set up, and I mean, Juicy might be able to get a touch. It's a great demo, though. Now Seiko has to track back. He is third man. Does a free set? No, it goes low. Attach, he should be able to get the free clear, but now, Poe, again, I mean, he's been a pre-jump specialist, and it might just work out off the backboard. Seiko there, it's an awkward touch. He's oh. letting in this rule one offense. Might have just got away with that one, but again, these touches aren't the best here from Gentlemates. They're keeping it out. But rule one are keeping the heat on. It's all rule one, all the way down to the end. Ahmad used the demo to his advantage, but can't quite flick it past Atachi. Ahmad's looking for a bump, he doesn't quite get it. Now Poe misses the ball as well. Does that let in Atachi to clear this ball away? Ahmad takes a turn. Seiko to the side. Perfect touch from him. Now it's Juicy's turn. No boost though. This time Atachi does pre jump and he gets his flip reset, but it's wide. Yeah, this is everything now. 15 seconds can rule one. Force that game five. Certainly be fitting for this series right now. Raw one with so much momentum. The gentle mates, they stepped up. Saw what they did in Europe. Now Poe now working at Ford. Are we going to get the first OT of this series? You betcha. Game number four. Will we go the distance? Can gentle mates close it out? So close now for Gentlemates for going 1-0 in this Swiss. EU's number four. Three players that came together after being kicked. Have done so much good work up to this point. One more step is needed. Seiko, he sends it forward. The former world champion. To the side it goes. Now in comes Juicy. Up against Khaled. Can he win this one cleanly? Yes, he can. Armad is there. Naupo was diving in as well. Rule one just about to keep their composure, and Khaled makes up for his miss of a demo. Yeah, such a smart touch, but this is really dangerous for General Mates. Again, goal line save. Khaled. Gee, he just, he's the only player in the world that looks comfortable in that spot. Seiko keeping it in. Another 50. Khaled this time backboard. Just trying to. A little bit of time, grab a little boost for his teammates, setting up in net. The demo is going to help immensely. Ahmad with the clear touch, he's reaching Whoa. for it. Has found a pass back on the Sporting Juicy. Gentle mates, certainly with all the composure, and they're looking good right now. Rule one, sitting in net, praying for that overcommit. But we do know this is exactly what rule one can play like. More than happy to play this role. It worked out in the end yester uh, yesterday, in the last game. <laughs> it's not been that Oh, long. wow, what a reader Oh, man, gets it to the side. How on earth is he ready for that? I mean, we saw a lot of positional mistakes earlier, but for both sides, they're just locked in now in overtime. Game number four. There's another touch coming through. General mates, they want to end this one in four. They certainly don't want to go five on the brink of a potential reverse sweep in the first round of the Swiss. Here we go, Khaled working it again. Juicy parries it to the side. General mates, trying to find each other, trying to link up out of net. Ahmad's going to keep that pressure on for rule one. Does get out 50 by Juicy. Khaled can only send it high, though. There's a chance here for Atachi. Napo has to get this touch right. He does. Atachi doesn't quite get the second touch either. I wondered for a second if the ball was going to fall on him and cause some more chaos. But not to be. So, gentlemen, have to come forwards again. Juicy up against Ahmad. Rule one's defensive fortress holding out for now. Khaled has to get another touch. Atachi can't send this one goalwards. The demo will open things up in the center for gentlemates to try and string together another attack. Look how deep rule one are defending. It's ridiculous right now. It's all there's always a player in net, but that 50 is gonna unlock Ahmed. Can he send a 550? Great defense coming through. 
Yeah, by Juicy. So many demos. The demos are so important right now. It's a huge touch for now, but oh. he gets one, two, three. Oh, oh I'm oh. saved. Could have been the perfect chance and a way for Naupo to announce himself. At this first event, there's more pressure coming through. Gentlemates, not out of trouble just yet. They might have just found a way there. Oh, Nampo's missed that one, though. Arman up against two of them. He gets it to the side, does well enough. Now Khaled's coming in. Will he be thinking of not scoring that goal? The first real chance of this overtime has to get it out of his head. Yeah, they almost found something there, gentlemates. I'm not sure how they escaped that. The clutch is that offensive pressure coming through from rule one. Here we go again. Khaled, not much boost to work with. And Juicy has been that midfield player. We've, we've mentioned that second man importance for the gentlemates. It's Khaled. Well, he's not a second man. He just sits very deep in there. More demos coming through for both sides. Three minutes of overtime has elapsed here. Juicy with a beat over the top. Ahmad has to go. Doesn't get a second. Ooh, Fake minute. out. Shot on net. More touches, but rule one hanging in there. Now Poe has a touchy in his way. Juicy sends it into the centre, but because of the double commit slash fake out earlier, they had to head backwards. They had to get some boost. Seiko's missed that one. Itachi, thankfully for Seiko, was in the right place to deal with it. But it does put pressure back on Gentlemates. Rule one have been waiting for their moment. Maybe this is it. Ahmad almost fakes out the defender. They'll have to come again. Khaled, does he go for the pass? No, instead it's solo to the backboard. It's perfect play. Itachi clears it long. Ahmad has to get this right and does. Oh, he nearly overcommitted there, but rule one are keeping pressure oh! on a double dunk. Itachi is going to be able to land on it. Rule one sitting so deep. To let the ball come down the other end. They have, been, they have been able to work it out here. Tachi, no boost, just throws it forward a little. Double commit coming through from rule one. Starting to see the pressure, the fatigue setting in. Four minutes of overtime. There's the shot. Juicy fires. Gentlemen, <laughs> take down rule one in the first round of the Swiss. It was far from simple in the end, but gentlemates, when they had their chance in overtime, no mistake was made. 14 shots to 13 in that final game, but all that matters is that gentlemates take series one by three games, two one. Gee, there was some quality in that game number four as well. Rule one certainly showed up to the party. But it was gentlemates able to ice out. Look at that, the 50 central and juicy. As we said, he's been that link up man that entire series. So impressive. Talk about the other members of his team, but is it Juicy's land to really announce himself as one of the best players in the world? Well, we'll certainly find out over the course of the weekend. General mates, a perfect start. Take it 3 1. It's really good for the game diff as well. We talk about how important seeding is in the Swiss stage. Yeah, Juicy, huge moment for him, as you say, CJ, announcing himself at this level. He has struggled at Lance previously, but now he is starting to look like the complete package we all knew that he could be. And Gentlemates as a whole, I mean, you know, their best performance so far saw them finish second. That's what they can emulate at this major. I mean, in those moments as well, in those overtimes, you look at it, you look for your experienced players to show up. Seiko, MVP performance, five saves in that final game as well. And well, don't they mean just everything? Nine saves on the side of Rule 1. We know that they're going to be playing that defensive style of game. And they looked impressive. Now, Po as well, got to give a shout out to him. He looked phenomenal at times throughout that game. But just those highlight clips, he was just close. He was close, but just not quite there on that finishing touch. Yeah, when you're at this sort of stage, you have to be able to get there. Not quite able to be done on this occasion. Rule one, maybe will be kicking themselves, but gentlemates, they did enough to make it through. They fought, they battled, as they've been doing so far all season. They made it through, and now with Leaf is Atachi. Congratulations, first win. There's lots more to go, but it looked like that celebration at the end was a lot of stress releasing itself there. Yeah, for sure. Like, it was a big overtime. Tremendous is the first series. Uh, we didn't play a line, we didn't play tournament for a long, long time. So, yeah, this, it was an intense match, uh, especially the last one. So, we were really happy to get it there. Well, talk to me about that because I wanted to find out, you know, you guys have been playing together uh, online, together in, in facility for a long time, but coming to LAN, you're together, but it's a different vibe. You said it's, it's been a while you've been here, and it, it, it showed that, okay, maybe there's some shakiness. Yeah, it's clearly true. Like, um, when we play together, we're in the room, uh, we know people, but here, like, it's a different environment. We play against our opponents that are in front of us. Uh, we have different headsets, and it's, we're playing a big uh, tournament. It's a major, so of course it's different, and uh, it was our, our first match, so we had a little bit of uh, nerves, right. but, uh, but yeah, it was all good. For, for you specifically, what is it? Is it just, you know, the extra light? There's a lot of lights right now. Is it, is it that? Like, what is it for you that kind of 
makes things change? Uh, no, not the lights. I think it's just the whole uh, mood of playing a big tournament, and especially because it was a long time as well. We needed that first match to get in, and now I think we're ready. We did some mistakes, of course, all of us, but uh, it was our first match, and we're only going to get better. Hey, you got the win. Now, t talk to me about those uh, mistakes, maybe, because it looked like it might have started as a 3-0 at the beginning. Yeah. Something changed. Was it you guys, or was it Rule 1 making a switch up? No, I think it was us, to be honest. Like, we played very well the, the first matches, like the true first ones, but after maybe we, we were a bit scared to, to end it up. We didn't want to take risks, and it was a mistake, clearly. Like, we just have to keep playing as we, we always do, and... Uh, yeah, we just got a little bit of nerves. We, we lost game one and then the second one was closed. But uh, yeah, we got the ice on the good moments and we managed to, to close it up. Now, just the last one before you let go here. Is it helpful then that a lot of the eyes are on teams like K-Corp in this? Does that help you guys relax a little bit and just play your game without having to have too much attention on? Or you guys got a lot of fans cheering. Is that still in the back of your mind? Nah, to be honest, I was in all those positions. I was uh, back in the time seed one in the world. I'm now we didn't qualify seed one Europe, but seed four. Like to be honest, those kind of things don't really matter for us. We're just coming to play Rocket League. We know how we can play and how good we can play, and we just want to 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 prove it on the field. And we we don't really care about uh, what people say about other teams or about us even. We just focus on ourselves, and, and that's it. We enjoy. It. That's the best thing to do. Hey, you got the first dub. Keep it up. That's not it, though. We have a lot more Rocket League coming your way. This is just the beginning of Swiss. As I said, the excitement continues as day one of our Swiss round carries forward. We've only just begun the journey to Championship Sunday. Up next, NA versus Sam. Luminosity versus Fury. <laughs>
Gentle mates thwart a late rally from rule one to stay clean in the Swiss. They'll advance to round two, one and oh, and we'll wait to see who they play as we continue on through this round one gameplay. On the B stream, Carmen Court made quick work of Limitless. Limitless finding out just how strong Carmen Court is there. They'll look to bounce back in round two. We'll have to wait to see who they're gonna play though. Welcome back to Copenhagen. Great gameplay to start things off. Great overtime in game four, almost threatening game five there. I thought we were gonna get uh, reverse swept on the desk and the coin in chat. <laughs> On us, but no, we pulled out the death sweep actually worked, so maybe things are changing. Maybe Ooh. things are changing. I mean, it wasn't a death sweep because the, the, the coin's on the desk. That's fair. It's here, That's here fair. with us. He, yeah, so. that coin is one of us, which is yes. quite nice. Exactly. We can always count it. If no one got me, I know coin got me, folks. So <laughs> the Swiss continues on. We'll see how things go. But yeah, I mean, okay, talk to us about what we've seen from the teams now so far. Rule one and uh, the gentle mates, only teams we've seen here on the A stream. So I'm going to talk about rule one real quick. And now, Poe, just immediately he opens up with a flip reset mm -hmm. goal. It felt like he was the offense on that team. Even in game four, he had a triple tap into a pass but his teammates couldn't deliver the shot and they lost the series. I felt like he played very well on the other side but with Alpine. They just, like all three of them, looked mm -hmm. fantastic throughout. They shared the offensive load. And honestly, it looked comfortable at times, Stumpy. Yeah, and I feel like with um, Gentle Mates, they were, like you said, they were sharing that load between them. Nobody seemed to be that offensive character in particular, or at least if they were, they were then setting up half the time I mean, too. What a play. But oh, on yeah. the other side, yeah. Every time. I'm, every time. Like, oh, I'm it was an Alpo score. leading Please. the offense every single time. Like, we, we kept seeing it. And Bates, at times it was frustrating to then see Armado Khaled not be able to sink the opportunities that were ahead of them. Yeah, you expect them, out of players of their caliber, to be way, I mean, way more clinical in those situations. I know there's a time that wasn't in the highlights where Naupo went for a triple touch basically yep. off the backboard. Khaled 
He had the he had a net. It mm -hmm. wasn't open. There was somebody in the net. That, uh, I think Seiko did ultimately end up saving it. But if he had put some precision, put some accuracy, some heat on the ball too, mm -hmm. it would have went the back end yeah. that. And then rule one, well, I think would have went up three one at that point in the series. So or at that point in that game. So you really expect them to be that much better. Now Poe, he balled out. You expect mm -hmm. the two vets to really come help the young gun and help him really come over and be better for the rest of Swiss. Yeah, well, I mean, do you just chalk this up to first round of nerves or, or, or says, are you more concerned with what you saw here, Stubby? I'm not concerned at all. I think it comes down to one team was better. Like, they, they, oh, that, that was us. <laughs> no, no, it was just gentle mates <laughs> were too salty. The better team in that. <laughs> They were two very good teams, but it was a 3-1 ultimately. It's a best of five. If it went to five, fair enough. We were one overtime away from it, going to a five, yeah. and it being it was even close. closer. It was close, I but was, it just happens it's a 3-1. So. I was I was with you, Gibbs. I didn't want I didn't want Chet and the coin to beat us through the first round, but I did kind of want game five to That's start true. things off. It would have been fun. You know, that would yeah. kind of fun. So uh, that is the first game of Swiss completed here on the A stream. We had three more to go before we were done with round one. We could take a look at the Swiss, uh, or at the schedule, rather, here, folks. Again, two streams going on at the same time here, Twitch tv slash rl esports you can find these matches going down that first match already concluded carmen core 3 over at limitless they are now moving on to bds versus elevate lots of questions oh. lots of excitement around that elevate roster if you want to see sphinx play live mm, yeah. against bds there folks head over to rl esports on twitch so um, meanwhile here on the a stream we are going to continue on with our matches again three more to go before we're done with round one falcons and og there waiting for the conclusion of our next match. Let's get into it. Luminosity on the stage. Excited to see them here taking on the boys from Fury of Aids. LG to NA third seed. I know a lot of people that got some question marks about this Luminosity squad. Saying they had a Mickey run and Quavar number two. Did they really deserve to be here? SSG just that much clearer. And none of that matters because the fact of the matter is they're here. They're lacing <laughs> up the kicks and they're ready to ball out. Slater Thomas back on the land stage. You know what he brings to the table. Nothing but demos. Nothing but poison and cheese. Making his land debut he's been nothing short of phenomenal over an na and then you feed the bear magic feed bear, the bear coming in and these guys were here at the spring major obviously with aj and not cheese mm -hmm. didn't go that well they got a ninth place finish but cheese had to fill those shoes of aj yeah not only did he fill those shoes he easily did it the number one offensive player in all of north america was cheese in goals per game so he balled out all split cheese has been i think the standout player for luminosity i think even when there have been those messy series that luminosity have been a part of cheese has still looked to be an incredibly solid character and it's been so fun seeing him compete and then make a major one exciting time and we talk about new players going all the way back to these older players rettles it's fantastic to see him competing back here again with two young guns under his wing they have been thriving the chiseled veteran as he would say uh number one <laughs> in demos per game obviously the old he's man. gonna be hunting he's gonna be hunting trying to cause chaos on the offensive side we'll see how they do they've been very inconsistent though because when they go to swiss always come out 3-2 in NA, and that's not what you want to see. They mm -hmm. did have that great qualifier too, where they took down OG, so it wasn't a complete Mickey run, but Magic Bear as well. Rettles wants to cause chaos, open up the door for Magic Bear. If he gets comfortable early, him and Cheese both have to get comfortable early uh, in this match, because if not, you got the powerful Fury coming at him. Yeah, Fury on the other side here. A team that we have an up and down story across the course of RLCS history for Fury. Mm -hmm. But right now, I mean, this is, is this one of the heights or is this one of, are, are we on the downturn? How are you feeling about Fury right now? They you should. talk about consolidating talent. You got to talk about Drufino coming mm -hmm. over. That Sam mm -hmm. and oh, that's your boy too. Oh, he's my boy. I love him. He's coming over, joining uh, this squad and immediately they became the number one team. It took actually, all right, one qualifier. They lost two complexity in qualifier one finals after that one qualifier two one qualifier three the numbers are off the charts for furia number one offense in sam number one defense as well and all three players when they're positioned on the offensive side of the field they're ranked two three and four they're always on offense all the time because their other team that is competitive with them is complexity known to play defense they known play defense to play back so i think the main question coming out of furia is if they have to play defense yeah. and they mm -hmm. do it and then the secondary question outside of that gives is then have they got their swagger back? Because when they came over to NA, it looked like they kind of assimilated to the NA play style. And that's not something that they really did that well. When they played in Sam two years ago, when they showed up on land, they just played ferocious. They played nonstop mm -hmm. offense, nonstop pressure. And it took people by surprise. Yeah, and that's when he made his name known. And then you have Lost joining the squad, Drafino. This might be their in-game roster, and you want to see what they can do here. But Lost is the next factor. Number one in goals per game and 
th throughout Sam, but he plays incredibly fast. The problem is he gets in the way sometimes mm -hmm. of his teammates as well. He wants to play fast, wants to be aggressive, but it does confuse everyone on the field at times. I mean, so this is just a battle of aggression, right? Like, this oh, yeah. is Luminosity wanting yeah. to be aggressive in a way where you send Rettles forward yep. and let him pick off as many Fury players as they can, and it's Fury trying to dodge that and then take chunks out of Luminosity themselves. This is going to be incredibly fast, incredibly boost intensive for both teams too to keep up their play styles. Will one of them then end up getting starved? Will that then completely stop their run? Yeah. It, it's going to be so interesting to see how they develop to each other's aggression. And that's the problem with like Luminosity, where they want to go for demos, but if Fury's on the offensive side of the field, you're not going to demo them when they're on your side of the field. Yeah. It's very, yeah. like, that's not going to happen. you got but, to put them on the back foot at some point and make them nervous. Yeah, but to your point also about Fury doesn't have a lot of experience of being in their own half. Yeah. If when they are in their own half, they are also having to deal with being deleted, that's going to make it even mm -hmm. more difficult. So this could be a very, I feel like this could be a 3-0 either way. It could and be. we're not quite sure. Or which it's going to be yeah. the biggest swing game to game. Like True, just the yeah. metronome just does not like decide where to go. A 4 one you Yeah, know, really, it really could be. It really is just a clash of play style. Stumpy, you talked about it. It's just different forms of aggression. Yes. Fury, they're going to just keep shooting, shooting, shooting. Infill passes. They're going to be creative. They're going to be high in the sky, making plays with their mechanics. Luminosity, on the other hand, they're going to send Rettles up just to chase, chase, chase. Set up cheese to set up the air dribble. Set up the bear to come in and make the plays that he does. It's just really a battle. I'm really interested to see just how the coaches set up both teams to be successful here. And that's the thing. Like, Luminosity, not consistent at all in North America. But consistency doesn't matter because if you show up when it matters, <laughs> yeah. th then you just got to go for it. So we're going to see Rettles. He's going to try and cause chaos. He cause, wants yeah. to get them nervous, especially round one of a land. You want Furia to feel nervous, to feel like Rettles is always there trying for those demos. So if he can actually get those... Then we'll see Luminosity again. That could be a 3-0, because if game yeah. one goes their way and the demos happen, Fury's going to be on that back foot. Well, I, I do wonder... Um how much we're, how much aggression we're going to see out of Reynolds. It is something he has done his entire career, but the narrative around him has become is, has become that that is all he does. And I think that, that narrative <laughs> has been very strengthened over the last few months, which makes it advantageous for him not to do it because mm. everybody Possibly. will be expecting it, you know? I, th but I think this, it's, it's that two-sided coin, right? Like right. whether you go into it and you're like, yeah, I'm going to lean into me being aggressive, or as yeah. you say, hold back a little bit, then they're still being all tetchy, yeah. but you can then play a much more off character. Well, and, 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 and to, to the point of like, this specific style he has of being a very off ball demo chasey it, it, getting demos is not easy right people running and away that's at why you, it's right? consistent, he's, he's, right? he's a very good at it he's, he's he's throwing he's throwing a knuckleball here and people got to figure out you can you can study a knuckleball all you want you can know what he's going to do but if you don't actually have experience playing against it it's going to catch you by surprise and this is best of five if you lose two games if it takes you two games to get it downloaded here you get the reverse sweep and it's been about three weeks of practice for both these squads so they could come up with different game plans but my guess is Reddle's game one is going to be aggressive and see if it works. Oh, yeah, 100%. And yeah. if it doesn't work, I could easily see him trying to change his play style. He'll probably want Magic Bear and Cheese to just kind of do their own thing because they're going to be a little bit nervous and all that stuff, so play your game. But Reddles will be the one to adapt and see what he can do to turn the series. And isn't that also the beauty that we see from Luminosity is that they are able to... Reddles, completely selfless, just says, look, boys, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I, I'm not going to be the most mechanical player on this team. I've got Magic Bear and Cheese beside me. I don't need to be. He can much more boots on the ground. Let them have the flair and let them go crazy. Listen, I just want to say, who's the other team that plays like that at this lane? OG um, could play on the ground with Calm, or are you saying? No, they, okay, I guess okay. OG could okay. do that too, but okay. I'm thinking bigger team. Carmine Bigger. plays like that, man. They really do. Rise, Rise they, they goes up front. In the but yeah, Rise yes, and Atto, aggressive. they're like, they're, they're, the more, they're more polished mechanical LG. And that yes. Rise and Atto both go up, but then they also, they're not known, kind of been like, uh, like Reddles has been like, where he's just like been penciled in, boxed in, just being a demo player. Rise and Atto, sure. you still expect the mechanics. Mm -hmm. And Carmine's successful in that. LG could be successful too. Reddles is a selfless player. He does love to yes, just let his big mechanical swingman here go upfield and be the big plays. But one of those players is a rookie here. Cheese playing in his first lane and that gives us lots of great questions here. Fun facts about Raw Greg though on the screen. Singing a metal band in high school? Go away. Give us your go. best metal oh, yeah. band impression lead singer. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Don't clip that. Alright. <laughs> well, we have to talk about Furia because it's going to be Furia's series. 
<laughs> We're just moving on from... <laughs> so this is Furious <laughs> Series, all right? Like, this is them. If they can play their offensive game, they will be perfectly fine. We know, like, Loss is number one in goals per game in he Sam. Is. Then Yen is number two, right yep. behind him. Furia, again, complete so offense, good. number one by a mile. It's nearly three goals per game in Sam. And their defense is incredible because they never have to play. They never have to play. So it. that is the thing. I think it's going to come down to Lost because... In qualifier three finals, like I was uh, looking over that review, a lot of times Lost tries to do just a little bit too much. And when that okay. happens, weird things happen on the field. And the problem is when you're playing against Illuminati, who loves when weird things happen on the field, they want chaos, mm -hmm. that I think that will benefit them. I think the Furia is a big question mark here. I think a lot of people have the Falcons, the G2s and yeah, GNGs yeah. and all of Europe to yep. have a chance to yep. win this major. Great but Furia is that like borderline team. We're not completely sure if they're like the third best or like ninth. Yeah. yeah and yeah, yeah. I think we'll see a lot here. We'll see. We will. And we are we are waiting on uh, them to figure out a little technical issue here and we will get the match started as quickly as we can. But I mean, so you have more question marks around loss than around cheese? Yes, like, I think we always talk about first land jitters, but it usually doesn't play doesn't too big of a factor really, yeah. normally. And hopefully it doesn't here because you want both teams at their best. Yeah, but sure. I just worry about uh, with Furia because they brought in loss uh, last year. It did not work. It did. For two whole splits, it didn't work. Then finally right, in spring, right, it right. did. Then they go to spring major and they get last place. They lost to Ninjas in Pajamas, who uh, Optic was also at that spring major, beat uh, ninjas and pajamas so two-thirds of that roster was there as well so like optic if we're looking at spring major they're the better team but obviously long off season we just don't know like fury dominated sam which is always a good mark because complexity was a team in na who was probably considered number two at times in north america they go down there and fury just wipes the floor mm -hmm. with them so when you're playing against a defensive team they look great it just comes down to now you're playing that international game like if they have to play defense i'm just a little bit concerned about fear i think there's upset potential here i think we've also spoken about the rookies a good few times here where you talk about cheese you talk about you know uh, there are very few people coming to these lands straight away and if they have those jitters but there's some of these players that have been to a couple of lands and we've not seen them go absolutely crazy mm -hmm. magic bear being one of them and a player that has looked brilliant online has done a fantastic job in pretty much every single series that he's been in but we have haven't seen him be explosive and as comfortable as he is in his own setting compared to when he is in ultimately alien territory. I'd love to see him get to that yeah. level where we see his confidence and we see that he is able to perform to the level he definitely sees himself at. Um, but yeah, this is definitely a big question mark for him. But I, I don't think it's going to be a, a crazy, you know, disparity between these teams. Lots of questions yet to be answered, folks. They'll be answered here momentarily. The players are loaded in. They are ready to play. So we are ready to get this match under way as soon as we get some predictions some picks on the board gibbs who you got Ooh. so furio is my eighth ranked power for any team so okay. uh, i had them probably lower than most but i'm still confident in them versus what many considered the fourth best north american team here so i'm gonna go Furia. okay furia stumpy gibbs again mate i know, I know. going furia so i feel like you, you can't really argue with a fury that dominated a team that was doing decently well in north america and has been on top of South America this entire season so far for this first split. So yeah, Furia for sure. I think I can't make that argument though. Stumping, I'll tell you why. Because complexity, they dropped their, they dropped the defensive rock. They dropped AJG. They picked up Dorito. There's question marks there. That's not the same complexity team. I'm gonna go with LG. I think that okay. they're gonna muck it up on the field. They're gonna make it real rough out there. And Furia, they've been playing that fastball, but they got to slow down in this Ooh. series. And that's where LG, that's where Rettles take advantage. I really want to go with LG, but I do believe in Drew. I do believe in the energy oh, yeah. that man brings. I do think I got Furia on this one. Let's see what the coin thinks. We're going to have uh, orange will be Furia, blue will be LG, and it's Furia. Furia Ooh, for the coin. Furia coins. for the coin. So I we'll knew that see. coin was smart. I knew yeah, clever I coin. Good job, coin. We'll have a bit of plastic. <laughs> coin, coin, you're good. How, how does chat feel about it, though? I'm curious how chat runs on this one. I can see I can see strong fan bases on both sides, and Ooh, it is oh, right nice. down the middle on this one. LG building a <laughs> lot of fans throughout the course of this season, and Furia continuing to build momentum down there in Brazil. This could be... It's tough. It, it could yeah. be a 3-0 either way. I guess it could go 5 if we bounce back and forth. It's yeah. very hard to tell. Look, this is a great moment for both these squads after a lot of practice, no international play. Now is the time to show it on the field. South America versus North America, an inter- 
hemispherical battle. If I'm using, the, I'm probably the wrong word yeah, there, probably. folks. It's not it's hemispheres. <laughs> oh, this North way. What's, what's what, you know across the pond? They're on the same side of the pond. There, folks. We're ready for the game. <laughs> I know you guys are as well. Let's get the second match of round one here for the A stream going. Luminosity versus Furia. Game one begins now. Furia's recent North American forays may have come to a premature end, but this season, back home, they have been cooking, CJ. I mean, there's just something about Furia when they're back at home. That when they do get back to a land, they just, they're, they're just more threatening. I don't know what it is. We can talk all we want about last season, about Furia's move to North America, to the bigger region to try and test themselves, to try and improve. But they went back home now and I mean, it just feels like Fury of two seasons ago. They feel back, but they do have a Luminosity Gaming on the other side, who is a very solid team. We talk about, you know, these North American teams. You know, there's a lot of mention about G2. And hang on a minute, it's a testy early. But even Sathew comments about Luminosity, Cole. He says they're just such a difficult team to play. They counter strat. They do more research than anyone else. Let's see what they've got on Fury here as Yank gets a drop down to Lost. And Furia get the first on the board. It is a huge start for Furia. Jan, once in the conversation, the best team in the world gets it down to his teammate Lost. It was mentioned on the desk when Lost came in for Furia. It was a tough beginning. He was a bit too chaotic for them, but they've been building, and now here they are. Wow, what a start for Furia. I know that there's a, they're certainly polarizing in the predictions, in the power rankings coming into this event, obviously dominating a region that we feel is, is quite competitive in South America. They went down there, they wiped the floor with everyone, barring that first event against Complexity. But there's still that last season in the back of everyone's minds in North America where yep. they didn't really meet the highs that we thought. And well, which fury are we gonna get early on? Well, they're looking pretty deadly. Yeah, they are for sure. Luminosity having to do some defending. Luminosity will, of course, be used to that. You know, that when they've been coming up against teams like Genji, against teams like G2, they've had to play on the counter, had to rely on these huge mechanical moments that they have absolutely in abundance. As Rettles gets it towards the man they will be turning to in that regard, it's Cheese. Capable of anything. True chaos that he brings. My goodness, it's good to watch, though. Yeah, he's been a statistical Whoa! leader. And there's the little reset. Hello. Into the musty for Drafidio. We are 90 seconds, Cole, into their first game here in Copenhagen. And they look like they've been here for months. What on earth are we witnessing? Drafinio had such a good end to last season for Crew, And now here he is, the biggest org in Brazil, Furia, putting himself on that big stage and really already showing why he's been wanted. You can see him in such an important player for Furia. But his loss, he gets that one. Luminosity yet to get going. They've barely got the ball in the orange half. This could be the moment. Rettles over the top of one, but Lost just sends it away. Jafinio wants to get the redirect, can't quite do it, but it's a massive start right now for Furia. Yeah, they're just looking so good. I mean, the mechanics are on the speed of Furia, something that we talk about, complexity. The number two seed coming out of Sam, really, they had to play that rule one role, the defensive oh. style, the counter attacks, ah. almost. Trofino missing an open shot, perhaps just a bit, a bit flat-footed there on the shot, but it's another opening. I mean, seriously, there's something about this side. They've had nine shots in half a game of Rocket League in the first series that they'll be playing here in Copenhagen at the Major. And I don't know what it is, but I said it before, when they go back home, back to South America, I mean, the Panther is back. They look like a Cheshire cat when they moved to North America, Cole. They lost that element of the unknown, that just that... That, I don't know, the killer mentality, but they just look so good. Even in person, I'm intimidated by them <laughs> here in Copenhagen. So to Illuminosity as it stands right now, but they have managed to at least work their way into orange territory once or twice. But when the ball comes back, they're struggling to deal with it. Here comes another one, a huge dunk. It's three. This is ridiculous. Dead set clipping first game. And there you go again. Oh, early frustrations from the player camps. You can see it on Luminosity, but Furia. Every single member getting involved, lost with a brace already. Three minutes into the first game. Drafinho with a goal. Yan with five shots of his own as well. This is an offensive onslaught. It looks like they're still back in their own region. Here we go again. This time the bum's coming through. That is what Luminosity probably done better than any other side. Reddles leading the entirety of North America in demos, in bumps. 
Could that be the way to get back into this game? Rettles, who is currently on the chase to be the first pro with 2,000 career demos. It's him against First Killer. I'm reliably informed, but let's oh, get some going it. because Furia are playing with them right now. I mean, just the level, the quality of this game, number one from Fury. It's the pass plays, the oh. one, two, three, back to Yen, bar down. No mistakes at all from this side. It's a different source of goal as well. You know, we, we've had the mechanical outplay. Now we've got the passing plays. We've had continued pressure. Furia in the opening three and a half minutes have shown everything you need in a Rocket League pitch. And Luminosity barely laying a glove. They have to get things going. His cheese, can he do that? Almost over Drafinho. A goal could be massive for them just to give them something. Magic Bear gets the flip reset. He gets it down. And cheese follows up. Luminosity gets something. I've seen that man do it in streams. It's the bear stepping up. Reset, setting up cheese. And maybe some momentum. There's still time left on the clock. But we need to see the bear start cooking cheese as well. He has been the statistical leader for Luminosity throughout the North American online split. And really that player that is really just, he, he's, he's come onto the scene in a big way for this lineup. Looking so impressive and I know there's a lot of talk. We did our top 25 players list. There was some disappointment amongst the community that we left out cheese. That's how impressive he has been for North America or for Luminosity, should I say. Magic Bear working it forward. 50 seconds left. What can Reddles do? He takes it upstairs, goes to the roof, blocked out by Yan this time. And Furia, they look like they've just taken the foot off the gas and touch, trying to lock down this game number one. Well, it's not just their attack, Furia, right now. The defending has been good as well, as good as it's needed to be. Clean clearances, sending it into space, not allowing Luminosity to put the pressure back on them beating their opponent to the ball as well. Rettles gets half a touch there, but Magic Bear can't do anything with it. And then another bump comes in. Look at the space it leaves for Drufinio, and he sneaks it in again to add insult to injury. Five goals for Furia. And Drufinio with the open net there, and he's just lots of bottom right. It was a little bit of a dribbler along the ground, but the Bear could not get there in time. It must be Christmas for Furia, and for Luminosity, five goals stings. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, maybe a sixth, actually. Hold that thought, 20 seconds left. And we're talking about the first series of this event. I mean, you could not ask for a better game, a better game one for Fury. There's, as I said, there's still been some question marks. Certainly a lot of people putting them in oh. the contenders is almost there. Yeah, it's gotta be one more. <laughs> I love that. The Bear does get his first of Copenhagen, but... It has been all about Fury. That's been the story of game number one. And I want to call out someone on the desk. There's a, there's a man that was I was speaking to in the green room by the name of Gibbs, who doesn't believe that Fury can do it, doesn't believe they can take... They, they, he doesn't think they're a chance here at the first major of the year. Doesn't quite back the South American form. Um, well, it, well, he's, he might be right after that one. Yeah, that was a great end to the game. A phenomenal first game. I mean, they just did so much damage early. Two and a half minutes in, they're four goals up. Kept themselves humble as well did Furia there with the own goal at the end from Jan and also some uh, tentative defending going forward. But some serious discussions to be had over there in the blue camp because whatever they planned, it did not work. Yeah, no, no timeouts here, obviously, in the Swiss stage. Best of five, but... I mean, Raw Greg Known in, in the North American scene is quite a, a quite a smart coach. Yep. Uh, you know, Sathieu, again, I feel like he's my link man in the North American scene. He, he gives me all the insights, but <laughs> has a lot of respect for, for Raw Greg in this Luminosity outfit, the way they're able to adapt mid-series. They need to show it here, however, as Furia. I mean, they basically dominated that first two and a half minutes with something special. It is pretty much a showreel in this Mobile yep. One high performance replay. Luminosity, thankfully for the sake of this series, got themselves a couple of games, which I'm sure should give them something to, to bite into, a, a bit of momentum. But I mean, you've had it before, right? Where you have all these plans, game one doesn't go to plan. Do you, do you switch or do you say, right, that didn't happen, keep oh, on going? It's hard because it's a best of five. It's easy in a best of seven to sort of forget about game one, take, treat it as a warm up game almost. but. In a best of five, you lose game one, you drop the second, all of a sudden you have to reverse sweep. Luminosity, they won't want to do that. They need to start getting active on the pitch. I want to see the bumps. We talk about Reddles getting involved as well. But I think that game one, they just got outpaced. They got out mechanic if you would. They just looked outclassed by that Furia lineup. We'll find out now, Cole, whether that was just the warm-up game one and Luminosity can step up or it is truly Furia's moment or Furia's day to put the world on notice. I was about to say we can expect to see something very different in game two, but 16 seconds in, Furia get a freebie. Already they're on the board. 
Oh, there it geez, is. Oh, messing of all players. Ah, it didn't take long for Fuhrer to get involved again. And if there's anything Raw Grid should have been telling them is that how crucial these first two minutes is each game, just locking in and trying not to give up such a deficit. I mean, that game one felt it was over. Pretty much as soon as it began. There's another pass play, and this is where seeing the unselfish plays lost. Go Cyborg, tries to get one more. Can't quite get the touch. Cheese. Just trying to get a 50 through again, but Luminos is just a bit slow to get it out of the net. You see it there. Reddles caught on the backboard and just allows Fury to just push up and keep the pressure on. We have to remember as well, contextually, this is Cheese's first RLCS LAN. He's not been in this situation before. It's new, it's difficult, it's scary. He has to get involved playing his own game. He's waiting for this ball, he wants it. 23 boosters on though, he's just a little bit starved, it's not quite working out for him. If you watch him, very rarely, he has a perfectly timed 100 though. Can he do something with it? Up against Lost, Rafinho's coming in, Jesus wants to get a touch on this ball, but he's missed it yet again, and Furia, they can just take that ball away. I know, it's, it's easy to say that Luminosity just need to get the ball in the front half, but that has been the question mark about Furia. I mean, they're so offensive, so quick, so good up front. You can't play the counter-attack game against them. That's what Complexity did, and it did not work in South America. You have to be pushing the pace, looking for demos, perhaps positioning a little bit more aggressively than Luminosity would like to. But I think that's the secret against Furia. Make them defend, because if you don't, they're just going to be slotting the top corner. Drafinho again has just been an absolute dead eye in front of net. Just as Luminosity begins to get a bit of control, 150-50 into the centre was read better by Furia. And currently they're playing with a team that reached second in one of North America's open qualifiers, pushed G2 at their peak pretty much all the way. And Fury are making them look decidedly average. That will change. There will be a step up from LG. The main question is, will Fury be ready? But by then, they might have a three-goal lead to play with. Yeah, it's looking pretty dominant right now for Fury. South America's number one seed going back home, as we said. And boy, I mean, they're just so clinical. I want to bring up that Trofinio shot. That's a half chance. Cheese is in net. He's put a worm burner pass along the ground. 108 kilometers an hour into the top corner. I mean, that is the difference. When you're clinical like that, it can just make such an impact. They're faking kickoffs now as well, Fury. The smiles were coming out. They are not just comfortable on this stage. They are demanding it and dominating it right now. And Luminosity are fading away as the seconds tick by. They need something, some sort of foothold. But Fury are completely pulling the rug away from them yet again. She's up against Yan. Does well defensively for now, but can you get this redirect? He can, it's over. Here comes Lost. It could be four. It is four. This is becoming humiliating. I mean, have a look at the pass play. So, yeah, he's not rotating out, sitting downfield, uses the backboard, doesn't go the shot, setting up Lost. Furia, they have all the mechanics, all the ability, but they're still so unselfish. Working together as a team, looking for bumps, looking for that extra pass, and absolutely dismantling this North American outfit. And when you're losing like this, when you're really struggling, do you, do you notice the cameras on your face more and the lights? I mean, you're just starting to think about, you know, the, your teammates, who's tilted, who's not, how are we going to get back into this one? You start pointing what fingers, save. another great save there from Lost, a great pass again. Yeah, and I mean, but the problem is, when you let a team dominate like this, they have so much confidence. You mentioned the fake kickoff before, the extra pass. They're not desperate to score. They're just looking to flick the ball around and find that best opportunity on net. Rettles gives his team a chance. Cheese can't quite get the angle. Luminosity are coming forwards at least. It's better from them. They have stepped up. The fourth goal maybe has woken them up, but Cheese can't quite connect with that pass. And look at all the time and space Loss has. Oh He's God. going for forced musties. They're silent on him, man. I mean, it's just the confidence. As soon as Rettles backed off in that corner, Loss fakes the touch. He's not buying any of these fakes coming through. He's just so quick to recognize the positioning, and that just shows how comfortable they are. Oh, what a shot! Hang oh, on a minute! No. The reach up, the bear, the shot on net, oh. and the wheels with Reynolds! I mean, they're four goals down, but they've just produced the goal of the tournament so far. Bear floating in the air, and Reynolds with a follow-up dunk off the corner. And you just know that pre-pass, Rettles absolutely meant it. He was aiming for his teammate there. Now, please, Luminosity, let that wake you up. What can they do? A minute 40. As we said, it felt like last game as well. They did this. They brought that late surge. They just need to fix the first two and a half minutes. I mean, the half of these games, they're just letting the door creep open a little bit too wide. And there's the bump. And Furia might have just squashed the hopes in this game number two for Luminosity. Magic Bear. He just couldn't jump. And he did get bumped in the end. Top corner bounces in. 
five on the board. What I would say is that one is slightly more forgivable. Luminosity chucking men forward because they were, what, three goals behind of a minute and 30 left. So now they're four goals behind. You, you can forgive them for overcommitting in that regard, but they have to avoid collapsing. I mean, one minute 25 when you're 6-1 down is a lot of Rocket League left. They this don't want to play. This is unbelievable stuff. I and mean, there's, there's been some talk, you know, we talk throughout the teams coming here boot camping this international scrims everyone's so interested in the results and honestly there were some question marks around Fury. a few teams saying they had them covered the scrims were going well and perhaps Fury were a little bit cocky a little bit arrogant coming into this dominating south america obviously but the question marks were have they put in the work have they done enough compared to these other teams internationally to show up and potentially win this tournament well i tell you what in two games of Rocket League, they might just be the tournament favourites. If they can keep putting in performances like this, keep finding each other, keep just inch perfect passes time after time. Luminosity being torn apart, but they do get a pass back on the other side. Jeez, has to get around this one. Six one down. They will not want to be Brazil'd by Furia. 40 seconds, and this is they have to treat this as a little bit of a timeout looking yeah. into the next game. What can the bear do? Can he get some confidence? Warm up oh, the mech, save. another huge save. Cheese with a follow up, but the precision just isn't quite there from Luminosity. These, these little half chances that Fury are scoring, Luminosity are squandering down the other end. 25 seconds left, and this has been two of the most dominant games. I mean, it feels like we're, I don't know, it, it's ridiculous to say that we're watching an NA versus Sam team because they're making them look second rate right here. She's into the centre, Magic Bear, desperate to get something going. The angles aren't quite working out for them. She's trying to come back round. I think priority one is, as I said, not to concede the seventh. Keep it six, keep it... I was going to say relative res <laughs> relatively respectable. It's, 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 it's beyond that, but, you know, don't get Brazil. I mean, this, yeah, this Fury lineup, uh, as we said, it's almost about sending a message this we stage early on and putting some fear in the hearts, in the eyes of other opponents, the other teams, the other international teams here in Copenhagen and right now, Furia. This is a statement and they are out. They're not just looking to win these games, they're looking to dominate. Can it the stats. start to work against you when the first couple of games go so far in your favour? You know, I'm sure their coach will be saying, don't get carried away, you've not won yet, you know, keep yourselves humble and everything. But the human nature starts to come in, you know, oh, we're so much better than these guys. Can it ever start to do that? I mean, it certainly can for some teams, but I mean, look at Fury's results in Sam. Uh, they, they just keep putting the foot down, they keep dominating, they're looking to sweep, albeit that first event where they lost to Complexity, who took out the regional. They just wiped the floor with that region, which which really, I mean, South America last season without Fury, without complexity, still look quite competitive. We talk about, you know, Team Secrets, top four run. We talk about you know, the crew, crew taking down, you know, NIP as well, beating uh, beating out when the, the North American team's going over there, taking down Fury in Boston. So, I mean, they've just somehow elevated, going back to a region that you would think is inferior, but, I mean, who are we to know right now? We have no idea who the best region is. We're only guessing. I mean, it's, it's been, what did you say earlier? 223 days since we had the World Championships. A lot has changed. The landscapes have shifted. What matters is that right here, right now, Furia representing Brazil, but most importantly, representing themselves, are on the cusp of utter domination against Luminosity Gaming. Yeah, this is this is right now a test of mental resilience, mental fortitude, and perhaps they're just going to throw the kitchen sink. But again, the touch from Lost, the demos come through. He was so the clean. last man, and look at the breach up. Lost throwing a four, doesn't quite get the shot. But we are seeing a little bit of a change up. Luminosity going for the bump set, well finding done. the open net for the first time. This series, Luminosity have the lead. Things you love to see. And the reason they got it is because Furia actually let them get away with something. There was a chance for Lost. He couldn't quite redirect that pre-jump and down the other end. Great composure from Luminosity. They give themselves that lead. They have to keep pushing. The scary part is Furia right now. The, 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 the player camps, they're smiling. They're laughing at that mistake. I mean, let's see if it comes back to bite them, as you said. Do they take the foot off the gas a little bit? The first two games were so dominant, and we know the Luminosity can change it up. We've seen the demos. I mean, look at Reddles. He's dead set playing a, a different game right now, but there's the opening. That's what can happen if you commit too hard down one end and get the equaliser. I love to see it, though, from Reddles immediately turning to his team, offering the fist bumps, keeping the spirits up. All of his experience will be needed. He has... He burst onto the scene as an underdog, more than happy to play in that role. Pretty much been doing it his whole career. 
now he finds himself here bruised and bloodied and beaten in this series but still standing tall still fighting on luminosity Fury are trying to squash them right here, right now. But what good defending comes in from Luminosity. Drafinio sends that one all around the world. And can't get it. And Lost Pinch is an ideal. A chance now for Cheese. Imagine if he came online right now. What that could change for Luminosity and their fortunes. He gets it into the center, wants one more touch, but Fury can see it away. This has been the best start easily from Luminosity this series. Can they hang in there? We know the second half of games, they do start to wake up a little bit. They improve. As the game goes on, they've equaled it up here. Equalised it. Reddles gets faked out there. Lost keeping the ball in. Yen backing off. Lost again. More pressure coming through, but they're hanging on. And also in the context of the Swiss as well, if Luminosity can at least get this one game, it really could affect the quality of opponent they get next time around. Yeah, everything so crucial right now. The main tiebreaker for seeding is that game diff. Obviously got initial seed and all the rest of it. That's a nice touch. Lost has read the double off the side wall again. He's defensively been crucial right now for Fury and we did mention it before the defense is that question mark they are so good in offense Fury have more touches coming through Reynolds with the save yeah, and keeping it in that's an awkward touch the Bears trying not to own goal Reynolds helps him out Reynolds up against Lost really key moment in the series right now Yan towards Lost there's not one more pass there across because Jafinio was heading back but Yan and Lost combined to keep it alive the dunk's a little bit wide Luminosity squandering the ball away just trying to smuggle it out from their own goal Rettles puts it wide, but who's it to, CJ? It's only lost. Yeah, the demo's going to help, though. Cheese has the touch. One more. Here goes the bear, but again, dusted by Drafinho. Because Rettles going to back off, but he will lose possession of the ball as oh, well. Win. And has lost the 50 shot on there. Cheese awkward. Fakes it out for the bear. That's better, but again, look at the way Fury just refused to rotate out, circling like vultures, just keeping that ball in. Trying to stalk their no play. No way. And, uh, at 50, Yan dribbles that one through. The bumps did come in, but Furia find it cheapy there. Yan did really well to get that on there. It wasn't even a 50. No, it wasn't. Just a win. A win in the corner. The unexpected moment, maybe a half rotation that the Luminosity defenders didn't see from a player who we have to remind you was once considered one of the best in the world. Yan. Trevino, his teammate, now leaves it for him. He shoots into the top corner. This could kill it. Cheese saves. It's high. Yan has another chance. Gets the flip reset. Loss is just waiting like a viper to strike. Trevino coming in now. Furious smell blood. Oh, they sense it. it. Here comes Loss. Oh. But it's a massive save from Luminosity. Oh, what a setup, though. Almost getting through. Great save, Luminosity. But they do need a goal. Minute 50 left. Furia want one more. Just a little bit of a little bit of breathing room here to, to try and lock out this sweep. As we said, game diff huge. Right now, both sides just looking to get it one game at a time, one goal at a time. What can Yan do? He's going sideball. Does he get the redirect? He gets oh. the double! I mean, the setup is simply ridiculous. Fury, a two goal lead. How on earth do you defend against this? Rettles was scuttling towards the ball, desperate to get it. And even the demo wasn't enough to stop Fury as they continue to press. Two goals needed now for LG to save this one. I mean, they're just not respecting the touch either. I mean, Yen had that every uh -oh. day of the week, but Cheese wasn't quite ready for it. He's lost now. Again, no boost, but just staying on the play, being such a such a nuisance for the defense of, of, of Luminosity. Charles now for Lost to really sink it, but he can't quite get the touch. Yan towards Magic Bear. Magic Bear, his touch isn't ideal, so Yan can come right back in again. Lost is stealing boost, causing all sorts of chaos yet again in the Luminosity defense. Cheese has missed that one by a mile. I'm not sure what happened there. It will let Fury in yet again. One more will kill this, but the time's ticking away anyway. Yeah, one more and one more minute for Luminosity. Can they just get a game on the board? They need two right now. The demo's coming through again. This time it's Yan, though, getting aggressive. Oh, 50 close. not in. That could have been a little cheapy to get one back. And they need something. They need a little bit of luck right now. Cheese, sidewall. Can he get a double lost on the side? Just says, I'll have that one. And maybe the delayed musty over the top for Yan. Saved out just by Rettles. Important touch here from Rettles. He's got boost. But Jafinio just charges him down. No respect yet again. Shown by Furia. Not sitting back and defending what they have. It's not in their DNA. Here we go. What can Yan do? Is he just going to try and get some highlight real goals? Blocked out. Jafinio catching this one. All the solo plays, the air was just killing time off the clock. Lost has to make a huge touch. Massive. But he just has not put a foot wrong, Lost. Defensively, phenomenal. The attack's been even better. 13 seconds left. And they're just waiting as well from Lost, not rushing into anything, letting the ball bounce, letting the sands of time trickle down onto Luminosity's defeat.
Furia, they've pretty much got this one banked. They have got this one banked. It's not just a win. It's not just a thrashing. It is a statement that South America are back in the conversation. If you did not believe in that online split, what Furia did to their own region back home after being in North America, do you believe now? They have absolutely dismantled Luminosity. They have made them, I mean, it, they are a phenomenal side. Have to go into contention now as one of the tournament favorites. I know that obviously, still a lot of talk. We obviously have the cake off. We've got the blue wall up there, but Furia, they have shot up the rankings. But I mean, Luminosity, you, you have to pretty much just write that one off as a shocker. They happen start to finish. It wasn't their series. Maybe because it was so extreme, you can just say, yeah, they happen. I mean, it's, uh, it, we'll find out whether that was, you know, an off day for Luminosity or Furia truly are that good. I want to say they're that good, Furia. I mean, I think it's, it's a combination of both, it, to be it, fair. it certainly wasn't the best format or form of Luminosity. We know that they have that, that, that the results in them. We've seen them get to the grand final, get a top two in North America. But today, or at least this first round, wasn't quite theirs. Furia move on. 3-0 as well will, I mean, that'll help their seeding immensely for the second round matchups. Cannot wait for those. But as for right now, Furia, wow. They've also got a fear factor back as well. You know, they, they worked yep. hard to earn that fear factor in South America after losing the first grand finals to Complexity. Once they had it, that bit between their teeth, they refused to let go. Now internationally, they have just earned the right to have it on the pitch in their future matches. I mean, they just, the way that they, they executed, just so clinical and the most impressive thing, is that they had the team plays. It wasn't just about the solo plays, the mechanics. The way that they worked together as a team was phenomenal. And we do have an interview now with Leaf and Trevino. We got Trevino down here in the player's pit, coming out with a, a big smile. You guys look like you're excited. If you could describe that series in one word, how would you describe it? How would you wrap it up? I think confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were confident in this series. I was going to say confidence for you guys. <laughs> uh, coming into that, did you did you expect it to be quite a blow? I mean, what was it? it was five one, then six one, and then that? Did, do you expect maybe a little bit closer? Yeah, we really expect it to be a little bit closer because they are a good team. You know, Rados, Cheese, and Magic Beard, they were going good on NA, so we thought they were harder, you know. But we played good, confidence on top, so we managed to win. 3-0. That you did. Uh, speaking of confidence, I mean, just through scrims, I've heard a lot of people saying that you guys were looking good. I'm, I'm going to assume that you're going to agree with that. Yeah, we were 50-50, you know? Okay. Yeah, we were 50-50, but the confidence is always on top because screens is a screen, so the RLCS is RLCS, so it's another, another ambient, you know? It's right. different. Well, what, what is giving you guys the confidence? Like, cause I, I, you know, we've talked to some other players that lose confidence once they get in the live environment. What, what's making sure you guys keep that confidence? I think uh, playing on land gives you a little more confidence. Yeah, I think for us, we play better playing on land than playing online. So it hypes us a lot more to scream and everything. It's a lot better. You guys are built for this right now. Uh, I want to you tell me about your team. We saw them on the screen for a second too. Tell me about your the team joining the team. What the journey has been like for you getting to this point? Yeah, it was, it was amazing. You know, when they call me, it's Yanks. You know, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Yanks lost two goats of sand. You know, yeah. so it was incredible. They run always. They were friendly with me. Always I could you know match with them. So. It was amazing the run to here. We are going to the, you know, to, to another series now. So we are happy with our results. Now, if, if you had joined the team while they were still in North America, where do you think you guys would be positioned? Would you be, would you be number one? I think we would fight for number one, you know, with G2 and GNG, but I think we were, we were going to be like one, two or three, one of them, yeah. One of the three spots, I think, we are going to be there. 
Well, you'd be above luminosity, at least for now. <laughs> Anyways, congratulations on the win and good luck in the rest of your matches. Speaking of, we got a lot more coming your way. You thought we were done with Rocket League? You're absolutely silly. Swiss has just begun. We have round three on its way. It's going to be OG facing down the Falcons. As I said, Canada's last hope against Mita's best. What's up, y'all? It's your boy T-Bates here, and it's T-Bates Debates time. You know, I've been on Twitter. I've seen a lot of yapping from a lot of people so far this season. So, you know, I want to see what y'all's hottest takes are, and I want to see if they're actually good. All right, we got a tweet here from Purik6 underscore. Elevate beat KCP in the 0-2 round, and then reverse sweep OG to make it to round five. Mm. That's a, that's a take, that's a take. I mean, Elevate beating KCP, that's not saying much. I mean, KCP, eh, I mean, they all, all they do is walk around, you know, in, in their little quick trip gear. They're just here for a vacation. They ain't here to play. So, I mean, of course, Elevate, they got Spain, they got Kevin, they're not bad. I can see them beating them. But then, oh, gee, you know, you just stop it right there. That definitely won't be happening, period. I understand you got an interesting take. It's okay, it's interesting, but it's just flat out wrong. Colby, at alt Colby, appreciate the tweet, Colby. Limitless actually has a chance of upsetting Carmine Corp. Okay, talk to me about that, Colby. They are in an, an underrated squad with a lot of talent, okay. And I think the blue wall may not take them seriously, giving them a chance. Oh, wow, I'm not taking serious. The blue wall might crumble right here. They only need three games. I think that last part is very important. They only need three games. You have to win, you gotta get three games! You act like that's just a piece of cake! Come on, Kobe. This last part, I mean. That's why you only got four likes on the tweet. If you tweet it, they only need one game, you might have had more than four. You might have got five. Everyone is sleeping on OG this major. Oh, of course he says that, Jay Nafs. Okay, okay. They have the power of boomer energy and will be a big sleeper in Swiss. I'm saying, he's saying boomer because Jay Nafs is at the right age of 24. If that is boomer energy, then I don't know what to tell you, because that means I'm ancient. I'm interpreted as they have the power of just true synergy and land experience. But Seb, I'm having fun with this. Let's see what else we got on T-Base Debates. This tweet comes from Martian RL. Martian, limitless elevate, make top eight over vitality. We don't even believe that. Next tweet, man, I don't even want to read that, man. 
Okay, I love a good profile image. About time. By the way, we need more profile images like that from Mr. Patel. Let's see. At Patel, NA5227. Seven six one eight nine. This is even a real account there. We got. We got. Man, I have to verify these. KC's will go O three and Swiss. <laughs> Another one of these. Like, what do you mean, KC will go O three? Says you don't even believe that. If you're gonna tweet at the Rocket League esports handle, at least tweet something that you actually believe in. This is just nonsense. They're probably gonna go three O and Swiss, and you know that. All right, y'all. This is the end of T base debates. I appreciate the tweets. I gotta get out of here. They're kicking me out. See y'all later. <laughs> Thank you for catching me.
Ugh, we said it would be one-sided, but man, I don't think any of us expected it to be that bad. Furia, utterly annihilate Luminosity here. We said it'd be a, a sweep. We did. <laughs> this this almost seems like a new category. <laughs> it was painful, I'll tell you that much. I feel like uh, <laughs> Space Station at home is extra salty now. Mm -hmm. uh, after seeing Illuminati, a lot of people thought, you know, Illuminati, Mickey Run Qualifier 2. Didn't look good here. There's still time, though. It's Swiss. You have to lose three times. Yep. Luminosity, yes. That was a bad first loss, but that was really we'll see bad. If can that. that was really bad. If you're an NA fan, if you're a Luminosity fan, that was a disaster class. It's just point blank simple. Nothing else to say about it. I expect them to be better. I think they got out, outshot in the whole entire series. 14 goals to four goals the whole entire time. But I really I've highlighted Cheese as an impact player all online line game. But you say he was yep. what? Number one uh, number in goals, one per, goals game. per game. And yep. in North America, right there, he had sex. What were the shots? Uh, he had three shots the entire series. You can't win a series like that, man. The Bear, he's doing his damage but you got to have cheese be the catalyst. And Furia, honestly, they ended up with less demos, 16 to 12, to Luminosity 16, but it didn't feel like Luminosity really games. had the impact yeah. And yeah. like it should have. It just felt like this whole series was Fury, just tons of offensive pressure. We talked about that going into this game. That's what Fury likes to do. If they can play offense, they're going to beat pretty much everyone here. It's can you put them on the back foot? They could not do it. A lot of times Magic Bear was trying to move up field to get those midfield passes going, but it just did not work right. at all. And Furia, talk about lost. I think he's a key factor on this team. Two goals per game here. Yeah. He was on fire. Yeah, you, I mean, listen, you score in buckets like that, and you're going to beat a lot of teams. Certainly, Luminosity did not come ready to play defense, and that is what's going to get you out of the Swiss. They've got to be a lot more consistent. They have to 100%. be a lot more involved in the offense as well. And here's the thing. We look at these highlights. A lot of these goals are not anything amazing. It's just pressure goals uh, for the most part. Right here, like, that's a basic double tap, but no one's in net. No one's in net for that pass. A lot of it is just pressure, pressure, pressure. There's not enough boost for LG. I think if you ask Luminosity what they feel about that series, they're going to say, well, we didn't shoot well, we didn't defend well, but otherwise we did okay. <laughs> it's, 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 LG is a good team. They seem to work on passing, shooting, yep, yep. accuracy, boost Defense. management, well. position. It, it, is, it is unfortunate for them, too, because I mean, this is we're playing rounds one and two of the Swiss today. This is not their only match of the day. They got to go home, get back to the drawing board immediately and reset. And also on top of that, they went 03. So they're going to have a harder 0-1 uh, match because they didn't get that game differential advantage. So normally you would want to get a game or two. Maybe then you pull an, an SSA team or an APAC where you can possibly bounce back. But now because of that 03, they might have to play a tougher team, maybe another NA team, maybe one of those, uh, maybe a rule one. So it's going to yeah. be a little bit tougher of a road. Yeah, it's going to be tough for them. But as much as LG didn't ball out, I do think that Furia was sensational. They really oh, showcased yeah. Oh, yeah. how good this new iteration of the roster is with the mechanics, with the consistency, with the offensive pressure. You want to see Yan doing it on land like he used to back in the day, and he's doing it. Law stepped up significantly oh, in yeah. my estimation. Okay? Not only was he playing good on offense gifts, but it was the defensive touches. He would jump up so early for great defensive reads to alleviate any pressure that LG wanted, and that's going to be significant going up against some of the best of the best. That's kind of the fury we were accustomed to maybe yep, yep. a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, where every time someone's on the ball, you're kind of at the edge of your seat going, oh, is this another highlight? And oftentimes in that series, it was. I feel like Furia's challenge for round two is going to be not like a sl this is not a good warm up for them in round number one. Like this is not no. they're not going to go in being like all right, remember to like to like to, th th there's not going to be free nets and to say whoever yeah. they're facing off in the one and zero in the round two. So we'll see how things look for Furia as things move forward. We have uh, many more matches to go here for round number one. Again, two streams going on. Make sure you got them both pulled up. You want to catch up all the actions. The matches are going pretty quickly over there on the alt stream. There's been sweeps all day. BDS versus Elevate. Elevate nearly win a game against they BDS. They had overtime. They had overtime they in game three. It was possible. But Europe now they're three and zero so far round one they are we got two more matches over there on twitch.tv slash rl esports before we are set for round number two same story here on the main broadcast we got complexity versus vitality waiting in the wings they are on deck they are getting warmed up right now before that though we got to go through an excellent match we've all been excited for falcons versus og esports a team i pronounce dead halfway through the split has made it to the major and they're trying to take on the big dogs from mina they went 0-3 in swiss and qualified 
qualifier one, no team in NA or EU or pretty much anywhere has come in last in a tournament and then made it to a major. Not only wow. did they do that, they did it when now North America only has four spots, made it even harder. So Kam has now done both, where he won a regional and then didn't make a split, <laughs> and then he came in last and <laughs> makes it up to a major. So hats off to him, but... But this is their reward. Exactly. That's your round one Falcons, matchup. This team is nuts. They are perfect in Mina. Every time they play rule one, outside of one time where it was close, it looks like Falcons are just completely dominating. We saw rule one earlier play gentle baits pretty close. So if Falcons are dominating rule one that badly, they are definitely one of the top dogs here. Stacks, tell me, tell the people, why do you believe this Falcons team is making it all the way to the grand finals? Because I believe that with the twins, and TRK, first of all, we knew the Twins were incredible. We were awesome killers, yep. almost unstoppable. Mm. Now you add a young phenom, he's still pretty young in TRK, and he's getting more and more maturity. He's getting a lot more experience. You add all this mechanical prowess and the chemistry around him, Boy, they look like one of the toughest outs in this tournament. They sure do. And I think when you saw Ruin earlier, you really saw the value that TRK, T TRK of my apologies, used to bring to the Ahmed Khaled duo. Because without him, they just looked a little lost. The defense wasn't as consistent. Now, he's bringing the offensive firepower, but then Rule 1, they don't have that solid brick wall defense that they used to have. And that's what TRK brings. But then you have arguably the best defender in the game, and Roas also to join him. And that's what just makes them nearly impossible to be well on the other side things we were we were talking about og and the craziness yeah. that com has been through all the different ups and downs here i mean the, the all three of these players such long lengthy stories in rocket league they are veterans of many rosters many ups and downs and here they are here they are again trying to prove they've still got it the leftovers of na we talked about gentle mates the leftovers of europe where three players just coming from three different teams that were top teams in north america to combine forces and it didn't look pretty at first qualifier one last place qualifier two oh and two in swiss they had to bounce back sweep that and make some runs back to back top fours they look so much better they look like a true number three seed in north america and the best thing they've got going for them is that perseverance i think a lot of teams when you look at the mentality of a lot of north american players in particular maybe just pro players in general the first event when they have just an absolute disaster class, I think 90% of teams would have folded, yeah. just packed it in like, all right, well, this sucked. It didn't work out. Let's figure out who we're going to play with next split. No, they got right back to it and they found a way to survive and advance here to the major. It's, it's not just it, the, the, the first event, they go out 03 as badly as possible. The second event, they start out 02 yeah. and then they have to reverse sweep the Swiss. If, they're, if you weren't done in your head at the end of the first event, halfway through the second event you're absolutely toast you're in the ground and yet somehow these players i mean they've lost more than most of the players here have played oh, so yeah, yeah. You, you put you talk about experience <laughs> on this roster and they they know how to deal with this adversity and then you back it up with a world champion coach as well yes, with tournament so the experience is there i think Kam even said uh, in an interview we all have lost so much that we just know how to lose at this point. We're not too concerned about that. We know what we put together. We trust in one another. Qualifier one, yeah, did not go their way. They had to figure some things out. But when they did, they've looked fantastic. The problem is they do have to turn it around. Like now they've got their opportunity mm -hmm. at this land. This is a chance to kind of wipe everything away. Because look, you show me a good loser, I'll show you a loser. This team has to start <laughs> winning now. What? And what better time than now? This is it, folks. Let us know who you think is going to win. Hashtag FLCN for the Falcons. Hashtag OG there. Also, shout out to Kam. He said he was working out uh, between during the offseason, trying to be in the best shape of his life at this major. Yep. It's looking great there. You were talking about TRK. You know, we were talking about veterans yep. of this roster. You're going back to 2021, first major, first LAN of the new era, coming out of the quarantine era. TRK comes in as a sub for Sandrock Gaming there because O'Callaghan <laughs> couldn't make right. it. Now here he is as a star on his team. Yeah, he is the star of the team in my estimation. He is the leader. He ha they have given him the keys to the Falcons organization and saying, lead us to the promised land, TRK. And he's got to, he, and that is his plan. Thinking of TRK especially all the way back then you talk about Sweden Wave. I mean he joined Ahmed. I think there's a question mark who was better then, but I don't think it's a question anymore. TRK is the best player in the region. Mm -hmm. He's got the twins with him. Falcons three and O in Mina. And they want to continue that momentum right here, right now against OG. Yeah, TRK, his goals per game uh, over 1.3. And the defense of Falcons only give up 1.44. So nearly he's outscoring every other team they play by himself. That's how good he is. Falcons, the one question mark is 
is they're not really tested in MENA right now. Rule one, they have their number. So when you come to this international play, when they do get tested, how will they fare? We said that about Fury as we well, did. and Fury just never got <laughs> tested. So maybe that happens here again with Falcons, but that's always going to be a question mark until they play these top teams, or even a scrappy NA team like OG. What, what is the, big, the biggest strength, Gibbs, that you see on OG? The, the thing that Falcons is going to be tested in the most? I think, that, like, honestly, it's going to be game to game. They're not going to get flustered, for sure. It's going to be a battle every single time like even if there is maybe a five nothing game up for falcons which i think can absolutely happen with that dynamic offense i don't think og cares they will reset every single game and make it back at square one there are some teams maybe like luminosity where a fury wins that first game huge they win game two huge i don't think that's going to happen here i think falcons will get one of those games where they're just a clicking on offense, yep. but OG is going to reset yep. every single time. We talk about Nolly. He was fall major champion last year. He was on the best team in North America. Mm. You talk about JNAPS. He was on G2. Oh, G2 and then, baby. Um, like if he won made worlds, who knows what happens with them? So all three players are insanely talented. Yeah, what OG has to do to come out victorious here is they have to play some of the best defense they've ever played. Yeah. Mm. You know, and that's that's been their strength. I mean, they don't give up a ton of goals. They don't give up a ton of opportunities. Neither does Falcons. The problem is Falcons also average about three and a half goals a game. Yeah. Granted, against competition where it's not nearly as deep, so they can run those numbers up mm -hmm. against some of the weaker teams. OG doesn't have that benefit. But even at the top, you know, who are the teams that they have to square off against? J, uh, G2 and Gen G would yep. be the teams that would really test them offensively. They have to channel some of that if they're going to hold Falcons in check. And the last time we saw OG play, I mean, they lost in six to Gen G squad. They yeah. did win open qualifier number three in NA. They beat G2 twice in that in that qualifier. And OG, I mean, they had some fantastic plays. They lost up a lost up an overcommit, I believe, from Com. They're being a little aggressive right there in overtime, and then Abjack just tapped the ball in. They were neck and neck with Gen G, one of the best teams in this tournament, in my estimation. And I do believe that the poise and experience that they have, all three of these players are proven winners on the land stage. OG didn't have that, and it gives. I think you bring that up. That yeah. once that period started cooking, OG they didn't really. Yeah, because they had Magic Bear and Cheese, like two players that you know don't have as much experience. But that's not the case here with OG. But you talk about like maybe even qualifier one. Like I honestly don't care about what any teams did in qualifier one. That's the first one after a long off season. True. You're figuring out your team, and OG, yes, it was terrible. But ever since then, and sure, the like qualifier two began bad. But ever since then. They've looked fantastic. It's only G2 and Gen G that are better than them uh, in North America. It's just how big of a gap is that? If Qualifier 1 hadn't happened, we wouldn't be talking about OG's Swiss running Qualifier 2 at all. We'd be like, eh, a little bump yeah, whatever. Right. Yeah. It, was, it was only because it was preceded by And that was with the worst pros moment. power ranking them number four. The pros yeah. knew that OG were the real deal. Yeah, they are here. They are in the top four of North America. Can they continue forward at the world stage, taking on the best from the Middle East here? Let us know what you think. Make sure you get your votes in. It was hashtag FLC and hashtag OG stacks. What's your pick? I got Falcons. <laughs> I mean, listen, you heard me say earlier, I, I have did. this team going all the way to the grand finals. And a, a big part of it is the fact that they were able to kind of build this roster with TRK, bringing in the twins. Again, that's chemistry that you cannot substitute. There's no other team <laughs> in this tournament sure. that is going to have the kind of chemistry that Team Falcons has. And I think chemistry wins out at this level. So I think going into the day, I had Falcons. And after what we've seen by the regional play of North America and Mina, it's still a slight advantage to Mina as well. So I'm even more confident now in my Falcons pick. So okay. Go to Falcons. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of people expect me to go uh, go to OG, and I would love to, but I can't do it. The ah. Falcons, man, they're just simply too talented, has especially on awesome. the defensive end. And I think that OG, they, ah, I got to see more mechanically from them to beat that defensive brick wall that Falcons have. I want to say this is this is OG in the blue, Falcons in the orange for the coin here. That's going to be OG. No, I said OG in the blue. Yes, Falcons in the orange. So OG <laughs> for the coin there. <laughs> <laughs> They're both blue teams in my head. We're I, trying to help you out, Coin. We're I also have Falcons. I also have Falcons <laughs> on this one. I mean, we, we've talked about the, the, the recipe for success here. Is there a player you're looking at here, Snacks, for OG to step up if they want to make this a five-game series? I mean, I, I think it's in Jane Apps we trust, right? Oh, because absolutely. he's got the most experience out of anybody here. And, you know... He's kind of been on this tour of like, is this the end of the line? No, he's still got another one in him. And I think 
I don't think he's ever going to retire until he's actually in a spot to win another big one like he was in Fort Worth a couple of years ago. Just hop in the knapsack. Knapsack, like, he can win series on his own at times. On land, he can perform. So I'm looking for Jay Nepstein. He's absolutely huge land player here. Falcons, the favorite on the desk, are the favorites in chat. Are they the favorites on the field? Only one way for us to find out. The next game continues on here. Round one. It's a doozy, folks. Each of these teams trying to start off their Copenhagen story right falcons versus og to continue round one Ooh, we got a banger on our hands falcons versus og i see y'all in the chat not believing in og but you know sometimes after regional one they're, they're, they're on their redemption arc when you they're get turning up to the major expect the unexpected I know, right but we'll see what happens. Right now, Falcons have looked incredible leading up to Major One. Their first round match against OG begins. Here we go. Falcons, gotta make up for Mina. Roll one, not looking so hot. But Falcons, offense on fire, defense on fire. The stats inflated because have they really faced a team that has pressured them to this point? That's what we want to see. A lot of people saying Falcons could be the could be the winners of this tournament. But OG, they've been the underdogs in NA. People have been underestimating OG for too long. Yeah, now, especially after seeing that first round matchup between Fury and Luminosity, as G2 is playing right now against Pioneers, North America starting to take the stage. But right now, already, we're seeing a little bit of pressure coming out for Team Falcons. Noli's on the back wall, has to watch out for Roas. He hits it straight to him, and Kaliers tries to play that off the back wall, but Com's there to carry that straight into the midfield. Good challenge here. OG been able to hold on defensively, and Noli is going to get the first goal. And a great challenge, 50, but it lands and recovers beautifully by OG. Com has to take it high, and TRK pops it up, and you thought Roas would have had that touch to clear it, but OG faster and better, even despite the early pressure from Falcons. Definitely a good start there. I like that play that from OG Noli in a perfect spot and lands the shot. Going to be very important for OG to come out with a strong start here against Falcons. We know they can definitely bring themselves back into series as they continue to get on that trend. Here's JNAPS now looking for the double follow-up, but Roas able to get that clear, and Kaliers can meet this ball in the midfield. Things starting to settle in here. You can see the confidence coming out of OG, but there's still time here for Falcons to get back in it. Yes, OG. I've been confident facing one of the scariest looking teams coming into this major. They had a plan, and I'm looking to see that come into fruition here in the Swiss as Nully goes up the wall, waits, delays against TRK, gets OG in a position to ramp up this offense. This back wall isn't landing towards OG in the right way, and now that Com is demoed, Team Falcons want to counterattack, but Nully's positioning in the midfield will slow this down. Kalir's up high, Jane just tips it away from JNAPS, but Com's positioning in the midfield gives a chance for OG to start off plays like this as JNAPS couldn't connect on the pass. I do like the light touch, though, from Kaliers to get the clear out. Gives it straight to Roas, who's able to get that one all the way downfield. Now you're starting to see TRK really get OG kind of cramped up there in the midfield. Chance for Roas. No, it's off the post. Could have been a chance for Falcons to get on the board. Now there's going to be a couple of demos in the back end. Lots of space here as Noli picks this one up. But Falcons halfway through game one, not able to get on the scoring board. Yes, OG connecting well in the midfield, though, so it's been tough for Falcons to keep up the momentum that they've had. Demos, though, very physical. OG already with a goal. You know that Com is that vocal guy. They run off of adrenaline, and OG are getting real close. Noli with oh. a shot, and it creeps in in the corner. More pressure from OG on the counter. Y'all love this out of Com. He ends up playing it high, forcing TRK to get an air touch, and Noli has so much room to shoot. Bar down and in off the top. OG now shooting 50%, two for four. Falcons have shot four shots as well. They haven't been able to get on the board yet. And we're starting to see the kickoff there. Good fake kickoff. Noli tries to send it across. JNF pre-jumped it, but Roaz was able to get it. And now Falcons are going to try to move it back the other way. Ooh, OK. A little fake from TRK to Kaliers, but OG play a good back defense. And that's maybe what's different between these two defenses. Look at Roaz with this control going below. Cobb with the follow-up from Kaliers is there. And it keeps Falcons within one. I like this here from Roas. I mean, look at that control. Gets it right over Noli Force. is the defense here to make a tough save. And JNAP's just in an awkward spot. Great shot from Kaliers. Falcons now bringing this within one. They finally have been able to find some success on offense. And Team Falcons are used to dominating that midfield in their region, so having to play back. OG putting their backs against the wall. Something they haven't really experienced yet. 
but Team Falcons are warmed up, double tap, triple, and Cavaliers evens it up. Back to back here out of Cavaliers. This one right off the kickoff. Look at this. He recognizes he has space and control and just plays that all by himself. Defense from OG starting to struggle, especially after they had such a good start limit. Yes. OG have said, though, they almost play better when their backs are against the wall. They are the Redemption Kings of North America. So this lead slips by them. But Falcons, they're just warming up. They just actually had a Saudi E-League final. So, Land, they're no strangers to Land. I mean, along with a lot of players in this lobby. See Falcons, these passes are starting to become deadly. But Kami's he's that spark plug. He's that vocal leader. Tips it to Jada. Oh! Down. It didn't work out that time. Manoli hesitate on stepping up as the third man, but wants to play safe, especially with the score. That was a close shot there from Naps, too. Normally he hits those, but yeah, that has only been his second shot, no, third shot of the game here. The more Naps is able to take those shots, the more he is able to get involved. He's had a strong goal participation or goal percentage over in the first half here of this major as we were all getting kind of set up here. But Lawas now plays this one off to the side. Looking to see if he can help set up Falcons. Here we go to the final minute. Falcons keeping oh, the ball close. The Lear's trying to do everything he could to get that one towards middle, but OG now, Tom will bring this one up and he'll try to see if he can set something up. Right now, just a lot of players just taking their time, trying to make sure they don't make a mistake. And Calm has been helping OG transition um, to the offensive end, but Falcons are recognizing that and going for earlier challenges, and OG couldn't find those nice rebounds and those nice passes that they did in the first two minutes of the game. But now OG with control. Falcons await the approach, and it goes maybe to TRK, the 50 to the corner. Calm picks up the corner. 20 seconds remain with space for Calm. Nully fakes the pass, and now Roas gets to fight for this in the corner. And this is where Falcons can ramp up. Killers wins the 50, needs someone to pass, but he's overwhelmed by J Naps. It's a long send away as the last couple of seconds drain by. Nully passing it to no one, right back to Falcons, lands on the ground. Game one goes to OT. Game one OT between Falcons and OG. A good kickoff here for facing OG. J Naps able to get this one off of the back wall. Where's Nully? He's going for the shot, but it's blocked out by Rawaz. Could have been a chance there. Good defense from Falcons, but you can see a little bit of the desperation. Strong performance here from OG, but they did end up letting this game slip away in regulation. Now they're trying to see if they can close it out here. Falcons staying composed even after an early fumble, but look at them fire right back. Kalir is setting us up towards the net. Nully sends it away and TRK almost caught it. But now JNAPS can help them transition, but it's an awkward bounce off the ceiling. But Nully's going to back pass to Calm, and they'd rather keep control. Give up a little space. This is a fake above one defender, but Falcons are stacked. They're ready to fight back. But Nully, with not a lot of boost to work with, needs that second man of JNAPS to help out. But the ball goes past him. It's Falcons, demos, control of the ball. Three on two, not a lot of boost to work with. So Falcons struggling to maintain that pressure. And OG out shooting Falcons, 10 shots to seven here. They have been a force offensively. A lot of people probably thought this would be the other way around. And they've really tested defensively. Can Falcons step up to the task? Of course they can. And who's going to be the one that breaks? Who's going to make that mistake here? His ball back in the midfield. You see Noli taking this one to the corner. Comms there. Tries to play it off the ceiling, but the ball gets away from him. That's what a shot. It was on target. And TRK had to make the save out to the side. Falcons looking for a way up field here. TRK in the back end gets a free ball, but it goes straight to Noli. He's sitting in there on the back end. You can see both teams just trying to get this ball out, passing it in transition, all playing for their teammates. But OG, I mean, the fades, like, going for the ground pinch and then passing it over. OG's offense, you got to keep an eye on them, and Falcons have saved everything thus far. Back wall. No, oh, this is a deadly place to drop it for Jay Naps as TRK disengages. Roa steps up. Kalir is free jumping right behind him. Goes with a shot! Hit that Jolly! What's it there? Falcons! Game one! And look at this, as soon as Roas had that touch, that first touch, Killiers came up to get the shot, and only was on his way back, and he ends up hitting the backflip. That one goes in, and Falcons take game one, almost two minutes into overtime. But that was a very close start to the series. 
you know, first match at the major, you always got to keep in mind, and both these teams knew who they were going to face for a while. So preparation sets in, but I think both these teams looked good out the gates, especially OG, who started with a 2-0 lead. That got closed out immediately by Kaliris, who got a hat trick this game. What an MVP. Yeah, I mean, Kaliris played phenomenally, especially when you consider those back-to-back -back goals that he was able to get to get Falcons back into the game. Noli, though, also, even though he had the backflip that ends up being the reason why OG lose, you got to think offensively, him just showing strong confidence in his shot was big for OG to get ahead early. As we take a look at our Mobile One high performance replay, definitely a lot of high performance here. And yeah, you can see it even from Jay Nemes' perspective, that backflip that ends up happening from Noli. And it's unfortunate, but you know, we got a long series to go. And I love to see Calm just be that setup guy for OG in the midfield. It worked out for them a lot. The passes, Falcon started to break that up and really put the pressure on someone like Calm going for challenges. And you thought OG were just playing close enough that they could uh, win the 50 or recover the 50 at least. And Falcons just started to break up a lot of that structure and got comfortable themselves. Yeah, and now we get into game number two here on Forbidden Temple. Small adjustments maybe needed to be made here, but a very close start. The question is going to be, can OG start to make some adjustments now they've had some time to talk it over? I like that Falcons are not afraid to play back, and maybe you need to with Calm working Ooh. the ceiling like that. Goes to the back wall, and TRK managed to grab the corner boost and can take it up high, can go long. And Kaliris even steps up to put a surprising and deadly shot in, but blocked away by OG. TRK gets demoed, wanted the challenge, and OG can step up, but great control out of Roas. Great control, too, and j -Nap's also getting in on that physic physical play. Do want to see him also in the shooting department. Oh, he, that one gets past him, though. Kaliris was trying to look for a light <laughs> touch pass. No, and he got it. Falcons score first in game two. And the tricky part is changing up the pace of that shot. I mean, Kaliris, look at he's killing that back wall, maybe threatening a double tap, and you position it beautifully in the bottom corner with less speed, and the defender thought it was coming in much quicker. So an early lead for Falcons. Now for OG, a little bit of space here off the kickoff. TRK playing it to the side wall. He's going to follow it up. Rawas actually stole boost in the back end. Pass straight down to Kaliris. It was a perfect play, but the defense was there from OG. You can see Falcons wasting no time to get back into this game and try to see if they can extend the score line. It's going to be up to OG to make sure they don't slow down. Here's TRK to Rawas. Rawas trying to get it back to TRK. He jumped. got a piece of Noli there, but the ball ends up going back to OG as now they look for a way upfield. Yeah, Jay Naps with the recovery, gets stopped by TRK in the corner. Nully steals the corner boost, so TRK is uh, running on fumes right now, and that's where Comp can take charge, but he can't break through that right side, not with Kaliris in that way. The Jay Naps assesses how we can challenge this. Nully steps up from the back to the front, pushed away. Team Falcons have barely any boost to work with, so the clear is nice, but it'll be all up to Kaliris to get something done. Yeah, now he's able to keep that one into the corner. It was good, though, Falcons were able to get that out, especially Especially how as low boost as they were. If OG would have kept that in play, could have started a lot of consistent offensive pressure. But again, Falcons able to manage and they're able to keep this one a one goal game. We're approaching that three minute mark now. And you see Com. Nice touch there in front, just trying to get this one around. You see TRK on the back wall. He's backwards, but still makes a challenge. Just making sure they don't give anything here for free. Noli gets that one off the back wall. Clears and Roaz both went up. TRK trying to keep this one back into the midfield here. Falcons trying to fight their way in, and OG are trying to get a little bit more creative, but they've been very slow here, both teams in the shot department as we approach that halfway mark. OG only have one shot, and Falcons only have two. That would be the third one there that just got recorded. Team Falcons have had their backs against the wall and able to break out now, now that they got boost and needing to find those passes that really caught OG off guard in game one as Kaliris has so many defenders to break through when JNAP sends it all the way back. Nolly versus TRK in the 1v1 with that demo. Falcons relieve that offense from their backs and this goes to the back. Kaliris threads the double tap and he gets it. Beautiful play here from Falcons. It starts with TRK. He gets that first touch. JNAP tries to cut it. Calm wants to go for it. Nolly again just a misread off the back wall, and Kaliers is able to get the goal home. Falcons' defense has been superb. They've limited the amount of shots OG can take this game. And not only that, they're applying a lot of strong pressure on their own. They're attacking at the right time when OG seems weak is on defense. Kaliers traveling. Nolly trying to bump up off the ball, but can you stop him? You can't! 3-0 for Falcons! 
Walking. Disgusting. This one is all clears. Beautiful touch as he tries to keep this one up. Gets the flip reset and pass the entire OG team as he takes it from one side of the field to the other. 3-0 Falcons. I like seeing Calm's reaction to calls like this. A little eyebrow raise like, all right, I was not aware of your game. No, G, I would, I, would, I would like to see some game. Zero goals. I see you're here to ball. I see. I would like to see some ball, but ooh. Nelly forced to make that save. As he knows, he has to make up for how that overtime ended. J Naps with the ball. Nully disrupting, bumping people around, and goes right to Kalir's. He has Rowa, second man, and he gets the back wall maybe even above Nully's head. But JNAPS has his back. All of OG trusting each other. That's something they wanted to improve on from Regional 1. Trusting themselves, trusting each other. And look at OG all forced their way through to the blue half. Now that second touch from Nully, setting it up towards the center of the net. TRK won't let it happen. Now Falcons, can they maintain control? TRK's first to the ball, and OG forced to make a goal line save. Clears with the rebound. He's a scary guy to worry about. Roas on the left. So much space control that Falcons have to work with. No G don't have any boost to have anything to say about it. Yeah, it feels like Falcons kind of own the midfield there. Even, I mean, Clears there gets the initial challenge, able to get the follow up, doesn't have to worry about anything. And final minute here. He, oh my goodness, a nice little play there where he tried to fake it out for TRK, see if he can put something on. But this one does look like Falcons have this one decided. OG have definitely slowed down, slowed the pace. I mean, especially considering from game one where they had about, about 10 shots. They've only gotten three this game. And another counterattack play and another goal for Falcons as they keep things moving forward. I see OG trying to reorganize themselves in game one. It was a lot of calm leading that charge. I'm seeing JNAPs have to take the ball high. and. OG figuring out how they can reinvigorate that offense that got him such a good kick, uh, kick start in game one. But Falcons, they could have no boost, they could have all the boost and their passes. And it's really OG sometimes misreading their back wall defense. Wow, 3 0 for G2 is a nice score. We'll see if how this one will shake up. 4 0 for Falcons with 22 seconds left. OG, they just can't beat themselves up too much about this. Yeah, I, I, you know. In the best of five here in the Swiss stage, no tactical timeouts, but after that fourth goal, you can really see OG starting to talk things over. It seems like they're just taking as much time as possible to figure things out here as they are on the verge of getting swept. Final few seconds count down, ball will hit the ground, and Falcons will take game two in a dominant 4-0 scoreline. They look mad chill. <laughs> they are so locked in. But you know that OG uh, just, they actually release videos of their comms during matches and they could get scored on and they're like, <laughs> their first thing they say is unlucky and then they just focus on the game plan forward. OG know how to adapt and, and play from behind. They've done this many times, whether it's in regional one, even in, was it regional two or regional three where they were like 0-2 in Swiss and managed to bounce back. You cannot count out OG quite yet. No, not at all. If there's any team that has been in this situation so many times, it is the players on OG, JNAPS, Noli, and Com. They've all been in high pressure situations on a live environment. Let's take another look at the mobile and high performance replay. It should be the Team Falcons high performance replay from the way they were playing. But, yeah. And they look unstoppable at this point. But OG, they did have a strong game one contention. Just felt like that one got away from them. Now they've got to really lock in. Otherwise, this series is going to be all Falcons. And it's going to end very, very soon. Yeah, yeah. And I know that there's a lot of hype, even chat is behind Falcons, but there's a lot of people that came here to the event to support OG that, um, you know, we got to talk to Com's dad and Com's mom yesterday. That yeah, yeah, lot, lots of uh, parental support there on the side of OG. Big shout out to Com mom, Com dad, and everybody else who's been supporting uh, either at home for, for this squad. But now, They've got to lock in. Everybody's got to lock in. There's definitely going to be nerves on the side of the OG fan club here as Falcons right now. Oh, Rawas! Almost a great goal here off the jump. OG got to be awake and ready with how Falcons are out there already. Early demo from Kaliers to maintain this momentum from Falcons. TRK hoping to break through that right side. The 50 goes up. JNAPS is there. Support coming out of OG who have to play a little closer together. They want to uh, execute these passes that worked out for them so well in game one. But Falcons, their defense hasn't been tested quite yet. It's really interesting though. Falcons on defense, I've seen them double commit pre-jump a couple of times here this series. They will all do their part to make sure that nothing uh, gets gets past them. And 
OG also have to keep their head on the swivel there as well. I saw an uncharacteristic whip there from Noli. Good double there from JNaps, and Noli was up for it, but so was TRK. Had total respect from JNaps on the play and positioned accordingly. Now TRK, chance here to go all the way down the field. Got a bump on Kamra Watts, a little late there, so JNaps will be able to play this towards Noli. Noli has JNaps waiting in the middle, but not able to get the pass to him at all. Naps trying to try to keep this in as Rawas and Falcons look to clear it out, but no one able to read that touch. <laughs> Calm able to keep this one in. Rawas in a tough spot. Noli's there trying to get in midfield, but no one's there to take the shot. This is a scramble. Rawas handled that uh, 1v2 quite well. That's a close one. Falcons know how to fire back. And OG have had to put up a layered defense because Falcons have been good at finding those rebounds and catching OG off guard. Long clear. Oh, oh. Yes, he couldn't stop it. Wow. He just was not ready for the power here on this one. Big shot from Tom, and then you see him go up, and he just doesn't have the boost in the tank to get that one over his net. Helps redirect it in. And OG gifted a goal here at the start. Can they maintain the lead against a team as scary as Falcons? Kam is just on the hunt. Aggressive in and out of game, and that's where OG just needed one to fire up those engines again, at least metaphorically. Falcons, though, their defense, it just creeps by them! OG with a second one! And you can see just kind of the impact there, a little sit back as you watch this one go in. Noli gets the bouncer, a little miscommunication between TRK and Rawas there. And now two goals here from OG. Can they maintain is the big question. Yeah, he brought up those double commits from Team Falcons. Well, maybe that one, they would have went for one there. It would have worked out. Now Falcons still searching for their first goal. And OG just colliding in, becoming a lot more physical in the field to make the space that they need. As Nully nose down, goes maybe back to Roas. No, he misses that. So OG want to move forward, make that space. JNAPS almost to the ceiling, running out of boost, and there's no one there to back him up. So possession back to Falcons. The pass maybe too quick for TRK, maybe a home run for Roas, but with how slow that ball was going, OG had time to set up and react as TRK towards the wall. Kalir saw the challenge come out, or at least a prevention from the back wall as Falcons want to do everything they can to keep going. Something looks a little strange here, though, for Falcons. They look uncomfortable. Lots of challenges where cars are facing backwards. First touch is not necessarily really amounting to anything. Thing. And the shot possession here from offense, they haven't really yielded too many shot opportunities there. TRK, he was too far forward. So Rawas has to come in and take the challenge. Now TRK, he got the mid boost, but he also got demoed here. So now it'll be Noli, ball of the hood, flick over one. And you're seeing TRK again, right after coming off the demo, trying to get the clearance back in. It just doesn't show any real sign of control of the ball. And I think it's because of OG just kind of eliminating the spaces. Noli tried to take a quick shot, but Kalia's got there quickly. Oh, I'm glad Kalia's got there, because that was looking like a, an OG 3-0 at this point. Minute 38, here's TRK with space, double commit from OG, but it's a long send back, and Falcons need to make sure that third man isn't necessarily in that neutral third, but far enough back. You don't want to give up an open net like you have, and OG for now, calm, a little bit disrupted, has the back pass to Null. He's in a better position. Team Falcons smell blood in the water, and they're still searching, but Kalir's going to get high enough, baby. It's oh. in for TRK, it's who it is. He threaded the needle here on this play. You see Rawas here starting to play, you get the playoff calm, not necessarily the best touch. JNAPS is just not in a good spot, and he can't recover because he had to dodge two demos. And TRK, perfect placement here. Falcons with a chance to equalize. They got a minute, 16 seconds to do it. Falcons have been in that shadow even when OG, oh well, no longer in that shadow. It's getting further and further away. Great kickoff by OG. Kickoff here, I mean, Com sets that one up so well off the back wall, not even Rawas was expecting it, and naps right under the crossbar here, regaining the two-goal lead and the safety for OG. You know, OG came in with a plan, a special for Falcons. Now Falcons sheen up off kickoff, looking to add. They only have a minute five left, <laughs> and Kalir's, his 50 gets stifled, Nully pushes forward, OG. Want to keep Falcons locked in. They don't have to go for more goals. OG just need to stop Falcons from ramping up like we know them to do in the second half. Now Roas with no boost to work with. It's up to Kalirs and TRK. They're the ones with resources.
forces, but OG are threatening the nets, and JNAPS can go for it, but man, I think Calm got demoed. Yeah, they, they end up getting demoed. He's gonna be in the back end here, but also, you have to think, OG just have to play the clock here. They know how to do that very well. Nats keeps this one close. Killiers on top of the ball. Ooh, no, we got a piece of it. Now this one goes into the corner. And Roas, not a lot of boost to work with, but OG have managed to stop Falcons from turning this bleed into a hemorrhage. Stealing away game three, keeping themselves alive in this series. The brooms of the reverse sweep will stay in the closet for now, but you can see that there's hope. There's Copenhagen after all, the ideally cope for OG as this clock winds down to zero and OG will be taking game three. OG get a win here in game number three and they continue on as they try to survive here in this best of five with Falcons. Initially off the start of the game, you had that error there from Rawas. No, not enough boost to be able to get the redirect right. And OG took that, continued to apply more and more pressure. We saw a quick goal. Everybody on OG able to get into involved scoring wise. And now there's a chance here for them if they can continue to build off of this. The question always was going to be once they got that two goal lead, were they going to be able to hold on? You start to see Falcons getting get going, but I will say. This felt really uncomfortable for Team Falcons here, all over the field on offense and on defense. I wonder if that continues on or if they're going to be able to use this time to get things together. And uh, Kalir has had a quiet game, surprisingly, after what a hat trick in, in game one. So OG starting to understand, stop letting Falcons have space when they have the ball and stop the feed going to Kalir's. And that forces Roas and TRK to step up. As TRK and Kalir's, that first and second man, have worked out so beautifully together throughout this region. They're going for the perfect split, the perfect season. They haven't lost a regional. So Falcons uh, not used to being in a position like this. Here we go, game four. Will OG send us to game five today? I don't think we've gone there yet. Well, will Falcons oh. be able to close this one out? Already saw TRK off with a great start, trying to get a little solo effort. OG was good defensively. Here's Roas, so oh, almost able to get that pass. Nabs, the Nats had it read really well. OG definitely playing a little bit slower here, giving up a little bit of space to midfield, but they don't really feel too threatened initially. It's where Wash tries to push that one up, and TRK gets it over one. Calm, no boost in the tank really for him, and, or OG, but he was able to get that ball, get a little piece of it, buy some time. Already though, Falcon, <laughs> the pressure pays off. No one able to stop Kalirs from scoring the first one. Yeah, Falcons saw that OG were shaken and made sure they were stirred at the end. Everyone jumping up for this ball. No G uncomfortable off the start, but Falcons having to play closer because in their region, they could go for these long free jump passes. And that was something that you had to take a note of as Falcons wanting to pass through, go into the orange half, but it's mixed up there by OG through the corner. Few demos, weakens that OG offense as Calm maintains possession as long as he can to buy time for JNAP's two step up and throws a shot. Clears forced to make the save off the post and Nully is not even gonna let them clear it out. Maybe faking that oh. pass to JNAP's got everyone jumping, but doesn't decide to commit to the shot. He wanted the flip reset to Nabs, but you can see he got a, one extra touch more than he needed to. The ball got sent the other way. Calm up though early, plays this one off the ceiling. TRK in a tough spot, that's a pinch going straight to Nolly. He's gonna send it to the side. Calm able to pick this up, he's got enough boost to make a play. Going for the flip reset, got it, but Rawas was there to stop him. JNAB's high balls, trying to set up Nolly, but Kalir's good read on that, tracked it well. Falcons trying to see if they can set up a counter. This one goes straight across the net, and Rawas is gonna take that every single time. It was a dangerous play, and Falcons took advantage. Yeah, Kalir sets up TRK, calm mystery off the back wall, and Rowas centered in front of the net, receiving that beautifully. And Falcons are not letting OG get multiple touches. It's only been one. Yes, they play back, but they don't let OG's offense develop as it did before. But Nully goes forward. Nully again with the second touch. Not allowed to do that. Kalir's challenges, and TRK, the ball gets past them, and Rowas forced to make a save. But Falcons always have that third man back. That was such a good stop there from Rawas. I mean, the ball was coming at a high speed, killed it right in front. So he was able to get a good follow-up touch there. That's exactly what you want to see there on the defensive line from Falcons. And no surprise now that they're in this position, up by two, three minutes to go. 
What is OG gonna do here playing from behind? Looking for clearance, he's trying to pass it to each other, but you can see Falcons cutting off the space. That was a good challenge there from clears. Yeah, Team Falcons winning the 50s, but letting JNAPS go for clears. No, it's shut down again. Midfield presses by Falcons. Now JNAPS can work the right side. Roas will climb up the wall to help. Now that you've demoed someone from OG, Falcons, the counterattack. Oh. Somebody had to worry about 2 one, one. Whoa. Bomb Makes the save with the backflip. Noli chasing after TRK on his tail. Forces him out of the play. And OG, at least he can flick it above, and Clears won't let that get away too fast. I mean, that was an incredible save from Calm. 2v1 situation where Ross was waiting there on the wing, and they tried to play it right over him. Just got the perfect touch here. It kind of keeps OG a little bit in the conversation. They need to get two here, and they only have two minutes, 10 seconds to go. Snaps, tries to drop that down, but there's no one there from OG. Calm's actually across here. Where Ross trying to take his time. Falcons got the midfield, but OG trying to fight for it. TRK wins that challenge now into the orange corner. Clears, picks this one up, trying to play it off the back wall, but it's getting sent straight to JNAP. TRK got a demo on Noli in the back end, but here's Calm now. Good control, good first touch, gonna play a 50 out. No one able to get the follow-ups here, so Noli will get a free shot, played the ball high, follow-up from Naps. He gets a light touch to try to keep this control here. As Noli to Calm, Ooh. but Calm moved a little bit too fast. It's dangerous <laughs> in front of the goal line, but it was cleared away. Man, that just kept going out of OG, finding those rebounds instead of going for passes, working that back wall, and just recovering that much faster as Roas wanting to land right on to Calm as Falcons still throwing shots down. TRK manning, managing to maintain possession for Falcons, but OG tip it towards Roas, who's that solid pillar in the back and always going for saves, buying time for Falcons defense to rotate back in position, Calm! What? The save what? No. TRK is crazy! And OG were too far forward. TRK steps up, grabs the ball. JNAP's on the back wall, manages to stabilize OG. Last minute of play for OG's match one of Swiss on the line. And OG had a great opportunity there. They had two forward, but no one was able to get a piece of the ball. So now Falcons are in a perfect spot. This one, though, TRK has a turn here, does get up quickly to get the clearance. That's going to kill a lot of time here on the clock. He's going to get a follow-up there to force Khan to get the clearance. But free space, free midfield, total control here for Team Falcons. OG will have to force an issue here with 30 seconds left. I don't know oh. if they can do it. And Khalil's bang! That's going to be the one that does it there for Falcons. 3-0, 26 seconds to go. Oh, Falcons were playing so fast on that counterattack. You saw the desperation out of OG. They needed to make that last play work. And it's been frustrating that Falcons defense has been saving everything, even surprising us on how they're pulling that off. And OG, we kept the brooms in the closet. And now Calm at least makes that save. JNAPS puts it off to the side. Falcons with a big statement for Mina. Now that they have two slots at the major, rule one may have fell, but Falcons stood up in the end to soar high in their first match, and Roas will add to the count. What a performance here out of Team Falcons. They showed up and they showed out, of course. We saw what OG could do, and they did have this game close until the end, where Collier stepped up and cemented the series. Now, the rest of this will be a formality as we wait for this one to hit the ground, but man, oh man, what a start for Team Falcons. They take their first match in Swiss. Three to one and a bounce back when you saw Collier's had that kind of slower game and he stepped right up in this final game, three to one in favor of Falcons. Now we get to see some emotion. Now they're all smiles. They were locked in until that series was done because you never know what's going to come out of North America, especially like a team like OG who have been trending upwards ever since they're, they're on this redemption arc since regional one, hoping to prove everybody wrong. But Falcons, a lot of whispers saying they could be the ones to contend Carmine Core and this is a very good start for them. Yeah, and you can see it there too. Good camaraderie there between Falcons and OG as well. I mean, it was a tight match there. Game one was close. Game four was a little bit until towards the end where things really started to fade away. But again, OG also being able to take, I believe it was game three. But Falcons, I mean, they set the tone. They set the temperature in the room. And... They are here to show that they're ready to play. Rawas defensively still looking strong. Kalir's offensively. TRK being able to do a little bit of everything if needed to. 
This is a full, well-rounded Falcons roster. There's no question why they're the one that they are the best team yeah. in MENA going into this. I'm not going to say one. Well, they are one of the best teams. They are definitely the best team in MENA right now. Yeah, I was excited to see the Falcons defense now that they can go up against teams with different play styles and different levels of offenses. And OG had them sweating for sure. It's OG that started with the lead and then that got closed out. Then he had some defensive fumbles by OG that cost them an overtime and some early goals and Falcons. There was no signs of slowing down from them. No, yeah, no signs. There was a little bit of uh, uncomfortableness that we saw out of them, a couple of mistakes there. But they, the fact that they're able to clean things up is going to be a great sign as the Swiss stage continues. We're talking about multiple rounds of Swiss being played over multiple days. And, of course, the crowd. So when you look at teams like this, you need to be able to perform and adapt at the highest level. And Falcons is showing that they can do just that. This was such a fun match to watch, though, seeing everyone collide on a big stage, well, I guess uh, smaller stages on the side here before the crowd days come up, because that's when the pressure is on. But I'm excited to hear from Team Falcons and their thoughts on how Swiss is going. Let's go check in with Leaf. Team Falcons lighten it up. I'm now down here with whom, coach of the squad, uh, I'm hoping to get some, some insight. I, I want all the secrets. Uh, first off, I want to talk about the, the qualifiers coming into this. Absolutely phenomenal, sweeping the entire thing. Uh, I mean, I guess, does that set expectations coming into this? Is, is there a, a wait to continue to perform? أول شيء بنحب نرحب بالكوتش دحوم مدرب فريق فالكونز في البطولة أول شيء مبروك على الفوز وحابين نأخذ رأيك أول شيء مبدئيا تصفيات المينا قدرتوا تطلعوا من غير ما تخسروا أي سيريز فهل هذا زاد الضغط عليكم خلال أو خلينا نقول دخولكم بهاي البطولة ولا كيف كان تجهيزكم؟ الله يبارك فيك يا حبيبنا وطبعا هذا الشيء إننا فزنا سويبات أغلب الأيام تعطينا دافع وثقة إننا نوصل أبعد من كان نقدر عليه في البطولة و. Yep. So performing as well as we did in the qualifiers really boosts our confidence and mm -hmm. gives us the ability that we feel like we can do everything that we uh, every, everything that we want in this tournament and hopefully take the title at the end. Well, it's certainly looking like they can do whatever they want to do out here. Uh, and what makes you guys better? I, I know you can't probably give me the insights. I'm, I'll try to tell, get them, but what makes you better than the rest of the region in, in MENA right now? What is it that separates you? ايش الشغله اللي بتفرقكم عن الفرق الثانيه اللي موجوده عندنا في ريجن المينا؟ العمل الشاق واننا نلعب يوميا ناخذ كل جيم بجديه يمكن هذا السبب اللي خلينا نفرق البقيه. We work hard every single day and we try to practice as much as we can and we take every single game that we play as seriously as possible. That's great. That is a winner's attitude for sure. Now talk to me about the other team in, uh, that's currently here at the major as well. Rule one. There's two spots for MENA now. Very exciting. Do you think they're going to make it out of Swiss, though? هل تقدر تتكلم عن الفرق الثاني الموجود بتمثيل الأريج المينا فريق رول ون؟ هل فكرك حيقدر يتمكن من التأهل من مرحلة السويس ولا إيش فكرك حيصير فيهم؟ إن شاء الله واثقين فيهم إنهم يقدرون يتأهلون للبلايوفس. إحنا معهم بإذن الله. We're supporting them in every way we can, and yeah. we hope to see them qualify and make it through the Swiss stage as well. For you guys specifically, has the team talked about it? Is there a big bad, a team specifically you want to be the ones to take down? هل في أي فريق يعني أنتوا حاسين أنتوا اللي لازم تتخلصوا منهم، أنتوا اللي لازم تقصوهم من البطولة، هل في أي فريق براسك؟ لا صدق بصراحة احنا نحترم كل الأيام وندري كل ما في تيم وصل هنا إلا إنه كويس ويستاهل، فنحترم كل الأيام وندخل بقوة. We respect every single one of the teams that made it here. They made it here because they deserve to be here, and we are giving them all their due respect, and we'll see what they can do in the tournament. That was a fantastic answer, by the way. Congratulations on it. Thank you guys for joining me. But we do have more Rocket League that we're going to need to get to. Coming up next, it's going to be complexity versus vitality. This is a big one. You don't want to miss it. Swiss is carrying its way on into Championship Sunday. This is going to be Sam's best versus the reigning world champions.
OG started off hot, but ultimately couldn't keep up the champs from Mina there. Falcons gonna improve to 1-0. Oh. We'll see who they face off in round two. As soon as we conclude round one, two more rounds, or two more matches to go here. One of those going on right now. Looks like Power over on the B stream currently leading the series 1-0 against Genji. I don't know if that game actually was technically over there, uh, but, but it was it, pretty it, much it was over. over. It was like 5-2 to two, uh, with less than a minute left to go. It was over. And they're calling me crazy on first touch wave. Just we one were. Touch we were calling them crazy. Because I power, if there's going to be a match they win, it's going to be the first one against Gen G. But that's, that's a different that's match. Game one, that's game Okay. Yeah. okay yeah. He's that's, talking about Space Man. Down. He's talking about Space Man. Twitch.tv slash RLE Sports if you want to go watch that go match going on right now. Yeah, but then going to the match that was on the A stream just, just a little while ago, Falcons going up against OG. Falcons, I think that Furia match really was a precursor of what was to come. Falcons, I mean, internationally, NA, OG, they looked better than LG. I oh, think yeah. a significant margin, but Falcons, I mean, they just looked purely just clinical throughout the entire series. Yeah, but it was tough because I think OG in game one had their uh, opportunities. They were up 2 nothing. They went for a weird kickoff strat that kind of put them on the back foot. And then Falcons came back. Then some mistakes as well from OG. They should have won that game one. They should have. A and this series was way more competitive than I thought it might be because I think Falcons are one of those top dogs that could win this entire thing. But OG was right there with them. They did have their moments where they weren't perfect, but this wasn't a bad series overall for them. No, it wasn't. The problem is this ran into killers. I mean, he had nine out of the 12 goals for Team Falcons in that series. Uh, he was absolutely dominant. I mean, think, think about this. Killers had nine goals. There are two players in that series that had more than nine shots. Obviously, Killers and then JNAPs. That's it. Yeah. I mean, he was the offense for Team Falcons. Yeah, 2.25 goals per game. Like, Falcons, when that offense gets going, it looks fantastic. Like, one of the world's best. OG uh, fell apart towards the end of that series for sure. But I think they have to look back on those early games where it was more competitive and take that. And that one game that is huge for them as well mm -hmm. for game differential purposes going into round two. And also, for game differential purposes, Furious sweeping their opponents. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Falcons dropping a game. Does sure. that make it more likely we see Falcons versus Fury in round two? I think so, yeah. yeah. It's hard to do all the math. Well, Gen G just lost one, too. So, yeah, it, it, it's okay. tough, but it is possible. It is okay, tough. okay. You were hoping for that match. We might get to see that one, folks. We'll see if it happens. But well, two more games, two more matches to go before we get done with round one and can set ourselves up for round two here again. Two streams going on. That final round of the alternate stream for round one going down right now. Head over to twitch.tv slash RLE Sports. You want to catch those matches. All three O's so far over there. Can Gen G take a game or maybe Spaceman sweep, come back in some way against power so they don't have just sweeps over there on the B stream. But we got one more game to go here for round one on the A stream and it's a rematch of an of, of all important match from our Boston major last season. Complexity versus Vitality Stacks. Yeah, and this is, I think, if they're, if you're looking at the biggest potential for an upset, ignore what Power's doing right now, I think this is maybe the biggest upset potential here. This is a very strong complexity squad against a Vitality team that came back down to earth a little bit. And when I look at complexity, I remember the team that kind of made their way into the uh, the fall major all the, you know, what was it, two, three years ago. They worked harder than anybody else. And then I think they kind of lost that identity as a team and through adding some parts here and there, I think they've gotten that mentality back. They were the best defense in North America last year. They moved back down to Sam. They bring in Dorito. The defense hasn't been the same necessarily. They lost that rock in uh, AJG. They're trying out new things. But Dorito is the guy to watch to see if Complexity can bring back that defense that they were a pretty good land team, but they would always fall short right at the end in those game fives, in those close matches. So Complexity, they finished ninth at Worlds as well. A lot of people thought they were actually a top eight team there. 100%. It's just when the big games came, they couldn't clutch it up. It's they couldn't clutch it up, but they were always there losing game five, game five to Vitality in Boston, losing in game seven, I believe, to Liquid. And they lost the game seven to uh, maybe Vitality as well at the World Championship. SSG? They lost a couple of game sevens at the World Championship and of course the game five to Vitality. So they were always there every single time. And I guess in their opinion, they need to make the roster change for AJD for Dorito. AJG, better defensive player. Dorito should be a better offensive player. Maybe that's what they needed. On the other side though, the reigning world champions of Rocket League 
back in the house and looking to contend what is a two LAN win streak in the RLCS. And I don't care what you do online. Sure, Vitality hasn't looked that great, but they won the World Championship and they are back. When BDS won the World Championship, they didn't even make that major. So Vitality are still a force. They get to do it in a live environment again. The last time, obviously, was the greatest World Championship run we have ever seen with an 80% win rate. They won 20 games, lost five. <laughs> They are a land team. Sure, they're the three seed in Europe, but that doesn't matter now. Now everyone is back to square run, and these guys have won back-to-back -back land championships, so you can't count them out. Right, and what do they what do they lose? Okay, they lose Ferry. They still add Ferry Peak as a coach, very accomplished in his own right. You know, I, I think that there's a, a lot that's kind of paid attention to there with Farrah going to Carmine Corp, but you've still got this same core. And this man here, Radosin, who has just been solid. That's all he's needed to be. He's he's not going to single-handedly win you a series, but he's not going to lose you a series. And he fits in perfectly with Alpha and Zen. And let's not forget that at the World Championship, all of Vitality said that he was the MVP. Sure, Zen yep. actually got the MVP, but what he was doing on the offensive side, the pressure that he made happen, a lot of them said that he should have won that MVP title. Yeah, and, and it's crazy because he doesn't get the respect that he deserves because he's not nearly as flashy mm -hmm. as everybody else but what do you want you want a proven winner that's what you got in Redosen. you see the two stars there on their jersey the first organization in the history of rocket league to win two world championships vitality trying to continue that streak here of land victories hashtag vit if you think vitality's got it against complexity complexity going to be going for hashtag col there and we were we were talking about that match in boston where they played the very first time Zen played on LAN yeah. in Boston, went up against Complexity. Complexity misses an absolute snore of a goal in overtime that would have sent Vitality into the lower bracket against a feisty rule one. Could have completely changed the story here. You know Complexity fans are still thinking about that one. It's a completely different dimension. Vitality might not even be Boston major champions back then. They might not even be, might not even be world champions if AJG has hit that shot. But also Complexity may have made a couple more plays in that series. It wasn't all on AJG. Yeah. They need to be a better team in general. But that's a different dimension. The fact that the matter is Vitality did win that game and the fact of the matter is they are on a two land win streak. People are counting them out right now. I don't know why. Zen is yeah. still with that guy until proven otherwise and I expect this series to be absolutely phenomenal. Well chat, let us know who you think is going to win in the fan vote and we'll make our predictions up here as well. We'll see how things go. Stacks, what you got? I got Vitality. I, I can't okay. I can't go against them. I mean, they are kind of the top dog until somebody says otherwise. And as much as I'd love to see Complexity spring the big upset here, I got to have Vitality. I think there's only two teams where I wouldn't pick Vitality. Uh, it would be K Corp and BDS if they played them. I think Vitality right now, they deserve at least number three because of what they've done before. The online wasn't great, but I want to see what happens here because if they start popping off, watch out KC and BDS. They might be new favorites. I do believe that Complexity last season, they had a great defense, and they also had a little mystique about them. They could compete against anybody because of that defense. And I do think that since you switched out AJG for Dorito, that hasn't necessarily been the case. That's why Fury has been slapping you around so much. Give me the world champions. Give me Zed. Give me Alpha. Give me Rado. And I'm taking the sweep. It's Vitality. That and makes sense. Yeah. And Complexity. <laughs> Complexity. Uh, uh, complexity. This coin, coin, I believe, has lost every single match this, on A and B. This coin is not good. Uh, let's, let's see. Uh -oh. Let's see. We the can do it here. I coin. have vitality on this one as well. I do think. <laughs> I do think. Uh, I don't know. I would love to have seen AJG get another shot. Exactly. At, oh yeah. But he's not here. Dorito's gonna have to fill in those shoes here, and not, not exactly the shoes you want to be filling. But at this point, I do think there is a little bit of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's, until Vitality loses in this circumstance, it's hard to pick against them. It's possible, though. Land experience, CRR, and Dorito, they have a ton of experience as teammates. When they went to a Gamers 8 two years ago, they were on Guild. They made that magical run to the finals. No one expected that. So see if they can bring that magic back here. We'll see if they can do it, folks. We are ready to play it and ready to close out round number one of the Swiss. Round number two coming up after this match. The reigning champions of the world, Vitality, taking on Complexity to close out round one. Vitality want to get back to their world championship form while Complexity have moved out of NA, but are, they're ready to move their competition out of the way. Looking at Complexity here against Vitality. Team Vitality have not lost an RLCS land yet since the iteration of this roster, but we will see. They struggled in their online regionals leading up to this major. 
And Complexity, I've talked to them before getting into the series. They felt confident. All eyes on Dorito as this series kicks off. So far, both these teams got to feel each other out in match one. Because Vitality, I feel like they got a lot of flack. Like, teams have been figuring them out. Yeah, sure, stop feeding the ball to Zen, but this is still a Super Saiyan team when it comes to the world stage. But this has been a highly contested match to predict. I think a lot of people think complexity can make them sweat, but this is early pressure. Even getting contested off the ceiling. Who even plays ceiling defense like that? But CR will make his way through. Dorito on the offense. Bates talked about that on the desk. He's been usually that third pillar, but now has been stepping up to give complexity some options on the front end. Rotation's been sound. I just saw Rodosa take a midfield boost away from Dorito. Dorito's back in net here with 12. The CRR is trying to set the tone here, but does pick up a demo on Alpha. Looking at Zen, not really going to be able to do too much with that, so leaves it for Radosin. Zen leading in stats here on the, at least Team Vitality, as even he has oh. been really stepping up, but it hasn't been enough for Vitality. He's been doing a lot here on the ball in events leading up to this particular major. We'll see if they end up changing up their play style in round one. Lots of time for both teams. As you're seeing things get really close here. Dorito trying to play this one high off the ceiling. Zinn will clear it into the corner. Razeble will try to keep it in play for now. Yeah, complexity cycling well between each other. And there's so much hype behind the duo of Razeble and CR. Been together for years. And how does Dorito fit into this lineup since AGG? We don't want to think back at what happened to complexity the last time they faced Vitality. They want to erase that memory too. As CR wants to erase that defense. He came in with a lot of speed. It's complexity. Keep Vitality on their toes as the ball is free. Radosin goes forward, wanted to bump into CRR. Raisable picks it up and sends it away as Dorito races forward, had the boost to keep up, but Zen catches it first. There we go, Dorito back to Raisable. Raisable picks this one up off the back wall, uses all of his boost to force a 50 between him and Radosin. There's Dorito, sends this one straight to Zen. Good 50 there on the line, and the Bull will clear this one all the way down. You see Alpha trying to take his time here. It's Vitality, not necessarily off to a great start. No shots out of them in the first half here, game one. A little bit of a misplay there here as well on the side of complexity. This one definitely a lot closer than I think most people had going in. Yeah, a lot of challenges coming out of that back third and making it difficult to register those shots in the process, but goes up to Zen. And now, with that demo, Vitality have space, they have time, and you cannot let this guy go off the ceiling. Sierra knows Zen can pull off crazy things, but this goes to Radosin. Oh. A down low double commit, and managing to slow it down to scoop this out of their net. Complexity make the save. Radosin goes off the ceiling, forces another double commit. This goes to Alpha, and Vitality are ramping up, and Complexity are keeping what a cool challenge. and set challenges and gets it in. Zen aggressive challenge pays off big for Vitality. You see the initial challenge coming through. CR trying to control the ball, but the touch gets away from him, and Zen pinches it right off of Christian's car into the net. Vitality with the first goal. It's about time for shot one goal execution. I was not ready for that. I'm, I'm just, I was not ready for that. I know. You did a little friend. wiggle and everything. I know. I'm doing my little dance. No one gets to see it on camera. It's OK, though. But hey, CR giving them a chance off the back wall. Great protection, though, from Radosin. Raise Bowl wins that. Kind of seeing where this lands. Doesn't have a ton of boost to work with. Playing off the back wall, getting Vitality to jump for it. Goes back to Rito, forced to turn around as Complexity search for that first goal. And this midfield is a toss-up. Vitality there first, a shot. Dorito was already back, and he makes the save. A good clearance there, too, from Dorito. Getting it right to CRR. CRR, good flipper set. Trying to find Ray's Bull. Great challenge there, forcing Vitality's defense, who's also in a really tough spot. Rodosin got a great touch in order to kind of keep this one in play. Otherwise, it would have been a free shot and probably a goal there for Complexity. 50 seconds, and you're starting to see things get a little bit awkward on that back wall, but Zen remains patient. Does get a nice flip reset forward as well to push this ball to the blue half. But as we approach time ticking down, Complexity, they've got to get going. 36 seconds. Dorito just tipping it forward just to buy time for him to rotate back on the defensive end. And it's a good catch. Vitality, they can play fast. And they're getting comfortable as Alpha goes for the pinch, gets assistance from his teammate. But Vitality can't break through. They maybe get an insurance goal. And at any moment, Complexity can fire back as Razeable needs CR to go for the clear. And Dorito 
Oh, that ball was too far forward, but he could still make a play. And over Dosen takes it up high to the ceiling, but to the back wall, read by Alpha and Zen that work together to get this away from complexity. And this has been as, as close as it gets. And having to cross all the way to the orange half is difficult. Dosen makes the stop too. And that first game goes to Vitality. So Vitality able to pick things up here, especially. I mean, they kind of kept complexity here, also on the lower end shooting wise with only three from them, but also just being able to see how they would look there on the offensive front was really, really solid. Not necessarily too much though. You can definitely tell, okay, first series on land in a while here for both teams. And you start to get the land jitters out of the way here a little bit by a little bit. But the one person who's always been on is Zen as he does end up picking up that first goal for Vitality, the only goal that was scored here in the game. So take a look at the mobile one high performance replay and lots of close chances. That one here was close, especially good touch there from Razeball to clear it out. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough because after the aggressive challenge there from Zen, that was really the story. What a fun match we've had so far. I mean, this one is a tough one to predict. Everyone kind of said game fives. Everyone has a lot of belief behind Sam, and especially complexity, because they proved just how talented they were in North America before they made the move. And you think, oh, well, is there less competition? And they, you know, they struggle against Fury, and that's the level of talent that you're going to see at a major like this. But complexity, I feel like they're they're the ace in this tournament. I think you could expect the unexpected, and Vitality are still a strong team, but only by one goal is still a close game one. Right, and there's t definitely room here for adjustments for complexity, and we'll end up seeing that here as we get Forbidden Temple loaded up. Will they be able to make some changes? Although, that they end up losing that game one, it is only by just an errant challenge there coming out of CRR, something that doesn't really happen too often. Didn't really show any real weakness on the side of complexity. And I mean, it's a close, just a close score line in general. So we get game two underway and we'll see if there's any adjustments that are made. And all of Vitality being involved in the play boats. Well, there's just not one person to shut down, but the underdog you got to worry about what the desk talked about was Dorito. Talk about adjustments, give Dorito the ball. That's a great start. A lot of eyes on him, and he's putting on a show. First goal for Complexity right off the kickoff. 1-0 for Complexity. First goal of the series. As everyone's running into each other, now Alpha's in the picture. There's a big old sandwich off a of kickoff, but CR tries to lead that charge. Raceball Race bumping out of the net, and it's just magic. Look at that, CR, just a great challenge. Gets that 50 out of Redosin. The Bull says, here, come here, Alpha. Let me talk to you, not getting that save. And complexity up by two back-to-back -back goals off the kickoff. Love that CR and Rays will working together to make the space if there isn't any to have. Shoving them out of the way into the goal is crazy. Great start out of complexity to bounce back off the ceiling. Look, even Doritos already off the back wall. Got everyone from Vitality dancing. Rays will up first. Just needs to set it up, have the reset, but Alpha makes the save in time. And Vitality unbury themselves from that hole. And the counter attack from Vitality was almost scary too. Yeah, Vitality now just trying to pick things back. They have to start this game off from behind by two in a game where they only scored one off of just a, a good 50-50. We'll see how things change here for Vitality. Are they going to get things going? Rodosin, I mean, that first touch, the ball got so far away from him, so he had to play a 50 out. So ball now still in complexity's position. Alpha had to play from inside the net, and now he's trying to get a flick downfield. Doesn't work out. Raceball gets one touch before demoed, and Zen will control this one. Has Alpha in the wing, but takes his time getting there. Alpha can't go for it anymore. Tries to go back here on defense, but even he's getting bumped. So much more physicality coming out of complexity here as they're trying to increase the scoreline. I love that complexity are going for demos to not let Vitality generate too much momentum and especially see uh, speed. That is what Europe is known for. And complexity have kept them locked to that orange half as Dorito wanted to pinch it down below the defense. Vitality break out of their own half. Zen to Alpha, the shot off the post, the follow up from Radosin. All of Vitality extended for this, but managed to rotate in time before Complexity's counterattack had an open net. And off the back wall, Zen will not be flustered. And Complexity still hold the lead. Yeah, but Complexity are connecting on so many bumps here. Radosin, oh, almost had a good lane there for the shot, just missed the mark. Raysbull trying to take this all the way around, gets it to CR, and gets another goal for Complexity. 
fist bumps all around. Complexity, their counterattacks is something you have to worry about. Beautiful double tap from Ray's Bowl to set up CRR for success. And Vitality, uncharacteristically behind, but we knew this was gonna be a good series. Yeah, I don't think anyone expected this. Such dominance here from Complexity here at the start. Vitality, only three shots to their name, and it doesn't really feel like they've had the ball on that blue side that often. Rodosa trying to get this one to Alpha to set it up, but when they, when Vitality are on their own end defensively, it just looks really rough from them. Too far forward, though, and oh, no, CR! <laughs> Could have been a chance there to make it four. It was a tough angle. They're still up by three, but again, the more insurance they have against Vitality, the better. It's not going to cost them the game this time, though. Zen takes it up high, traveling as the reset, and still saved. Double commit out of complexity. They try to reorganize. They won't let Alpha get this for free. Ray's Bowl still trucks forward as Rodosa needs the second touch. Dorito won't allow it. Now still trying to center this out. Demo's off screen. Alpha needs help. Rodosa gets set up in the net just in case he had to make a save. As CR off the ceiling has Alpha climbing for it. Rodosa ready. Complexity losing that pressure that they had. Ray's Bowl clearance downfield here. Alpha with the ball. Sends that one soaring all the way downfield, and Ray's Bull will pick it up, play it off to the sidewall. All complexity you have to do is keep this ball close, not make too many air touches, but they watch out because Zen gets it to Alpha, and Alpha puts it in the back of your net. What a pass! As Rodosin wanted to break it up, but Dorito also with the clear. Alpha is just on it, the captain of the team, keeping them composed. When they are down, they are not out. Minute 40 left. I mean, Zen, the, he gets that on a dime. You see the double from Dorito, and you think, okay, this one's getting cleared, but then Zen just immediately comes into the play, able to get a beautiful touch straight to Alpha, who puts it in the back of the net. And all of a sudden, that three-goal lead may not be safe. A minute 30, less than a minute 30 now. Vitality trying to see if they can come back here in game two. A little awkward Oof. there on the back end, but they hold on. Vitality. Now coming in quick to that blue half. Dorito disrupts it, and I think Ciara wanted a piece of it, so Dorito still has to make sure this doesn't center out. Shot from Rodosin from the left. You have these hot and cold moments, but Vitality feel like the, the heat is rising, and the net is open. Vitality are within one. Now you're starting to see that pressure, and then again, that lead there from Complexity looking very, very fragile. Great turnaround there. For Vitality Zen, able to get one in the back of the net now. A minute two to go. No way Complexity let this slip through their hands. No way. Right? No way, right? <laughs> like a 3-0 lead would be crazy to fumble at this point. Vitality, they are a team to fear as Alpha runs into Ray's Bowl. Dorito picks it up. The counterattack ensues, but it's so far. Well, at least Complexity in the midfield. Keep the truck running as Dorito it and gets complexity up by two. Big goal here for Dorito. Ray's Bull meets this one at the midfield, tests the back wall. No one from Vitality makes contact. Dorito calls the bluff and puts the shot in. Four, 43 to go, four to two here, as complexity may have this one in the bag. Dorito is playing it so well. Everyone had questions, but he had an answer. Do not underestimate me or this region ever again. 30 seconds, complexity with a solid lead. But Vitality oh, came in with a quick shot. Saved just in time as Alpha just tries to bump Sierra out of the way. Calls for help from Redosin. Vitality, precious seconds draining by from their comeback as Alpha's setting up. Towards the midfield, Dorito picks it up. Raceful from the ceiling, going for something nice. Dorito was ready in the box, but that was just extra insurance to fluff up, fluff up <laughs> the stats for complexity as they even up the series one one. Even up the series, don't allow anything else in from Vitality. They started off hot and then they kept things going there. I loved absolutely what we saw from Dorito, especially big game from him, shooting two for six with a couple of saves there in the back end, but he just fits really well into this complexity roster. You can feel the confidence from them going into this major. And even then, now we are on the big stage, it just feels like, okay, they're here, they're ready to compete. Series tied one-to-one -one as we take a look at the highlights here. And Vitality did seem to have a couple of issues on that defensive end in the back, but a lot of this was really just due to complexity, showing up and taking control over every aspect of the field. Super physical out of them. And then of course, great passing, great shooting. That's a complexity. 
we were we were loving about them was their synergy and Dorito is integrating well. I think Vitality still look really solid. Yeah, defensively, they're getting stressed out a lot more than maybe even they expected. And maybe it's frustrating for Vitality's to feel like the, the, king, the old kings of the region, I guess, and trying to get back to that stardom. And they were gonna shut up all the haters at this lane. And this first match is such a tone setter for how the rest of the rounds are gonna go. Exactly. Again, you get a shot at Vitality again. You know if you're Raze Bull and you're CRR, you know exactly what you can do against this team. You've taken them to the distance, but you haven't been able to finish the job. Time to do so now to start off Major 1 for your run. It's Dorito oh trying to put another quick goal in. And a lot of people criticized the move with Dorito on this team, but he's fit in so well <laughs> as he again tried to put on another shot there. Didn't really register, but he's oh no, no, not afraid at all as this game continues. So much physicality and complexity. Are you kidding me? Like, it's been 10 seconds. They had a demo. Two bumps ensued. Vitality, they stay composed. Ratosin tries to go up high, and he gets challenged. It's picked up by Raze, but it was kind of awkward off the wall. But CRR's attention gets called, and complexity not too threatened off the rip. You see a pass there. Alpha trying to get it to Zen. Zen to Radosa. Radosa shot. Good block out there from Raze Bull. Zen wants to keep the pressure here. You see CRR taking control. Demo in the back is Alpha. Will take out Raze Bull. And Vitality starting to see if they can pick things up where they left off. Again, fresh game here for them. They've been able to control the midfield from the start. They haven't necessarily been doing too, anything too threatening for Complexity, who have been in the perfect position to make a play. Yeah, Vitality don't seem to be able to get away with too many solo plays, but Raze Bull and Dorito laying down the red carpet slowed right at the box. As Alpha sends it back in all of complexity, running for the hills to catch up to Vitality as they cross up in the ceiling. And Alpha oh and my Raze God. Had the double tap send. Wanted to, the follow up, wanted to clean it up, and Radosin just has to maintain this for Vitality. They get boost and they go again. That's the Vitality pressure. You have to start worrying about if you're complexity. But now CR catches a long pass Rito. to Dorito, broken up by Radosin, and Raze Bull can't clean it up. Wait, it's open. But it lay, goes what? right to CR. And what happened? I, I, we got to look at here. Alpha on the play. He jumps into the net. There's a 50, and then he just leaves and goes for boost. The net's wide open. No one's there. And CR just hits that one home. Complexity with the first goal here. But that was very interesting there on the side of Vitality. Now they have to play from behind once again. And that's what I was worried about, but also impressed by with Complexity's offense in their region. When they're on offense, when they're feeling it, they're all going. It's, oh. That pushes Dorito out of the way. That got scary. It's Vitality still being aggressive. Oh, that almost came out to Zen to take the shot a little too fast. Radosin trying to measure this well, and he's got, he's had issues winning those challenges. Zen off the ceiling wants the ground pinch, and Complexity's defense holds on. And Vitaly trying to look for each other. You see Radosin look for that pass to Alpha Zen, trying to put a testing shot, and it gets through! Vitality tied things up at the halfway point. <laughs> I thought the double came out. I thought that was going to pitch out. My jaw is always on the floor. Zen with a shot that I thought Complexity were going to be able to save, so it brings Vitality to tie 1-1. Got to watch the kickoff here. Light sheet, but doesn't work out. Could CRR now able to pick this one up. See Alpha, good challenge here. Vitality trying to, again, get control of that midfield. They've been so strong where they do have space in the midfield and they're on the ball. We've seen Alpha, who should have, honestly, that goal, that play that he made should have resulted in a goal. It should be 2-1 here on the side of Vitality. But again, even him trying to lead block for Zen. Shot, get his pass to Raze Bull. Vitality on the stretch are just so hard to beat. <laughs> If you're in his way, he will move you by force and gets the bounce, reads it perfectly. Zen is just that guy, and incredible. he has been. Absolutely incredible. He's made an impact this game and has been well noticed, but so is also Alpha and Rado here. Vitality is Rado. Got the flip, played it low, and it goes in. 3-1. Say y'all talk too much about Zen and what about me? Wins the challenge, has the reset. Rays will try to pinch it down, but Renos is just better, just quicker. Going into the half, three to one for Vitality as a statement to make, especially after a 4-2 loss to Complexity in game two. 
now it's a kickoff favoring complexity <laughs> going high using the bounces off the wall but sends a playing back and he reads it well makes the space but how do they transition this to an offense that's the thing. I mean, right now, midfield has been a very big challenge here for complexity. Again, when Vitality get that space, they've just been able to not only continue to, you know, develop these great infield plays and even try to make the defense uncomfortable, but also at the same time, they try to uh, have their own individual plays. We've seen Alpha do it. We've seen Zen do it a couple times, and we saw Rattle there with a solo play goal. So their full package offensively and complexity have to get in front of that and stop them. We'll see what they can do. A minute 15 to go. Race bull, pinch on there off the back wall. Radosin's there to meet the TRR in the corner as this one goes all the way towards Rado. Again, he gets control right on that blue side. Dorito, free ball, just gets a light touch, but can't follow. Doesn't have the boost. Still was able to get a 50 on the play to slow down Vitality, but it's not Vitality who needs to slow it down. It's complexity who needs to get going. And Zen with another demo on the back end, Dorito, I mean, no, CRR, I get with the demo himself, but complexity, the ball still on their own half. They've got less than a minute to score two, and Vitality are doing everything in their power to stop them. Oh, uh, CR running out of boost. Dorito has to head back, and Raysbull steps up, and complexity flooding in, because that's what it's been taking for complexity to score, but that is the reason off the cross. Alpha wants a shot. Dorito reads it in time and makes the stop. But stops is not all you can do. 25 seconds, complexity need to score if they want to send us into overtime or more. But Vitality, they picked up the pace of game and have exposed and forced more mistakes out of complexity. Now CR mixed up off the ceiling. Raceful pass it to CR, tries to cut it left, didn't get enough power on the ball. Vitality slow it down and keep complexity trapped in their own end as Vitality will be picking up a game three. And almost there, one for the road. Vitality win game three, like you said. And the way they ramped up was just so, so nice. It's, it reminds you of the vitality of old. Zen again, being able to carry the ball upfield really well. Radosin just all around. I mean, the bumps there, very physical out of him. Not necessarily in the demo department, but that's where Alpha really did, did kind of shine there. Of course, Zen and Alpha getting two demos there. But also Alpha, again, that one almost triple tap play that we ended up seeing in the highlights there. And complexity, it just felt like the team that they ended up playing in game two was not there. It was a different vitality. It was, it was world championship level vitality. We did see end up seeing that mistake that led to the first goal, but it was almost as if that woke vitality up. Big shot out of Zen for the equalizer. And then, of course, we saw this one from Radosin. Hit the flip, but played it right under the ball. And that one just... <laughs> I can't try. I know French, but I can't translate that. My bad. <laughs> Vitality fired up two to one in this series. Able to break up the passes from Complexity is now the pace of play is picked up as the series goes on. So Complexity, Vitality demands perfection out of you to keep up with them, but also to execute your own offenses. In the previous game, a lot of the success from Complexity was off of the fast counterattacks. And now Vitality has been better at slowing them down and getting reestablished on their half. Game four, Vitality had an impressive showing on DFH. Complexity was on a run scoring wise, but have been on a drought since. Now their backs are against the wall in round one of Swiss, and we'll see if they have what it takes here to try to force a game five. A Dorito to CRR needing everything they can to play closer together, to make space, to transition down, to well, stop pump. the challenges, I guess. They just break through like that. First goal for complexity. CRR was off the play, immediately got the turn, looked for Alpha, got the bump, said, see you later. And Dorito had an open lane. Great off ball play from CRR. Again, they start things off here with the first goal. Just so many passes out of complexity in that moment and the physicality that they really threatened Vitality with at the start, but Vitality respond with their own demos usually. But on that moment, not when their backs were against the wall. So an early lead. This comes out to no CR, Ray's Bull, they communicate. Now, second touch, no, drops it to Dorito. But Vitality, no, Dorito's now an offensive threat. They're keeping their eyes peeled for everyone on this field as Alpha air dribble across. Now bumping, complexity Three. back to their corner. He gives all the space in the world. 
to the hero of Zen to step up. I mean, it was just so free for Zen. We're going to end up starting this playoff, going to the back end, trying to force Raise Bull in a tough spot. They forced a double commit as they tried to get the save out, and Zen had a free backboard for the double tap. He's not going to miss those. We're all tied up. Whew. This is close, and a kickoff, a fast one from Alpha and the Friends of Vitality. Rodosin with the win against Dorito, wants to drop this off and gets kind of mixed up, but has complexity against the wall as they hope to transition this, and these counterattacks haven't been as fast as Ray's Bull just sends it down to Rodosin. Zen goes forward, bumps it to bump. Dorito, and Rodosin has a shot, sounds up Alpha, and it all works out in the end. I was a little concerned after I saw the miss from Rado. But Alpha was there in time. Zen doing a good job lead blocking, getting some bumps out, creating space. And that's Vitality's game plan. They get the space and they get the cleanest shot possible. They've done that back to back now, as once again, they started the game off from behind and then they've taken the lead without letting Complexity get anything back. Now Rodosin and Zen working together and hopefully not getting in each other's way, but hoping to get into Ray's Bull's way. And Complexity just need to find those midfield challenges and slow down Vitality and play at their play, play at their pace. Complexity. Now Dorito to CRR and just a light changed up pace. Alpha reads it well. Now you're giving the ball to Zen and he has time to dribble, but not a ton of boost to work with. Drops it off to Complexity who wait for the game to come to them, but they're still playing down by one. CRR plays this one towards the corner. You see Dorito, good 50 out of him. Alpha. Wants to pick this one up, take his time, get to pass Ray's Bull. CRR last back, and he's flipping. He, they know he doesn't have boost. Alpha tries to get that one through, but good on CRR. It's a great touch to stop the shot from going top left corner. Complexity trying to get this ball out, but more demos are coming out for Vitality. More pressure and more scoring chances here. Chance there for Zen. Light touch looking for the follow, but Ray's Bull is able to send it away for now. Yeah, Vitality were a, on a three on two and Complexity still stayed composed and reestablished in the net. CR with the dribble as a defender uses the back wall, raise ball in the midfield, ready to assist, but Vitality are too much to handle. CRR slows it down. Rodosin off the side wall, wanting to bump CRR. Raise ball sends it away. Vitality aren't threatened yet. Oh, CR trying to get that pre-jump on the, on the, off the ceiling towards Zen. Zen almost had a free play there, but Dorito, good touch. Now Ball's getting back to CRR, who booms it downfield. No real control there. Redosa now. Good 50. This one rolls all the way to, through to the corner. Alpha back pass to Zen. Zen plays that one towards the other side. Don't want to necessarily give Complexity an easy counterattack. Uh -oh. That one drops, and no one really wants to go here for Vitality. It may have been too risky, as Race Bulls did have that ball on the hood. Yeah, Zen was very consistent on the defense and doesn't want to take any risks of overstepping as Vitality maintained their lead. Rodosin looks to hunt down CRR, dodges the demo. Alpha comes out to Zen, but CRR leads the charge and the counterattack of Complexity. Dorito was stuck on the wall, but Ray's Bull rotates forward. Alpha in a 1v1 as CRR now loses that challenge to Zen, who's up against Dorito. And Complexity have held the wall so far. But how do they do now that Vitality are knocking on the door of a third goal? Complexity need to bring the energy to their attacks that they were known for. When it's been tough to steal this ball away from Vitality, that will not let you get a second or a third touch. It drops down to Rodosin. Great challenge out of Ray's Bull. And oh, he can get there. Couldn't get there. CRR tried to get there in time, but unable to. Now the clock ticks down. Down. They've got to get moving. Alpha gets a nice little touch high. Ray's Bull has to be careful, take his time. Doesn't need to force anything, but they have to make sure they take the most out of this. Dorito tries to pick this one up, gets it past one. Rodosin, though, sends it downfield. Zen is there. Ray's Bull can't make contact, though. It'll go to Rodosin. Zen ended up blocking the shot. So this time, it won't be a 3 1 score line. Chance here for Complacence, the one goal game. CR drops it straight down, forcing a double commit, but it's just not enough. 10 seconds left in the series on the line. Vitaly have a one goal lead. CR with the reset. Zen reads it like a book, and Ray's Bull couldn't find the rebound in time. And now Complexity have to race to the orange half, and Ray's Bull is in the air. CR is ready in the corner, bounces it out to Dor Dorito. Takes the shot at the goal line, and it doesn't make it. Vitaly take the series. Wow. So close there for Complexity. Shot at the end, this time blocked off.
and they get through round one, three, one. But for complexity, playing again very close to team vitality, but at the end, you can start to really see just how things start to even flow, how vitality, even despite complexity being super physical, not necessarily folding under a lot of that pressure, and then also being physical on their own end as well as they were able to transition constantly, have complexity constantly on the back end and in really uncomfortable spots. Just goes to show you how when it's major time, Team Vitality still showing up on the stage where it matters most. And this is a confidence setter match, especially for a team like Vitality. Maybe frustrated, maybe feeling like teams are starting to figure it out. But I saw so much creativity out of them. It's not just feed the ball to Zen, go do a solo Mechie play, and, and then the, that's the series. They really had to flex, give the ball to Rados, and have Alpha find the rebound. It was all of Vitality committed to that offense, but not taking unnecessary risk. Zen would rather play back as a third man, be that consistent defensive saver, and, and, and then let complexity come to them sometimes. And complexity did a good job of slowing down Vitality's transitions. And then sometimes it happens, sometimes it didn't. And complexity will have to think about this in their next match. You see Vitality, I mean, this is a team that really puts in a lot of work day in and day out. They know the conversations being spoken about them. They have their own pressure. As again, this, these are your world champions you're looking at. And they have shown that they still play at a world caliber level. What a start to the Swiss stage so far. And this is only will continue to become something even more as the days progress. But let's take a chat with Fairy Peak. We'll go send it over to Leaf. I am down here with Fairy Peak from Vitality. It looked like you guys had a, a lot of emotion came out at the at the very end once you finally finished that series. Uh, yeah, because we started a bit low, like we didn't play our game at the start, and we got better and better and better. And at the end, we are playing our game. So, like all the frustration of the start, like get <laughs> got out like at the, at the end of the game. So, <laughs> yeah. What was it? Was it simply just that you guys weren't warmed up yet? Or was there something that needed to be talked about in, in the series to switch? Uh, I think it's a bit of both because we know how to play, but it's just the first game of the major. You need to, to get used to, to the setup, to like to the, the whole land environment. So I think it was a bit of that and also a bit of we need to like step up a bit because at the start we weren't playing bad, but not good. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that's true. The uh, talk to me about complexity. Then I mean, it, you get you're saying that it was you guys that kind of need to warm up, but complexity, of course, is a team that I think a lot of other teams are watching out for. What are they doing well that kind of kept you on your toes and made it sure that it wasn't an easy one? Yeah, I mean, complexity is a very like rushing team. Like yeah. they they rush a lot of balls. They, they it's yeah, it's EV demolition too. So when you're not playing good and not playing your game, like they just gonna straight demo you every time and you just you're just gonna get smashed so after the first game we are like okay we, we need to step up because if we don't step up they're just gonna like just destroy us so yeah they're a really good team and i think they will make it uh, uh after the swiss bracket yeah I, I i wanted to know then for for you is there anything specific you you said to rearrange during that i mean it looked like zen started really lock in specifically on that was there something said or did it just kind of happen that he found his foot in I mean, yeah, we said something, but it's it's part of the secrets, you know? No, I can't, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, he, he stepped up a lot. Uh, looking just at you guys then, I don't know if you're looking this far forward. Obviously, the big bads is, is K Corp. Everyone's looking to K Corp right now. Do you guys feel you're ready yet? Do you feel like you're going to get there and you're still ramping up? Where do you feel the team is fitting? It's only day one right now. Are you, are you still a little, little go? Yeah, I mean, we didn't play at our full potential uh, still, but I think we are getting get, getting better and better after ex uh, after every matches. So I think right now we are playing not like the perfect game we want, but it's still it's still good enough to I think have a good game. So yeah, but at the end of the major, of course, we're gonna get like 200 percent vitality. <laughs> Uh, and for the squad, can you give me a, a look maybe and at least to the, the mental of the players themselves? Ha has there been any 
uh, I guess, vision of, of weight, of expectation. I mean, they're coming off being world champions, right? And now they come into a season where they're not continuing to dominate. Has that weighed the players down at all in, on a personal level? Uh, I think at the start a bit, yes. But uh, as the season goes on, uh, they just have the, the rage to, to like win everything now. Because like, of course, when you win world championship, you you're like you finish the game and you you sometimes yeah like you don't even want to play the game. But when you're getting back at the LCS, you you lose one, two, three match. You're like. My, my time of shine uh, has been gone a bit, yeah. and now I need to, to step up again to win the next major or next world champion. So yeah. now they just want to win everything <laughs> again. Sorry for k to beat us three times, but now you unleash the monster. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, that's uh, phenomenal. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys playing forward. Is there uh, any, I guess, um, I guess, final thoughts for, for fans that you might say for Team Vitality, what to expect throughout the rest of Swiss here? Uh, what? Sorry? Uh, any f any words to the fans of what to expect from Vitality for the rest of Swiss? Uh, it was just the start, and now we're just gonna play our game at full potential, and we're gonna get like we're gonna strip the bracket, I think. Hey, uh, that's what I like to hear. Congratulations! You're starting off good here, but again, as you said, lots more to go. Shoutouts to Fairy Peak and shoutouts to Rocket League. We have a lot more coming your way. Up next is the next round. We don't know what's coming up. All we know is it's going to be exciting Rocket League. So please hang out with us and stay tuned.
Complexity, they put up a fight, but the reigning world champs get work done. Vitality improve here, and they will face Furia in round two. That and more exciting matches coming up here in just a moment. We'll get you briefed on how round two is looking. As we continue, welcome back to Copenhagen. We have round one of the Swiss com completed. The teams are now getting seated, getting ready, and getting all of their ducks in a row for round two as the matches continue here. Sure are. And listen, it's going to be an absolute barn burner doozy of a round two of Swiss. We were doing the math prior to. We're saying if Complexity goes to game five, gets Vitality, this happens, this happens. And those matchups in that 1-0 stage, whoo, where they're going to be hot. And this is where the coaches make the big bucks, right? They got a game plan immediately for, like, a few of these teams have to do it in 10 minutes, right? Or, or 15 yeah. minutes to get their match ready to go. So we'll see how it all pans out. But at the end of round one, honestly, I think every favorite one at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, so I was looking at the seeding and the one sort of on paper outlier was Furia destroying Luminosity. But as you mentioned to me, that was eighth versus ninth seed. So it was sort of the, the middle teams. But the way that Furia beat yeah. Luminosity, that was the shock of the round because that was dominance. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we can take a look at the Swiss and kind of talk about all the matches. We saw four of them here on our stream. We saw four of mm. them on twitch.tv slash RL Esports here. We'll talk about the round two matchups here in a little bit, but let's focus on that left-hand column here, gentlemen, Gibbs. I mean, we saw each of these matches go down on one of those two streams. Yeah, and it's very important in that first round, if you can even just get one game, it's going to change completely uh, based on who you play. Yep. We see that in the case of like a power versus a pioneers, where uh, power with B uh, Banana Head, he scored five goals in a game, he ties a land record, and then they gave up, what, like 13 in a row or yeah, something Yeah, that like didn't that. help. NG, so, um, so we'll see how that plays out. But that's an OCE battle in the 0-1 round. And we also got some rivalries in the 1-0 round. And me and Bates especially are looking at that G2 versus Gen G matchup to see who truly is the number one team in North America. Well, listen, I'm just going to come out here and say it. Even once G2 wins that, which, uh -huh. which they will. But even if they even if they do, I'm still not going to say they're defend the best team in NA because then maybe Gen G does better in the bracket. You never know. But I will say this, though. Out the, <laughs> out the, the first round, what in particular did surprise me, of course, was the Luminosity gameplay. I did expect them to be significantly better, and they weren't. Um, and you really hope that they can bounce back. And now they went up against Furia, number one in Sam, and got absolutely slapped. Now they're going up against Sam's number two. And the question is, Reigns, can they bounce back from that? But as for Furia, I mean, they are getting some some suitors and some some looks over at them so far this event. I mean, you guys were chatting with Vitality. I heard you as I came up to the desk, yeah. and you told them that it was Furia they were against, so and they went, Oh, because yeah. that's a genuinely tough match. Was it Radosid who says, oh, yes, we lose? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't Zane. think he quite really no, no. believes that, but, no, you know, the sense of humor is there. You know what Zen said? 
we're losing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll, uh, they, we will see. Well, they're the reigning world champs for a reason, folks. We'll see if they can do it there. Here are the matches that went down on the B stream. All sweeps except for power able to take game one against Genji Mobile One Racing, and then Genji ran it back and three games. So honestly, I would say that's very uh, uh, predictable. Power, obviously, they cleaned up OCE. They were perfect through all three qualifiers, and you expected them to at least put up a little bit of a fight versus Gen G. But the other teams, it's like, it's your top three seeds in the tournament. It's K Corp, BDS, and G2. You expect 3 0s out of them. As you mentioned, you get your game if you're power. You give yourself a, a chance. And they have got in the lower bracket a match against the Pioneers, which, mm -hmm. considering they've beaten them time after time online, they'll be sure. pretty chuffed with that. Shouldn't be an one. issue, but you know that they don't want to be facing off against each other. It's an unfortunate situation for them. I mean, Elevate, though, also we talk about this is a 3 0. It looks like it was a very easy win for BDS, but that was a game 3 0 overtime victory for BDS. So Elevate nearly managing to take a game off of them. Looking over here at the mainstream though, these are the matches we watched in person and we can kind of walk through these in replay fashion as well. We've been talking about the, the, the team results, the, the, the kind of large storyline implications here, Bates, as we've looked at each of these matches, but like kind of going back to the start of the day, Gentlemates versus Rule 1. I mean, was there a player? Was there moments that, that you remember from that match that were impressive to you? I mean, Naupo impressed me the most out of anybody on oh, the yeah. field because he just came out first ever all CS LAN game and absolutely performed. He definitely was the standout, but then in terms of team versus team, Gentlemates, they just seemed and appeared and ultimately ended up being a well oil machine. Rule one had a little couple cracks in the armor, a couple chinks in it, and it just simply weren't enough in order to beat a gentleman squad. But the way Rule 1 were playing, trying to defend all the way at the back for two or three minutes at a time against gentlemates, that is an incredible play style. And I would say that if you do that, you have to take the chances that you get. And that is where Rule 1 disappointed me. They had opportunities, Gibbs, that they just didn't take. But we talk about Juicy, probably that pickup that was most questioned on the mates squad, but in this game four, made some huge plays down down one goal here. He goes for the low shot to beat out the defender and then the overtime winner um, as well. We saw Juicy uh, at the World Championship have some big time moments on Moist. He's doing it again here. And moving on to the next match here, Luminosity versus Fury. We talked about it a little bit earlier on. Uh, very much a one-sided affair here. I I would like to know how many highlights are actually on the Luminosity side from this match because it was all Fury. We talked about that when they're in Sam, all they do is just offensive pressure. They were ranked two, three, and four of being on the other side of the field. And basically throughout the series, they controlled everything. Luminosity, there was a lot of question marks about them. Should it be them or Space Station here? And honestly, they didn't answer any of those questions right now, but it was only one round. They've had some time. We'll see if they can come back. From They'll it. be relieved that it is Swiss, because if you're going to have a match like this, this is the format where you want it to happen. It's best of fives all around. You know, they've got a break now, or they have had a break now. Time to talk it through and hopefully not repeat this performance. But base, it's so tough for Cheese as well. His first ever match at an RCS LAN, and it was this. Yeah, it was the first ever match. I had to go against the Furious squad. That was really, really great. But I do expect him to bounce back. Looking at this Falcons versus O. G. We talked about it on the desk. That Furia matchup was kind of like a precursor. You saw the new addition, Furia, who had consolidated talent. They looked really great against the North American squad. Falcons, they've consolidated talent as well. And OG, even though they played better than LG in the series, definitely yeah. had more pressure, definitely had more opportunities. Falcons were just so clinical on their, on their chances, and it ultimately was enough for OG. Yeah, small mistakes by OG in game one. They should have honestly probably won that, and this one could have been our game five series. So I think they should hold their heads pretty high because Falcons are consistent considered they could easily win this major. So uh, Falcons coming out, they showed their offensive prowess uh, in game four, but OG had their moments. And I think that is a good sign going forward. But for Falcons, they look great. Yeah, they do. We knew they would and they didn't Clinical. disappoint. But OG, yeah. you know, they, they used to be in the comeback kings, I suppose, so far of this split. So one loss in the Swiss. They've had a few of those That's that they've true. had to fight through. I think they've gone to five in every single Swiss. So yeah, they'll be ready to move on. And then the match we watched most recently, Complexity versus Vitality, maybe the most competitive of the matches we've seen so far on the A stream here. Complexity did their best, but Vitality able to put it away at the end. Yeah, and I honestly think the reigning world champion started off a little slow here. Even in the game one, the offense wasn't clicking. Complexity took game two, and you're like, okay, hold on now. Complexity they might have their number. And I think even they went up in this game. They sure yeah. did. Went up, in, went up in game number three, like, okay, Complexity, here's the play. But then the best player in the world until proven otherwise woke up. Top corner, slot, slot, right between two. Here comes the big double touch, I believe, after that. 
today. There was a moment, though, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but uh, in game number four where Zen made an own save, and I was wondering, uh, hmm, is, is oh. this the Raze Ball open net miss? But was it Raze Ball who got the open net miss against Vitality? That well, was AJG. It was AJG. 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 Was this the AJG open net miss moment, but the other way around? And thankfully for Vitality and their fans, that's not how it oh, came right out here. to be. They had so much pressure. Here we go. Yeah, oh, yeah, and yeah. then down the other end, Complexity had their last second scare to Vitality. Rado, he's just so relieved. He, he is relieved that they got away with that win, but but maybe they were like half joking, but I don't know if they're that confident of going into that Fury matchup. They expected better out of themselves. They didn't look their best, but again, hey, it's day one. That Fury matchup is going to be fun, though. I think that one has some upset potential. I, I feel like they've probably just seen confidence come back to bite good teams. Oh, that's fair. So many times you you underestimate your opponents and then, and then you fall down from this. They're not taking the they're not making the mistake of underestimating Fury in this situation. Oh, yeah. They're going to continue for there. So we do have matches for both streams here, folks. And we'll be able to show them to you here in just a moment. It'll be an important to see where if, if, if your team is on one of these streams, you're going to make sure you want to have that stream pulled up. And, but really, you should have them both pulled up. It's, uh, we, got, we got them both up at the green room. I'm spending I'm getting cross eyed. <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep track of all the action. And I do think that Vitality Fury matchup is really going to put, just like, really give you a gauge, a proper level of where Fury is. Fury went up against LG. Yeah. Clearly, they will be top three in NA yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Drafino talked about that. But now they're going up against the reigning world champions. You saw the offensive pressure. It looked like they were just playing the Sam again. You're going up against Zen, Alpha, Rado, clinical in every aspect of the game. Pure, great Rocket League. Let's yeah. see if Fury can match that offensive pace. Look, the question of whether, like how good Fury is doesn't feel like it really got answered. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Number exactly. One. So this will be the answer. And then we got like K Corp Falcons. That's another one. Because like yeah. Falcons were tested a bit, and that's always good to come out uh, with that victory. K Corp played limitless. They kind of just walked over them, but that was so much earlier, like in the day. So not as much practice there. So Falcons can uh, open that up early in games one and two, and maybe surprise K Corp. It's possible. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm curious about your thoughts on this too, Cole. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm specifically Bates. No. Oh, Gen G G2. Oh. Yep, yep. Talk to me. Gen G <laughs> has beaten G2 twice in a row. That's fantastic. Yep. Right. Okay. But th there's so many reasons you can come up with why that was just like a one-time thing. If they beat them here, is Gen G better than G2? In round two of the Swiss. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be the same analysis I said about seven minutes ago. Even even if Gen G beats G2 right here, they they just they just had the better game in the moment because ultimately uh -huh. G2 uh -huh. might end up making it further in the bracket, and that's vice and that's the year is 2035. T Bates is still claiming that G2 is better than Gen G despite the hundred win streak that well, Gen G have. Well, if you want to watch that game, you're gonna have to make sure you go to twitchtv Esports. It will be happening on the B stream. We've seen that match plenty of times. We've got more fascinating matches to watch over here on the A stream. You'll also catch. Limitless um, versus their opponent there. Here's what's going to be happening on the mainstream. Twitch.tv slash Rocket League. We'll be having Elevate versus Rule 1 as our next match. We'll see Luminosity take on Complexity, Furia versus Vitality, and then K-Corp versus the Falcons there, Cole. I've got my eye right now, though, on Luminosity versus Complexity. I missed both mm. earlier. It's Luminosity that went to five in every single Swiss. So they're used yeah. to having tough results, yeah. bouncing yep. back. But can they do it on LAN? Complexity are a team that they should be able to beat. I am really curious how that one's going to end up. I'm just so excited. Like, first, we're starting with 0-1 matches. So we'll have our bottom eight. And then we move into those top eight matches. But G2 Gen G. I'm very excited because literally everyone puts that Gen game. G yeah. on that a lower game. tier than G2. Yeah. And I am going to be very happy after that match this, if a certain result happens. This, 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 it'll be a big one, folks. We got excellent Rocket League coming <laughs> down the pipe. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the players will be in their seats and we'll be ready to get round two of the Swiss kicked off. Don't go anywhere.
Round two of Swiss is just around the corner. It's been a great day of Rocket League so far, and we're only halfway through, maybe even less than halfway through, because the matches should, in theory, get more competitive, which means we might see game five. Still haven't seen Champions Woo. Field yet, ah! just yet, Cole. I'm so ready. I wanted Champions Field for every single game today. Every game. Eight matches of the Champions Come Field. On. It'd be lovely, Champions Field. We have 40 games in one day, but we, we have, that is now, now not possible. Tomorrow, <laughs> ah, we have 45. That's true. 17 matches Let's tomorrow. hit it. Let's hit it. Crazy. <laughs> don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't, don't miss. Make sure you got it locked in here. Both monitors. Make get your, do some, do some snack prep today <laughs> for tomorrow. Meal prepping for your snack time. Here. It's going to be a great, <laughs> going to be a great day of Rocket League, but we got so much more going through here. Let's take a, we can take a look at some of the matches that we got coming down the pipe. If you just tuned in, uh, don't worry. You were in the right spot here. Round one is in the books. Round two of the Swiss coming down here and we will have two teams well, four teams excuse me up at two and oh by the end of the day ready to punch their tickets tomorrow morning but right now we are focused on the zero and one matches for the next two matches on a and b stream will be those matches then we will close the day with two matches in the one and no rounds on both a and b and here we can see the alternate stream we got limitless versus og mm -hmm. and quick trick Pioneers versus Power and OCE battle. Yes. CJ CJ was very happy. He's like, oh, he's getting a win today. So he was happy about it. <laughs> they are getting a win. You're no, 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 no. Oh, I'll yeah. save it. I'll save it for tomorrow. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. I'm intrigued about this. Something uh, tomorrow. It, it's an OC stat. And I, I want to wait until CJ's up games. here or something. Yeah, it's not the start. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Well, do you, <laughs> tune in tomorrow, Cole. If you want to watch it. I'll be watching at home with snacks. Here's our mainstream schedule. We will finish off today with Carmine Core versus. Ooh. 
Fa Team Falcons. That one should be great. We'll have Furia versus Vitality right before it. We will get to see Luminosity play against Complexity, see if they can bounce back from their respective losses. But to kick things off here for round two on the mainstream, Elevate coming in from APAC, taking on Rule 1. And Elevate coming out of the APAC region. I think that's the one like major upset that people didn't see. Everyone's saying Gaming Gladiators are going to yep. be that team. Because on paper, they even said that on paper, they are the better team. But Elevate, they say they have the rat play style is yep. how they term it. Um, and they came out on top. We got Kevin, we got LCT, and Sphinx is the youngest player to ever make a major beaten Daniel's record. So some big shoes to fill for him. But we have seen him perform exceptionally through the APAC region. Now it's time. Do it on the big stage. More new exciting things as well with this team is that you can see Kevin there. The uh, the flag in the top left of your screen is Ty. He's the first Ty player to ever make mm. it to an RLCS major. So another new regional representative here. And he's also brilliant to talk to is Kevin. Very funny man. And uh, he was saying to us that a lot of players in the region, they look up to the way that Monkey Moon plays. So they'll be coming up against him, or they were earlier on, and just trying to sort of take in what he's doing. I wonder what they learn from that BDS match. And then LCT sitting in that middle chair. He was uh, at the World Championship with Game and Gladiators. He was mm -hmm. kicked before the World Championship even happened. So he shows up and knows that that was his last tournament. And then what does he do? He puts a new team together and is right back at the number one spot brilliant. in APAC. And yeah. then obviously Sphinx, the rookie, the phenom. Not only is he a great player, but in that finals to qualify here, they won that match 4-1 versus Game of Gladiators. And this man put up 1.4 goals per game in the most important match of his career, in his short career so far. So a lot more important games coming up for him. He's been playing the game since he was seven, I believe he said. He's been, he learned. Oh, so old. He grew up, he grew up, Gibbs, watching yeah. Kronovi videos. Uh, smart That's man. That a was strange smart man. Videos concept. that were recorded after we had graduated college. He grew up watching those to learn how to play Rocket League. You notice he watched Kronovi videos, but you were making videos back <laughs> uh, then. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah, he could have watched you, Gibbs, but he wasn't. He grew up watching what not to do with Gibbs and what <laughs> to do with Kronovi. <laughs> That's why he's here. That's why he's here. Well, on the other side, folks, another team trying to make an impact here, trying to come back from a lot there in round one rule one again trying to change the narrative that this is the region owned by falcons they opened up a stream earlier it was a competitive match but they unfortunately fell two gentlemates a very good team three one they're gonna open up round two again on the a stream and we know that these guys are hungry for a title and they have the experience to back it up yeah i mean there should be favorites here um maybe fairly clearly uh O'Khaled, i think is the player that i want to see improve his finishing wasn't quite what rule one needed so i want to see and take this opportunity to try and get, you know, his, his name on the score sheet a few mm -hmm. times and really build some momentum going forwards. But it will be a different series base because earlier on they were defending and this time they'll have to attack. Yeah, they should be on the attack on the offensive end of the field this time around. And you, you already mentioned Cole, Cali needs to improve his shooting. I'm looking at Amin as well. Both of them need to be much more precise, much more clinical. Now, Poe, I keep talking about it, Kama. Keep hyping up the young man. He had a great He's first brilliant. series going up against Gentlemates. But the two veterans, the two people who have been proven on land to make top eights at Worlds, make grand finals in London, they didn't have the series that you're accustomed to seeing from them. So you want to see them build up that chemistry, build up that synergy, so then they can move on, hopefully for them, move on to 1-1 one, one and uh, one, one, and then make it a good run tomorrow. Yeah, so they lost 3-1. Like, if they get a 3-0 here, they'll have a good seed going into that, playing one of the lower 1-0 teams. But that is what is expected out of them. They're expected to win 3-0, but Elevate has already broken all expectations by even being here. So, like, Elevate, playing with house money, they're here to have some fun, and who knows? Maybe get that upset. I mean, again, we talked about how they nearly took a game off of a team we would consider top three yeah. in the world right now. So, uh, obviously, quality loss at that point, how much you actually weigh that is going to vary from person to person, analyst to analyst here. But you hope that it means that there's a way, there's a chance they could take some games off of Rule 1. You talk about Rule 1 trying to get a 3-0 sweep to set up a good seed. Elevate trying to get any wins they can to get the best of chances they have um, in whatever round they end up in. And who knows, maybe even get a win here this would be easily the biggest win of their careers oh yeah i think <laughs> without a doubt i think that'd be the mass one especially for young things him and himself since he's been playing from seven he's 15 that's absolutely crazy any hour yeah uh, more than half his 
life. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> crazy. But, uh, weird though. But in saying, but in saying that though, that will be a big win for them. But I do think it means something the fact that they did push BDS, arguably oh, yeah. a top two team, sure. top three team, solidified in the world right now. Two overtime. That means something. That means something in terms of how good Apex getting. Especially with Monkey Moon on that pitch as well, the player that a lot of them do idolize. You know, you can be a little bit starstruck, and it was game three they got the overtime, so they grew into the series, improved as it went along. For sure, folks. Well, let us know who you think is going to win at home with the hashtags. I think it was ELV and R1 there. We'll flip the coin to start things off here. I'm pretty sure I know how everything's going to go up here. We've got Elevate on the blue side. We've got Rule 1 on the orange side Big here. Whoa. And it's going to come up orange. Whoa. Rule 1. So the coin might get this one right. We'll see. That I, did, did any of us have the bravery to predict Elevate to be Rule 1? <sighs> No. No? No. I, no. Okay. Now, I think the question is, do <laughs> they take the game? Exactly. I uh, guess that's the question. I mean, they're, they're here to play their own game, is what Kevin said to us yesterday. You know, He just wants to ensure they're not bowing down to the pressure of this, and they're performing the way they expect to play, and it's a learning experience. I'm giving Elevate one game. Yeah. One game? What's the, how, how, the, how are they getting that one game? Oh, I like that question. Uh, Kevin's the man. goals in the opposition. He's going to score a great goal, like, to tie it in game two. Kevin. At zero. Kevin's the, Kevin's the player you're looking and at. And then Sphinx is going to score the overtime. Uh, one. Okay. Yeah. Well, script. Yeah, I love to see it. I love to see it. I mean, I'm going rule one here. I like Elevate. I do think that since they went up against BDS, that was a good series. But rule one and BDS are two like diametrically opposed teams. I think rule one plays mm. much more aggressive offense when they're playing teams that aren't a Falcons or yes, aren't a BDS. Very true. But BDS, I think they just play the same game every single time. You know the Monkey Moon style teams. It doesn't really matter who they're playing. Just go be consistent. Just go try to get the W's. And I think that kind of plays to elevate a team that might not be as good as them. Won't be here. I think honestly, rule one sweeps this. I do also have. Uh, rule one on this one, folks. I do think it would be a, it's going to be an amazing upset if Elevate's able to pull it off, but this is rule one's match to lose. Chat has them as well. Coin, chat, and analyst all have rule one behind this one, but Elevate's definitely got themselves. We'll see if they can do it here, folks. Big upset energy hanging in the air. Can they make it happen, folks? Elevate versus rule one to kick off round two. Round two of the Swiss, and suddenly we have rule one versus Elevate. It's the naught on one matches, James. Whoever loses here isn't going to be going home, but it then means that you will have to head through and reverse sweep the entire major Swiss. Yeah, it's going to be a long road ahead for both of these teams, whichever way they go. But uh, Elevate, they mentioned on the desk, played BDS before, actually were leading briefly in game three, forced overtime, which they eventually lost. But rule one, I think you could tell, from the desk, the heavy favorite in this matchup. Yeah, and I feel like realistically as well, even if you look at what region these two teams are coming from, you put APAC versus MENA, it's just the more established region in Rule 1. But the early pressure, LCT taking a decent little jab at the net for Rule 1. 30 seconds gone, still nothing coming from it, but a pre jump from Khaled, it's on target. Again, LCT defensively sends it away. And LCT was the star player in that series versus BDS, even though they did get swept. LCT, the clear leader out there on the field. And don't we just have so many questions about what Elevate can bring? LCT, as it was said on the desk, being kicked from Gladiators during Worlds. Like, he, he wasn't in that team where he was feeling particularly welcomed. And now with Kevin coming through, first land for him. Sphinx impressing all of us with his quality over in APAC. Elevate, they were not shaken by the beatdown they received from BDS in that first game. You could tell from the player game cams that they kept their composure. Rule one, I wasn't able to catch all of their first round matchup, but I did see some plays from Nupo, some excellent individual effort moments from him. And he really is that player for me mm -hmm. to watch from Mina. I mean, yeah, it, it's partially the fact we're looking at now, Poe, to be like, okay, how are you going to perform? Are you going to perform to the level that we saw in the previous series? And also, Ahmad and Khaled, can you get up to that level? Because if they're going to be playing how they were in the first series, that's not going to be able to bring them through into a top eight. You need all three gears on the team to be turning. It's a shot on, however. Kevin to save it away yet again, but now, Poe, taking shot after shot. And you can see Ahmad taking that space and a little oh, tip a going towards net. LCT gets back just in time to clear that off the goal line. And a good tip from Sphinx gets it past the midfield, but Khaled there to get a nice 50 over LCT. 
lovely first touch mm -hmm. to take that airborne. Straight to ceiling two with the reset by Ahmad Reedy. Now they've seen that a thousand times in Nina. And they'll defend it a thousand oh, times double. more. But Khaled ceiling down for the double. Again, tapped right to the corner. A little bit looser. Ahmad's going to be able to move in. No one central for him. LCT from the backboard again. Halfway through the game and elevate defensively looking excellent. And they stopped that. You saw Kevin. Oh, and that's oh, finally the go. first opening. <laughs> Perfectly at the halfway point of the game as well. The late shot, it was deflected by Kevin. Sphinx maybe threatened there by Nupo, getting out of position, not mm -hmm. really ready for that shot. And rule one, take the lead. I think all players on the elevate there starts to be boost starved. LCD had to go for boost at some point when, and then Ahmad saw his opening. LCD had 100 boost, but then concedes a goal, not particularly worth it for him. Khaled now, that's on target, but Kevin to tap it away yet again. And I haven't impressed with Elevate's defense so far, but you need to make sure that you're also pushing a team that is as good as Rule 1 on their own defense as well. Now Poe plays it through every single Elevate player that stood in his way and comes out victorious. I mean, he gets the flip reset, forces the defender high, recognizes that he won the space, brings it back down to the ground, and that's where he had Elevate's defense dead to right. That was a textbook play from Nupo. I mean, you see so many of those plays as well, right? From rule one from Mina, where even if Nupo doesn't score that, you're going to have Ahmad and Khaled pushing up behind him, and they're going to make sure that they can then get that tap in. It's all about pressuring the defense as much as they can, and so far, rule one, that has been their mantra. Very solid start here from rule one. They've looked firmly in control and forcing Elevate back on defense the entirety of this game. Haven't really seen much of an offensive opportunity at all so far for Elevate. LCT low on boost. That's all he can do. It pops up and over Kevin as well. Kevin not able to get there. Sphinx does get a touch and it does go out to the side, but Ahmad able to get that safely to the corner. I think most of the offense that we've seen come from Elevate was in that first minute. Sphinx, though, bottom corner. Khaled knows it's wide and can then wait patiently and then shepherd the ball straight back out to the halfway line. And that little shades of the offense coming from Elevate is good, but compared to that first minute, they've barely had chances. And again, an open net. Rule one are going to be able to capitalize. It is three for the Mina Masters. And, and when you're last back as Kevin, you have to do more than that with that ball. If you're clearing it over to the sidewall, you need to make sure it's at least going to roll up or bounce up by some time for your teammates. And, you know, a second man, that play would be fine, but third man, you're going to be hurting most times. And roll one hurt him for that play. Oh, a lovely pass in the air as well. A second Ooh. touch coming in from the backboard. Now play technically is taking a shot on target, but with Ahmad coming in, it just took the opportunity away from him. Don't be too shy about taking crazy opportunities, however, being 3-0 up with only 40 seconds remaining. Elevate, can they get something in game number one to spur them on through the next two? An infield pass attempt, perhaps, maybe even a shot, but the pass would have been the better option there. There's a little deflection on the goal, oh! and it goes in. Nothing going for Elevate so far. It's scrappy and messy, but they all count as one. It's a great touch backwards. Can't quite get that save away, unfortunately, for Elevate. And the final shot from Cali can bounce in from the post. 4-0, rule one, a decisive game number one in this 0 on one round. Truly, and, and so controlled from rule one. They were able to come out, set the tempo early, get comfortable, get that safe lead, and play lockdown offense. We have seen Elevate struggle to, to break out. There was a one-shot opportunity we saw from Sphinx that was a little bit low and a little bit slow. Other than that, Elevate not really having anything to point to in terms of offense for this game. Zero seconds, Elevate can't get anything from it at the dead either. And rule one, decisive. Yes, there was a couple of minutes before they scored, but once they did, it seemed relatively routine. Elevate, I think their best moments of that game was the first minute or two as well, holding rule one back, actually putting on the offense. But I think when you are being pushed back into your own half, players such as Sphinx, they haven't got the opportunities to then play as well as they have done when they're at home in their own region. And, and my big question, uh, even uh, watching them versus BDS, would be how much space will Sphinx be able to have 
in this international competition. Yeah. Back in his own region, he had opportunities to take the ball airborne, uncontested. Well, that's just not the case here. Yeah. You saw Rule 1 smothering Elevate, giving him no space whatsoever. You had Nupo hitting that fantastic textbook flip reset, making the defense respect that you have the flip and making the most of that space. Rule 1 had a very convincing game one. Yes. And, and like you said, it looked routine stuff. Yes, very, very routine for them. And Elevate, I want to see more of that aggression because what are you going to do when Rule 1 bear down on you? You can't just take all that pressure, pressure, pressure because then you see LCT previously, he had to go for a boost because what else are you going to do? You sit there on zero. No, you have to try and get something. Ahmad shoots on the net. It's yet another goal. They will break you down. Ultimately, it's going to be an upset if Elevate do end up winning this series, but they need to also make sure we're at major. We've got to do what we can. Well, I mean, right now, Rule 1 is handling Elevate better than BDS did, if that's yeah, an honestly, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what that means, but Rule 1 made that look so much easier than what BDS made it look like in their first series. And also, uh, I just want to point out this region matchup. Mina is 5-0 and in series against APAC, 19-0 and in games, and that just improved to 20-0. So, so they've never lost a game versus APAC. They have APAC. not lost a, a single game to APAC. Yeah, the Elevate, Elevate are definitely going to want to change that round as well. As Ocala has to be pushed back on defense after a shot coming in from Elevate. On Forbidden Temple here. Shot from the backboard. Armand actually oh, takes one. Clean. It pinches Ooh. just wide of the post. Unfortunate for Elevate. But now in that halfway line, it's a shot wide. Potentially a pass from Naupo, but his teammate wasn't going to be able to read it. Right hand wing is going to be seeing Sphinx now trying to push Khaled. Khaled shot his way from it, but with enough boost, can work it around again. The offensive player, Naupo, is going to dive in. Get something from this. A solo or a pass? Uh, uh, he fakes high, goes low. It is Naupo. Uh, of course, the low 50. What else would it be? You have to respect the fake. Oh. You can see Sphinx is jumping early to try to, to close the gap and deny the flick. He respects it. He, re he respects the play because he knows what Naupo can do. We all know what Naupo can do. I felt myself pre-jumping that save, and I wasn't even in the match. But that's the threat that Nupo has, and then it's the block Khaled. That last line of defense for Rule 1, keeping this clean sheet going. Elevate still looking for that first goal of the series. And field pass stepped into. Kevin looking downfield to Sphinx. Oh. Sphinx was mid-flip as that ball came to him, but it still works out. LCT going for goal and a nice save from Nupo. A hook shot attempted, but relatively unimaginative. So a routine save for Rule 1 in the end. But 1-0 with only 90 seconds gone. They're doing better than previously, but Elevate, they are looking a little bit more animated. Sphinx with a pre-jump. Why did the post? If that's on target, that is a threatening opportunity. Now, midfield, LCT loses out to Armad. A 50 high off the backboard. Naupo versus LCT. Naupo will be the winner of that battle. Kevin doesn't see Armad lurking, gets bumped out of the way, but LCT now midfield versus Naupo again. And yet again, Mina winning the 50. Fake from Armad, and it oh. pans out. I was wondering if he had some support there from the camera angle, and of course he did. Excellent fake there by Ahmad. I mean, I, as a defender, as Sphinx, he doesn't even have time to jump. It pinches out so perfectly for him. And Rule 1 with a 2-0 lead now. Elevates defense, caught mystified by the power that the ball shot into the back of their own net. And, and that's how... And, I mean, honestly, that's the Rocket League I love to see, is when players are smart about taking the space and then letting their teammates move up and make the play and, mm -hmm. and make the most of the space given. We saw before with Nupo doing that with his flip reset, getting the space, taking it back down to the ground, and then there with the fake from Ahmad. Rule one has been so in control of this series as we go past the halfway point of game two and Elevate still looking great for pass, that first great goal. Shot. And you thought it might be there, but LCT was denied. Now for the sheer patience and Sphinx he doesn't care about the patience. He just wants to get another one on target. Make sure to keep stretching that defense. Sidewall thinks he's up so early for it and catches rule one completely lacking. Uh, now you see Khaled only had about 14 boost on that back wall. I didn't think that shot was going to have enough power. Khaled getting a piece of it, but couldn't keep it out. So Sphinx scored his first land goal last series but had quite a bit of help from BDS if you see the replay. And that's also the first goal for Elevate in this series. Sphinx big goal. yet again. Big, big goal for Sphinx. 
will elevate, be able to keep this momentum going. They are within striking distance against rule one. Two go up though, that double commit could come back to haunt him. Khaled dropped down, but had no Good teammate demo. there. And another bump as well. Tell you what, I love the aggression. I love the idea for going the aggression here because rule one, look comfortable. Like, what, like, why wouldn't they be? They are controlling the pace of this game in its entirety. If there's anything that Elevate can do to just make sure that they're looking over their shoulder a bit more, that they are hesitant going for a ball, or to make them more susceptible to fakes and to going for different types of shots, you're going to need to make sure that you're getting bumps and demos and make them uneasy. A great fake out from Kevin. Leaves the ball to Sphinx, but a low and weak shot forces Khaled into a relatively routine save yet again. Minute 10, Elevate. One more goal is needed to really push rule one. LCT sent long, that's going to be open. Kevin goes to the ball, fakes it out instead. It's a double miss, Sphinx and Khaled. Nobody can get there. An opportunity for Elevate. Oh, hold on, the no one board. taking Ooh. it. And that was a very important backward read by Khaled. You saw Elevate surging in these final moments. Nupo out of boost. Get some help from Ahmad, but that is a big whiff. Sphinx not able to make contact, fortunately for him. And Elevate LCT there to pick up the pieces. That bat ball now with Ahmad sending it to the corner. The defense looking somewhat desperate for rule one at the moment. And the pressure, as we've said, building. A miss from Ahmad and a pinch pass, Kevin. He's demoed. With the 30 seconds remaining, it's full boost for rule one. It's full push for rule one. And it is a response that they were after. And that demo was so important. Ahmad gets the demo, gets the pass, but also if he doesn't land that demo, he demoed a player with almost full boost. That boost would have been used defensively. So that demo at the midfield making that play happen. Huge insurance goal for rule one. 20 seconds left now and the job is doubled. Nay, it is tripled. Rule one yet again a victory. This time game two. Game three needs to be a big response from Elevate James. It, it does. We saw Sphinx try to rise to the occasion in this game. Got that first goal. We saw a moment where Elevate seemed to be making the comeback, but just as quickly as it popped up, it was snuffed out by Rule 1. I mean, they do look better. Elevate looks so much better in this game because of their aggression. And to be honest, I forgive like two of those goals that they scored that they conceded in the end. That's fine. Like, you have you're to push in, as much as exactly. you can. Like, uh, I think we sort of say it quite frequently. Like, if you're caught in the final 20 seconds, but you're down a goal, you're good. Like, you, you're not you, playing you to not get scored on, you're playing to score. Yeah, and if you can see the goal there, fair enough. At least you went for it. There, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. However, they still need to make sure that they're a bit more clinical earlier in that game. Make sure they don't just let a goal go and then find themselves chasing because the pressure that we saw them put on rule one in the final minute, in the first 40 seconds of the final minute, that is what really stretched them and what made rule one look a little bit shaky. And we'll take a look at the Mobile One high performance replay here. Things got started with that low 50 from Nupo. Again, another 50. The fake from Ahmad leaves it for Khaled, who gets. I mean, a lot had to go right for Rule mm -hmm. One on that play, but they did all the right things, Stumpy. And that goal, I was a bit surprised that Khaled wasn't able to hit that out, but still low boost situation for him. This is great from Ahmad. Oh, yeah. And he, it, it wasn't even shown on the replay but Ahmad getting that demo at midfield. Yeah. Those midfield demos, if they're perfectly timed, they're devastating. Especially, as you said at the time, after picking up 100 boost, uh, th and it just disappears into the ether. And honestly, that is maybe one of the most annoying things mm -hmm. in a game for me. If I'm going around and I never have boost, and I finally get 100 boost and I get demoed, I Jesse slam my deck. <laughs> it, it's, it's tough to deal with. And Especially Elevate. if the other team scores. Yeah, obviously, yeah, of course. I mean, this is also Elevate finding rule one incredibly tough to deal with. And the aggression immediately from LCT, I think, may well shape how game three is going to be going. Rule one, need to make sure that they are standing firm and that they can't and that they've managed to avoid some of these demos coming in for them because I'm sure that Elevate are now out for blood. Well, you just witnessed the layered defense. Khaled jumps up early. He gets beat, but Nupo's there on the backboard to make sure Elevate has nothing. Sphinx, good speed there. 
at least beats one. I mean, look, look at the differences in boost immediately, James, as we were talking about. Like, rule one, they know how they're going to... They know where the shape of the game is taking it, so they can then proactively pick up boost in that area. I think Elevate are really struggling to get used to having nothing for them. And realistically, when they're playing in APAC, other players don't know how to pressure the boost as well as Mina teams do. It's Elevate's been forced back. You even saw it in the first game with the amount of saves. I think they had to make nine saves. They were shut out. It's that overwhelming pressure from Rule 1 in the 50s continued to go the way of Rule 1 as well. All three players on Rule 1 at one point on that screen were all credited <laughs> with a shot. None of them went in, <laughs> but seeing all three soccer balls on fire next to their yeah, names. And they had 100 boosts <laughs> as well. It's like a meteoric offense just pouring down on the blue net. But there's a demo. Sphinx was able to take down one player. Elevate, keeping this game three quite close. Offensively, though, they're going to need somebody to step up. Sphinx is that player you expect, although flip reset quickly shut down. But this is the pressure starting to build. Another mm -hmm. demo on the back line, but Sphinx finally has a little bit of space, but all he does is try to poke it away from rule one. Back on now, Sphinx. Been wanting to see him become activated. LCD forced into awkward position, gives the ball out to the midfield. Kevin dives in from now pose underneath, out of his blind spot, and keeps the shot from going on target. Callum with one demo removes Kevin from the pitch. LCT completely outsped on that, and low boost again for Elevate, continuing to struggle with the finite resource. Yeah, just keep your eye on those corners you, <laughs> of the screen, top right, you can see the total boost of all the players on the field. Oh, Quite double a bit. miss! Oh, and it might be an open net, it is! Khaled will strike first in game three. Rule one have been cruising all series long, and they keep on cruising. Oh, a team bump as well from Kevin. Kevin sends things cruising up the pitch. Did not want to at all. And halfway through the game, the opening goal for rule one, it took a little bit longer, and you hate to see a team bump causing the first one to be conceded. But it does happen. And it hurts when it's in a, a, a game that could decide the series as well. And there's a ground pinch. Oh, what a save. That one's safe. Somehow that ground pinch had some height on it as well. Sphinx will take this to the air. We've seen a few times Sphinx, when he's able to take that ball to the air, is trying to just get it around the defender instead of trying to go for an outplay. Good oh, shot on miss. target from Ahmad. I thought that was a relatively routine save. Went straight over the top of that final defender, well, you and Sphinx know, couldn't deal with it. Well, you know what he's trying to do? Sphinx is trying to get that perfect hit to blast it off his own backboard to yeah, clear it out, because it back. it's not going to be enough to just save it in front of net. That's where you get scored on on yeah. the rebound. You saw what Sphinx was trying to do, but just could not pull it off. Two goals, two minutes remaining, and two goals to elevate oh, to try and chase down, open. and that's one Kevin! led entirely oh, Kevin! by the demo. And Kevin, is that his first goal today, I believe, James? No, it, I don't think so. I think he scored against PDS. King. But Kevin, King you know, you Kevin. love to see it. On the mainstream, that's Kevin's first goal. King Kevin has come to town, half in the lead of Rule 1. And it all came, James, from those Demos. It did. I mean, Kevin, he was he was alone out there. Home alone on the field. Just walked that ball right in. Elevate now with some hope. A small glimmer, but rule one has looked so comfortable in control, but the demos are open again. Up the game for Elevate. Continuing Elevate with their bloodlust. Naupo backflips in the midfield and King Kevin comes in and says good night. A drawn game in game number three. And I mentioned about the midfield demo effectiveness when Ahmad was able to land a demo. I might have even been on Kevin. Regardless, Elevate do the exact same thing and have tied up this game. And rule one must be shaking. You said 19 and 0 Armina against APAC. Have not dropped the Another game. Demo. Not, a double, double demo. demo! It's open! It's LCT! And a lead with three goals in a row for Elevate! A scorched earth policy for Elevate as they burn the pitch to the ground. Rule one falling victim to back to back demos. And I did not see this coming. Elevate playing completely unleashed, unhinged Rocket League. A minute 10 and a lead for Elevate so far. And missing that back corner. 
But now Kevin, right-hand side, opportunity to push it further and further down the pitch. Midfield again, Kevin Central, LCT low boost, takes a bit of a snapshot towards the net. They need to maintain this game to oh, the LCT five. to shoot. It's a fourth in a row. Elevate, clear by two. And the panic started to set in. You could see Ama thinking that he could take that time and bring that ball up the wall, not expecting to get jumped on. Smiles abound on Elevate's side. They have for Meta in full force, four in a row. And one thing I will say about Elevate is even in the games that they were losing to BDS, it was clear from the player cams that it was not getting them down. They were locked yeah. in, still having Another fun. Another demo! This is the game of demos for Elevate. Scorched Earth policy. This is Scorched Universe policy. Ball cam off. Predator mode activated. Sphinx removing Rule 1 players from the pitch. What are we witnessing? And when we talk about visual adjustments, being a parent from game to game, or even within a game, this game will have to be studied. And that one might just roll in, it does, so it's not over yet. It's an eight goal thriller <laughs> between Elevate and Rule 1. And a, it looked like it was almost a pinch there. Yeah. Regardless, a full field goal still smiles on Elevate's faces, but now you, you start to worry. Mm -hmm. Rule 1 has their foot in the door. Rule 1, it is theirs to lose. It's absolutely theirs to lose. It, it's no surprise when we're saying that they're going to be, you know, the favorites in this series. But my word, the difference that we have seen from these teams. Elevate turning it on completely. Final 20 seconds in game number three. Final 15, in fact. Midfield sees Khaled find Ahmad on the side. And the 100 boost stolen. Another one open. Yet again, it is Sphinx. Sphinx is leaving no room for doubt. Recognizing the net's vulnerable and going for goal. Elevate have somehow flipped this series on its head in game three when it seemed hopeless after game one, getting shut out, waiting to see if they would score. They finally do last game, Sphinx scoring the only goal. Then this game, after the demos come out, they rain even more down upon rule one and claim victory in this 10 goal game three. What a ride. That is also the first time APAC have ever won a game against the Middle East region. Elevate, welcome to the Copenhagen Major. Uh, it, 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 if, if it was a ceiling that APAC had to break through, well, they demoed the ceiling. They did. They demoed the ceiling, they took all the shards of glass, they smelted it down And then they demoed goals. that. <laughs> and then they demoed all those goals. <laughs> But as oh, we were my. saying, we said they need all of that aggression because it clearly made Rule 1 uneasy. They weren't just going for it for silly demos too, for the sake of it, because they, they thought, OK, we can't win the ball. Sphinx, he went up for the ball, and we literally saw him toggle the ball come Wait, off. is this the same game? Same There's game. two minutes left? Two minutes And there were left. two goals? And we finished with a 10-goal <laughs> game? We got eight goals in two minutes. I don't know. And <laughs> six <laughs> of them <laughs> that were elevate. Oh, I, this was an anomaly of a game, truly one of a kind. And it was fun to watch. There's that demo from Sphinx. And it, uh, that was just insane. I mean, the a wild vibes, ride. The vibes on Elevate, that is unmatched. You, you need to make sure that, because like, realistically, we've said it before, if you're coming in as an APAC team, you know that your biggest rivals are going to be SSA. Teams like that in, from those regions. As soon as then you get a scalp versus rule one, you get a game, you're thinking, boys, this is wide open. Yes, <laughs> we are now 19 and one versus Mina. But with but Swiss that, is, has to start from somewhere. And, and with Swiss as well, Stumpy, every game helps with that seeding matchup the next, the next round. So Especially early on too, because every team is still in this. You win one game, you're then going to be avoiding a load of those three and O teams. Excellent work from Elevate. What a turnaround. The aggression has to continue. Their backs are against the wall, and Armada Rule 1 are going to be pulling them away from a victory here. Is there sustainability in that strategy? Will we see those demos continue to work, or will we see a different game plan from Elevate? And also, how will Rule 1 respond yeah. to that devastating loss? See if they can keep their composure. Hey. Uh, I was going to say, one thing that I hope is that we don't now see Elevate think, OK, now time to play a bit more sensibly. 
That doesn't get you game wins, yes. like a 6-4. That does not you get that win. You have to play like Maniacs, yes, like you, you just did in game three. And they, they outdid rule one in the play Hold like up. Maniacs. And that's Finks for a double down oh, for Kevin. Oh. It is magic here for Elevate. And this is that magic you expected from Sphinx. A perfect double tap, drop down pass to Kevin. It was on Kevin's nose. Minute remaining, sorry, rather a minute gone. And James, we saw there was only two goals scored after three minutes in the previous game. We've still got, what, about 30 goals left in this game <laughs> if we're going by those numbers. If we're going by those metrics. But now all yeah, eyes are on rule one. They are off kilter now. They lost the last game in a, a pretty stunning fashion. They've given up the first oh, goal, but shot. that stops the bleeding. What a response from Naupo. Sidewall from Arman, back over from Khalid, down from Naupo. And a touch came in from the defender, but it was not nearly enough. Rule one, they're saying we can lose one game, lads. We are not going to be going here to game number five. Kevin, we have Khalid on the kickoff. And look at the differences in the boost amounts when we were talking previously about how dominant rule one were in making sure they were securing as many pants as possible. But we are seeing Elevate play on a much more level playing field. Mm -hmm. Hamad trying to find Us? a teammate middle, but there's a pass. The shot is going to be a little bit wide. Hamad down to Khaled. Khaled up to Nupo. Nupo has an awkward read, and the ball does not leak out to Khaled there. Now demo from behind. Rule one starting to stabilize. Great read, though, from Kevin. Making sure the pressure is going to be maintained. Two minutes elapsed, and still this drawn game. Khaled has sent it back into his own corner. We've seen that happen a few times. Ahmad, our position has to reverse. Look at the pressure elevator building. But no one going to that ball leaves it open for Naupo. An interception on the defense. LCT to catch. Left-hand side then sees Kevin tap it back into his own half. Uh -oh. Not quite what he wanted. And Rule 1 are going to be able to pressure. Ever since that little touch from Kevin, you can see Elevate has been in a bit of hot water. Finally cleared out by Sphinx. Khaled hoping to pass to a teammate, but it results in a 50. You can see a little bit of a mix-up mm -hmm. there from Rule 1. I mean, Elevate, what's their main goal here? It is to make sure that nobody on Rule 1 feels comfortable. Sphinx, we've now put from the pitch on that chance, but with no ball coming towards that orange side of the pitch, it's going to unfortunately for them be for now. Khaled Batborn completely unmatched. Two fly in to challenge him. Now, po, it's an open one on target. And rule one, establish another lead. And you saw how risky of a play that was from Sphinx. Sphinx kind of going for an all or nothing play. Ended up teeing up that opportunity for rule one. It didn't result in an immediate goal off that pass out, but the rebound did him in. Sphinx, zero boost, trying to take that up the corner. And maybe could have played that a little bit safer. Oh, now Po nearly went from ceiling down to the floor. Sphinx on the backboard, though, taps it in from that side. We are level pegging again, James. And it was a foot race. You see a big boom. And Khaled, I guess, trying to take too, much, too much time. He's, it seems like rule one is not a, really respecting the speed that Elevate is capable of. We saw it before with Ahmad thinking that he could take it up the wall. They got scored on. Khaled thinking he could take more time. He gets scored on there. I feel like this series is a series of complete respect from both sides, where Rule 1, somewhat rightfully, are thinking, look, we're going to be faster, we're going to be more mechanical, whatever, and elevate them thinking, OK, well, you know what? Later on in this series, we don't respect you. You're going to the graveyard, lads. Don't you worry about it. We are here to play. They are swinging for the proverbial fences. Mm. Elevate is. Elevate is leaving it all out there on the field, and you can just tell that they are playing with heart. And we are drawn with 80 seconds remaining, and LCT challenges in the sky. Left-hand side, the ball flies. Again, LCT chasing it with zero boost. Sphinx has to be there. Can Sphinx get a wondrous goal? He cannot. Flies into that back corner. Khaled is going to be sending it with no boost. LCT does have time. He has positioning and space. Finds Sphinx in that back corner. A minute now, ticking down. Rule one are beginning to find their shape again, and Elevate need to tear that shape to pieces. Good tip from LCT, Sphinx. Takes it to the corner, gets a double, will retain possession, pass attempt 
broken up, but you see zero boost for Khaled. Out into the middle, a 50. Khaled still running on small pads. This could be tough for rule one, but Nufo comes in to calm it down. LCT bumping Sphinx out of the way. That's not what Elevate won. And LCT panicking a little bit on that backside. He's the veteran of this team. Needs to make sure that he is not being an awkward member. Ahmad shoots towards target, goes wide. Second is good. Rule one in the final 30 in game number four is going to secure a one goal lead. A clutch shot, and you see if he shoots that towards net, maybe Sphinx will have the save, but instead delays that shot. It goes wide, whether intentional or not. Ahmad was locked in, ready for that double. Beautiful play and a key moment in this series for rule one. Kevin trying to musty it down the pitch, isn't quite able to get it as far as he would like. Now it's Khaled to take it into that back corner. Yet another dunk. Rule one, they are grappling the control of this game. Kevin towards target, but it's too low, too slow. Sphinx central, no one's there. A bump chance for Kevin. LCT now, everything rests on his shoulders. It's down to these final seconds. Will have to be full field at zero seconds. There's the first part completed. Now part two. Leaves it in front of net. Ahmad trying to solve this puzzle to bring it to the ground. LCT keeps it up. Kevin will also get a pass. And there's the shot. It's wide, Wait. but both still in play. Kevin now again in that back corner. It's going to stay up. LCT's the one just to tap it down. Rule one at the end. It is scrappy. But it is a victory for the Middle East. And elevate the performance they put up. In the game that they won, it's something that I'm sure we're going to have to study for a long uh, time coming. When you talk about adjustments, you've got to reference that game. Elevate, I mean, there, there was like two goals scored with two minutes left in the game, and yep. then the lid of that game got blown off. <laughs> Elevate surged, had such a brilliant performance to close out that game, and even here, making rule one fight for every square inch. Elevate. They have a lot to look forward to with a result like this, even though they don't get the win, a lot of things to point back to and really retain as they move forward in their international careers. I think mm -hmm. Sphinx uh, playing on land for the first time as what, such a what, young rookie, oh, it, it was it was a great series to win yeah. this. Incredible series, and Kevin, King Kevin, getting a couple <laughs> of goals himself too, and making their presence known on the pitch. I think when a lot of people might think that the entire series could have potentially been in the same flavor as game one and two, where realistically, Elevate, they shrunk back a bit. They, they weren't putting everything on the table. As soon as they did, their aggression came out. They put, uh, we had eight goals in two minutes, yes, that, I, I, It was outrageous. We need to go back and watch that in the green room. Just to, yeah. just to watch those last two minutes, which turned out to be more like five because of all the replays <laughs> that you're going to be forced to watch. And you know what? I think Elevate have so many more fans after that series Certainly. too because people love to see how a new region comes through, how a new team comes through, new players in Sphinx and Kevin. What is their history? What is their future are they going to look like at these events if they can continue making them? This is the start of the season. That was only round two for them as well. There's still opportunities to impress. And they got the first game against Mina from an APAC yeah. team. What a brilliant statement that is. But on the other side of the coin, Mina improved to 6-0 and as a region against teams from APAC. Rule one, even though it was close in the first game, the first couple games rather, they looked to be in full control. Yes, they, they did. Yeah. They looked rock solid. Nothing could budge them. Uh, it was only that game three that <laughs> kind of threw things off a bit. But overall, I think Rule One going to be happy with their performance yeah. as well. Going to be getting that first series win. And uh, now look ahead as well to that round three. Yeah, round three is going to be very interesting. I'm so excited to see just, just what teams that we're going to be seeing come up against each other. And Elevate are, of course, going to be there in the Norton 2 in the round three. Rule one there is a one on one. But we have got now O'Khaled talking to Leaf for the interview. Just how did he think that ended up going? Almost very close. We got Ahmed this time, uh, but we are uh, we're going to talk to one of them. So we're going to get information regardless. Uh, I got to ask right off the bat. I can see it in your face. You might not be too happy with how close that got at the end there, are you? يعني أول سؤال أرطول حابين نسألك يا يعني مبين على وجهك إنه مو مبسوط من النتيجة بأمام فريق ألبيت خصوصاً إنها كانت كتير كتير متخاربة باللحظات الأخيرة والله صراحة أتمنى أنها تكون سويب لكن الحمد لله فازوا جيم واحد لكن هذا مو معناته إنه شيء مو كويس 
Uh, we, we tried our best. We were hoping that we would get a clean sweep and go for right. a 3-0. But they managed to take one game off, but they couldn't take any more than that. And at the end of the day, we got the series. Right. Uh, for me, and I'm wondering if this was the pivotal point, I, I did see you guys laughing, having fun in game two, and then it kind of switched around. Is that the moment where maybe you guys kind of let your foot off the gas? يعني لاحظ احنا في المباراه الثانيه انه مبين عليكم كنتوا بتمزحوا وبتضحكوا ومبسوطين دخلنا على الجيم الثالث وشفنا ان الامور بدات تختلف فهل فكركم انه بهاي اللحظه انتم يمكن يعني هديتوا شوي ما ركزتوا كثير ولا هل بهاي اللحظه يمكن صارت المشاكل معاكم من يوم كنا نفوز كنا صراحه نضحك لان الجيم سهل وقت ما فاز الجيم صار اكثر جاهم الحماس انهم يفوزون زياده فعشان كذا صرنا جدين اكثر So after game two, when we got to game three, and we started to see that the momentum was shifting in their favor and they were starting to play a lot better. But we tried to stay calm and that's when we tried to focus just a little bit more. And we realized that uh, in that moment, we have to be a little bit more chill. Yeah, and uh, how much does Coach Cresper play into this to be able to bring you guys back in? Is it a player thing? Is it the coach that says, guys, let's bring it down? بتقدر توضح لنا عن دور المدرب معاكم انه هل هو مثلا اللي برجعكم وبيهديكم بيخليكم تركزوا مره ثانيه ولا ايش بالضبط بكون دور معاكم؟ طبيعي اي دور اي كوتش باي فريق انه يرجع فريقه بحماسهم الاول ويخليهم يفوزون باي طريقه. Yeah, of course. He did his best to kind of just bring us back to uh, reality and make sure that we're focused. We're looking at the series the way that we want to and focus on the target and just take it home. Right. And and for after this now, because obviously there's still a lot of work to be put in. What does the team do? Are you going back to watch this VOD or is it straight back to just scrims looking forward? طب هلا بعد انتهاء هذا السيريز هل حتكونوا متابعين مثلا للفوت لهي المباريات وتشوفوا يمكن ايش الاغلاط اللي كانت عندكم ولا هل حضركم مركزين على السكرمات والتدريبات للمباريات الجايه؟ كلها بنسويها بنشوف الفيديوز ونشوف اغلاطنا وبنلعب سكرمات كلها. We're going to try and go for both. We're going to look at the VOD, see what kind of mistakes that we made and we're also going to try and focus on the next series ahead. Keep them busy, keep them busy. Either way, you got the win there. So you did it? Oh, he's going to leave me hanging. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> that was a very close one. Almost embarrassing, but we got a lot more Rocket League to get to. So why don't we go to the break real quick so we can get you to that next exciting bit of Rocket League. Coming up next after this break, it's going to be Luminosity facing off against Complexity. Luminosity, a lot of work to put in, it seems, and Complexity, one of Sam's best. We'll see how it goes. Stay alive. If I don't move ahead, then 
like it's stuck behind I'm at a friend's place, gonna stick around The puzzle pieces fit for now The things you said were playing loud There are people outside, living their lives Thousands of stories move through time
game five. Oh my goodness. We almost got it in the most unlikely match as well, but Elevate putting up a fantastic fight. They tried to do it, ultimately rule one. Proves to be too much. They had a great time throughout it, though. You know they were all smiles coming out of that game. Yeah, Elevate game three. That was a fun watch where we scored, what, eight goals in two minutes? Or that was, whatever. yeah, that was, was wild. Yeah, back and forth. I didn't even realize how many goals the same as the casters had been scored in such a short amount of time until the casters noticed it. And then I was like, yeah, wait a minute. That was explosive at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, they, they, they got to save these goals. You need them for next game. And they did need them for right. next game. But save his power earlier. They almost got it at zero, too. They almost got one in game four. <laughs> it was close. They had like three shots at zero seconds. I was, I was hoping. I was yeah, hoping. yeah I, was, I was actually surprised at rule one's inability to kill that ball at yeah. the end of game four. Just, just end the game, win the series, but they kept giving them just a little bit of a chance there. Ultimately, though, rule one does take the victory here. Ultimately, they end up taking the victory here, and they did have a little bit more offense that we, I think, are a little accustomed to seeing from them at land stage. Of course, Elevate, I think that, that they're, they, they are the main story here because they have been playing so well. Johnny's in the green room just hyping up the whole time saying, they can win this, they can win this. They're going to end up going at least one and three, one and three, and one and one tomorrow. They look absolutely phenomenal. Rule one, the question mark is still on them big time because we really don't know just how good they are. They have been very middle in, but they do get the job done here at least. But the problem is they do it in a 3-1 and that might hurt going into the next rounds because game differential is so incredibly important to keep up with easier opponents. So we'll see how it all pans out. But Elevate, I think they're pretty happy with that performance all in all going into the 0-2 round. They look pretty strong. I mean, they said they wanted to play their own game. I think it's fair to say they did that. Once the bugs and the demo started flying in, we had a little bit of the Sphinx magic as well yeah. from that pass that Kevin was more than happy to put away. And then the pace that they showed there, too. Elevate had a lot to praise. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy for Rule 1. I'm happy they got their win. Hopefully, that'll get them spurred on so they can really show what they I, I do want to highlight Sphinx really quickly, too. I feel like oftentimes when players are popping off in these smaller regions, they show up to lane and they still they struggle to have yeah. that same magic. Not yeah. the case with Sphinx here, Bates. He was incredible, the goals he was able to pull off in that series. I mean, the young man was just out there balling out, having fun, and that is exactly what you need to do on land. I mean, now Pope been playing great, Sphinx playing great, yeah. Daniel playing great, Zen playing great, all the young people, and everybody's saying the land rookie jitters. I'm starting to get to the point, Gibbs, where I don't, I don't even believe that that actually exists. I feel like there's more <laughs> of an advantage because you just don't know what's coming, so you're just like, I'm just going to play Rocket League at this point. So uh, hats off to them, but Elevate, they do fall down to that 0-2 round, but honestly, they might be favorites against whoever they play down there. They do look pretty strong. We'll have to see how the numbers turn out. I mean, what we can do is yeah. sit and wait and watch, same as the players for now. Well, folks, we do have matches going on on two different streams right now. If you see me looking down, I'm taking a look at twitch.tv slash RLE Sports. Uh, you got the Pioneers taking on Power. Power, I heard some yelling a moment ago. Oh, power Hello. did score, and I think they might be about to do it again here. Yes, indeed. It is 2-0 with 4.17 left to go uh, right now between Power and the Pioneers there. OG was able to take care of Limitless after a 2-2 overtime in Game oh, 1. Gosh. Limitless threatened to win Game 1 in that series. Ultimately, OG was able to take care of it. Yeah, it was a big upset. Big upset, OG taking that one down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there gosh. Yeah. Over on the mainstream, though, we got three more matches before our day is over. Over. We're all looking forward to Carmine Corp versus the Falcons and Furia versus Vitality. But before there, we got to get back to these teams that didn't have round one go the way they wanted here. Luminosity and Complexity both looking to bounce back here in round number two. Yeah, Complexity, I mean, they went up against Vitality and they didn't play bad. They played okay. Vitality and especially, and especially Zen was simply better. Luminosity, on the other hand, they did not play the game that they wanted to against Furia. We expect to see better this time around. I mean, you said there's no jitters for LAN debutants, but I will say that Luminosity Cheese was not playing up to the standards that we've been seeing him perform at throughout online in North America. It's now a second chance. He's got used to it. Hopefully, we'll see them feeling comfortable. Yeah, Cheese got one goal on three shots, and that was it. Uh it, we saw Luminosity. We barely saw them, honestly. Yeah, there exactly. was no high. It was only there three games at all. It was just pure domination against them. So they have to bounce back. But Luminosity, if anyone's going to bounce back, it's going to be Reynolds. He will figure it out for this round. And also, just the Luminosity culture, what they've been brewing up, what they've been cooking up for the organization. Greg and Kev, Greg, their coach, Kev, their analyst, test coach. I definitely know that they've been reviewing the replays. Magic Bear, in particular, in the series against Furia, will be pushed up too far, trying to mm -hmm. overcompensate. 
trying to make a play happen when he's trying to force the issue in. Sometimes you just gotta let the game come to you. You expect the bear to, bear to play better this time around. And Rails here is such a good team captain. You know, he's a person you can turn to even towards the end of that series when I've no doubt in his mind he just wanted to get out of there. He was still offering fist bumps, still Ging his team up, still saying, come on, we are the players that we are and we can do better than this. And then Magic Bear, you know, he is such a reliable pair of hands now here at his second RLCS LAN. And he's another one that, you know, maybe he doesn't completely pop off in every single series, but he's got that potential to just get that goal when his team is struggling. And that's what we're hearing so far is potential for Luminosity. Yes. We haven't yep. seen that turn into, you know, kinetic energy yet. Maybe now's the time. I mean, some, some players, it takes a long time. You know, we've seen a... <laughs> Face the press by kinetic energy. Give him a second. Give him a second. Okay, we're good. Well, we'll see if they can do it here, folks. Excited to see how Luminosity looks here in their second match. On the other side of things, though, complexity. Oh, look at that. Look at them. So complexity, when they played Vitality, they played them close. It was two one-goal losses. They won a game as well, 4-2. And we saw Dorito on the offensive side doing some work, and that's what you're going to need. We know about complexity and their defense. They played pretty well, but they lost their rock on defense with AJG. They decided to go a different way, try and pick up a little bit more on the offensive side. We saw that with Dorito uh, in that game too, but that was about it. It was against Vitality though. It was. Vitality, you know, back-to-back -back land champs. You expect probably to lose that series, but they did keep it close. So like if you're looking on paper based on round one, I would say right now, complexity are favorites. CRL here, the only player to make a Rocket League RLCS major from three separate regions, getting the EU one back mm. in the RLCS X days, and now back here again in person after doing so in North America last season. So he's really been quite going about his business, but he keeps popping up here and raise ball teammates. I mean, what can you say about him? I mean, El Toro, he's just that great of a player. And when he's setting the physicality on the field, there's not much you can do. They had a moment in that series against Vitality earlier where CRR had the ball. It looked like classic complexity last year. CRR dribble gets a great 50, raise ball just goes and hunts. Alpha Canyon gets to the ball, and that's how good complexity used to be. Simple, clean, but effective Rocket League. They need to do more of that here at the land, and especially more of that against Luminosity right now. Who do you guys think is going to win? Let us know in chat. Hashtag LG. Hashtag COL. Yeah, going into today, I think the cash to power rankings, I believe Clubsy was 9, I think, 9 or 10. They were close. While LG was 12, but they were all within 0.5 of one another. That 9 through 12 was so incredibly close. So I'm going to say it, and I'm going to curse it. If we're going to have a game 5, it's now. Please. It's at this point. This is a very close matchup between these two teams. Like Complexity didn't look that great when they uh, were playing through their qualifiers, but they did qualify here. And LG, many consider them NA number four. And honestly, they show that in round one. But it's a new round. We'll see what the coach has drawn up. Let's I, see what happens. I know casters in the in the green room just before this were were going back and forth on it's who to predict for this split. match. It feels very very close, and there's an argument that can be made on both sides here. I mean, and, and for uh, let's 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 do some favor here for the Luminosity fans for the culture here, Bates. I mean, what a culture, baby! If you watched if you watched the match with Luminosity earlier, if you were awake in NA and got to watch that travesty, there's you're probably sitting there feeling like it doesn't feel very close that was scary i don't know what to do like what is the recipe for success here for luminosity i mean for luminosity you gotta just believe that there's gonna be some regression from the, to the mean here she's only shooting three shots the whole entire series you gotta believe that's just not gonna happen again he's gonna be much more offensive much more a, of a focal point when he's on offense gave so once again i need this stat. what was he number one goals per game in na yep number, number one. one goals per game in na if he's on offense that's when luminosity's playing the best you expect that to happen here well, folks, again, let us know who you think is going to win. Right now, Power just took game one over KCP on the other side of things. We'll make our predictions up here on the desk. Start with you, Cole. Uh, you I'm, I'm going to sit in complexity for this one. I, I think that what we saw from Luminosity was not good enough. I'd love to be proven wrong, and I'm sure they'll improve, but complexity played well. I don't know. Like, Luminosity, it's part of their game plan, right, to go 3-2 in Swiss. So they probably are going to have a travesty yeah, no matter true. when they do it. But I got to go complexity as well. I think they were favorites anyway, but after that round one performance, Slightly bigger favorites for me, but I do hope it goes five. I'm going complexity. I'm going complexity. Can, we, can a coin go first? We have the coin go first. Here we got uh, <laughs> Luminosity in the blue, complexity in the orange here. Nice. And it's going to be complexity for the coin. Once again, the coin is going to be wrong because give me Luminosity. Wow. <laughs> I do believe that they are going to play better this time around. I know it looked real fraudulent earlier, Chad. Don't get too freaked out now. But I just do think that with the culture that they have, I'm talking about the party <laughs> that they bring to the bring to the table, I do think that they can potentially, with cheese on offense more, be better. For the for the, for the the non-complexity fans, what do you mean by the culture? For the culture what, what is this? Listen, they're just building something nice over there, man. They're starting from the ground up. They're not trying okay. to pick up all these great players. 
players picking up cheese or staking a ruddle, sticking with the bear. And you gotta believe in the coaches, but also you gotta believe in the game plan. I do think that they are one of the few teams in Rock League that has a great game plan. I do believe in the culture. I do believe in the players as well. And I do believe Complexity is gonna win this match. <laughs> it is not that that was it was a really good front to the moment <laughs> earlier. I'm not too lying. It's just to be able to turn it around that quickly against a team this strong. I am gonna go with Complexity on this one, but I would love to see him. They have shown well, hey. up in chat. There Luminosity is. gonna be the favorites here. Can they turn it around? This would be a big one for him. So let's get into the game. The players are ready. They are on the pitch, ready for kickoff. And I know you all, all at home are as well. A battle of the blue. The winner gets to improve to one and one. Luminosity versus Complexity to continue here in Copenhagen. Stumpy. We have seen Luminosity already go up against one Sam team, mm. and now they play the other. They also came up against the better Sam team earlier <laughs> in Furia, who are the number one seed coming out of South America, and Complexity have played second fiddle to them so far, but it has been a very close race with one win in favor of Complexity early on in the season. Luminosity, it's no secret, they were not playing to the level that we've expected to come from them especially considering they made it to this major based on a second place finish in North America. It's time for them to prove that they should not be going down Norton 2. It feels like this is a great opportunity for Luminosity to silence the haters. Mm -hmm. and with 30 seconds in, it's going to be a very awkward little taps of play as Complexity get a decent amount of pressure. Now it's a tap central again from Ray's Bull. Dorito, left-hand side, and Demo opening it up somewhat, but a pitch Big going pitch. the other way down the pitch will be going wide of the net. And Complexity, when they played Vitality earlier on, they played them close. And, and I think that's why so many people have Complexity as the favorite in this matchup, is just going off that eye test that we saw from Complexity. There's a lot to point to positively for Complexity, whereas Luminosity really struggled against Furia, especially Cheese, who is that player you're expecting to kind of have a breakout performance. Yeah, I mean, first time that he's come to land, Cheese has been exceptional online. The star player, absolutely for Luminosity, and it's been an absolute pleasure to watch him. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to perform to that level. And Madge Bear and Rattles, the same kind of story, did well online, a few iffy series, but not able to perform to the level that has brought them to this major complexity, however. As we said, Burst Vitality, they played them so close. They made it a scary series for one of the best teams in the world. We've seen how well complexity can play against Ooh. these teams too, uh, Vitality especially. One goal off beating them historically. And they have made a switch. There was the infamous AJG shot. Mm -hmm. And now Dorito has come in to take the place of AJG and see if he can help propel complexity to even more success. So far, this game has been a stalemate on either side, a battle for possession. Not too many daring chances on either end. A lot more midfield play than we're seeing here, and a drop down to Magic Bear. Magic Bear trying to go for that side will redirect, but red from Ray's Bull, a shot towards target. CRR to block it away. Approaching halfway through the game and a backboard clear from Cheese. Nothing particularly crazy from any of these players coming on so far. A couple of shots, a couple of saves. But as I said, James, nothing particularly convincing. I think it's still that grace period at the beginning. Both teams feeling each other out, poking, prodding, trying to see if there's any weakness in the defense. And there's the first weakness that gets exposed. Ray's bull comes through. The bull charges down the pitch. CRR receives, then it goes straight back to El Toro. Halfway through the game in complexity, securing that lead. And you have to think for Luminosity, how are they going to receive a goal coming against them from yet another Sam team? Because if we know leaders, we know that when, when you have Rettles on your side, he will be leading that team. He's going to make sure that he is one of those players that keeps up the comms. He doesn't get his head down. And they release comms videos as well to Luminosity. And of course, we have that Luminosity stream with Spaceman and Corelli. They that are live right now. And I know for a fact they are going to be going crazy. I mean, it's got to be tough to sit through that. Luminosity, a slow start here. Flip reset, almost beats the defense. Good save from Magic Bear, who got back just in the nick of time. And now Rettles with the boost steal. Trying to march up field. Cheese working with Rettles, but that touch is to nobody. And a big challenge from Dorito. He also snags that corner boost. Now space for complexity. 90 seconds remaining. Seconds ticking down for Luminosity to secure a chance just to earn that overtime. 
Bretos wanting to move it down pitch. Hands off the ball to Magic there, but Dorito sniping a boost from underneath his feet. Cheese to receive one, but CRR bumps him out of the way, so no progress can be made until Rettles comes in. A shot saved away from Dorito. Big play from Dorito now, chance for CRR floating there. Gets a small tip. Cheese trying to wrap it around. Ray's Bull looking for a bump, does land a bump, but it was after the touch came through. Luminosity worked their way out. And nothing touched from Cheese, just hands the pressure all the way back over towards Complexity, who can now work out their own half. A failed Musty, but doesn't matter too much because the next touch comes in from yet another Complexity player. Another good bump as well from Dorito. Dorito's been diving in successfully, getting that ball past the midfield and getting a nice boost steal. Dorito making his mark. There's a pass off their own backboard. Good tip from CRR. And Reddles tries to dive in, but has to bail out. There's the lead bump play. But CRR and Dorito bounce off each other. Time continuing to tick down. And these seconds far fly away from Lunasti's hopes as well. Razel up to the backboard. CRR to chase. A great clear from Cheese. Who can receive? It's Magic Bear. A pass to Reddles, perhaps. Instead, it forces straight back to the defensive complexity. Magic Bear hoping to keep this ball in, but running on fumes. It's a pass up, no redirect coming. You can see a raised bolt, jump the lane, and CRR will launch that off the backboard. It's still kept in play by Magic Bear. No boost from Cheese, but he does get a tip. Cheese, literally zero. Great catch. And now off the backboard, Reddles will boom it up field. Good touch from Raised Bull. And that will do enough to get the ball the, to the ground and put game one in the books. Relatively clinical from both teams, neither of them being particularly daring. No one going for anything very exciting or crazy. I mean, clinical, coming certainly. off that elevate game three. But I think that's a thing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, maybe I'm thinking of the eight <laughs> goals in two minutes that we saw. We didn't see as many fireworks in game True. Three. I think it was, it was a very quiet game. There was a lot more form to that game, where it was, okay, we've taken a shot. Okay, now that opportunity has passed us by. Now we move into defense. And I think for Luminosity, you need to try and break up what complexity are doing, because they are playing that much more defensive style, and then they will push to try and go for an aggressive play. But Luminosity, how do they play, James? They're full aggression. Yeah, and, and I think uh, what T-Bait said on the desk, if you're Luminosity and you experience what you experienced against Fury with Cheese only registering three shots, yeah. you know, what, what what do you do for them? Well, you just got to believe that's not going to happen again. Well, it, it happened again in game one. Yeah. Cheese only a single shot when a lot of the offense is going to rely on his prowess and on his ability to make plays. And so far, Complexity has not given Luminosity any opportunities to do so. Yeah, Luminosity, I think, need to always earn those opportunities because you're not going to get anything. Like, Complexity, yeah, will be a bit more defensive, but when you talk about play styles, offense and defense, it really is split by a hair because, realistically, you need to have both in your arsenal. You might just trend more defensively or trend more offensively. But we do see some kickoff tactics early on from Luminosity. It did get them possession but they weren't able to make it work. And now that shot's going to go on target. Cheese does well to get that ball up into the corner. There's a lot of faith in Magic Bear there to actually let that ball just go past him. Maybe his teammates weren't very convinced oh. of what's going to happen, but a long shot flying in. Magic Bear, perfect place, perfect time, perfect placement. And you can see Ray's Bull goes for the hit into the corner, and Magic Bear is right there. And that is a smart play. If When you're looking for clears out of your zone, you are looking for your teammates to yeah. try to blast it as hard as you can at them. Magic Bear doing a wonderful job of redirecting that ball on target, just putting it towards net. On pure instincts too, because you see that ball coming towards you, you just basically jump or turn a little bit. You don't have time for too much more. Rettles moving Ray's ball. Maybe going to be an omen of what is to come as Russell wants to continue with those offensive plays. It did not work earlier versus Fury. He barely had chances to do it. Will Complex to be sitting a bit more pretty for them. And as a shot bounces top corner, Cheese not going to be having a thanks Psionics post bounce going his way. It was close though. Another shot that narrowly misses. Luminosity in this first minute have had a nice start. Complexity. They had that one goal last game from Ray's Bull. It wasn't flashy, but it was effective. I think both of us, Stumpy, still waiting to see what kind of offensive plays these teams are going to bring out. Mm. Everything so far has been somewhat routine. Definitely hoping that we see a bit more flashiness with the incredible players that they have on both these sides. Cheese especially. I want to see him activated. It's a touch coming in central. A touch again from Ray's Bull. 
as it is passed towards him from his teammate. But a minute and a half elapsed. Cheese in the back, waiting and lurking. A raised ball to clear, right hand side. Sees the ball bounce awkwardly again. Uh -oh. Raised ball no, no, completely lets the control of the ball go. Goes awkwardly in his own half. Dorito has to stretch to get to that ball first. Raised ball, a couple of missed touches, but Luminosity, they didn't have the foresight to make sure they were going in there to pressure their errors. They needed to keep that possession. Reynolds was pretty low on boost, didn't have a ton of options, but ended up just popping that and giving up control. However, Luminosity has been able to keep this ball down in Complexity's half for quite some time. Much better game here from Luminosity. Complexity forced to play more defense than they did in game one, that's for certain. Poke to the corner from Dorito, looking for a 50, but ends up pinching it all the way back to his own half. Philip is seeing a lot more aggression from Complexity than we have done during the season Ooh, previously in Sam. But yeah, a little team bump coming in, does throw Complexity off. Luminosity really struggling to work out of their own half despite their lead. Manjibar trying to go for a double, instead it falls back down towards Rettel. Central, no, race ball, an interception. Complexity are chasing here, bear in mind. Luminosity's defense, they're holding very firm and a lovely oh. shot from Rettel's. And an even better save from CRR. Luminosity continue to do a nice job of finding each other on those breakout plays. Rettles almost had that redirect, but you could see the save come out for Complexity. But Luminosity, the one setting the pace in game two. CRR oh, off that on. double. The oh, angle God. is there. It's just a little bit too wide. Luminosity with the skin of their teeth. A shot wide again. CRR, no angle for it, but Dorito wanted to set up his teammates as much as possible. Rettles, 1v1 versus CRR. CRR with a block, it's good enough. Cheese, not enough power as Dorito clears it away. Complexity surviving by the skin of their teeth on that breakout. Those isolation plays can be dangerous, but Complexity do enough. And they're still in this ball game as we approach this final minute and a half. Complexity though. They haven't had many chances. We've seen CRR have a couple looks, but not be able to get the shot on target. Low boost again. Dorito and CRR both on zero. Finally, Dorito getting some. But CRR, as first man, not able to do much. But that oh. 50 almost goes in. 60 seconds and one goal to chase for complexity. Midfield sees Ray's ball with 80 boost towards that side wall. Gets that ball very far, bumps one. Now to CRR, a double commit from the defense Luminosity. Complexity struggle to work their way in until Ray's ball comes up. Magic Bear can clear it away. A very ambitious play coming in for a pre-jump from Complexity. Magic Bear teaming up and Luminosity, a 2-0 lead. What a turnaround after being pushed on defense. And you love the improvising from Reynolds. As soon as yeah, he doesn't brilliant. make contact on that play, he immediately locks in for the bump. Yeah. I, it, it may have been just instinctual that Reynolds says, I'm going to put myself in the best position to where my bump could be most effective. Well, yeah. that play was it. Didn't connect with the bump, but still did enough to make it challenging for the defense. And Luminosity have that insurance goal for these final 30 seconds, but we might see a goal here. That's a nice save, a double commit forced out of Luminosity. Magic Bear, zero boost. No one's in, go for it. Magic Bear just left. Yes, he had zero boost, but mate, you're still a body on the line. No one's there at all. Magic Bear goes for a walk. I, you know, I, 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 <laughs> it just, he's like, oh, sorry, I mean, sorry, boys. I need to go in the corner for a little bit. It's or something, right? Because Cheese and Rettles, they leave. And Magic Bear, I think he might have felt like a bit, little bit left out. A Magic thought, Bear oh, must right have just thought that somebody was going to take his spot as third man. Mm. No other explanation than that. Did look a little bit silly, though. It did. And we'll see if that bites him. That insurance goal might be enough, though. Final play here, Ray's Bull has no boost, passes it off to Dorito, gets around one, a pass over the oh! defense. A lovely block, the ball doesn't make it to the corner, and Luminosity barely eke out that game win. That was a really nice pass. That was a beautiful pass. It was also preceded by the fact that Ray's Bull goes up and completely fakes out the player coming for a pre-jump against him, pass it down. But Luminosity, they did what needed to be done. Their defense at the end, much better than what Magic Air put up about 10 seconds earlier. Regardless, Luminosity, they secure that win. And it's now tied one all, two more games, and they're gonna be going through. Something is happening on the power stream. I can see the power players. Banana Head just jumped up out of his seats. James, can you refresh the laptop I'm, real I'm quick? bringing it up right now to see what's going on over there as well. Looks like a last second goal for power as they're about to sweep the pioneers. And as we look 
at our own series mobile one high performance replay that first goal uh we saw cheese blast the ball down to magic bear who got the tip and scored full field luminosity and complexity they have been fighting it has not been a pretty fight i will say it hasn't been yeah. a, pre a, a pretty fight but it has been a fight nonetheless. And Luminosity yeah. lands a big blow here getting that game. Yeah, Luminosity makes sure that whatever they are doing, they want to try and upset the form of complexity. Because realistically, you look at Sam number two, and then you look at e, uh, then you look at NA number four, or number three, rather. I think that we're relatively even in a lot of people's estimations. This one should be going, I think, all the way to five. Now, Gibbs was saying that he felt like this was the five. Yeah, five this feels series. like a five. But early on in Swiss, you're going to be getting, of course, the most disparity in the seeds. This is absolutely going to be a close one. Both these teams have proved it. Complexity. That's double great demo. Chance. There, there's a double demo. Players respawning, both on the same side of the field as well. Ball leaks out to the middle. Rettles plays keep away. Bit of a crazy spawn at both players right on that side as well. However, Complexity make it work. Still no under pressure. CRR bumped into that touch, then it ends up going high, but with no boost, he can't follow. Dorito no boost, and he can't follow. Luminosity potentially aiming to secure more and more of the golden stuff so they can fly around the pitch a lot more effortlessly. Sometimes boost is greater than ball. Of course. It, it's, it, 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 it's, you know, it really makes you want it so bad you'll leave the net for it. <laughs> Sometimes conceding the goal. That was an inner monologue from Magic Bear. <laughs> I need boost too, I feel you. Cheese removing CRR from the offending team. No chance for them to be Big pushing demo. in from that. And Demos absolutely on the cards for Luminosity here. Big Demos in favor of Luminosity here. It looks like they might be finally hitting their stride. Another Demo, Reddle's taking out CRR. But so far, it hasn't really made that big of an impact on the gameplay, the Demos. Perhaps helping Luminosity stay boosted up and keep complexity away from the offensive side of the ball. But now we see him finally break through. CRR trying to take that to the corner. And we see a response demo. CRR landed one himself. Seems like there's a lot more play in the midfield in this series, especially compared to the last one, where there were, I feel, a lot more shots, a lot more threatening opportunities. Imagine it, putting another threat on the net of complexity. Two minutes elapsed. Still those zero goals. Magic Bear destroying Dorito. Chance to oh. get a tip onwards. A little bit too much power. Sees it fly over the bar. Cheese has to have a bit, of, a bit of something to him. No corner redirect like Drowley. All the way back in the European Open qualifiers. We approach halftime in the game. Still nil-nil. Much more lower scoring. Cheese will pop it up. Go for it again himself. Raised bull out of boost. Things getting a bit awkward here for Complexity. CRR trying to win that 50 forward. Dorito back to CRR. CRR out of boost and really out of the play for a little bit. As Magic Bear goes for a musty into a 50. Couldn't land the 50. And Rettles not able to steal that corner boost either. We'll see if Luminosity will keep this attack up, but they're all so low on boost. Decent amount of pressure now for Luminosity, but as they do find themselves low on boost, Raceball can work out of his own half. Only three for him, and so instead goes for the man. A team bump sees Cheese tangle up with Magic Bear. CRR, bad board, Rettles and Magic Bear both commit to it, but Rettles is going to be the first man there. 25 boost. No chance for any player from Complexity to come in from that pass. Oh. Instead, never mind, it's another miss from Luminosity, and CRR takes full advantage. And you saw Reddles actually moved upfield, and a bit of a gamble. Magic Bear stuck in reverse, and, and that is a sign of being out of position. When you are in reverse, you are not comfortable. You never want to reverse. Realistically, in a pro game, you never really want to reverse, unless you're bumping unless you you're have Daniel, to figure it out. You remember that yes. play? <laughs> that was genuinely the exact <laughs> goal I thought of, and I thought, oh, you've yeah, opened just a bubble criticism maybe, here. You know, maybe you never say never in that situation, but <laughs> most of the time, yeah. being backwards is a bad thing. Typically, typically, you don't want to be reversing in a pro game in Rocket League. Are we happy with my wording? I, I would agree with that statement. Oh, and that one bouncing off the post and out. Dorito on zero boost gets a massive flick to slow down any counterattack from Luminosity. The counterattack now goes. Cheese with a 50 to Bear. Cheese! Oh! Oh, pass! That is a team play from Luminosity. Strap a rocket to a wheel of Brie, and you get this goal from Cheese. The Bear finds him. A minute 15, and Luminosity punch.
complexity dead in the chest. And we finally see Cheese playing a big part in the offense for Luminosity in this series. And that was a lovely pass as well for Magic Bear to dime up Cheese and allow him to get that power on the shot. This does feel like a five-game series mm -hmm. with how close these teams have been playing. Reigns will pick up that mid boost. He's open towards CRR to go for a shot. A demo that's going to be completely open, but no one from Luminosity is going to be able to work their way in. CRR only 20, one touch he can get. No reset for him. Central goes up high onto the backboard. Dorito now tries to find Reigns who has to stop, find his bearings, and then leave. Magic Bear backboard. CRR challenges him in the midfield. Final 30, ticking down. Cheese removing Dorito from the equation entirely. And you saw Reynolds also landing a bump before that. The aggression coming out from Luminosity. Will it finally pay off? They're able to keep Luminosity back, or Complexity back, rather. Luminosity trying to play defense at the midfield. Delayed 50, kicks it up. Dorito out of boost again. We've seen him be pushed so far up with low boost so many times. Cheese cuts the pass off. Cheese, another tip. Reynolds needs to get this to the ground. Oh. Magic Bear bails him out, but this could be bad for Luminosity. Not the best touch from Ray's Bowl. And smartly, Luminosity mm -hmm. will let that ball hit the ground. Reynolds letting it roll. Good game management from Luminosity. And a fake kick off sees Magic Bear with control and 100 boost. Ball going central. He does not pick up that corner 100, so he will be slow getting back. Demos attempted. CRR a shot attempted. But Rettles stemming the flow somewhat for a second, handing the ball towards Magic Bear. 20 boost, no reset for him. But both teams now, a lot of ambition to put themselves on series point. And you saw Cheese try to tip that to the corner. Wasn't able to get the follow-up. Perhaps those nerves starting to affect. There's the shot what from Dorito! But a big time save from the Bear! Magic Bear on the other side, from defense to offense. Can't work his way around it. 40 seconds elapsed, Rays ball, back corner. 50 boost, an opportunity to challenge Cheese, but Cheese will be there first. Central Magic Bear to shoot, oh, it's halfway in the my. goal! But Dorito can deny the dreams of Luminosity for now. He's got his jump, CRR. Didn't use it in time, good challenge from Cheese, and a lovely power clear from Reynolds, timing that hit off the bounce wonderfully. Reynolds now has to get back to help out. Cheese, though, on the back line. Does get the stop. Chief moving proactively there, making sure that he is going to be a player back if the shot does come in from the hook. Minute 20 elapsed. Magic Bear, midfield, challenge with Dorito. Raysville has time, he has boost, and he has ambition. Goes round one, but Cheese instead standing as firm as possible. Magic Bear staying up in the play on zero. Until Complexity doesn't want to commit too much. The ball. Raise ball! The ball! Oh! It's El Toro! It's 2-0 for Complexity, and it is magic here in Copenhagen! Oh, that is the corner double that you dream of, and to hit it in overtime and have it be the game decider, it is that much sweeter. Race Bull, how are you not more hyped than that? He's normally screaming. He's normally going crazy, but he knows there is a job to be done. Luminosity put up a great fight in that game. Complexity did, but sometimes all it takes is a spark of magic to blow everything wide open. <laughs> Stumpy, you know, I had mentioned before that offensively, it was a pretty quiet game. It was yeah. just a, a, a slugfest there mm -hmm. with both players getting these scrappy goals. Well, that goal, that was the jewel of the series. Yeah, for sure. Complexity getting oh. that early lead as well. A, quite a chill vamos from them. And then it was Magic Bear passing to Cheese, getting the rocket on there. That was the equalizer. But look at this clear. Ray's ball, it sends it for himself too. Oh Rettles my. goes to a pre-jump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, He's like, yeah, yeah, I did it. There was the pop-off. Yeah, I did it. The bull. That was I mean, me, boys. And, and those are so hard to read perfectly. And, so and not, hard. not only to get the read and be in the, in the general vicinity, but to also have that much power on mm -hmm. the shot. That Against was the defender. That's not even it, an open net. In overtime as well when the, the nerves are at their highest. Mm -hmm. What a play from Ray's Bull. I, I wonder if we'll look back at Complexity's Swiss run and be able to point to that goal as maybe the, t the, the point in which mm -hmm. Complexity comes to life.
But that now, was a play to remember. It's now going to be on Luminosity to secure a game here. Take us to five. Instead, Dorito takes us to five seconds in game at number four and securing one for complexity. And what is it, Stumpy? Another low 50. If you're up Another there watching, low 50. just go for the low 50. If you're trying to incorporate something in your ranked games, low 50 is invaluable. Yeah. Dorito now going for a bump, no chance, or rather doesn't actually get any contact on it. Two shots coming out from CRR and Dorito. Now Razor in the sky again, looking inspired, finds Dorito! Oh, man. It is two in 20 <laughs> seconds. The bull is starting to get momentum. Gets the flip reset, perfect pass to Dorito. And we're not even 20 seconds in, and Complexity have put up two in a series where goals have been coming at a premium. So now Complexity, after winning in such amazing fashion to get this early lead, you wonder if this is the time to start panicking for Luminosity stuff. Yeah, low scoring across the board so far that we've seen from both of these teams. So to have two so early on, it's going to be confidence inspiring for one side and somewhat frustrating for the other. Luminosity going to be unfortunate, or they're going to be the frustrating ones. Both games previously, or at least games one and two, just one goal games. And then obviously that overtime Hello. as well. And now we see a third goal Hello. for complexity. Things starting to get out of hand, Stumpy. I mean, CRR beats one, beats the second. The third then flies his way in. It's a ground pinch into the post. Magic Bear, no contact. And Dorito just happens to be there for the ride. Gets a little toe punt, sends it home. 3-0 complexity. Already, this, th this is the joint most number of goals we've seen in a game after 55 seconds. <laughs> complexity you're going to have all the confidence now as well this is a big test here for luminosity if you're going to give up three it's, i guess it's better to give it up in that first minute give yourself the most time to complete that comeback but or are you, oh. or are you just dragging it out as well <laughs> thinking oh we have four more minutes of this boys uh, well that's where we'll see what kind of mentality that luminosity mm. has i mean rettles i said it before uh -oh. He's an wow. astounding leader, but leadership will only get you so far when you face the quality of Sam's number two seed. Yeah, you get the pass, you get the, the poke by CRR on the bump, and then the shot. That is doing work. <laughs> Off ball and on ball from CRR. And Complexity are putting the pedal to the metal and leaving Luminosity in the dust. Whenever a team in pro play goes four goals up, I believe it's about a, it's like 95 to 99 percent chance that they then win that game. Yeah, three goals, it, it's possible. Four, it almost seems impossible. Yeah, I think, I think four goals is 99 percent tie. Uh, 99 out of 100 times, the team with four, they are going to be winning it. Luminosity, it's time for you guys to make it a little bit more likely. This is when you call Trill, or the coach of Elevate, and you get that playbook. <laughs> From game three. How do we score six in a row, mate? <laughs> What's the secret? Oh, well, maybe we'll see one. Here we do! Reynolds camping on the back line as we take another look at this one. And where did all the complexity go? It's a rough touch from Ray's ball. Dorita then dives in, thinks he can get something. The Magic Bear will be the one to just play that nuisance. And nuisance earns them a goal. 1-4. They're a quarter of the way to earning an overtime. Otherwise, they're going to be going down nor and two, and they will have to reverse sweep the Swiss to make top eight. For Luminosity, that is one step towards making the comeback a reality. But it is going to be a long path for them to get back into it as we approach the halfway point. Luminosity got the lead to three. Can they do more? Halfway through the game. I'm becoming a lot more measured for complexity, I feel, whereas Luminosity, they are running out of time. Cheese, right-hand side. Magic Bear, not nearly enough boost to get to that ball, panicking somewhat. Cheese from his own back line, past the halfway line, but Ray's ball there, standing strong again. A miss from CRR as Dorita has to fly in. Rettles works it round him. Again, going central, but look, another defensive player for complexity. And CRR wasting time on that air dribble clear attempt. Lovely tip to break up that opportunity. Ray's Bull knows that he cannot give Magic Bear that space at the midfield. And now we might see another scoring opportunity. There's the, oh, the, the, the little hesitation, Ray's Bull. The as he gets the defense jumping, and he just takes it and scores it. Oh, Magic Bear. 
Oh, I feel bad for you. I feel bad for you, mate. Raise ball, fakes one, flicks it high, you know, the, <laughs> sends it in. The Rocket League equivalent of a crossover. Just completely jukes him. Magibet again leaving the ball, goes straight for a boost. But again, we find that four goal difference and Luminosity have even less time than they did previously, James. And Stumpy, I, I know you, you spent a lot of time in EU, but can you just imagine what NA would have been like if Furia and Complexity stayed oh. in NA? How crazy it would have been. A bloodbath. It, yes, it would have, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. Complexity and Furia, they, they went back to Sam, they have dominated, and mm -hmm. now they show up here. Complexity going up against Luminosity. And it was a close game in the first ones, but this yeah. game four, Complexity, they, they went into a different gear, specifically yeah. Ray's Bull. They look inspired. A low shot coming in as Rattles does remove one player. And a minute remaining, they need a goal every 15 seconds. And that is a wonderful pass from Magic Bear. Unfortunately, a Complexity player is in the way. Shot towards the backboard. 15 of those seconds has gone, and with no sign of a goal, you may as well chalk this one up to the South American darlings. And the most of the desk had complexity, even the coin. I guess you could say, Stumpy, that it was faded. The coin knows. I mean, they got the first picks wrong on the on the alt stream, so I don't know the about that. The coin sometimes knows. Yeah, it's sometimes. a different coin, they have different personalities. That's what happens. And with 20 seconds left, complexity, they will be securing game number four. It's a miss on the backboard, it will not matter. Luminosity, naught and two. It is not the position that any of these teams want to be in. It is not where you want to find yourself on the first major of the 2024 season, but complexity, one and one, and they prove themselves to be a terrifying opponent for anybody that stands in their way. And Ray's Bull finishing this series strong for complexity as they get this series win in round two. Big win from them as well. A lot of people on the fence as to which way this would go. But I don't think there's any doubts left that Complexity is the better team. They ramped it up. Raisable hitting that overtime double tap off the corner. Still, to me, the play of the oh. series. And then the hesitation. You could tell that the killer instinct for Complexity is there. This, the yeah. belief in themselves yeah. is there. This team, they're winners. Mm -hmm. But what a job it is now for Luminosity to work their way through the bracket. They need this Swiss to now be falling their way. We'll obviously be finding out who their round three matches are going to be when all of our round two matches conclude. But they've got a lot of work ahead of them. I think we need to see a lot of leadership coming in from Rettles and Raw Greg to talk to not land rookies, but talking to obviously Cheese and Magic Bear because we know what Magic Bear can do. So far today, he has not performed to that level. That does not mean that he won't perform to that level. He just needs help to get there. And, and there were uh, moments of brilliance, brief flashes. We saw yes. the, the play between Cheese and Magic Bear. That passing play worked out wonderfully. Uh, but I think for, for Luminosity, they really do need to figure out how to amp up that offense mm -hmm. to the next level. We saw what Complexity was able to do was have Ray's Bull electrify yeah. that offense and, and be able to make an impact on those solo plays. We saw even CRR getting some really critical plays with some bumps, being uh, making the space, getting open, putting those shots on target. The flip reset pass from Ray's Bull as well. They were able to get to that higher gear Whereas Luminosity just could not find that, that high level offensive consistency. Luminosity, a lot of work ahead of them, but complexity, their work has very much just begun. One and one going through our Swiss. The next challenges are going to be even scarier than the last. And it's an opportunity for them to prove themselves. Luminosity, going to have to go back to the drawing board, but. You have to have faith. They've done it before. Can they do it again? And we're going to go have an interview with Lee. We are down here with CRR after they get off of victory there, uh, putting yourselves at to one and one now. I want to know uh, about the mentality, I guess, in this one. You guys look locked in. Is there some fatigue coming in with uh, some of these longer days, or was it just being locked in? We were really locked in. I think we, we knew that we have to win that, this match because we lost against Vitality, so we were so focused. And t talk to me about the Vitality matchup then, you know, coming off of that. It felt like the game was 
relatively close. It wasn't a blowout in terms of score. If you play that again now, as you have a little more warm up throughout the day, do you feel like you could take that match against Vitality? Yeah, I think yes. The first match wasn't really on point for us, but I think now we could have won then. Now, uh, talking about LG specifically, it looked like they were trying some interesting things in there. First off, we know LG, especially with Rettles, to be a very physical player. Were you guys aware of that going into this and had a game plan specifically for them? Yeah, of course we know it and we were trying to bump them too because we can let them bump us. So I think that was the point, bump them and try to connect between each other. How do you make sure that you don't go overboard there and start committing players to those bumps and demos when you shouldn't be? Is it easy to lose yourself in those moments? Yeah, it's really easy because sometimes you can try demos and you get lost in the field, so you leave your teammates a, bit, a little bit alone, but I think it really worked. It did, you guys won. <laughs> and speaking of LG, again, their play style, there was a couple interesting kickoffs maybe we saw near the end in that last game, Magic Bear just leaving the ball for you guys. Were you uh, privy to those? Were you aware that those were happening and adjusting accordingly? No, not really, because we already work on our kickoffs, so we were focused on doing our, our kickoffs and didn't really focus on, on their kickoffs. So. I find that a lot of times teams say that, that they are just focused on their own game. Is that kind of the best thing to do rather than looking at VODs of your opponents, just making sure your gameplay is solid? Or is there a little bit of looking at your opponents? Yeah, just a little bit, just like the main things of their playstyle, but you just have to focus on your thing. That's very true. And speaking of your thing, one of your players, Dorito, bringing Dorito onto to the roster. How was that adjustment period for you guys? Do you feel like you're at peak now? And how long did it take to, to get to that? I don't think we are at peak yet, but I think we are playing pretty much better right now, and we are going to improve a lot between the next matches. The next matches. I, I hope so. I was going to say, how long is it going to take before you guys get to peak? I don't know. I hope it is going to get soon, but probably for the next match. <laughs> right. Hopefully for the next one. Either way, you got the dub right now, and you guys stay in Swiss. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And there it is, CRR and Complexity getting a dub on the board. So much more. Rocket League coming your way. Look at that. It's Vitality versus Furia coming up next. The World Champs versus Sam's at best, both fighting to go 2-0.
the bowl was sensational in complexity's victory over LG. Highlight after highlight. There was a back and forth in game three, but otherwise complexity more or less locked this one down. Ray's bowl just, oh, breaking ankles Ooh. and hearts along the way. Luminosity gonna be sitting at 0-2 on the kickoff today tomorrow. They were competitive at times. We saw back in the green room, both uh, Daz and Bates going off at times with Luminosity, but Ray's bowl, man. Ray's bowl with the overtime winner. That was a double tap across the entire court, basically. And that, that final game, he just took over. Yeah, he did. And, oh, it was great. Complexity looked really strong. I mean, LG, they had the culture. They had everything working. I saw you base were preaching on the desk. Even the coin was starting to look fraudulent. But they <laughs> lost the game three. And I feel like if they win that game three, Bates, we had a whole different scoreline. What do you think? Listen, I agree with you, the map. Listen, you're coming to Dassey for the energy. I appreciate that. But listen, LG, ultimately, they didn't have enough culture going with them. They didn't have enough. <laughs> they didn't have enough because, listen, the Bear had an opportunity to have sealed a deal away right about 30 seconds in overtime and he just didn't shoot him with enough power and then the bull proved how good he is Gibbs already talked about it. across the field yeah. redirect double right on right he had to jump hand down man hand down. down that's just too easy and after that it was just it was, it was like deja vu once luminosity goes down it it seems like they crumble and complexity you know they're just doing what they did last year just uh, clapping na uh for, for the most part you know Ugh. basically the number two team in north america doing very very well and showing up here yet again complexity they've been counted out a lot because because of what furia has done in sam but complexity is here to play they are now one and one they'll go into tomorrow even record two more wins away from making that top eight and honestly they have a pretty good shot at it at this point they do have a pretty good shot at it. As you see, the highlights right here, complexity. Oh, here's the ball right here. Big oh, hit right here. Woo. Great redirect. Bang. Reynolds, you got to jump huge. at this stage of Rocket League. You see how happy it is. It kind of makes me a little suspect because he got a little too happy. Like, if he didn't expect to put that one home. But anyways, <laughs> though, anyway, though, he did. So that's all that matters. And at this point, Luminosity, this is where the question marks start really arising for them. Because it just felt the same as earlier. That they started getting oh, the down. Break. And then it just, like, it all crumbled for him. You're too good. You oh. played a great game three. Yeah. Great, great game two. Finish the Job. What's going on with you? We just heard an overtime winner. I don't know what oh, side that was. They're G2. in overtime. I don't have to worry about it that. It is G2. No, it's not. Oh, yeah. it G2? Hold on. We're a little behind. It's G2. It is G2. It's just game one. Come I'm on. taking Listen, game one. You can be as happy Gen as you G. want. It's only game one. And guess what? You almost lost it. It was an OT, Bates. Don't get too comfortable just yet. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, two of us on the desk have G2, two of us have Gen G, and most of us are perfect on predictions at this point. So there's a lot hanging on that game. That's happening That's over right. Beast Team. <laughs> Beast Dream. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash RL Esports if you want to catch that match. Gen G versus G2 going at it for like the 16th time this season. It's been a nice back and forth affair, but Gen G did take the last two showings. So it's definitely we'll a coin flip match here. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That one's going to be a big one going down. The coin. Limitless went three, went out 03. <laughs> they Quick did. Trip Pioneers also out 03 to Power. Power celebrated heavily after that win. It was a big encouragement to that team to get that one. So G2 and Gen G, they are currently playing right now. Twitch.tv slash RLE Sports and go check that one out. Meanwhile, over here on the A stream, we got two more matches before we are done for the day. We are still waiting for Carmine Core and Falcons. They're warming up right now, getting ready in the background while we've got our next match on Doc Furia versus Vitality. This one, oh man. Okay, Furia, Furia had a great start to the day, but was it even an actual warm-up? Uh, that's the question. It really wasn't a warm up against that Luminosity squad I played earlier. That was way that was way too easy. Fury versus Vitality. Super excited for this game. We'll see how it goes, folks. Furia in the blue. Vitality, the reigning Rocket League world champions in the orange here. Both teams got kind of an orange vibe. Someone's got to take blue duty here. It'll be Furia. Furia, it's all about offensive pressure for this team. They've done it all split long in Sam. And they did it again in their first match at the Major. We'll see, though, if you can do it against a European team. Very, very difficult test, but lost. Put up two goals per game. He's that X Factor. They bring in Drufino. He's been fantastic this entire year. But this is their ultimate test, playing the world champions vitality. Yeah, I mean, you see Lost there on your screen. Lost, again, very strong on the defensive part. You also, the stats that you brought up with how well he's been doing in the goal scoring department. Yeah. He's going to be a big X factor, but there's no one that's a bigger X factor than that man right there, Yan. I mean, we've mm. seen him getting in the warm-ups here on the way to this event. He's looked phenomenal. He's been able to make 
play after play, highlight after highlight. If he continues on that pace, Fury could go all the way. They could go all the way. He's the catalyst of the squad, but they are a complete team. No question about that. Big Drafino at the end, coming from yes, crew. Yep. Towards the back end of the RCS 22-23 uh, season, he started picking up and improving again and again and again. The South American MVP last year, joining in, arguably the best player in Sam history, joining and lost one of the best young come-ups in Sam history oh. as well. They're looking really good. The offense has been nothing short of great, but now they're going up against the reigning world champions. Wait. The reigning world champions. Vitality in the house looking to piggyback off the win they got earlier today. And each of these players making a statement in that match there. Not only did they get that win, it was against Complexity, who now is one and one as well. So they played a pretty fierce opponent. But this is Vitality. They went again 20 and 5 at the World Championship, the best ever World Championship team with a win percentage of 80%. That does not happen by accident. These guys are land boys. Zen, best player in the world, unto proven otherwise. Vitality is here to keep that title. And yeah, you see, you saw the struggle for Vitality in the online part mm. but so far this event they have looked really good I've seen Alpha in that last series that they had against Complexity like you said just again phenomenal mechanic wise it just feels like when they do get on this stage they start to elevate they start to remember the, that same energy the adrenaline that they had when they were on those, that land run from spring and to the world championship now it's just trying to keep continuing to perform and getting in gear you're 100% right Dabab and that's exactly what it takes once you're a winner sometimes all you need is a little bit of a spark they came out a little slow low earlier. Rado, Rado in particular did come out a little bit slow, but also Alpha yeah. as well. But all it took was Zen starting to cook like he used to back in the day. I say back in the day, that wasn't that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> He's still always been cooking, but you know how good he is. And then after that, Rado got comfortable, and they started looking really good. And correct me if I'm wrong, Gibbs, but this is the only team here that has not made a roster change. Yeah, because everyone made a roster change to beat this team. You exactly. know, this is that team. And Rado, I think he was a little uh, uncomfortable at times. He's a momentum player. He sure is. Absolutely. When they start clicking, he's going to do that Rado bounce. He's going to oh. get hyped up. <laughs> yeah. And then they are going to start moving. That's what happened at spring. They had one terrible series, but they figured it out and they bounced back and they ran through that lower bracket. So Vitality, like if it gets going, watch out. Uh, two, two teams with very strong passing games. I'm really excited for the battle for air superiority between these two teams. Who's going to be able to handle the air pressure better? Yeah, it's going to be real interesting, especially because Fury, we know how great their offense is, but it's really a, a question as to how great their defense is because yeah. nobody in Sam in particular is really pressured them. Honestly, I believe Ninja, Ninjas and Pajamas are pressured them more than Complexity has. Mm. Complexity just sits back there on defense and really just lets Fury come at them all the time. But Vitality, they're going to be applying pressure just as much while they're also really great at defense with Zen as that last man back. It's going to be a great series. All right, chat. The players are getting warmed up. The players are, I believe, on the pitch, and we are almost ready to kick off here. So let us know who you think is going to win. Hashtag FUR, hashtag VIT, depending on which way you're going. And we'll go down the line on our picks here. We talked about our Gen G G2 picks. By the way, they are 0 0, 119 left to go in game number Ooh. two right now. So a very close match over there. Daz, who you got? I'm going Fury on this one. I love Ooh. how Fury have been looking going into this event. I love how they looked in the opener against Luminosity. I know we're seeing some trash talk about, oh, well, Luminosity you aren't really playing that good, but Fury are playing absolutely phenomenal. And I do think the way they're looking offensively, it's going to be the toughest challenge Vitality's face at this major event yet. Well, the opponents that they've played so far, Fury, it feels like they haven't been tested yet. And they haven't mm -hmm. been tested in Sam. They're going up against Zen. There's no bigger test at this point. I have to go Vitality. They are world champs for a reason. I believe that momentum will carry them through here. And we saw it like Vitality had the tougher match. They played Complexity with Wall Furia. They played Luminosity, and we saw Complexity take down Luminosity. So I still think Vitality is the better team. But I would not be shocked if Furia does pull off this one. Hold, big one. hold the coin wave. I'll go okay. first this time. Give me the reigning world champions over Fury. Yeah, there's a more complete team offensively and defensively. And up until this point, I haven't seen Fury play defense just yet. And I don't know what they can bring to the table. I think Zen is just too great at the moment. I don't think Gan can match them. Give me the reigning world champions over Fury. The land power, the undefeated land streak right now. Vitality, I've got Vitality as well. We'll see what the coin thinks here. We got Vitality on the orange side. I've been getting some slander online about the way I flipped this coin, by the way. It's very large. It's like it's like flipping a, a can lid. Go do it in your office and then imagine that there's 80,000 people watching. I'm assuming there's 80,000 people watching. Vitality, the orange, Fury, and the blue. We'll try and get as many rotations on it here as we can. And that came down Vitality, folks. So the oh. world champions. Going to be predicted by the coin. coin. 
You guys can be with the coin nice as much flip. as you want. You were with the coin last game. Every coin flip. I was, I I was that, that was deck, someone though. said to let it different. drop. If I let it drop, I can just decide what it is. I could just pick you it up. Show and just it in the camera, it, right? Yeah. I want, I want, you got to see me catch it here. We're pretty close here on the, on the, on wow. the prediction and chat, but 59% going to be going for the world champs there. That world championship title definitely carries some weight with it, folks. We're going to get into the game. These teams both ready to go. Excited for it. Make sure you got both matches going. G2 Gen G, they're in overtime in game two. Let's get into game one of Furia versus Vitality. An international matchup where the winner is 2-0, one step away from getting into the playoffs and a heavyweight battle at that as Team Vitality, the reigning world champions, take on Furia. This is a matchup for the weekend. This is arguably could could have been a grand final matchup between these two squads. Furia has shown up and shown out the second they step foot in Denmark. Vitality looking to reign tried and true, but Furia, they're gonna end up on the board first on arguably a Vitality mistake. Well, yeah, and of course, you can't make any mistakes against a player like Yan, as that just slips right on by. That was very awkward in the first 13 seconds. And Vitality now have to shake that one off, looking uphill at Furia. A very exciting Furia squad. It didn't get much of a warm up in the opener as Vitality nearly answers back. Now lost, going to work. He had six goals for Furia in that first round drubbing of Luminosity. Now another one lobbed back in. It's going to be Alpha looking for an answer. No, Zen trying to keep the pressure on, and nobody else could follow that play. And this one still could have been Vitality favor. This shot's going to go towards backboard here, but bounce out into the corner. Jafinho slowing things down, trying to get over Zen. Zen takes this one back, and a minute in, although Furia does have the 1-0 lead, it's Vitality looking to take back control. Pinch down ground, set up for a shot. Get sent off by Yan, but pressure doesn't end here. Here comes Zen with a shot of his own. Another save to come through. Furia keeping up the battle against the former world champs. Wave Fung mentioned it on the desk. It'll be a battle for air superiority here. That one's left for Drafinho and his shot easily set away. Not much behind it. Yan going to work, lob it up for loss. Now Drafinho with the follow, throws to the backboard, trying to draw the defense out, has done so, and still Zen gets there for the save at the very last possible moment. He put one center though, put it right in the lap of loss. He couldn't get around on a shot. It just kind of trickled towards the net and a missed opportunity for Fury to double their lead. It's just another example of the Vitality world-class defense that we've seen for so, so long. But the offense that is legendary to the name of Zen comes through. Vitality tie things up. Yan comes out to challenge, and then nobody else knows what they're going to do when Yan can't stop Zen, and we're all tied up. Three minutes and 12 seconds left to go. A tied game between these two squads. Off the kickoff, potential goal here does come through. Radosin to give Vitality another lead. Rado with just his second goal on the day, but it's a big one to give Vitality an early lead. So now they've completely wiped away the mistake they made at the start of the game, giving that early goal to Yan, 13 seconds in. Two unanswered for the reigning world champs, and here goes Alpha, looking to pour it on. Picked his spot, it's wide, and he follows it up. And right now, Vitality are picking Furia apart. Everybody shoots, everybody scores. As the seconds go on, Vitality just seem to get stronger and stronger. Again, the world-class offense we all know and love from the squad. It's been a little shaky in times past as far as the qualifiers were concerned. Open qualifier one, Vitality went third. They placed fifth in the second OQ. And finally, that last one, they came in second. So it's been a drive of momentum headed here into the major for them. So this is a good sign, especially with Furia coming in is maybe not necessarily a favorite, quote unquote, but they're not to be un uncounted out. And it's a team in, especially led by Yan, you've got a Gamers 8 champion where he basically walked right into the kingdom and stole the crown from Team Falcons. An exciting final that that was. Now it's lost, going to work. You know, of course, Jan excited to have lots as a teammate, but they don't connect that time. Here comes Vitality yet again. 
Zen's going to loop around. He'll retreat. Lost running forward. Trying to run interference. Yan is way back, and nothing brews from that <laughs> attack from Furia. Instead, it comes right back in their house. Zen's got another. He continues his torrid pace now. He had five in the first round, and now another pair here. 4-1 Vitality. I just adore Zen. The amount of control and composure that this kid has on land just is unmatched. Another attempted shot. That one just a bit wide off of it, but it's okay when you're up by three against Furia. You got two left on the clock. And this one stays in the Furia half for now. Furia looking to get out of their own side. They want to have the opportunity to take a couple shots. Here might be the chance. Here comes Yan, shot on target, but it's sent off. When you get to high stakes matchups, very few organizations can boast a record even close to that of Team Vitality's. You remember as dominant as Team BDS was back in RLCSX, it was still Vitality that won the European Championships. It's like they bided their time. Similar to these first few qualifiers, they lost at every stage you could in the, in the playoff stage. And now, here they are looking like, as one might expect, one of the best teams in the world. I mean, Vitality, they're land boys. This, this is where yep. they thrive in, in this sort of environment. They love the pressure. It's what they feed off of. And, and that makes other teams nervous to have to go up against them where they do best, right? It's on land when they're together in the same room in this high level of competition. But Furia, they've been looking to make a name for themselves here in Copenhagen. They've been doing great so far, but you gotta have to answer to some of these vitality goals. They're gonna have to do so fast. Alpha looking to kill more time. Almost a very clean win, almost ended up in the net. Now Zen looking for more, his double denied. And now Furia will break out now with 30 seconds left. At least a chance here to get one back. Rafinha, the demo, and lost adds to his tally. I love this play. That is such solid communication on this one. It looked like he wanted to almost send it up for Jafina, but Jafina said, no, 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 just take the shot. I'll go up for the demo. Just wide open shot for you, man. 27 seconds left to go. The lead only cut down in half, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to feel a little bit like a challenge, especially going up against a team vitality. Well, Jan scored in 13 seconds to start the game. It could certainly be done, but he accidentally pinches that one across, and that might have just killed any comeback hopes. Here goes Alpha, Vitality trying to put it away, and the final countdown now of game one as things will end up in their favor. Team Vitality weathers the early storm out of Furia, and then they dominate the mid-game to take a 1-0 lead. That was, I mean, I wouldn't have expected anything less out of that first game. I will be so honest. I'm pleasantly surprised at how well Furia fought up against Vitality, but I'm not shocked by any means how Vitality was able to ramp up throughout game number one. Furia made it interesting at the end. They at least had a somewhat decent look to make it a one goal game, but they can't hold the one goal lead given to them by Yan. So it's Yan and Lost that score, while Zen matches them by himself, gets a little help from his friends, everybody involved in the scoring. As we look back at the Mobile One High Performance Replay, looked like it was gonna be a Furia highlight reel. It turned into a Vitality reel. That's usually how it goes. <laughs> Vitality end up making things about themselves in the best way possible. Here's the Zen shot, love it. Kid being back on land, you, you can't not be happy for him and them. But honestly, we've got a proper series on our hands. I'm super stoked to be getting into game number two here shortly. But oh my gosh, Vitality versus yeah. Fury. This is this is some high level Rocket League. It is, you said it, uh, it kind of has a feel of a potential grand final. Mm -hmm. That's what you get even early on in the Swiss stage on the international stage, right? Because you've got these teams that Get, they win their first match, usually dominate their first match. And then from there, you have these crazy matchups like this one and what we're going to see a little bit later on between Carmine Corp and Team Falcons, which I happen to think will be the grand final for this event. <laughs> but I digress. Business to take care of here as the save comes out from Redosa. 15 seconds in. No shots registered, but shots are at least being taken comes Vitality, trying to 
Put some pressure in the early stages of game number two on a Fury here. Lost has other plans, trying to clear this one up field. Yan gets a touch off this one. Jafinho up next, shot floating towards that net there. Great save from Alpha off into the corner there, and Vitality stay alive. Much calmer than the beginning of game one, where the goals are flying in quickly and furiously. Now Yan bringing it right back in. Good communication you see out of Vitality as Zen takes charge from the back. Again, this is how Vitality does a lot of their work. They will kind of lull you in to a false sense of security and then they'll strike on the counterattack. They do play a very defensive style, whereas Furia, they like to kind of press the issue. Rafinho and Zen getting introduced to each other as Yano will bring it deep into his corner and try to work from there. I like this one over one, but here comes Zen immediately sending Furia racing back home here. An attempt from Alpha to keep this ball downfield, but it goes mid. Redosin up next. Here comes Zen. Tried to float it towards himself on this one, but a 50 keeps this ball mid. Can Zen cross that line? No, it's Jafinho that puts us into the Vitality side. It's a immediately sent back. And this is what you talked about, right? Vitality so quick to counter, so quick to transition onto Furia. There's been moments where it's caught them off guard, but Furia doing a great job of holding their own and sending it back. An opportunity gone by the wayside here is Lost will pass it back to Drafinho, try to keep the attack alive. Drafinho second touch not there. Jan will center. Lost diving in and Drafinho had no boost. And if Vitality had turned that into one of their vaunted counterattacks, it'd be 1-0. There was no chance of anybody from Furia getting back in time. Here they come, and almost getting through. A last second save coming up from Yan. Now that goes all the way across. Kept in by Zen for the moment, but that demo slows down Radosin. And he can stay forward, but not do much with that ball. Yep, but somebody that can do much with it is Zen. As quickly as I say that, it gets taken away. Radosin tried to just throw it in the vicinity of this net, but Furious said no, we'll take it back. Great flick here towards center, but it's sent off by Radosin. Who's going to be the first one to touch this one? It's Yan, but you can touch that ball, but you're going to get so sent home by Vitality as the demos and the aggression starts to pop out here in game number two. Completely scoreless, by the way with two minutes left to go. So at what point does somebody get caught off guard? It's going to be a 2-0-2. Lost is the one to find his way into that net. Lost getting on the board yet again. Just a wide open net as Vitality got caught out. Zen couldn't get back in time. 1-0 with a couple minutes left. But can they hold the lead? They gave up a, an equalizer very quickly to Zen and Vitality in the first game. Forbidden Temple have a different storyline. Lost for Drafinho! This looks so powerful and confident. Two touches from the corner into a center for Drafinho. Just absolute slot in front of the defense there. And Furia extend their lead and gives you, gives you some confidence headed in these next two minutes. Usually it's Drafinho leading the charge there and acting as a bit of a bulldozer, but this time he scores. Now Yan with Rafinho waiting way back in midfield. Can they set him up for another? Lost will try to serve one, but it's cleared away. And Zen's already downfield. Yan couldn't get a piece of it, and it doesn't turn into anything. Zen, a rare missed opportunity. You won't get away with that too often if you're the Fury of Defense. Yeah, definitely anytime you get the opportunity to, to catch Vitality off guard, you gotta run with it there. Be prepared for any, any slight mishap in the most respectful way possible. Minute 10 approaching. Furia still leading by two. Vitality hasn't been able to answer to either of those goals there. Maybe an attempt on this one. Attempt is, a, is the wrong word. That is completion at its finest. Vitality cut that lead in half. Alpha converts, just a challenge ball. Come up and get me. Nobody could. Still over a minute to go. Plenty of time to make Furia uncomfortable. Important kickoff here and a little finesse to it, but it ends up deep in their own territory anyways. Alpha has to watch that one go. Lost diving in, Yan will jump in as well. Try to add one more, get that goal back and feel a little bit more confident here in their cushion. It is only the one goal. Alpha now, try to bring it down to ground. Zen is there, needs a second touch. He's let that one go, and Furia almost took possession away. A little 
little nervous there for Furia. Lost was caught off backwards on this one. This ball trying to get cleared out into the mid. Lost sends it back. Pass over to Jafinho. Shot goes crossbar in out, but you're still up by one. You play time at this point. 25 seconds left on the clock here. Demos starting to come through from Furia. Nobody can get past them. Vitality still stuck in their own half. 15 left to go. Alpha wants to take a shot, but Lost keeps him at bay. Zen lost it. Brad Dawson's there with Alpha running interference and a critical save made by Yan. No time left. Zen, all eyes on me. Block him there. And now a loose ball up at the skies. Yan on target and Zen can only keep it alive. Just barely. Pinch downfield. That won't be caught up to and Furia level the series. I mean, what an answer from Furia in opposition to what game number one was. That was Honestly, I guess it's a one goal differential, but that even felt way closer than that. Yeah, it felt like a game that was destined to go to overtime, especially with the pressure Vitality had on at the end. And then, of course, the storybook ending, right? Ball falls right to Zen with no time on the clock. Let him go to work. But Furious defense comes up strong. And as I think everybody expected, and we could probably expect from all of these 1-0 matches, we're all tied up after two games. Yep, nothing, nothing new here on the mainstream, especially nothing unexpected between these two squads. I, I predicted this one off stream to at least attempt to go to a game five. I mean, attempt is the wrong word. It's, it's all an attempt at this point. <laughs> but I, I honestly, I expect this to go to game five. These are two incredible teams. They, they are so, so composed. But again, Furia, they, there's so much potential in this roster, especially going up against the Vitality that's been having the results they've had recently. It's not that they're not peaking, but they're not at the same exact level as they were the last time we saw them in last season. When you think about how Vitality was tested in the first round, very different, of course, to Furia. Zen had five goals in that first round series. Vitality has five goals as a team in this series through two games. Here goes Lost, looking to go to work again for Furia, but just blocked away by Zen and company. We'll see how this game takes on a life of its own. Two very different games with Vitality blowing Furia out through the middle of game one, and then a low-scoring, grindy affair. You know Furia wants to break out, try to run up the score. He's going to find that very difficult against the defense of Vitality. So much pressure in the early stages of game three here from Furia, which honestly you'd love to see if you are a fan of this squad. Coming in here with an answer to that last goal, the game that we all felt should have been overtime. They're gonna try and uh, redeem themselves a little bit here in game number three, maybe try and find a lead head to match point. The shot goes towards the net here. Alpha just places us into the corner. Infield pass, but no connection on the ball there, and Vitality get to start their counter. All right, they're gonna get something out of it too. It's Radosa, no, a little too slow, as Trofino's all over. Didn't have anybody in support. So he couldn't set anyone up. Now lost, dropped it down, and that's easily cleared out by Alpha. Not much more than a few jabs back and forth in the first minute plus of game three. Trying to break this one all tie. Again, the winner is 2-0. and And will have a shot at clinching their spot tomorrow in, in the weekend playoffs. I almost said Championship Sunday. <laughs> Getting a little too far <laughs> ahead of not ourselves, quite but there yet. either one of these teams certainly a strong candidate to last through Sunday. Sredosin with a stop there, and again, we just kind of fall into this holding pattern at midfield. I mean, and I wouldn't expect anything less right now. Honestly, these two squads feel fairly equal, although that is all going to be said and done. Jafinho gives Furia the one goal lead here in game three. Uh, he got lost, at least in Alpha's way. Had to be aware of him. And Furia strike first. And they keep this up. They've struck first in all three games now. One and one so far. Zen just skies it up, delayed for Alpha to get back in position. And a good 50 at midfield. Comes that deeper into Furia territory. You see now G2 and Gen G over on the alternate stream. They're in game five in their 1-0 matchup. Again, you can expect to see Champions Field maybe a few times here as we close out the night. I mean, at, at this point, it, it's there's so much on the line. Every game matters, every goal, every series, 
is all so important headed into day number two, especially if you're not quite showing up how you would have expected. I know some of these teams would have hoped for a sweep. Maybe it would have went the other way. But Fury are doing what everybody hoped they could, which is a lead against Vitality in game three. Well, Alpha with an aggressive turn there, and then you see the bump right in front of the net. Somebody had to scramble back, and he got knocked out of the way. Furia using their physical, bold play to take a 2-0 lead here in game three. We talked a little bit about that before, the difference in play styles against these two squads could at times make this feel a little bit more one-sided than others. And well, in this case, Furia's bold play style is working extremely well against the Vitality pressure. Another opportunity for Lost, and this time it is met well by the defense of Vitality. And they're sur surely not done with this game yet. We've seen them lead a comeback charge in a similar situation in game two. That fell short. Rafinho now just lets that one die. Couldn't get the flip reset to do anything with it. Jan has Lost ahead. He whiffed on it, though. And Vitality are let off the hook. Can they capitalize? Redosin, no joy there as that's cleared back whence it came. And Furia on the attack yet again. A few opportunities have gone wayside too for Furia, but more importantly, Vitality. I've seen them sending a couple of their players upfield, one trying to go for the bump or somebody go, trying to go for the in-net bump as well, just trying to clear any sort of a path for an opportunity to answer to those two goals, and yet nothing has worked so far. Bump onto Jafino means maybe Alpha can get a second touch. It's a shot on net. Lost keeps this one out, and a minute to go before Furio potentially is going to match points against the former world champs. Well, Vitality are gonna lead a comeback yet again. It would have to come probably from Zen. He's been the leader so far in this tournament for Vitality, but also you know it's gonna come from the air not along the ground where Furia just seemed to have this game on lock. Who will take to the skies next? It's Radocinho, but he's denied by Drafinho. And back it goes right at Zen with 30 seconds left. Something's got to give here. Can Vitality get one on the board? Can they at least make this interesting in the closing seconds? Another big stop by Drafinho, who's almost turned it into offense. Lost foot at high, but that's more time burned off the clock. Can Vitality take advantage now? No, they cannot. And the final 10 seconds will burn away. Vitality, not for lack of trying, not for lack of opportunities, find themselves looking up at match point <laughs> from Furia. Oh my gosh, Furia, the whole world sees you. You have come into this land absolutely on the, in, in the mouths of everybody. Leading up to today, everybody has been talking about this squad and how good they have seemed, and this is it. This is the answer to show everybody who they are. They are now sitting on match point, attempting to head into day two of the Swiss 2-0 trying to get to a perfect three. Now, I mean, imagine the Furia that we saw in the past that was the team that nobody wanted to face when it came to majors. They're looking like that team again. They are that guy as Jan kind of took a back seat in that game. It was lost. It was Drafinho and it was all Furia in game three. They just look so incredibly consistent against Vitality as the series goes on. One more game, though, before you can claim the win here in this round. But I don't know. It's not looking too bad. I feel like eyes are mostly on Vitality. What are you going to do? I know we talked about it a little bit. Usually Zen is kind of that player that everybody looks to to initiate almost everything as far as vitality goes, but I don't know. My eyes are kind of on Alpha. I wait for this guy to wake up. He is a, a sleeper threat almost at times. That could turn this team into something very scary for Furia to go up against. A small majority of the talent team looking for somebody from Team Vitality to wake up. They were the favorites, according to us collectively. I know you did have Furia. <laughs> and right now it's looking pretty good, but here goes Zen. Flip reset, got it to the crossbar. He was bumped, chaos in front. 
and Redosin will clean up the mess. I love this. Zen goes. It's off the backboard. Alpha tries again. Furia stays strong. But three times is the charm for Vitality. A full team effort to give themselves the early game lead. So for the first time in this series, Vitality gets the opening goal. Will it hold up? No, it will not. Lost. It was an awkward look. Very similar to Jan's and very tough to judge defensively. I think both times it was Zen at the last who just could not get a read on it. Oh, that is that is unfortunate. But yeah, again, not a bad position to be in tied one to one. You're only just under 30 seconds into this match here. This one goes into the mid. Lost trying to drive this ball forward here. Vitality wants out of their half, but immediately sent back by Yan. Zen looking to take that ball, but it gets taken right back away by Yan. And here comes Furia from the ceiling. Lost trying to carry this one down, and Vitality seems to keep them out for the time being. Uh, every time Yan is anywhere near the ball, maybe a little less lately, but still kind of has that reputation as one of the most intimidating forces to go up against in the RLCS on the global stage. Here goes Redosa trying to get down to ground quickly, and then Zen kind of gets knocked into him, so it's really only Alpha at the back, and he makes the stop with almost all of Furia bearing down on him, and another one saved away. Follow up off the crossbar. Old Ironsides comes to the rescue, and Vitality are off the hook for now. It's not going to stop here, though. Furia still manages to stay in their half. Lost quickly turning around, takes this ball back, waiting for the second touch. Infield over to Yan. This one goes up, and then it hits down. And here comes Drafinho with a shot. Alpha with a save. The clear off by Radosin, but lost deep in that third, just waiting for anything that comes the Fury away. You've got to get those opportunities on target. Near is not good enough. And Vitality, they've been bailed out by the accuracy or lack thereof of Furia, and they've turned it into a 2-1 lead. They're them. Even you can never, ever count them out. You can never count out Zen, even in times where it feels like they might be a little bit lost in a series. You've got three minutes to go. Vitality back up by one. Is this where the momentum starts to find itself again? Or does Furia find an answer to put a stop to the motion? Well, Vitality back in front, looking to expand their lead. Zen had a look. Now Radosin denied. Still loose as Yen has to clean up the rebound. And then back it goes. Chance for Furia now. It's lost. Put it wide to the right. And well dealt with by the Vitality defense. You notice Yan there grabbing that corner boost. Knew he had enough time to go boost and ball. Very few manage boosts better than him. He almost always seems to have more than half a tank when he starts to cook. But right now, he's watching his team struggle against the Vitality defense. Yeah, this one's uh, this one's felt a little bit closer, but granted, I I wouldn't expect it any other way. And yep, just like you said, got him. This one cleared up field, catching Furia just off guard, pushed up a little bit too far. You saw Jafinia just trying to race back, but the moment Vitality sees an inch, they take a mile, or I guess a kilometer for these guys. Now nah, we can speak in freedom units. It's perfectly <laughs> fine. Three won the lead. Vitality doesn't care what we're doing. They care that they've got a two-goal lead now, a little bit of a cushion in a game they must win to keep their 3-0 hopes alive. Now Yen, forward, intercepted. Vitality bringing it back, and this is where they just put teams away, but not that time. Alpha could not convert, so Yan will bring it back in. Oh, he took that away from Lost, and then Drafinho was beat. At least he got the demo on Redosin. That gives his teammates a chance to get back, but they're now on the back foot after a squandered opportunity. Here's a nice big clear upfield for Furia. Yan trying to make connection with this ball, but Alpha's two touches keeps this one driving in Vitality's favor. Over one, not over two, though, for Redosin. And less than 90 seconds to go. Furia, you got two goals to answer to. You're sitting on match point. It felt like it was in your favor, but Vitality says no. We want game five. Yeah, I'll take some drama with a side of Champions Field, please. Both of our 1-0 matches have gone the distance. And this one, barring a catastrophic failure, 
looking to do the same. Vitality up by a million by their standards. Lost, trying to bring it in, nothing there. And this is again, we talked about the front running of Vitality. They don't blow leads like this very often. They can just kind of squeeze the game out and wait for game five. It'll have to be kind of a, a big reset mentally for Fury as Zen goes to work. Trying to get through the defense and just add to his impressive total. Not happening this time. Now Alpha looking for more of his own. It's been mostly Zen today, but in this series, Alpha and Radosin have answered the call. Somebody else had to step up and help the youngster out. They've each scored three. All three members of Vitality, but Yan gets one back here with 31 seconds left. Furia, you've got 31 seconds to do not the impossible, but it's going to feel that way. You do have another chance, though, at the end of the day, but I'm sure they would love to end it here off the kickoff. This one headed into the orange side, but sent back almost immediately. Here comes Jafino, pops this one up to Lost. Lost, clear out into the corner. Yan's gonna try and follow it. Two touches, an attempt to make a center is lost over to Jafino, but Zen clears it back, wasting the precious time that Furia would have needed here in game number four. And as this clock counts down these last remaining seconds, it's safe, almost safe. I take it back, it's not safe, nothing. Nothing is safe in Rocket. It sure looked like it was over until Yan got that challenge with Radosin, brought it back across, lost position perfectly. And now two seconds left. Furia have been solid on kickoffs. Can they be great and break Vitality's hearts? Yan's gotta catch up to this. You got a lot of mechanical prowess over here, but not enough. Vitality force Champions Field. Well, there you have it. The former world champs not going down without a fight. Furia hasn't quite been accustomed to losing, but I'm sure they've been accustomed to situations like this in their home region. But man, a challenge like this from Vitality, taking you to game five, not going out, especially with how well Furia looked throughout the entire series. It's gotta be somewhat frustrating to feel like you got so close to almost bringing it back and it just barely slips away. We're looking into the Mobile One High Performance Replay and who you will not see very often in these highlights is Trofino. You saw the numbers there. They've had a couple games in this series, Furia, where somebody has just not been able to get onto the ball at all, offensively or defensively. Yan had one such game. It didn't prove that costly. Furia won that game. But Trofino, as great as he's been in this series with his three goals and his physical play to only be held under 100 points, I know score isn't everything, but very clearly, he did not have the game he would have liked to have in a closeout opportunity against Team Vitality. Oh, absolutely. That is, you, you know that that is you getting kind of forced into a position that might feel a little bit uncomfortable, especially in moments like this. You might want to do some more, but you got to be allotted the opportunity to do so. And there you have it, Champions Field. Both of these teams looking to make it to tomorrow. 2-0 in the Swiss. Who will be the first to do so? Watch Trofino in the first minute and a half or so of this game and see if he does the worst thing you could possibly do. Try to do too much after a lackluster game. Trofino and Jan both jump up after that one as a double commit from Furia costs them an opportunity. Trofino diving in on this, but he can't stay with the play. And now Loss will try to take over from the midfield line. Intercepted by Alpha. Trofino's over there, so already he's making his presence felt all over the field, trying to set up Jan, but it went wide. Here comes Vitality. The counter starting to come through. Jafino says, if you can't get out of my my side, I'm just gonna get you out of my way. And the bumps are coming in. One big clear towards the Vitality side, immediately stopped dead in its tracks, but Furia still pushing towards that net. Immediate counter though, nice big clear. Furia looking to slow things down just a little bit. Wonder if Furia maybe feels a little bit snake bitten and they hesitate just enough for Vitality to take advantage. There's Lost. He's not hesitating at all. He has been full go and almost got a crucial opening goal for Furia. 
Here, he got it. A nice challenge there from Lost to keep this ball in the Vitality half. Yen just trying to redirect it towards that net. Take any and every shot you can up against the Vitality defense. Just try and chip at that wall there. And try and be the first one on the board. You want the early game lead to make Vitality uncomfortable. And Rodosin's gonna clear this one in the mid. Lost, pass over to Yan, back over to Lost. Can he make it through though? Zen with the save. The final boss making the stop after an almost brilliant performance. Now Zen, oh, denied by the post. And it's sent back out to midfield. One that Vitality, I'm sure, would love to have back collectively. Now Drafino has lost, so he pre-jumped, and Drafino just could not get the pass to him. Maybe frustration mounting now for Drafino, is now lost, is gonna be all alone at the back for a moment. And everybody has to scramble, Drafino is there. Yan trying to bump around with Alpha, and Furia should control possession now. Maybe a shot on goal, but no. It was a small attempt to drive this ball forward, but the one thing I will note is Furia trying to send somebody up just a little bit. Again, trying to clear that path open against Vitality, but it hasn't been the best of attempts. Instead, it's quick counters from Vitality like this back into their own half here is Furia. Jafino looking to be the one to get them out. Zen up into the sky. Yan, great win on the challenge here. Trying to drop this one down. Oh. It's an opportunity for loss, but he doesn't go up in time to try and take the shot. And at two minutes, we stay scoreless. Yeah, lost just a little too far back. And by the time he made the decision to commit, Way too late. Yan brought it all the way to ground, had the entire Vitality defense waiting, but they guessed right. Of course, there were three of them. One of them was bound to make a save. Yan going back to work. Another win on the 50, but it goes right to the back wall where Red uh, Redosin's got it. And now Zen and Drafino, won by Drafino, but Alpha's there. The one thing I will say that just feels insane is that Vitality have only had the opportunity for one registered shot in this series, or in this series, in this game so far, in this game five. Maybe there's an opportunity for another one here, but this is probably the most held back Vitality has been so far throughout the series. As a, maybe arguably in game number one would have been the most, but as time is going on, Fury are starting to look a little bit more menacing than they have, at least in game number four. Oh, big There's shot. shot! There it is! Yan just handed to him an opportunity created by a double commit where we worried that Furia might be the one that started panicking. It's Furia who holds its composure with 108 to go in game five. At this point, you are just playing solid Rocket League in time. Do everything you can to keep Vitality uncomfortable and on their toes. Just let them scramble to get out of their half and create an opportunity. This one from the ceiling. Rodosin tried to go down. Great clear out into the mid. Lost low on boost, but enough to drive this ball forward. Alpha looking to get out of his own half on this one. Pass over to Rodosin. The big clear allows the Vitality counter to start to come through. But it, as soon as it begins, it just ends. Yeah, they're not able to get sustained pressure, and they're going to need maybe second or third chance opportunities. And they're running out of time. 30 seconds now, as Zen will bring it across. Has his pocket picked. Lost is there on the wing. Grafino got a piece of alpha. And the shot is saved by Zen to keep Vitality alive in this game. Furia, Furia look like they're playing like it's still a tie game. They are still desperate to add another to their tally. But now here comes Vitality, bumped by Alpha. Can he turn on this? Yes, he can. Last call for the world champs before they drop to one and one. Sin's got it in the air. Alpha waiting, waiting. Passes there and he sent it too high. Jan brings it almost to ground. Radosi can't keep it. trying to see if you could do. You took down the former world champs and well, and look at the celebration. It is so warranted. And that has got to come as honestly and respectfully as a shock to Vitality. Yeah, the reigning world champs, they've, they've entered this season with this <laughs> almost ages around them, right? That they can't lose on LAN. Oh, yes, they can, and they have. They are one and one now here in the Swiss stage, but it is Furia, the ever-passionate 
South American representatives back home playing from Brazil, representing their country and region incredibly well. Two and O, oh, and a shot to clinch the playoffs tomorrow. Such a gorgeous and respectful game of Rocket League between two high-level teams. We said it before the series even started. This is honestly almost like a simulation of what could have a potential grand final had been like. I wouldn't have expected anything less than a game five between these two squads. <laughs> and I love it. Again, it's just pure hype from this team. Completely warranted. Congratulations, Furia. It's hard to find a more passionate team in the entire Rocket League eSports ecosystem than this Furious squad. And just their, their chemistry, their togetherness, and the fact that they are never phased, ever, by any situation. That makes them, especially Yan, but it also lost Endrofino, major and maybe world championship contenders. Furia take it on Champions Field. We'll send things off, and we'll see you in just a bit. But who you're going to see right now is a Vitality Slayer. That's right, Drufino is uh, coming on back. Welcome back. to the. <laughs> this is a great win, wasn't it? Yeah, a pretty great <laughs> win, man. You know, in screens, bro, I played Vitality two times with Crew and Furia. With Crew for, it was 6 0 for them, and yeah. with Furia was 6 0 for them. This is the first time I win against Vitality, and it's in the Swiss Station for Major. <laughs> oh my god, so this is a massive personal win for you. Like, yeah. you must be shaking right now. Yeah, it's incredible. And when I won the first game that we win against them, I was. Yeah, my first game against Vitality, and now we won the series. That's insane. I, I was—it was funny because I was going to ask about scrims in between this. Um, you know, were were you guys were you thinking about this matchup specifically while you're scrimming, maybe in between leading up to this matchup? Like, was this something on your mind, or were you trying to treat it like any other match? Yeah, we wanted to play them uh, because I think. Our coach Mateus said that we are going to play against or Genji or Vitality. So we wanted to play against Vitality because of the, right. yeah, you know, winning major and uh, the world. So winning against them is a huge accomplishment, you know. That's amazing. Now I want to uh, try something out here. Actually, we got a, we got a monitor. You guys can see it. We got a screen in front of us. Uh, I just want to look at a clip and, and maybe see if you can give us some insights into what the comms might have been, because you guys are known for some pretty good offense. Uh, and so yeah, maybe if we if we play it and, and if you walk me through what the comms are like in a play like this where you both kick into to high gear. Yeah, uh, I think it was like. I can bump, I can bump, I can bump, I can bump, you know? <laughs> and lost, yeah! Cheering for me, you know, bumping, he's like, Drufo, bump, bump, and I, I can bump, I can bump, and he's scored. <laughs> I got to say, I love, uh, I'm coming into this thinking, okay, there's going to be some structure. It's going to be, all right, I'm going to get the bump and you're going to get the shot. It's just just screaming. Yeah, yeah, just screaming. <laughs> That's, it's really awesome to hear from that side. And, and we saw right afterwards the, the energy you guys had with that win. I honestly believe you that the, most of the comms are like that. Do you guys ever have like calm, collective, professional comms? Or is most of it just emotional yelling? I think we have like professional cones. Normally we try to keep a linear cone, you know, not scream every time, every, every time. But every time we score is like screaming, 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 you know. And when the match is heated, like that one, so screaming bum, bum, bum is normal, you know, it's normal. So uh, question then for you before I let you go, you said you had your sights personally set on Vitality. Does that target shift now to another team? Who is in your sights, Trevino? I think Carmine, you know? Okay. Winning against them is like winning against Vitality. You know, three regionals in a row, it's winning against them is a huge accomplishment too. Absolutely. Hey, you got one down and the rest are to come. And hopefully, hey, maybe you'll keep on squeaking on through to the grand finals. Congratulations on that Vitality win. <laughs> Thank you. But that is not it. One more to go, ladies and gentlemen. So please stay locked in. K Corp versus Falcons is coming up next. Our last match of the day brings us a match some expect to see in the grand finals. Keep the energy up. One more to go. Ah,
lost time Gotta rent a car, gotta stay a while If I don't move ahead, then I get stuck behind I'm at a friend's place, gonna stick around The puzzle pieces fit for now The things you said were playing loud Side-by-side -side matches go into Champions Field. Fury lights up the sky against the world champs while Gen G keep their streak against G2 alive. Spectacular matches on both streams. Make sure you've got them pulled up, folks, right now. Gentlemen's about to take on BDS over on the all stream. Welcome back. We got one more round of matches. I'm going to regret doing this. Daz, how you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling off the moon, Wave Punk. I'm feeling absolutely ecstatic. And you know exactly why. First
first things first, we were on this very desk here, and everybody picked Vitality True. except for moi. And what happened? Of course, not only were they in the lead of the series, Vitality had to force the game five. They ended up winning that. And that man there, I've been listening to him for God knows how long talking about his G2 squad. And what happened? They lost to GG Mobile One Racing. I've already seen everybody making all the excuses of, oh, will GG play back? I'm sorry, where are we? What does that say behind us? We're at the ROCS Copenhagen Major. You don't get to have a bad day. You're lucky it's the Swiss stage right now. They got some more matches to play. This dude was sitting here before we came back on the break on his phone. I don't know what happened. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> I don't, how, how is this happening? I'm going through the cue card. You're done yet. You're done. Like, you're done. Your time's over, I'm buddy. No, started, your time's man, over, buddy. Nobody else wants to hear that right anymore. Now. Congratulations. You ended up getting a, getting a W. And when G2 played the worst they've ever played the whole entire time, you think Daniel's going to have a .309 octane rating again? Daniel scored zero I would hope he in the didn't. Series. It's the major. He shouldn't be having that. All right. Well, do you know who didn't have a bad day today, Wave? Furia. Furia That's did right. not have, have a bad, bad day right. whatsoever here. Coming out against the world champions. And Furia with the biggest question mark for me out of these great teams that, that made new rosters. I loved Rufino, but I still had questions around Lost, and they all performed exceptionally well. Lost especially has been playing out of his mind. The true X Factor on that team, when he's popping off, now it looks like they can beat literally anyone here, taking down the world champs in Vitality, taking down a European powerhouse. Furia back on the map. And you talk to Drafinho, he says he's looking at that Kit Carmi Corp because, again, a win against them is really the, where they're kind of striving for. But it's step by step, and they showed up a showdown. Now, keep in mind, Vitality played well, and they looked really strong, but at the end of the day, Fury was the one that ended up taking it. Now, unlike G2, this wasn't a situation of Zen not popping off. Zen seemed in form in this match base. Right. Zen was informed the whole entire time. He just needed some assistance. This is a bad goal right here. Alpha definitely should not be jumping for that. He knows that, and then Zen was coming in full speed. Had to wait a second, because Alpha's throwing him off. Terrible clear, and Inferia just escaped with a W. I will say that they did play great, and the more he got it this time around. He got it this time around. Hope he's feeling good. I know Jewelry's back at home. Jewelry's feeling good, too, and all the entire South American region's feeling good right now. Congratulations. You beat the reigning world champions, but we'll see what you can do moving on. They are 2-0. They could possibly play one match tomorrow and be through to the bracket. We'll see if Furia can do it. That match you'll have to wait for tomorrow, though. We got two more matches going on here before we close out day one in Copenhagen. On the alternate stream, Gentle Mates taking on BDS, currently in a pause, but they'll be getting that match started momentarily. But we've been spoiled by these 1-0 rounds. We were hoping that the top eight's going to be right. very competitive. We've had two 1-0 games already. Both went to game five. We've seen a lot of sweeps. We've seen a lot of 3-1s. But finally, when the top eight are battling, they're going the distance. Hopefully, we see two more here. We'll see if we get it, folks. Again, twitch.tv slash RL Esports if you want to watch that match. On the mainstream, though, we've gotten through three of our matches. We got one more to go, and it is the Goliaths. We have yet to see them on our stream. They were over on the B stream to kick off the day against Limitless. We got Carmen Core taking on the Falcons. Falcons, congratulations. You got a good win. Now you get the big one. This is tough because I feel like Falcons, you know, obviously Mina, they dominated the entire time. There was no challenge against them, but also for K-Corp. Yes, they had a couple challenges here or there, but perfect. Through three qualifiers, taking yeah. down Europe's best, including Vitality, of course. K-Corp is your number one seed for a reason. And K-Corp, the reason why they are in that number one seed is to give the same mentality that they have at the major. They know they're on top right now. They know that there's a gap, but they're doing the extra work to widen the gap. They've been yeah. just training constantly in and out, and they understand that if they are complacent, teams are going to catch up. And I, this is exactly what I mean when you have this matchup here against Falcons in Swiss. This is the exact time to show that you are that dominant squad. And Wave Funk, really quick, I made a video right after Vitality won, and I was like, what roster, what dream roster could possibly take them down? My number one roster was these three, Rise, wow. Idol, and Batira. And I, I didn't know uh, any roster rumors or anything like that, but the uh -huh, talent sure. on this squad is, Rise is phenomenal, obviously. Whatever team he goes to, he looks exceptional. He's got experience with the Batira, but the Nato as well. He's been so good on Team Liquid last year. And he's a great demo player, and I think you kind of need that in Europe at times where you need to get physical. So all three members, obviously Batira, we all know about him making it to every final day for, what, 25 tournaments. So K-Corp, unbeatable, but 
It's now but land. human. We'll see. We'll but they human. are human, so we'll see. And on the other side, a team that's already also gotten a win today. Another team trying to be that unbeatable roster. And I, I think if there, there's, there are teams that are scared to go up against Carmen Core right now. I think this is one of the few teams in Copenhagen that is excited to have this match right now, Bates. Yeah, they're not worried. They're not concerned. And honestly, they're probably ready for them. They've been, they've made a roster to go up against the Vitalities, the Kite Corps of the world. When you got the Twins plus TRK, you expect them to perform. They're, once again, I feel like this Furia matchup, we had the Furia before we had Falcons earlier, and it was like a precursor of the, what's happening. So now if I'm Carmine Corp, if you're a Blue Wall fan, I would be a little worried because Furia has been looking great, and the Falcons' power ranking coming into it were power ranked higher than them. They're ready to go up against the Blue Wall. And you see these guys getting locked in. I mean, it just feels like a recipe for success when you think about every single player on this team and what their strengths are. TRK sitting in that middle seat exactly, too, is also a big factor in that because he's got a lot of energy and he's also been an all-around player who can make impact plays whenever his team has needed him to. The offensive pressure again, we talked about it with Furia and it did work versus Vitality. Falcons are the same way. Play so much offense, just out, shoot your opponent, play that midfield game 100% of the time, just play that defense there so you don't have to play defense on your own end. But again, it's a different beast. It's K-Corp, the perfect team in Europe. This, again, another true test of one of these smaller regions coming up against European powerhouses. My man's posture got to be hurt. That lean is crazy. That, that lean is kind of crazy. <laughs> that chair, he's getting no back support. Just he's young right the now, post. and it doesn't matter to him. As we see, Addo, he's waiting for some, waiting for the PC to get set up or someone on those type of lines. Got Coach Farah there. I just want to spot, yes, put a spotlight on him because Vitality, they're back-to-back -back land champions. Farah is as well. And then also, the man still hasn't lost since, I believe, beginning, winter. Yeah. Uh, He's won, eight He's won eight tournaments in a row at this point. Eight so, tournaments uh, in a row. He hasn't lost yet. And then there he is, the man with the plan, Vatira, arguably the best player in the world. He reloaded the roster. He went and joined up with this boy, Rise from Moyes. They added Atto. And I know Vatira only has one goal, one goal in mind this whole entire year. Not even win the major. I know he, he wants to win that too. But he wants to become a world champion. It starts here, starts now, going up against the Falcon squad that's on the way, trying to beat them. I think when you look at this series here especially, I mean, you talk about Carmen Corp. They are a team that we've seen in Europe really have strong offensive pressure, the ability to just make an individual play, go out for a bump. It's like the way they're able to rotate in and out with constantly has been just something that has really taken EU by storm. Yeah. And they're trying to translate that here. And for Falcons, I mean, the biggest challenge is going to be adapting to that early, especially on the land environment. And, and that's where I'm concerned uh, with Falcons because watching their tape, they're a very wide passing team because mm -hmm. they feel like they will always have that space so they can go off the walls and throw it across the entire court. When you're playing against K-Corp, you cannot do that. They will no. intercept all those plays. K-Corp though, they'll go for those aerial fakes and follow right behind it with the teammate. So they play closer to the ball. So even if you do go up for the challenge, there's still another member kind of hanging around that area. So we'll see if the Falcons kind of change it up again. It's hard to tell because in Mina, they weren't tested. They just dominated. So now when they get up against True Test, maybe that gameplay will work. Maybe they can spread the field, but I think it's unlikely versus K4. I mean, I think that's part of why Falcons is so excited to play against Carmine Core. They have you have shown, to get tested. They've yeah. shown that they can play against their region. They've shown they know how skilled they are, yet they want to prove to the rest of the world it's not just us playing in Mina. It's us against everyone. Give us the top dogs. Let us knock them down. They're going to be giving it their best here. They are sure, sure are going to be giving it their best here. I'm really interested to see how Carmine Carmen Corp comes out right right now because I mean G2 they came out very not good not 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 up to par on according to, according to their online play Gen G I, they beat G2 but I, don't, I still don't think they played as well as they did online either Vitality as well the uncharacteristic mistake out of Alpha and Zen in game five would have yeah. been so clutch mm -hmm. once again they didn't play their best ball so you got Carmine Corp a team with expectations a team that is reloaded a team with Rice sits in the middle he's the dude who's been to the most grand finals since the open era began but Terra's right behind him up there with Monkey Moon. So these players, they all have a resume. They all have credentials. And then Falcons, they're kind of the underdog. And I think at the moment, the underdogs, at least in the last couple games, they've really been showing out. Yeah. So we've had well, some... one underdog is one. You know, we've had some, yeah, we've yeah, had some good. We've what had do you mean good, just one? <laughs> had some fun <laughs> underdog <laughs> moments what here. What do you mean but just they two? Are, it's, uh, here's the other thing about Carmi Core, right? Like you, uh, one of you mentioned that, like, oh, Vatira, reloaded this roster. He went and picked up Rise from Moist. Mm -hmm. Vatira used to be on Moist.
Moist. The yeah. way we met this player was on that roster of Moist, Rise, Joyo, and Vatira. And the thing that was so amazing about that roster was their ice, their control, their resolve. It didn't matter how difficult the match was. It didn't matter what situations they were put in. It didn't matter if it was Game 7 overtime. They were so cool and collected. This roster, to me, is OG Moist, but now with experience. Oh, absolutely. And that's terrifying. And that's where it comes down to their team plays where they go for these aerial fakes or they'll go for the aerial bump instead or any of that comes down to comms you have to have clean comms so everyone knows what to do at that moment because if you don't then the is going to go for fake but he's going to fake out his own teammates as well so that's yeah. not going to work but they have so much experience that you expect those clean comms to come out on land a lot of teams might get a little too hyped maybe like a furia where they're yelling comms like crazy because they're getting too hyped about it yeah. and it did work out for him but for the play style that K-Corp brings with all those fakes and those team plays, the comms have to be perfect. Yeah, and I think it's going to be interesting here for Falcons as well, especially considering that their first round matchup was against OG. And, oh, you know, you can also talk about Karmic Corp having that first round matchup against Limitless as well. Both teams not, haven't really been tr like tested to their fullest. I would say probably Falcons been a little bit more warmer here, but it has been a, a, a while since Ooh. we've seen both of them on the field. How is that going to affect the gameplay? Great point. Karmic Corp, they came, they walked in here very, very early, played the first match on the B stream. That was at two, uh, I don't know what time zone I'm in right now. But I'm yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> but it was I mean, early. It was at 2 <laughs> two, two o'clock or... Uh, it was like four, 7 hours 14, ago. 1,400. It was a long time ago. And now they're playing at whatever 9 o'clock is in... Um, in 2,100. Uh, 2,100. There you go. So that's a long <laughs> time since they played. And that does matter. It's going to be interesting how has Kate Corp stayed warm this whole entire time. And at the same time, Falcons, when they played against OG, OG should have won that game one. So that could have went to five. Falcons didn't look their best as well. So they've had a little time to cool off or figure things out here. But yeah, Kate corp has been sitting on ice, like literally for 7 hours. It's, it's a long time. Although they found some ways to stay warm, that is part of the uh, the occupational skills yeah. set you have to develop, figuring out how to keep yourself in the mentality when the competition doesn't quite time out the way you're expecting it to. A uh, similar situation actually over on the B stream. They just started game one between Gentlemates and BDS. They also had a technical pause, um, and there's already a player sitting still in the field. So there's a chance where they might be going to another pause. Oh, yeah. both, <laughs> both matches. When it rains, it pours here. But And EU, they were 4-0, and but they already lost one, so they're guaranteed one more. So they're That's at least going to have two losses on the day. And who knows? Maybe a third here with the Falcons you know, like Falcons are one of those teams honestly I think most people had them as like we'll probably have to put them behind a Gen G and G2 but everyone was pretty much saying like they could win this major very easily top six a top eight even have a shot but it really just comes down to the true test is everyone knows K Corp versus the entire field K Corp I still think is like a 40% chance to win this whole thing but Falcons want to change that. I mean, you think about like Vitality, the reigning champs, getting beaten by Fury right before yeah. this. Yeah. What sort of? I, I don't even know if the Falcon boys know that that happened. But like, if you think about like the added, I don't know, just like pressure resolve of like, oh, if we're able to take down Carmine Core and like prove that like South America and yeah. Mina are the teams taking down the top dogs of Europe, like how big is that? And we began today saying like, who's the best third region, right? Sam or Mina and possibly number two if you want to catch up to yeah. North America. But if these two take down two of the top European teams, we're going to start having a lot more questions. We had a very long off season, so we were expect in Europe to just dominate again because they're practicing versus one another all the time but now a lot of question marks here. You know I want to throw it to Mr. Hotman over there Mr. Yapathon says you know he just wanted to take the spotlight early with all his energy and just start yapping immediately when he came out of break. Okay. Carmine versus Falcons. Here we go. What's the breakdown in the matchup? K Corp versus Falcons. I mean to me K Corp versus Falcons does kind of come down to midfield. I think for me, Falcons definitely, especially in the series that we saw against OG, when OG gave Falcons a lot of space in the midfield, they're able to do those wide passes that yeah. Gibbs are saying. They've been able to make hard transitions, especially on the counterattack. But I think Carmine Corp is a team that sh shuts that down. They're big on controlling the midfield. They're big on eliminating space and making teams uncomfortable. That's going to be a huge factor going into this. Well, but here's the problem, though. Like we've said multiple times, Falcon have never really had to get out of first gear, maybe second gear in their own region. That midfield has been theirs for the take. Do they have a third gear once it's taken away? I'm not sure if they do, but I think also for K Corp, since they're playing match four, I think that's actually an advantage for Coach Farah because he has more time to break down their oh, matchup. Man. Because normally in Swiss, you don't have that much time to actually go and worry about your opponents. Right. But they right. have like three hours. So if there was a chance Farah goes back and looks at what Falcons are doing. He probably already had a game plan for every single team here because that's what Farah does. <laughs> but at least he can hone that down a little bit more and figure it out earlier because it's not like they're playing 
match five or, or match one of round two where you don't have enough time to kind of game plan. But they had hours to do that. I mean, basically, we're, we're talking about Carmine Core like they're this indomitable force. And so far, results-wise, they have been. But we know they're human. We know they can lose. Like, is there, like, what weaknesses are the coaches on other teams looking at to try and exploit? Hmm, weaknesses are Carmine Core. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's tough. That's an excellent question. I guess, I, I guess. You put me on the spot, now you're put on the spot. I know, but he asked me a way harder question than you. Yeah, that's true. I, 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 I guess a weakness in Carmine Core would just be maybe they just get too aggressive sometimes, because they do have Rise hunting demos and also Addle loves hunting demos, demos too. And yeah. Sometimes they do get kind of taken aback by that. You got Vati, arguably the best defender in the game. I would say he's the best defender, but sometimes just leaving him back all the time is not the most efficient way to do things. And honestly, think about it, Falcons, the way they play, they love to counterattack and do air dribble bumps. So it's gonna be interesting to see how Farah has implemented the game plan and maybe keep Ryze and Addo a little bit slower, being adaptable to what Falcons are doing and make sure that Vati's not left in a 1v2, 1v1 just to get bumped by Rawass or somebody like that. And I'm gonna bring up the argument from Johnny Boy. Speed, S speed matters. Falcons have that speed. So yeah. K-Corp, they might want to go for those aerial fakes, but if they go for one at the wrong time mm. and Falcons go up early, turns into a two-on-one counterattack. Yeah. So we'll see if Falcons can use that speed advantage to make the game run just a little bit quicker so there's no uh, opportunities to go for those fakes to go for those quick team plays so if falcons can do that and get them on edge it's possible it is the one thing that i feel like when we, we talk about the least but is the biggest differentiator between the top teams and the bottom teams is just these it's not it's not how you play the game it's how fast can you play the game at the top level yes and react to the plays it's not about your actual car speed on the field but it's more about when a play is about to begin how do you position because if yeah. you're positioned well you look fast Does but you it, don't necessarily have to be fast do you have to correct it all or yeah, exactly just, bam yeah. just nail the turn you know there's a lot of things that go into the concept of speed here these are some of the best teams at it in the world we'll see how they do chat let us know who you think is going to win in the fan vote there Daz. You got it right on the last one. Who you got on this one? I'm going KC on this one. I think it's fair to go Carmi Corp here until we really start to see them struggle. I will say, though, if there's any matchup today that they could have had that will allow them to struggle, it is this one. I do think Falcons have something in store here for Carmi Corp, but I got to go KC right now. I'm going Blue Wall. Europe, they are mortal. We saw Vitality lose, but a K Corp's a different beast. Not, like, honestly, they are. Until they lose with Ferrer behind them, I got to go K Corp. The name of the game I'm learning and the word of the day is adaptability. And I do believe that K Corp is probably one of the most adaptable teams. You saw Furia, they were playing nothing but offense, but they had to adapt against Vitality. Gen G adapted against G2. They have to get smacked the whole entire, whole entire qualifiers. It'll happen. They adapted and slowed the game down. And now they're arguably better than G2 at the moment. I got Carmen Corp right here. Even if Falcons comes out strong, I do believe Coach Farrah and the boys will figure it out and beat him in five. Carmen Core is blue. Fun fact, uh, each team has a blue coefficient by the rules, and Carmen Court will always be blue in any match they play. They are the bluest team in Rocket League. So uh, they're blue. We'll have Falcons in the orange here. And it comes down, Falcons, are you sure? Ooh, the coin. You sure? That... Falcons, the coin says it's sure. It says it's sure that it's got coin. Falcons on this the one. Coin the coin doesn't know ball. The coin goes orange a lot, though. That's I don't know. Nuts. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Hey, it's, 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 it's 3D. Who did you pick, Wade? I got, I got Carmen Core on this one. I am yeah, not yeah, predicting yeah. against the blue wall until they lose here. Chat has them as well. They were, they are fierce on the field. They are fierce in the stands as well. We'll see if they can continue and keep up that reputation here. To close out day one, the Copenhagen Major, it is the big bad themselves, Carmen Corp, taking on the champions of the Middle East, Falcons versus Carmen Corp, to close out day one. Two dominant titans of their respective regions, only one will advance to 2-0 and have a shot at the top seed tomorrow. Again, we are being given an incredible matchup, another, you know, simulated grand final, if you would say, right? Carmen Corp, arguably the best in the world right now, but they're going to go up against a challenge. It's the Falcons who are first on the board. It's Rawas having that one fall right in front of him, diving in seven seconds in, and we'll see how K Corp responds having given up a very early goal. I, I have heard nothing but high praise to the name of Falcons throughout the week here in Denmark. I, I have been so excited to see this team and this matchup, but this matchup in particular, because this is probably the hardest. This is some of our grand final predictions. Yeah, it certainly was my grand final prediction. 
won't bother telling you who I think is going to win. I think everybody knows. This <laughs> one will be ricocheted away as Team Falcons repel another attempt from the blue wall. And Otto and Rise are not on the same page. So here goes TRK. Only Vati to beat. And Otto will just come right in from behind to scoop that ball up. Falcons not overextending at all. Not able to kind of pressure Carmine Corp. And we'll see if that continues throughout this game. TRK has one bounce away. And Rise will have it. Kate Corp a little out of sorts in the early stages defensively. But again, they've also had to wait seven hours plus to play their next game. Yeah, I feel like that's something very valid to mention and that should be talked about is the amount of time that you have to wait in between your matches can affect you a lot. Whether, you know, you decide to eat or you rest or you want to take a scrim on or go play some ranked in the in-between, what you do matters. And I, I feel like it's safe to say Carving Court, they like to keep themselves warmed up in the in-between, but that is a long amount of time headed into this. Well, and you look at what we saw at times before this matchup, right? There were some technical issues going into this series. And of course, our great admin team working with the tech that's available, able to get this match started as quickly as possible as Killers has that stop. And Rise will just kind of camp out by the corner. Shout out to our admin team, by the way. Worth every penny and probably then some <laughs> veteran experience squad doing right by the players here so far today. Game number one. Although Falcons are in a lead, it's still feeling fairly close right now. Carmine Corp desperately just want to formulate some sort of a play, but a weird whiff coming out there from a town. No connection on that ball there. Instead, it's Ruas on the counter. This shot towards net, in net, and Falcons go up 2-0. Wow, uh, this is just a beautiful piece of wizardry right on the edge of the frame. Helped a little bit, and Ruas has a pair for Team Falcons, who are bringing the fight right to K-Corp. They just look so confident coming into this matchup, which is what you need if you're going up a team like Carmine Corp, right? Everybody has them at the top of their list as far as predictions go, especially after, after the performance that we've seen throughout all three of the qualifiers. They are the team to beat. And I feel like it would make, it would put a lot of eyes on you if you're the Falcons right now, but also maybe a little bit of a target on your back if you were able to take them down. For now, though, Carmine Corp want to transition immediately, race back home as the Falcons are on the counter. Two goal lead with less than two remaining. We know how quickly Carmine Corp can attack. But after nine goals from Killers in, in round one, it is Ruas who's stealing the show, looking for a hat trick with about 90 seconds left. Dumped back in again, and K Corp again pushed to their back line. And the blue wall has not found much success at all on the offensive end in Falcons territory. This one floating home and in from TRK. From all the way in his own half, a second touch and a clear over rise. Smack on target into an open net. Falcons catching Carmen Corp off guard. Well, this is not what many people would have expected. Of course, we could expect that these are maybe two of the best teams in the world, maybe the two best. But to see it go 3-0, make it four, as TRK continues to rain it down. TRK absolutely waking up in the second half of this game. I mean, he was awake before, but he just, dude wants the spotlight on him right now. Falcons four. Four goals on Carmine Corp. Nothing has been answered to, which feels almost impossible and weird to be saying right now. I feel like Carmine Corp has had such an incredible play style that has worked so well against so many teams. So Falcons have got to feel great knowing what they're doing works best against KC. And well, you just got to keep it going for the next 50 seconds. Carmine Corp, the blue wall, has met the superior siege weapon. It happens to be the combination of Rawas and TRK, two goals apiece, and a 4-0 lead in the final minute. Team Falcons making a statement in this final match of the evening. 
dubbed as our main event for good reason. And of course, when you get to a, a moment like this, when you're here at the major, you start to see all these international fantasy matchups. Boy, I wonder what would happen if the best team from Europe faced the best team from MENA. Well, you have it. And right now, it is decisively Team Falcons in game one, trying to add another to the pile. They'll be denied, but they'll take a 4 nothing dub into game two. Falcons look incredible. They look exactly the way that we've been hearing all week long. They are dominant. This is a top team in the entire world. No argue about it. There are very, very few teams that have been able to put up a proper fight against Carmen Corp. The last time I would argue that we saw something like that would have been Su against KC back in the OQ. And that was in their home region. Once we start mixing these guys in, the fact that Falcons are coming in and really making Carmen work in this series is a huge statement to get that opening win is massive. And to head into game two with your head held high, couldn't there couldn't be a better feeling. You don't need to count very high to count the number of lo game losses, not series losses, game losses for Carmen Corp so far this season. But they took one on the chin here as Team Falcons utterly dominant. And the Mobile One High Performance Replay does indeed become a Team Falcons showcase. So after all that herc, Team Falcons dominant in game one as they've been dominant throughout their respective season. And I think the big question has been, okay, you did it in MENA, which isn't a very deep region. Can you do it against teams that matter, so to speak? K Corp matters, and you saw what Falcons just did to them. Yep, and well, I don't expect anything less. I feel like Falcons have the capability to keep this level of consistency headed into game two, but granted, that, that statement is gonna be answered true or false as we head here into game number two. It's a bump play headed in for Kaleers, and Falcons go up by one. So let me get this straight. He scores nine in the opening series. <laughs> only gets a couple of assists in game one, and then eight seconds in, they've got another. Another early goal out of Team Falcons. It was Ruas in game one. It's Killers now adding his 10th goal of the day. And now K Corp looking for its first goal of the series and not getting one. Oh man, I, the fact that Killers is getting in on the action too is actually very, very massive because in game number one, he was the one feeding the assists throughout everything. So you get him on it, and all three players are going crazy. Carmen Corp, they've got a, a world of challenges headed up against them in game number two. This one's headed to the backboard. A nice little carry out into the side by Ruas here. And Falcons just looking to float this one out of their own half. A pinch, though, from Vatira. Let's Carmen Corp go back. Rise wanted to take a shot of his own, but the save comes through, and so does the counter. K Corp at times maybe could be described as a sleeping giant, but it needs to wake up real soon. First minute, first six minutes of this series, dominated by Team Falcons, the kings of Mina, looking to just continue their surge through the Swiss stage. Off to a good start here at Forbidden Temple. Opportunity in front, this time denied at point blank range by Ruas. Now Vatira will try again. Brought it down to ground, still had it stuffed back in his face. And that's over, wisely grabbing that corner boost, trying to starve out Falcons, try to create more opportunities, but the rotations are there. This is a very good defensive squad. We know, of course, all about their offense, averaging three and a half goals a game in their own region. But could they stop juggernaut teams like K Corp? Answer so far through a game and a half? Absolutely yes. This team is not even a dark horse powerhouse. They just, they low key are just on the rise as far as they are concerned here at the Copenhagen Major. And Falcons still up by one. Carmen Corp unable to answer to anything. Rai is going to take this ball away from the Falcons. Tries to get past TRK. Not quite able to do so though. It's how trying to just keep it going, but they keep getting sent back. This one to the backboard. Ruas with enough room to let this one down. Oh. And unfortunately, this one doesn't find its way through. But again, it's a Carmen Corp save that just has to keep coming out. 
I mean, not a crisis when you've been as dominant as you have been, but that drop down to Killers really should have turned into a goal. Now Vatira from his own back wall. Very familiar position for K Corp collectively. Got the bump. Now Rise. He'll run interference. And Ruas avoids him, catches the ball on the backboard, brings it out. It was a great attempt from K Corp. The idea was there. Ruas was simply better. It, it's just, it looks like they came in with a game plan and they are just executing it to perfection. Takes two players to keep this one out of your KC. Falcons, another shot denied, but my goodness, is Carmen Court probably sweating just a little bit after that. Minute 40 seconds, all three players from Carmen Corp kind of bunched together in that corner, which isn't the best sign as they start to spread out a little bit. This ball's gonna head towards that net just wide in their back corner, clear out into the mid, and here comes TRK. Infield, pass, oh. no connection made on it, but not too much to stress about when you're still in the lead. Couple of near misses, and you could argue K Corp are a little bit lucky that this isn't a 3 nothing game right now. Hato. Stuck on his back wall, Vatira waiting to follow. He's got to jump into action here, and all he can do is clear it away. Rise, a little slow on the challenge. Now Killers bring it down in front across, and it's a toe who is right there. But again, listen, it hasn't been a blitz on either side as we get to the final minute. Shots are 4-2 in favor of K Corp, but the one that matters came from Killers. What, eight seconds into this game and a 1-0 lead for Falcons. Yep, it's been Falcons holding on to their extremely early game lead. But as soon as I say that, they said, no, you know what, let's extend it, make ourselves a little bit more comfortable headed into the next 37 seconds of this one, and maybe let's go claim match point. Maybe indeed. K Corp looking down the barrel of triple match point at the hands of Team Falcons. This main event has, well, <laughs> taken an awkward turn and another just like that. What, what even happened here? It was just a pinch from the ceiling and down, no connection on the attempt to make the save there. I think from Ruas, but okay, there, there's a glimmer of hope if you're Carmen Corp. You got 32 seconds, kickoff almost in your favor. If somebody can go and try and catch up to this ball, clears almost a little bit awkward. Great challenge there from Rise, but this ball goes back mid. Here comes the towel. Trying to send it forward, but Ruas has other plans. He's gonna carry this one to the backboard. Uses the flip and through, and Team Falcons re-extend the lead at 15 seconds. I think you've had enough. No? Now you've had enough. Falcons back by two. Ruas painting another brilliant picture. And K Corp left wondering what in the world is going wrong. Maybe it might be easier to answer what's going right right now. It is all Team Falcons through the first 10 minutes. And it's Falcons who have three shots to go 2-0. A bigger statement could not be in the works from this team. We have heard it from numerous players about how well this team has looked in terms of preparation headed into today. And they, it is proving nothing short of perfect consistency. They have just absolutely dominated. I would have expected something from KC at this point, I mean, granted, the series scoreline probably isn't an exact representation of how these games have been, but Falcons on the way to shut out KC. Seven to one. The goal advantage for Team Falcons. The pride of Saudi Arabia continue to just bring it right at the blue wall. That one from Ruas, the dagger in game two. That put it out of reach. But you've got a legend behind the Carmine Corp squad, Farah. They brought him over for situations like this. Hey, you won a world championship. That looked cool. Do it for us. This is where a man like Farah is going to earn his money. I absolutely agree with that. I, I have talked about Farah probably a million times and argue that he is 
the best, if not one of the best, in the entire world in terms of coaching. This man has created plays to stop some of the worst situations you can be in. So I have no doubt that there's some sort of a, a, a plan of action headed into this game, number three against Team Falcons. But you've only got five minutes in regulation to fix what has happened in games one and two. Otherwise, Falcons get to solidify themselves as a complete top dog here in day number one of the Swiss. And you also have only a minute in between games. No benefit of a timeout in these best of five stages. Double from the ground. Killers is a killer. He looks so good, so confident. This ball goes from the ceiling and gets killed on the ground. It's killers, though, to finish and follow it up. And Team Falcons, we've seen this before. They take an extremely early game lead, and they know exactly what to do in terms of playing time against a team like Carmen Corp. Well, the demo with Vati involved there, and he's back into the play. What can Vati Goat come up with for k -Corp? Will it have to be one of his minions helping him out? It's in the corner there. Otto coming back as well. Not over him, but Rise is there. Rise may be one of the biggest acquisitions for any team coming into this new season. The pedigree that he carries with him. There goes Fatira, though, reuniting with his former Queso and Moist teammate. But it's not coming up all sunshine and roses here as game three looks to belong to Falcons just like the first two. And it is a complete mess defensively. That's dangerous in front. And K Corp escape unharmed. Ooh, and what a flick towards that net there finally. Carmen Corp out of their own half and attempted an infill, but the shot goes wide. And Falcons look to transition. Atal has other plans. He wants to stay in that orange half, keep taking shots at them. Vasi, no connection made on that challenge there. And TRK gonna look to take a shot of his own. Two players to keep this one out of the net here. And three minutes left in game at number three. It starts to become a little dangerous because you might need all three of those minutes just to be able to tie things off. Again, only the one shot. Not that Falcons are lighting up the offensive end either, they've got three, but as we said in the previous game, the only ones that matter are the ones that get through. And it was an early goal yet again in the first minute. Team Falcons have scored first in that opening minute all three games, and that lead has held every single one of them. They have not trailed at any point, and this game is not, a game hasn't been tied past the first 30 seconds of any game in this series. This is dominance. This is the Falcons. This is their game, their series. However, it's not going to be that easy. Carmen Core tied things up here. It's Vatira who tried to carry this one upfield towards that net. Natal, it's just the teamwork, the sheer amount of teamwork that this team is able to place in together. And while at 2.15, we've got ourselves a tied game. Well, you can just about discount the first goal from Atal, right? Because that was kind of a fluke that found its way in. I mean, it took that long for K-Corp to get a goal they can go, all right, we like that. Now they've got to answer with more. Got to keep the pressure on as Rise has that drop to the corner. And Killers is right there to sweep it away, and he can slow play this. They've given him all the time and space in the world. They didn't have to burn much boost either. So great boost management, great possession there from Falcons. They're in an unfamiliar position now, actually locked in a battle now with K-Corp. Late in game three, a game that, again, Falcons could close out the blue wall here. If you, by any means, can shut out Carmen Corp to head into day two, going two and oh, you, it, you are just number one in my books at that point. That is such an incredible power move and a power statement, but you gotta get there first. This ball headed back towards the Carmine Corp half. Here comes the towel, trying to slow things down in the mid. But as soon as his transition starts, Falcons send it back. Oh. No connection on that ball to go in, but a threat nonetheless. Well, that would have been a very loud response. And it might have been too much for K Corp to overcome, but now here they come. 
It's Rise looking for contact again, finding minimum. And look at all three members of K-Corp just jammed up in that corner. The spacing virtually non-existent. That's how we'll at least bail them out here and play for possession. Everybody can get reset. But this ball given away, and Rise had to jump in front. I mean, this is what we've seen in games past, right? Carmen Corp kind of trying to get things together a little bit, but it feels like when the nerves actually seem to hit this team, which is very rare, we see something rare. It's Carmen Corp bunched up a little bit. They got to kind of, like you said, reset themselves. But 14 seconds left here in game number three. The potential for somebody to steal this at the last second or end it all even. Five seconds left. TRK to the backboard here. Great touch there from Atau. And a shot taken, hits the ground. We've got overtime. The invincible blue wall might have a few holes in it now. But they've survived to force OT here. And another game on top. Rise keeps the blue wall alive. The one and only, the man that has been looking for win after win in his career. He has tried to find the perfect team. If there's somebody that's going to work well with him to come back from this, it's got to be these two. And it's all business. They realize, OK, that's one. There's a lot of work to do, and you can only get one at a time. But Farah has K-Corp in position to start a potential reverse sweep. They've done the first job survived this onslaught from Falcons, and they limited the scoring opportunities. You see just the four shots there, while K-Corp only managed five of their own. And when you look back, there were some quality opportunities, but not many where you felt like K-Corp really had to work hard to keep Falcons off the scoreboard. And they can continue to channel that. We might have a longer series than one might have thought in the first 10 minutes. I absolutely agree with that. I think Carmen are definitely playing a little bit more of a patient game, letting the Falcons almost come to them at times and just working with opportunities given, not so much created. But granted, that was just step one. Like you said, there's a long road, a long journey ahead of you in an attempt to reverse sweep the Falcons. So a 2-1 victory in overtime. Another low-scoring, grindy affair. I mean, the previous game kind of, I mean, it really was 2-1 for a, a significant chunk at the end, and then Falcons added one more to pull away. Now we'll see how Team Falcons respond because the pressure starts to shift a little bit. You had them where you wanted them. You got the early goal. It did not hold up. Overtime winner out of Rise. Will he get going? Will it be another roar from the Lion? It's TRK, waterfall down, and he scores! There you have it. They're coming out swinging. We've seen this so many times before. Falcons just coming in with the purest level of early game aggression against KC. It works out once again. The question now is, how quickly can Carmen Corp respond? And off the kickoff, this ball's going to head towards that net. Great save there from TRK. This one off the backboard, out onto the other end of the field. But this time, Carmen Corp not sent back home as quickly as they have in the past. Now finally able to keep the pressure on for a little bit longer. Very cleverly sent out to midfield, too, by the collective Falcons <laughs> defense. But it comes right back in. And it's Atau who ties the game. This is the Carmen Corp pressure that we've all seen throughout the qualifiers. It is just pure, non-stop pushing forward inch by inch till you are through. And that is exactly what happened there. Tied game between Casey and Falcons. Game on here at Utopia. Another closeout opportunity for the Falcons. They've been asked a lot of questions. They've answered almost all of them. But one left, how are you going to close out the previously, or so far, unbeatable Carmine Corp? Rise had that one taken away and an opportunity in front. That sent off to the side. That's how I tried to pinch that, and it just kind of adds with a sad trombone noise. And a chance now for a toe to clear it away. It looked like Falcons had something brewing there, but could not get that crucial touch. 
And no connection made on that ball there, just seemingly allowing Rise to keep driving this ball forward. Finally, a 50 going in favor of Falcons. And here comes Ruas. Two touches, driving towards this net. Maybe the finisher from Killers, but nothing on target. Instead, it's Carmen Corp's defense turning back into that blue wall attempt to take a shot from Rise, but Falcons remain tried and true. Oh, good intercept there as we're also sent it all the way downfield. Rise bounced that right towards Killers, and maybe a little fortunate that it wasn't just a few pixels closer. There's Vatira denied by Ruas. And a couple of near misses, as we saw in the previous game, but nothing else breaking through. One all through two minutes. A very eventful first couple of minutes. Oh, beyond eventful. I wouldn't have expected anything less from this team headed into this game number four. I mean, again, Carmen Corp, they absolutely are favorites coming into this one. It's more about Falcons trying to take the favoritism away from them in the Swiss stage. And they are more than doing so right now. But Carmen Corp, Trying to level things out a little bit. Here comes a Tao. Wanted to drive this one towards that net there. Rise is going to slow things down. Pops this one to the ground here. 50 goes in connection with Ruas. Into the blue half he goes, but Demo sends this ball back. Vatira towards the backboard. And maybe Carmen Corp can start to formulate some sort of an attack on the Falcons and try and take the lead, but the save comes through. Rati did get a boost <laughs> steal, and it almost paid off, but the save made right at the last. Keeping the pressure on, though. They're not letting Falcons get off that easy. Rise to a toe. Why not feed the hot hand? He's got three out of the four for the blue wall so far in this series. But now Falcons back on the prowl. Can they at least get something more forward, more central towards the net? No, they can't. They have to play more defense. And we've seen that throughout the series, too, Herc. Their time in the offensive zone has been very short-lived. They were just being a lot more efficient with it in the previous games. Exactly. It's all about what you do with the opportunities that are given. Even if it is a short amount of time, if it is used wisely, the game can be yours. We've seen it in times past. It only takes one goal, a one goal lead to win the entire series against the squad. And well, maybe they can do it again. Demo onto Killers allows Carmen Corp to try and transition through, but a huge clear lets Falcons breathe for a little bit on defense and go for the counter. Oh, Vatira's looking to give that to Rise, and he got bumped out of the way. And that almost ended catastrophically for K Corp. Falcons looking to press their advantage now. TRK up to the heavens, trying to flip reset, and Vatira's there to snuff it out. Still got TRK downfield, couldn't hit the redirect. Oh, they've been so close, but close is not good enough. You've got to find a knockout blow. That's how now, given chase, as Clears will have to get this away quickly. Rise up to meet him, got a piece, and back it goes. Last 30 seconds. Falcons could end it here, or Carmen Corp can extend in game number four. Here comes Rise, tempting to get over one, but TRK stops it dead in its tracks. This ball driving forward, and Vatira slowing things down, just pushing into the Falcons' side. 10 seconds on the clock. Killers over to one, into the corner they stay. Falcons, can they take this away at the last moment, or does a redirect pass over to Vatira off the backboard? Double it down, it hits the ground. We've got overtime in game number four. Seen Vatira do it hundreds of times and just kind of assumed it was gonna drop, but it hits the ground, and Carmine Corp force another overtime. Atau lost that one. So now it's Killers. Nothing there. And another infield pass on the defensive end. And we've seen K-Corp utilize that. They've worked well as a team defensively, but they are susceptible to physical play, and Falcons have almost blown up a couple. Yeah, this is, this is where I expect full level 10 aggression to start coming out from Carmen Corp. But a huge clear allows Falcons to go upfield on this one. Atau's going to take this to the sky. And a challenge still in the favor of Carmen Corp. Vatira up next off the backboard. Nice read there from Ruas out into the mid. This one is going to get followed there by Rise. He leaves it for a towel, though. And a challenge from Killers is won. Lost, though, to Rise. Off to the ceiling. And Carmen Corp try to break out of their half, not once, but twice, and yet stay unsuccessful. Tense moments now as Falcons try to mount an attack, but this will fall to Vatira. He's the guy. 
but it's not gonna happen this time. He was going head hunting, came up empty. Was a demo on the other side though. And nobody to follow that play up. Numbers advantage perhaps for the Falcons. Can Vatira get back in time? Yes, he can as Atto buys him time. And Vatira's got this. Had to avoid a teammate. Also had killers right there in his grill. And now it's Atto with Rise waiting in support. He'll come up as well. Try to win it. No. Vatira the follow. Still dangerous for K Corp. Vati, center, and it's deflected away. And the back pass coming through over to Rise as he tries to clear this one to the back of the board. TRK over to one. This one clears out into the hands of Carmen Corp, which is what you don't want if you are the Falcons. Stuck back in their own half. Another touch here in the corner. Can they break out, or does Carmen Corp continue to just chop away at the defense of the Falcons? Atal getting met with a challenge in the mid here. Two minutes into OT. This has felt like Carmen Corp's overtime, and Falcons struggling to break out and stay out of their own half. A uh, very short overtime in game three, much longer this time around. Floating towards the net, and Atal keeps this series alive for K Corp. DRK can't pinch it forward. There's Vatira, decoy, and it almost fell right to Atal, but now it's Rise bringing it across. Boy, K Corp going deep into the bag of tricks. Team Falcons undeterred so far. Vatira, more of a blunt instrument that time, did not break through. DRK, power clear, he can follow it himself, and Rise gotta have it away, and he does. That was a huge clear, allowing Falcons to be able to transition. Pass over to TRK, shot on net, denied by a Tau, and Carmen Corp lived to see another minute of OT. Why, they watched the series flash before their eyes, and now maybe Falcons will do the same. One falling into his net, it's a Tau. Got the win on the 50, but it's sent away. Follow is denied as well by Ruas. But Tira for the win. We are going to see Champions Field. Carmi Court versus the Falcons. This is probably game of the day, in my opinion. There's no way it gets closer, no way it gets better. Carmi Court on the road to reverse sweeping Team Falcons. Just another day at the office for Vatira and company. By the way, that was his first goal of the series. Only player yet to score in this epic confrontation between the best from Mina and the best from Europe. And it's Atau getting one of his own as well, leading the way for K Corp. He has been stellar. So too have collectively been Team Falcons. Oh, absolutely. Team Falcons are working together as such an incredible unit, and they have done so well individually as, as well. But Carmine Corp, you got to talk about it, right? Batira finally uh, seeing the solo plays that we love from this guy. They're coming through when we needed him most. He showed up and now it's game five and I feel like this is where this team kind of thrives right if there's anybody who has created a team to work so incredibly well under pressure and to beat the odds it is this squad right here two of these three have done it under the most immense pressure Atau is the newest of the bunch to this level of pressure and even he has quite an accomplished resume and he has answered the test brilliantly for K Corp. And now he will start it off for the blue wall, trying to set up Vatira and waiting for a mistake that might come out from Team Falcons. Rise, kind of a token challenge. We're off and running here on Champions Field between K Corp and Team Falcons. As the blue wall tries to reverse sweep Mina's crown. They are looking good doing it too. It has been nothing but a drive of momentum for the last two games for the blue wall. But Falcons still able to hold their own, still taking the shots on target. They haven't been slowed down too bad. It's not gonna end here. 30 seconds or so have gone by where Falcons get to hold on to the pressure. Carmine Corp though, wanting to stop them in their tracks. Gonna be a little bit harder than it has in the past as the infield comes through. Clears takes the shot. TRK up next to the back wall, but Carmen Corp has them red. 
Well, Rakir has been very confident at the back line and uh, again, playing with fire. He hasn't been burned yet, but he's come very close. He'd like to see maybe just a little bit quicker play as he's waiting on the back line and this time stops TRK in his tracks. And now he can take this across the center. Stop initially made by Ruas. Brought all the way over, TRK left it behind. Rise is there to bounce her right into Killers. Here comes Killers again, just trying to get past the midfield line. Falcons doing a much more consistent job of breaking out of their half. Which is a good sign of life for them after losing two in the series. Here comes Batira, slowly starting to wake up as well here in game number five when it matters most, but you're gonna get sent back in your own half. TRK looking to follow up this ball. No bump onto a Tau, but it's okay as Kaleers goes to follow through. Three minutes left in regulation on this one. An infield coming in from the corner, maybe a double off. No connection made on that ball, but Falcons looking a little bit more menacingly as the redirect heads towards net and gets sent out. Frantic pace back and forth. Opportunities abound on either side. That demolition could open things up. That tower's still downfield. But now it's all rise, all alone in the back, bringing it across to a towel. Fatira is still ahead. You can see K Corp trying to press the issue just a little bit. Try to force Falcons into a mistake. There's an opportunity that ricochets away, courtesy of TRK. Huge save there. And TRK again also just going to continue the flow over into the KC half. But as quickly as it started, it ends. KC now on the offensive front. He gets him back into the mid. Here comes Rise off the sidewall. TRK pushing this forward. Can the follow-up come through? The save does, but Killers isn't done. Team Falcons find themselves in a lead at 2.02. Been relatively quiet after dropping nine in the first series. That's his third, and it could be the series winner. Will it deny a reverse sweep from Carmine Corp? Oh, an opportunity abound there, and it's just sent away. Boy, you don't get many opportunities like that off the kickoff. A waterfall down on the back wall, and just barely swept out. Batira neutral with TRK. And Falcons repel yet another Carmine Corp attack. Things just feeling not necessarily out of reach for Carmine Corp, but it is getting increasingly difficult as time goes on. You've got 90 seconds to answer to this one goal, and we've seen it to where it's taken them much longer to find that answer. As right. this ball gets sent back into the blue half here, this one off the side while Vatira just wants out of his half. This one towards net, two touches from Killers off the car of a KC player, but Rye says no, we take it to the sky, we float on out, just over a minute to go. Falcons remain in the lead. And maybe more, oh, a towel coming across to make the save. Bati's had a tough time getting boost in this game, especially in the later half. Gonna need some now. Decoy play leaves Rawas in charge. And now brought to the top. A little lockup up on the backboard. I think this might actually favor K Corp though. And they break it up. Now Vatira in the wing. This will be Rise meeting TRK. A little stutter step though, slowed things up. Now K Corp with just over 30 seconds left, trying to keep the reverse sweep alive. Good challenge to get that deep into Falcon territory, but it's all TRK. Gonna try again. Drop off to Vatira. His shot was high. Nobody could have defended it. And the follow from Atel. This is what Carmen Corp is known for. The crazy accurate follow-ups, the speed with which they come. A tied game at 19 seconds. Carmen Corp are still in the running to go 2-0 in the Swiss. As great as Killers has been, he was helpless after having to avoid Patera. 10 seconds now. Separate us from another 1-1 overtime. That has been the extent of this reverse sweep effort out of K-Corp. TRK just got that ahead of Batira, and Ruas will give it a look. With no time on the clock, spike down for overtime.
And here you have it, the most intense situation you could have possibly asked for. Overtime game five, Carmen Court versus Falcons. This one's gonna head back towards the backboard. Towards oh the my net. Gosh. It goes down, the follow-up coming through and sent off by Carmen Court. Rise finds a way out again. Loose ball in front. TRK can't follow it. Rise will drop it to Vatira, and somehow this overtime continues. Ross denied by a towel again. And now he'll work from the side. Stuffed by TRK, but he ran into Rise and couldn't follow that play cleanly. Boy, Vatira in a lot of trouble defensively here. He'll give way to a towel. Clear downfield, intercepted by Ross. You have to be so intentional and careful with where some of these clears are headed towards. This one into the hands of a towel. He carries this one up in the air. And Batira trying to help him keep this ball forward towards that Falcons half. But as quickly as it starts, it ends. And the counterattack starts to come through a minute into this overtime. And it's Falcons pushing towards the KC net. This one in mid, a battle for it. A battle for control, even. And Carmen Corp. They just can't seem to continue to hold onto this ball long enough to take a threatening shot. Oh, Vatira, time and space, lay, oh, gave way to Rise. Indirect center, and Atal just wasn't there, too far back. But K Corp getting a little comfortable on the orange half of the field. Rise will bring another one across, intercepted by TRK. Big challenge. TRK will get the boost deal out of the corner, but Atau's got control, did get screened off the play. Then Vatira, one-on-one -on -one with Ross, who's got an easy clear. That is a huge clear. This one stops mid. No boost in the tank, though, for Ruas. Most he can do is win a 50, and he does, as this one heads over into the corner. Vatira gets beat on this one. Killers tries to drive this towards the net, but Rise has other plans. The mid boost collected by none other than him, but this one still could remain in favor of the Falcons as this one goes center. Killers trying to slow things down. Can he get over Rise? Not quite, but he can drive forward to open up an opportunity. No fake off the net, and Ruas get Falcons the win! Wow! What a finish from Ruas! From Falcons! Pushed to the brink, needed all three shots at closing out K Corp, but they do what nobody has been able to do from the main event onward, take down the blue wall. And it's Team Falcons who emerge in our main event, 2-0. No words can describe how insane that series was again. I have heard nothing but high praise towards this Falcons team. Some people saying that they could be the new best in the world, and you know that that's got to come. It's somewhat of a shock to Carmen Corp after the immense amount of success that they have had all throughout the qualifiers to even get here. But of course, their first challenge, their first true international challenge comes in, and Falcons take Casey down. Team Falcons go up 2-0, as dominant as you could be, as one-sided a series as you could ask for. That first 10 minutes was just a beating. KC persevered. They weathered that volley. 2-1 in overtime. 2-1 in overtime. And then it goes to game five, all tied at one. The prophecy was about to be fulfilled. It was all scripted out and then it was torn up, thrown in the shredder. 2-1 to Team Falcons, who denied Carmine Corp a reverse sweep. And at the end of the night, Team Falcons are 2-0. Leaf standing by with the victorious Mina squad. It seems to be the EU is in shambles, Vitality down, and now K Corp also out of the picture here in Swiss rounds. I have to whom with me, I have to ask, 
Did you go in with the game plan or are you just as surprised as all the rest of us? مبدئيا تحوم الف مبروك على الفوز وعلى طول يعني حابين نسال بما انه يعني عندنا فريق فيتاليتي تم اقصائه وهلا كي سي خسر كمان مباراه انتم وانتم داخلين بهذا السيريز هل كان في عندكم مخطط ولا هل انتم برضه تفاجاتوا من هاي النتيجه؟ اول شيء اللهم لك الحمد فزنا في المباراه الثانيه في السويت ستيج طبعا خطه المباراه احنا حاولنا ندخل بلعبنا ما نركز على الخصم بشكل خاص لان ندري اذا لعبنا بامكانياتنا ان شاء الله ما حد ما حد يقدر يوقفنا وبس لعبنا لعبنا والحمد لله Uh, first of all, thank God we were able to take the series at the end there. Right. It was very, very stressful, but we knew that at the end of the day, if we were just playing our game, playing our style, at the end of the day, we'll be able to get the series. Well, I, I want to know because K Corp also has their own style, and they're pretty well known to be hard to crack defensively. What finally broke for them, for you guys? It seemed early on you had it. And then there was some trouble. So what was that final break near the end that allowed you to, to get through? هلا بخصوص الدفاع لفريق كارماين كور معروف انه دفاع قوي جدا فايش اللي عملتوه عشان تقدر تخترقوا هذا الدفاع؟ قدرتوا تفوز بالجيم الاول والثاني لكن مريتوا بمشاكل بالجيم الثالث والرابع فايش اللي صار بالمباراه الخامسه عشان تقدروا تخترقوا الدفاع وتفوزوا بالسيريز؟ اي صحيح دفاعهم صراحه كان قوي مره فاحنا حاولنا هجمه ورا هجمه نكون صبورين ولا ندفع والحمد لله مع الهجمات قدرنا نفوز. We were just trying time after time after time to break them down, to whittle them down. And at the end of the day, one of them worked. We managed to score that goal and we took the game. All right, I have uh, one more question for you now. And I, I want to know from your insight, since you just played one of Europe's best with Vitality down and Europe, or sorry, Europe, uh, K-Corp down, they're basically Europe. Uh, do we feel like Europe is still the best region to, to be right now or are those theories a little bit uh, shaky at this point. هلا بما انه فيتاليتي خسروا اكم مباراه وبرضه هلا كارماين كور عم بيعانوا بخسارات في الدوري، هل فكرك انه الريجن الاوروبي لساته ريجن قوي قوي جدا ولا هل فكرك الريجينات الثانيه بدات تتقدم او ايش برايك عم بيصير؟ صراحة برايي انا ما افكر وش افضل ريجن وش الريجن الافضل، احنا اهم شيء عندنا نقدم اللي علينا وبس. Uh, for us, really, we don't focus on which region is the strongest region at the moment. We're just going to focus on whoever's in front of us and try to do our best at the end of the day. And their best is clearly what is working. Congratulations to the Falcons here. And that is it for our, our day one. So I'm going to scoodoodle out of here and let the desk do some yap, yap, yapping. We saved the best for last, and it's not even close. Maybe the best day of day one Swiss action we've ever had in a land before. I cannot believe we had the matches we had here to close things out. Falcons in five games in three overtimes take down Carmen Corp. And another upset here. All four 1-0 games you could argue were uh, upsets across the board. Falcons taking down the unbeatable K Corp and they did it in style. Games one and two, it was all Falcons, but you could feel like K Corp found their form. Games three and four, and it felt like if this was bracket, maybe K Corp battles back, but Falcons, the perseverance in that overtime, game five after you drop two in a row to win it, Absolutely huge. And you could tell just from the, the level of gameplay that Falcons had set the tone with earlier that it did feel like they had something planned out here for K Corp. It was definitely a lot of struggles early on. And we were starting to look at that OG series that Falcons had played earlier, kind of giving them a little bit more credit, seeing how well they did. But Carmi Corp started getting things rolling. They forced it all the way to the distance. But it just wasn't enough on base. It really wasn't enough. It was too little, too late. Them first two games, man, K Corp came out real flat. And Falcons, they were yeah. ready to fly. Came in yeah. soaring high and absolutely dominated. K Corp, they adapted. They, they started did, forcing they overtimes, and they look really good in game four and even in game five. But at that point, all it takes is one bounce. All it takes is one unfortunate circumstance, one one boost grab, too little, and that's all that makes a difference well, in the game. And, and, uh, I was I was calling them OG, o OG Moist with experience, the team that has the yeah. ice that never loses in overtimes. And so they kept sending these games to overtime. And I felt more and more confident, though, like, this is going to be another Carmine Core win. And then they go to game five overtime. And yet, from the beginning of that overtime, they were on their back foot. And even once yeah. they kind of got back on their front it was it was very we're both just swinging here yeah. and it, 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 was it was not fun. a controlled overtime very for Carmi Corp. oh it was a lot of fun from both sides both sides would see a chance to go on the offensive pressure both would go for it they'd be out of position it was kind of messy but at the same time that's what we want to see both teams trying to win the overtime not trying to just wait it out until a mistake happens both teams were absolutely trying to get that win then because they knew like either of these teams are so great 
you're gonna have to beat him. It's not gonna be a mistake. You have to attack. Both teams did. Both looked exceptional in that overtime, but Falcons, 2-0. And 2-0, and I mean, very well earned. And again, we talk about it. Everybody has a lot of speculations coming in. Who they think is the best. And a win like this for Falcons changes up everything. It feels like the major is truly wide open at this point. So our last two majors, it was all of Europe. There was one Mina top four in there. But for the most part, everyone's like, yeah, it's just Europe. Yeah. Now there's only one European 2-0. Is and that it's their crazy? EU four seed, by the way. It's the four uh, seed. It, everything is wide open right now. We saw... Yep. All the top eight games basically go to game five, except for the mate series. And it's wide open at this point. Anyone can possibly win this out of that group of eight. We'll see if any of the other ones uh, down in the one and one round can make a comeback. But for right now, there's a conversation to be made for at least eight of these teams here. If you if you did not have the alternate stream up, Gentle Mates were able to beat Team BDS in four games to be the only European team that is currently two and zero. Oh. And and I, I'm gonna be honest, we had both games up at the same time. My, my, I was glued <laughs> to Carmen Core versus Falcons. I didn't even really see uh, exactly this guy. What this guy might need to be answering some questions, Mr. Florida from Heaven, because guess what? You were the one who was most hard on that Gentle Mates team. Now they're sitting too well. They might be the first team to make it in a bracket. Let's Listen, man, they haven't beat BDS in two months. What are you supposed to tell me? <laughs> like, like, I don't know what's going on today. The best teams in the game are all losing. They're all playing extremely different than they usually do. K-Corp, I mean, they come out flat sometimes, but I always feel like they can win. But that whole entire series, it felt like Falcons could win. I don't even know what happened to Alpine. I really wasn't paying attention. But unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, no, fortunately for them, they end up getting the W. Maybe the floater from heaven. Maybe they're thinking back, and maybe they figured it out. And our first 12 matches, as we see with the alternate stream for the last rounds, was... It was all favorites for 12 matches in a row yeah. across A and B stream, which included the OG and power here. But then everything changed. Every single 1-0 you could claim was an underdog win. I think me and Daz would say Gen GG2 wasn't, but still yeah. it was a 50-50 coin flip at the very best. So it's a brand new story. We came into it this is. saying like, it's going to be Europe. Can anyone like maybe one team that will make a run? We have four different regions, 2-0 right the, now. The it's coolest beautiful. part about this job is that like we woke up this morning and knew there was going to be a story, but we didn't know what it was going to be. Yeah. And now we do. And now we know Falcons beats Carmen Core on day one Look at that. Of, Ma of Copenhagen Major here. Crazy, crazy stuff. Furia beats Vitality Sam as is well. Back. This is, that's great to see. Because last year, Sam was not pretty. Ooh, we were talking. Furia was not pretty. Well, that's now they're back. Well, that's because we had all the best Sam teams in North America. They all moved over. That's right. They but they America still for... didn't perform either there. Oh, true, so true, true, like... true. Which only makes it that much more interesting because this is only day number one. Right. And I understand we had a lot of game fives here, a lot of one goal games, exactly. a lot of couple bounces, where if it goes the other way, it could be different. But so it's going to be interesting to see tomorrow what happens when these teams play you're again. Right, you're right. But this is so interesting because I just remember, base me and you personally, remember that everybody was talking about how big this gap was. It was oh, such a large yeah. gap. And, I think and we were like, mm, is the gap really that big? I don't think it Ooh. is. It's been pretty close the whole entire time. I think you're seeing that Rocket League at the highest level, man, is really, really really tight. It really comes down to those small incremental moments and even your confidence, your adaptability, how much you, how great you want to be. Let's go back through some of these last few matches here as we're closing out our day. Starting back at the beginning of round two here with Elevate versus Rule 1. Elevate taking a game here. I called it. One. I called it. We it got is. at least one game. Elevate, they look pretty solid. Like all in all, yes, they're 0-2. They're expected to be 0-2, but really that conversation is in that 13 range. Like, is there a possibility to make a push for the 1-3 round, then who knows if that maybe go to the 2-2 two and two round. So we'll see what Elevate will do. But Rule 1, you know, calm, cool, and collected. It was a little bit closer than they wanted, but they did get the win all in all. Elevate played an absolutely phenomenal day. I mean, they played, went up against BDS, went to overtime, took Rule 1, scored 6, six against them in game number yeah. 3. And honestly, they, I think he started off the game with a win, with a first goal right here. Yeah, Sphinx with a great pass. Rule 1 did end up beating them in this game. But Elevate, man, at APAC region, they're slowly coming up. They're slowly getting better. It's been a two-year project for, since they've been at RLCS Majors, RLCS Lance, and they're right there. They're getting close now. We're getting real close to being a true contender. 
Oh, then here we go with this one. Luminosity versus complexity. Even though luminosity, I mean, me and Bates were on the culture train, it just wasn't enough to stop the bull <laughs> because, my goodness, Ray's bull, especially this year, he's played phenomenal. I know a lot of people had eyes on Dorito here, mm -hmm. but Dorito didn't really look like he was really lacking, to be honest. Definitely, there's going to be a little bit of an adjustment period with the first part of there. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't expect to hear Riddle screaming like that. That's so much passion. I love the passion over there, but the passion was not enough because even then, complexity, they did start getting rolling, and then after that, it was just their Complexity did start getting rolling, and listen, the passion for the Rattles, they need the culture a little bit more because, my goodness, that game number three, I think they had this 12 goal. demos in this Look game, this. but when you don't put a hand up against oh. Rage Bull flying up that high, I scored that goal three, three years ago in CRO. If I can score that, I know he can. Rattles, jump! <laughs> but Complexity... Calm, cool, and collected by the end of the series. It was close. Games one and two. And obviously that huge moment by Ray's Bull. Game four, though, he didn't stop. He kept charging. And complexity. Putting South oh, America back gross. on that map as oh, well gosh. in the one in one round. But Luminosity will have to figure it out through the O2. Have a little bit weaker opponents, but we'll see what happens. Then we got into the juicy ones. Yeah. We got into the one and oh round. And on both streams, it was wild. Furia, it absolutely wild. Vitality's up a game already. And you're like, all right, maybe this is going to be a quick one. Then Furia. Battle back, lost, great series from him. And you just worry about Rado at times because of that momentum shift. Vitality could not find that momentum. Furia, when they get hype as well, yeah. they know how to play on land with that momentum and they showed it here. And everybody's talking about Fury and their speed and how they're able to really break down the opponents with how fast they are. They've got the energy, of course, in the comms to so keep the momentum running at times, but also that fast-paced offense, something that a team like Vitality isn't necessarily too used to at that level of pace. So they were tested there even in the back end, but even then, they still Still played really well. Like we said, close game fives here between a lot of teams. Vitality one is one mistake. One, of them. one mistake yep. right there. That's really the margins are so small right now in Rocket League. All it took was Alpha going up for a ball he didn't shouldn't have. Zen double committed and then Fury capitalizes. They take that series. And in the series we just watched Falcons versus K Corp. Falcons came out hot with the bumps. We talked about it before the game. How they're gonna bring that physicality, how they're gonna isolate Vati in the back. And you just see them. They just were there. They were confident the whole entire time. And it was up to K-Corp to really rebound. And yeah. honestly, when Kalir scored right here, I thought it was over for a second. I thought it was just going to be a quick 3-0. I thought I was going to be really surprised. We have seen that before, good. though. We have seen that before where BDS went up 3-0 against K-Corp. K-Corp battled back. They find a way to adapt mid-series. And maybe if there was a tactical timeout, maybe this is a different result. K-Corp, they do battle back, and they get two wins. But the Falcons, we talk about the ice on K-Corp. The Falcons yeah. didn't want to hear about it. No, sure, sir. it was a late Fal equalizer, but it did not matter. Falcons showing that they could possibly be the best team in the world. Uh, we, we, we talked about right before this match started, like that the South America and Mina trying to make the argument that, no, this is not, we're not far behind yeah. North America. As a matter of fact, we might even be right there with Look them. And that. The, the, taking down the big teams the right there Europe, Europe would now. be the big yeah. one. They both did it. They both yeah. took them down. And that gives us these round three matchups. We'll see Falcons playing Gentlemates. We'll see Furia playing Gen G for Ooh. the two O's. Mm. And then again, that is four different regions in that 2 and 0 round, which is beautiful. And also four different regions in the 0 and 2 round. So a lot of diversity happening. Got the 1 and 1 mess here. We got K Corp versus Complexity, G2 versus Rule Real 1, BDS versus Power, and OG versus Vitality. Now that OG loss to the Falcons does not look as bad. We'll see if they can bounce back. And Vitality obviously are still trying to figure these things out. So I'm loving it. But that's all I know because Europe. I thought there was going to be a big gap, and there absolutely isn't. We'll go into day two. You. We'll see what they can resist. Well, you, you told me for a day. We also but, have down there in the O2s, man, Limitless going to be playing for their tournament life versus Luminosity, Elevate, and KCP. Only one of those two teams gets to move forward. And that is one of my dream matchups. I didn't say it in the pre-show because we didn't have enough time, but Elevate, Pioneers, mm. everyone had that match of like, I want to see this, see who is better. And Elevate, honestly, is looking great. So that should be a fun one. Folks, we got two streams again tomorrow. On the alternate stream, we will have these matches going down. We'll kick off the day with OG versus Vitality. We'll see Carmine play Complexity. Falcons versus the Gentlemates of Alpine and Elevate will play QT Pioneers there. That match we are just talking about, that'll be the last match of that round. round. Yes. We will then have two. We will complete the Swiss tomorrow. So once round three is done, we will <laughs> set round four. And then, yes, we will play round five. So yes, it'll be a long be, one strap in. There will be four more matches on that B stream as well and then on the mainstream here BDS power 
G2 versus Rule One, Furia versus Gen G, and Luminosity versus Limitless. It's it's gonna be a good day. It's gonna be an incredible day of Rock League. But Daz, you got a match you're looking forward to the most? Ooh, I got a couple. I got a couple. I mean, I want to see, of course, the Furia Gen G. I yeah. want to see how Gen G play up against his Furia team. I do want to also see the Elevate Pioneers matchup. I think yeah. that one will be very be close. Uh, I mean, Pioneers. Yeah, I know they're feeling very confident they're a land team, but right now they're O2. And Elevate has looked good against some of the top teams. So those are the ones I'm really zooming in on. That mm. Gibbs, how, how's how's Coin doing on the prediction battle? I don't think Coin's doing that well, but it, it, well. it's probably like they did start catching up towards the end. It might be catching up to T Bates because I'm pretty sure T Bates is in last out of all the cash. It did. So. Oh, it oh no, say, Bates! Say. Coin did call Falcons. Coin did call I Falcons. Mean, I mean, I mean, I'm just won. losing all the game fives. I don't know what to tell y'all. Oh god, that was a lot. Of that game was like fives. five game fives in a row. I just lost. I mean, but we're winning game five, so you know. I mean, hey, listen, hey, hey, what are you gonna do? There was a lot of game fives, folks. <laughs> the show kicks off tomorrow at 1:30 Central Eastern Standard Time. Be here. I'll be here. We'll have a great PSO Central European Standard Time. Sorry, it's been a long day, folks. Appreciate y'all being here. Thanks so much for watching. See you tomorrow for day two.